One of the oldest museums in the world, the Louvre is home to almost half a million pieces of artwork. But yesterday, modern day masterpieces were created here in the Acor Arena. First, the collision of the new wave, where team synergy trumped raw firepower. Game Allegiance, the one to craft an incredible overpass to cut off more than just Monty's ear and send them out of the quarterfinals. Then the brutalists of Apex, painting the arena orange and washing out Team Liquid. Two decisive maps and Kickson leading by example, dissecting the NA squad and paving the way to the top four. That sets up what is going to be an incredibly emotional semi-final Saturday here at the Blast TV Paris Major. And joining myself, Freya Spears, to open up a historic day in Counter-Strike. I've got Mary Snake and Pimp joining me down on the desk. Gentlemen, we've had a DJ hyping ourselves up for the past 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm so excited to dive into this one. Yeah, we got the Hive going crazy already. I'm surprised that they're in here five hours, six hours potentially, before their own team is playing, creating a good atmosphere. But it's so perfectly set for you. Two massive dogs coming into these semi-finals and two underdogs coming into the semi-final. It couldn't be any better could it? Uh, I was considering getting angry on this desk. I was considering <laughs> getting mad at what we witnessed from Liquid, but I'm just going to celebrate the underdogs, Freya. I'm just going to be happy for the stories that they are writing for themselves here at this major. Nobody would have considered Apex and Gamer Legion to be in the semifinals. Where is this power coming from? It's coming from the depths of Tier 2 Counter-Strike. We absolutely love to see it. That's what we love about the major, right? The fact that it can be such an open circuit, and it really is do or die time when you enter this arena. We've got to talk about some of the results from yesterday, though. Obviously, Liquid later on, but first starting off with Monty versus Game of Legion. Um, it was an interesting first map, and then we went to Overpass, and then Monty, unfortunately, just fell asleep. Yeah, it was a, a dominating performance coming out of Game of Legion. I think going into the game, most of us had Monty actually as the small favorites, or at least you'd say it's a 51 to 49 game where it's hard to call out a clear favorite. I was surprised by the fashion Game of Legion won that game in. It did feel like Monty never really got to play their own game. Uh, we spoke about it in the group states as well, maybe a bit too one-dimensional. They rely on a lot on the individual powers of Boas, of Sam Da Young, of Dim QQ for that matter as well, but they never really got going yesterday. And then Gamer Legion just looked like a much, much better team, looked like a cohesive unit who basically just had a walkover in a quarterfinal of a major. If you took away the nameplates in that matchup, you would have thought that Gamer Legion was a tier one team, polished, the better overall teamwork, better overall coaching, and then you would have looked at Ga uh, Monty on the other side of things, and you would have said, man, this looks really puggy. This is like one guy trying to do everything. We couldn't stop saying his name yesterday, and we're going to say it again even more today. The fact that Boros was such a monster for Monty on map number one, but still, it wasn't enough to get them over the line on Mirage, and then moving into Gamer Legion's map pick of Overpass, it was not even a competitive affair. Gamer Legion looked so much cleaner on that one. Boros had a pretty much an event worse map there. And when he's not firing, then there's really no win condition for Monty. And it really is such a shame, right? Because we were kind of uh, prefacing the scales of the competition, if you will. We were talking about the firepower that could potentially come out of Monty. And Boris was a huge chunk of that, right? It's a shame that we don't see him continuing. But you kind of aptly put it, Jacob, the fact that there's sort of auditioning, I, I guess, maybe for a tier one team. I think he overall, looking at the tournament uh, in its entirety, he's done a phenomenal job. He's yeah. been playing way, way better than anyone could have anticipated. He did it at the RMR with a breakout performance. I think he lived up to the expectations here as well. Played fantastic throughout the vast majority of the games. Yeah. You can't fault a player for not being there in the first game on a big stage like this. You can't fault a player for being on a team that it wasn't only about Boris, right? It was not only him playing bad yesterday, it was the entire team of Monty as well. So yeah. yes, I know yesterday he didn't perform as well as he has done so far, but overall, I think his addition went pretty well. We're talking about a hell of a lot of debuts for young guns coming onto their first major stage as well. We cannot, you know, understate how emotional, how much pressure you're going to be experiencing in this arena. We were able to kind of witness that actually, even against on Gamer Legion side. We saw Ema, who ended up being the best player in the server that day, actually having a bit of a slow start for himself, having a couple uncharacteristic misses, but then everything settled for Gamer Legion. Even Isaac, the player that really did the worst for them yesterday, started having his moments later on in that series. It took a while for some of them to shake off the nerves, but that's why it's so important in these kinds of situations to one, either have experience, or two, have a captain that you can trust. And that's what Gamer Legion had. They had Shuhei, they had the game plans. They knew if they just fall 
followed what they were instructed to do, that they were going to be able to be carried by their leader to the promised land. It was the perfect performance from Gamer Legion yesterday. Yeah. As you said, you could mention every single player and you could put a positive towards that guy's name. They all had moments in the game where they were the deciding factor on you. So rightfully said it, right? Emma in that game, a 1.78 rating over two maps in a quarterfinal, in his first ever quarterfinal at a major. That is just nothing but impressive. So yeah, I think Gamer Legion yesterday played the best Counter-Strike they have ever played, and that's something that should scare Heroic late on today. Of course, we do have to talk about uh, the game that was Liquid versus Apex going down yesterday. You want to talk about it, Maui? Uh, you to? Yeah, you Maui, you, you can to? take center stage with this one because we were all hyping up Liquid. We were saying, you know, Elige has never touched a major trophy. Maybe this is his time to shine, and then they just absolutely crumbled in the face of Apex. Yeah, Apex just played better CS through and through. They look like they had better nade protocols, they had better teamwork, they anti stratted Liquid better, and going into this matchup, we had Liquid, or I had Liquid as the favorites for a couple of reasons. One, the pedigree on some of their players. The fact that this is not NAF's, Nitro's, Elysia's first big tournament stage. You would have thought that they would have been able to come out, swing in, a little bit more fight, but Apex just cornered them at every single turn. Every single time, Liquid thought, let's do something proactive. Let's try to actually find some space. It was Apex that was meeting them head on, and Kixan on the side of Apex was a monster as an individual, as a caller, and usually also when teams meet each other again in a rematch, which these teams had a, an initial match in the challenger stage, it was Liquid that lost then. Usually you come back swinging harder. Usually you look at what went wrong, and usually you try to fix all those errors, but it was actually uh, Apex, that is, who actually won up themselves. They looked like they were even more ready to play Liquid this time. They looked like they had more reads on what Liquid was doing, and so they comprehensively destroyed them. I said it yesterday, uh, and I'm gonna say it again. We've been talking about Jkim, we've been talking about JL so far in the tournament being the two players on Apex that makes the difference, being the two players that you can, I guess, rely on in these big games against the better opponents. They were the two worst performing players for Apex yesterday. It was all about Kixen, it was all about Nork with that fantastic clutch. Stiko on the first map as well was the highest rated player coming out of Apex. So again, we're talking about a team that yesterday played the best Counter-Strike game that team has ever played. I don't care about any of the online results, I don't care about what they did in the group stage because that in itself was impressive but on this stage yesterday some of those players had the life game right and that was what powered them through team liquid who after all played quite terribly i'm not gonna lie yeah no it wasn't the team liquid that we were hoping to see you know ramping up into the playoff stage we're talking about a team who were down zero two in the challenger stage no less they had to run it all the way back i thought we were going to be seeing a liquid that was you know fired up full of momentum ready to take on their major stage you would have hoped so. It did feel like they turned a page after they were down 0-2 in the hole in the challenger stage, but that just simply didn't carry over. In some ways, Liquid is a team that's all about momentum. We saw this kind of happen to them when they off the back of their Grand Slam run, when they went into that Berlin Major in 2019, how they lost so much of that in the quarterfinals against Astralis. And we kind of see that again, where we get this just hope, this glimmer on our eyes that we believe in Liquid, that we believe in North American Counter-Strike, and then it, it's just stolen from us. It's just ripped away, our eyes are just pitch black after that, and Liquid, once again, they're reeling from this loss. That's the thing, right, because that loss against Heroic in the group stage right here, 2-1, two to one, we all agreed that was a very competitive game. It was, it was a, a game that, it was incredible, yeah, it was a game that put Liquid on the map where we spoke about them as being a team that, okay, if you are facing Heroic once more in this tournament, you have actually shown us that you can beat them on a good day, and then they go in and deliver that performance yesterday on the stage. It's disappointing, there's no ways around it. Yakinda was the only one who I felt lived up to the expectations, the rest of the team fell flat. Yeah, unfortunately, end of the line for Liquid here at the Blast TV Paris Major, but we can take a Look at what else is on the cards is of course Apex going to be taking on none other than home crowd favorites Vitality. But first, it's time for the big dogs of Heroic to take on Gamer Legion. In a tech sense, there's nothing more complex than a major. The complexities are insane. Kilometers of cable, hundreds of screens, a lot of people making sure that everything is running smoothly. Hello, I'm Sebastian. I am the in-game specialist for Blast. I do everything that has anything to do with the in-game part of our shows. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of connections between sound, between internet, and video, and between people. We have so many people, and if everyone is not completely focused and have their head in the game, the show's just not gonna run. 
if something goes wrong, there's a huge risk involved. Obviously, the worst thing that can happen is that the show stops whenever something goes wrong, and it always will. And it's just about preventing it, having a backup plan, making sure you have extra stuff on site, and having the best people in the business to fix it. And I think the last one is by far the most important one. This is um, where the office of the most important people in the production is. Don't tell them that I told them that. But this is where our tech resides. Without tech, we have no show. That's why the tech team, you need to be there. The show must go on. So this is my favorite tent because this is where I, I work most of the time. It's uh, the in-game tent. This is where we show everything that has anything to do with Counter-Strike and the Major. On this side, we have the A stream going out and down there, the B stream. This is uh, the A stream. And if you walk slowly with me, the gentleman sitting here is controlling all graphical assets that comes up on stream. And whenever you see graphics, these are the magicians. Right here, this is a slow-mo machine. You see he has all the player cams that we have. So whenever you see a cool reaction, someone going crazy or someone crying because they lost, that's your star. Down here is an EVS machine. And whenever anything cool happens, he'll show the replay of it. If you look at the monitor wall, you will easily have an idea of how many cameras and how many people are involved. All those small boxes are a camera that our director up here can cut to. Stream B, as we are having two shows going on at the same time, we have one guy doing graphics. We have the director, Smil, who is the man who's uh, running everything. We have two people doing EBS, and then we have a slow-mo machine to show player reactions. Now we actually have to be very quiet. I actually don't think I can talk in here because this is the sound booth. Sound is actually way more complicated and more complex than you think. And it's also way more important because no one really thinks about sound because you take it for granted. But when sound is not working, you cannot hear that your game player, you cannot hear your commentators, or it's too loud so you can't think. Sound has to work. So behind me right now is probably one of the most important parts of any show. It's the brain, it's the server, it's here where all connections going in and out. If this doesn't work, we don't have a show. So we can't show anything in here because it's a business secrets, basically. It's a very mysterious room. As you can see, it takes a ton of people to put on an eSport major. But I hope you enjoyed the rare view and rare insight on how we do it here at Blast. Not all heroes wear capes as Gamer Legion stole the show and arguably the hearts of the crowd yesterday. The deepest run the Dark Horses have ever made at a major. And now for the ultimate test, Heroic, a team who seldom falter to teams below their level. Jacob, talk about the biggest challenge that Gamer Legion have ever faced fast coming at them. I mean, what they've done so far at the major has been nothing but incredible. I don't think anyone would have expected Gamer Legion to be part of the conversation of teams who could even make it to the playoff, but they did, especially considering their terrible start to the tournament where they went 0-2. Now, ever since, it's a team that's been getting better and better and better every single game they play. And as I said yesterday, it looked like a proven tier one team, as Maui said. Yes, and just to touch on Gamer Legion, the story of this organization, they've been in CSGO for about four years. They never even accomplished a qualification to a major until they brought aboard this new captain, Shuhei. He has such a great story before him. And Gamer Legion themselves, I mean, really, this org was kind of just in the doldrums, just spinning their wheels in tier two, just kind of picking players from different regions here and there, maybe getting a Swedish lineup here, getting just a Euro mix. But it took until Shuhei before they were relevant. Alongside Shuhei, there was a real standout name in that series versus Monty yesterday. Emma. We're going to say his name a lot. Uh, I'm sure the cast is going to say his name a lot, but Emma yesterday played some absolutely outstanding Counter-Strike, and he's done that throughout the entire tournament so far. He's punching above right now. He's playing way better than you could have expected from him. The best event he's ever had is at the Major. He's been around for quite some time. He's been playing Counter-Strike at the sub-tier levels, tier 2, tier 3, and we never really saw this potential. You see it right here. This Major versus the last... Oh, sorry, this Major versus uh, 2023 and the last three months. It's amazing that a player that have shown glimpses of potential all of a sudden steps up at the biggest stage and play remarkably better than he's ever done in his career. I don't know what they're feeding him right now, but that player right there, he could very well be the difference maker. They're feeding him good utility. They're feeding him good good, good strats. Their Ima is looking just so sharp in terms of when he's playing in the system and when he has to make his own decisions in the mid late rounds. Well, we've seen some impressive stats from Ima, so let's put some pictures to our words with the Mahone Zone. 
something that's very underrated about Ima is actually his ability to use the geometry of the map to his, the biggest advantage. So let me take a look at this round right here against Monty. So round 21, it first starts off B push. Now take a look at the way he finds his kill into SDY towards Cat. Notice here that he kind of curves into this corner towards this upper B position. By curving into this upper B corner, what it does is it allows him to cover himself from anyone who could be peeking from this backside area. For anyone who's playing towards bench or backside, they're not going to be able to see him as he peeks towards cap. What that does is it allows him to then isolate the fight towards bench if he needs it. That's the first part. Second thing is here is that after he throws his flash, notice that when he goes on top of Van, he actually jumps across to the site. Now this may seem rather a small detail, but it actually makes a big difference because if you are this person towards catwalk, having a player jump across is actually very hard to catch because typically when you're towards cat, you're expecting this player to come in down low, but with the player crossing over up high, it's an impossible shot to hit. This allows them to cross over towards bench, take this deep angle against Boros, allows them to work the angles of this bench area and find Kresno as well. Now the next thing you want to pay attention to here is in this post plant, 3v2 situation. Look at how he uses this pillar here on the left side, that pillar right there. He's going to use it to perfection because this spot, what it allows him to do is it allows him to use this wall to cover himself from anyone peeking from window. What it does ultimately for him is it allows him in this post plant to peek towards cat and to also peek towards door at the same time without exposing himself to window. From DemQ's point of view, he's trying to find him towards bench. He can't see him. And what that does is it puts IM in a situation where he's in a great advantage because as soon as he tries to come out towards that window side, he can spot his gun coming out and allows him to react in time and find this kill. So this is one of the reasons why Ima is so good on the T side especially is his ability to kind of work these angles, use the map geometry to its absolute fullest and find these kills. I love how Danny picks up on what are seemingly, you know, tiny details, but how Ema manages to use them to his advantage uh, in that game versus Monty. He looks very mature on the server. That's what I note when I watch him play. You spoke about it. It's not just the, the Boros type of player who's out there in your face aiming. Either he's winning the duel or he's not, and that's end of story. It does feel like there's more substance to what Ema is doing on the team. And as you said as well, he's getting help from the teammates. Yeah, we were able to see just in that clip right there, great use of movement, great use of angle management, great use of just understanding what the opponents are going to expect. And I think that Danny right there really nailed why Ima has been a transcendent player at this event. Right, gentlemen, the map conversation is an interesting one because uh, coming up against Heroic, it's maybe a struggle to see any path that Game Illusion can kind of get an upper hand here. What's weird about this matchup is that both of these teams like to ban Anubis. And so it's a bit concerning because we don't know, is Heroic going to be going for a float? at one point and so Vito's here they're rolling in and actually Heroic they ban yeah they ban Overpass okay. that was basically the map that Gamer Legion would have wanted to pick in most circumstances so they're forced onto Ancient which not, isn't necessarily their first pick but Heroic Pimp going with Inferno that early I thought Gamer Legion actually would have been fine playing that map too there's very few teams in the world of Counter-Strike right now who can afford to ban out one of their own best maps in the first round of bans. And it speaks strength to Heroic's map pool. We get Mirage as a potential decider. That excites me a lot. I think it's the best decider whatsoever. We saw it even Heroic beat FaZe Clan quite convincingly at that map as well. But back to the point I was trying to make here. Heroic have such a strong map pool that they're going into a major semifinal and they can allow themselves to ban one of their own strongest maps just to make sure the opponents are not feeling comfortable. And this is where we simply start the conversation about Heroic strengths coming into this match. I'm sure we've been highlighting, you know, the strengths we've seen from Game of Legion thus far, but as we were talking about, Heroic literally never played to the level of an opponent below them. It's been only, what, a handful of times we've seen Heroic this year lose out to basically anybody. I think the one that stands out was in the Blast Group stages where they lost to EG. Uh, again, how that happened, I have no idea, <laughs> but, but EG ended up winning that game, but it's also off a break. It's also yeah. coming off, you know, a, a period where you didn't play Counter-Strike whatsoever. You cannot forget for context as well that Stown took a, a prolonged week uh, of break. He wasn't with them yep. in Abu Dhabi at the World Finals, yes. so it was a, a not so great period for him. Kind of like a scheduled loss. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You'd say like that. But you're right. Like, Heroic never lose to someone they're not supposed to win against. They have a couple of losses throughout the year. One being EG. I'm just going to discredit that. It doesn't matter. Then I lost to, I think it was Vitality in Ariam Rio. Uh, lost to Big. But outside of that, they beat their opponents and they do it convincingly. Right now, to me, Heroic are, and I know I sound like a broken record because we said this before, they are the best and most consistent team we have to offer on Counter-Strike. 
Heroic are the team with the highest floor in Tier 1 CS. And that is because Kadian and company have revolutionized the meta of how CS is played today. So many teams at the end of last year, before the player break, said to themselves, how can we be a consistent Tier 1 team? How can we punch to the level of teams up there at the very top? They looked at Outsiders, they looked at G2, and they looked at Heroic. And time has told us now that it is Heroic's meta that has been adopted by so many different teams. Kadian is right now calling the best CS in the world. He is the best in-game leader in the world. It's just about whether his players will be able to contribute in that system. I know we're doing a bit of a step challenge, us talents and the players throughout this event together with the AFK episodes, but what we should do is put a step counter on Heroic when they're playing Counter-Strike, especially on the CT side. I think if you did that, Heroic is one of the teams that is moving around the most in a game of Counter-Strike, constantly doing something, constantly being proactive, constantly going somewhere to open up a space of the map, to shut down a space of the map, and always being one step ahead of their opponents. So the movement and the way they maneuver around the map is something unique for Heroic, and that's what everyone else is trying to copy. And this is where it's really interesting to kind of compare and contrast, you know, teams that we would regard as Tier 2, Tier 3, uh, obviously Game Legion in that category as well. How much do you think Shui has, you know, been mimicking, maybe making a pastiche off of his game style, his in-game leadership, uh, based off of Kadian? Because we all know that Heroic have, you know, the most distinct game style uh, in the current state of Counter-Strike. I think everyone, everyone with ambitions of being a great in-game leader right now would look towards Kadian, would look towards how Heroic play Counter-Strike. I think one thing is copying everything they do. You, you can't, you don't understand the inner workings, you don't understand why they're doing as they're doing. You have to be part of the team, a part of the inner circle. But I would say so, Maui, that if you're an in-game leader right now on the tour tier scene, you would be foolish not to be inspired by Kadian in some senses. It is easy to say that Shuhei has become a disciple and a pupil of Kadian's style. However, I think that Gamer Legion are incorporating a little bit of everything from the successful in-game leaders right now. Shuhei himself has talked about that he looks up to Kerrigan for a lot of inspiration, but you can even see shades of just kind of some un more unorthodox styles. Stuff from Eastern Europe, including even Cloud9 style. Dare I say it, I have seen Gamer Legion run strategies similar to what Cloud9 have done too. <laughs> but I will say the majority of how Gamer Legion plays is definitely off of a heroic style for framework. I think it's really interesting as well when we look at how Shui isn't afraid to also get down and dirty in the server, right? Kind of echoing Kadian's sentiment, also Carrigan as well. It's an in-game leader that isn't afraid to be putting up the firepower when his team needs to. He leads by example. I I've always said that the best thing to have in an in-game leader is a guy that is willing to go in and get the job done, either creating the space for himself or creating the space for the teammates. And Shuhei does that. He is not afraid to take the duel and he has quite successful with it. The rating of 106 at a major tournament for an in-game leader that is playing his first major ever at this stage, going so deep into the tournament. That is impressive from Shuhei. So yeah, I cannot say anything negative about what he's been able to deliver so far with Gamer Legion. It's been nothing but impressive. Flipping back to Heroic, uh, obviously, you know, we talk about them being such a well-drilled, synergized team. Uh, and we obviously, you know, we're talking about the star power of Stan shining through as well. And he's been showing that uh, so far on the stage, right? We spoke about it. Coming into 23, Stan has been a little bit quiet. He hasn't been playing up to par, but he's done that at this major. And I think that's the key to victory for Heroic. We spoke about it, they needed just one more guy to be a little bit better than just good, and that's the thing with Hero. There's no bad players, but there's only good players, and now they have two great players in Stown and in Yabi who can make the difference at all times. The fact that Stown is powered up into this major, and you compare it to what he's done at lands, the fact that he's performing above his normal land averages at this one is so needed, because Heroic, they do need that extra bit of firepower. They needed to show at this event that it's not just the system, because the system, even though it serves Heroic so well, in those big games, you need people to step up because the systems can get countered. Sometimes your plan A and plan B do fail and you need an individual to win a clutch, to get a multi-frag, and Stown has proven at this event that he can do that. I mean, so far, we haven't seen heroic systems faltering though, right? Shush was a name that you were saying, you know, you want to put under the microscope more because I feel like he really is, you know, the unsung hero uh, for the side of the Danes. Shush is just one of the stable pillars of this heroic lineup. It feels like he's never creating a losing condition for heroic despite frequently playing on extremities, despite the fact that he's playing some of the hardest bomb sites to anchor. It's Shush that is looking very strong in terms of just making sure that the system doesn't crumble because playing in a heroic system that is all about gambling, all about stacking on one side, all about being proactive, you do need a foundational element, a keystone in order to support the rest of the moving pieces that are moving on heroic. And Shush has been that guy for me. Well, we've been talking a lot about the strengths of heroic. So I want to see if you guys put your money where your mouth is in our unicorn predictions. Has anybody gone with Game Allegiant? Oh yeah, we've got some standard. Of course, the mad man of Anders now actually following along with him. But across the board, we're expecting the Danes, right? 
You'd be a fool not to, yeah. to be completely honest. Yeah. Heroic have looked like a, a world-class team throughout this tournament. They look like the best team in the world right now, together with Vitality. And all the respect to Gamer Legion, we spoke about it. They haven't beat anyone within the top 10 for quite some time. So going from playing good Counter-Strike, going from playing Counter-Strike above what they normally do to beat a team like Heroic on this stage in a semi-final, that's tough for Gamer Legion. I will say, though, all these games, they live their own life. So it's not impossible that we're seeing a competitive game. It's not impossible we see Gamer Legion perhaps put pressure on towards Heroic, but there's nothing statistically Statistically speaking, there's nothing historically speaking. There's basically no yeah. arguments I can come up with for why Heroic should lose this game. And, and with the veto and the way that Heroic played in it, banning out Overpass when they had that option to ban, you know, what basically Gamer Legion's best map, yeah. that's why it also shifts a little bit more heavily into Heroic's favor. In some ways, I actually think if Gamer Legion played Vitality, they'd have a better chance. Even though both of those are such heavy favorites, I just think that Heroic style on top of it, like, they're just not going to get caught off. They're the ones that are going to catch Gamer Legion off guard. And that's something that is, for yeah. Tier 1 teams, really held them back at this event. That's why we've seen so many upsets, because people like G2, people like FaZe, they like to play back so much. And that's when people like Shuhei are just in their bag. They're crafting up a good strategy, mm -hmm. because people like Kerrigan and Hooksy, they weren't calling to disrupt. But Kadian is a master of disruption. He's always making things so uncomfortable for the opposing team. I mean, Vitality, they were the last top 10 team the Gamer Legion beat, but that was, yeah, seven months ago. So the story, not looking so hot for Game Legion. But man, they've had a lot of fans in the arena. Uh, we saw yesterday, obviously, Kios hailing from the French scene. He's graced the lineups, you know, LDLC, yeah. Falcons. Uh, Shui learned some French as well to kind of gas up the crowd. I think there's two sides to it. One thing is being Kios, of course. He's making these guys jump for him, not only <laughs> with his uh, Belgian roots and the fact that he speaks French, but also the fact that he's been playing well so far this tournament. Three of Kios' best land performances of all time in his entire career has been at this major. That in itself speaks volumes to how much he's overperforming as well compared to what we normally see. I'm sure these guys are going to root for Kios because Vitality would love for Gamer Legion to beat Heroic. And if I know one thing about what they're going to do, they're going to boo Heroic. Yeah. Everybody is choosing them <laughs> to be their villains, and that's exactly the ovation, or what should I say booing that's going to come out when they're actually walking out You there. can't win every crowd, but apparently Heroic can't win any crowd. No, uh, no, not even, not even, in, even in Denmark. Denmark. Not yeah. even in Denmark. Well, uh, it truly is dual time time. We are ready for our first semi-final to get underway, so it's time to welcome the teams into the arena. Acor Arena. And to all of the Counter-Strike fans around the world watching wherever you may be. This is the semi-finals day for the last CSGO major ever. And yesterday, the winners came through of Game Allegiant and Apex and they put up one hell of a fight. But now the toughest test stands for both of these teams. Are you ready for some great Counter-Strike? <laughs> you sound really ready and I'm excited to see it. Now that trophy, that trophy placed on the front there, that is what these teams are fighting for. And today we will discover which two teams remain. Yes, you can say Heroic or Vitality are favored in this, but the favorites have not always been winning so far here in Paris. Now, for anyone who is watching at home as well, you can jump in on Blast.tv and watch in 4K and with no adverts as well. And also, for our show match taking place tomorrow, you can get yourself a chance of banning a map in the final veto part. And also choosing some of the players you want to see in the show match. I'm pretty sure you guys want to have a say in which players will be taking part in that show match, that's for sure. But are we ready to see our first teams? No, 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 come on, Paris. Are you ready? <laughs> That's more like it. It's time for our first semi-final game. It's time to see Heroic take on Game Allegiant. Well, come with me one more time, guys. And bring the hype! Let's go!
Gamer Legion. Isaac, don't doubt him. He never gets tilted, never desperate for frags. And he doesn't just play for stats, he plays for the team. He's delivering in his role, and now he's gone into a semi-final at a major. Immer, the most exciting prospect coming out of the major. He's put up numbers that go beyond the best players in the world. He has been set up for success and delivered on the biggest stage of his career. Shuhei, nurtured in the Academy League. He was destined to be next. He got a taste for what the championship mentality requires, and it was instilled in him. Now he must go pound for pound and round for round with one of the greats that could seal his fate. Acor, reaching his peak major performance and going deeper than ever before. The senior of the roster has stayed precise, even in the most chaotic matches. Here, he will have to do it with all of the opportunity given to him, but he cannot miss. Kios! With the crowd on his side and a smile on his face, he has never felt so good. He has never looked so good, putting up his best numbers on land since 2019. Home field advantage or just a hype up lad with a dream? Either way, Kios has been unleashed in Paris. Let me hear it for Gamer Legion! and they don't care about your booze. Yabi, less than one year on the team, he's elevated and developed his skills far beyond the flames, fitting into a core team that has always got his back, knowing that he can trust and believe in the heroic way. Shush, in a similar fashion, this addition to the core has excelled and opened up, being anything but mad from a lion to a hero. He offers up the greatest support whenever they call for him. Cadian, the journeyman, the hero of his own story. He wears his heart on his sleeve and gives everything to his team, everything to this game. He is the leader that always brings out the best in his players, but you better be ready to work for it. Stown, taken to the stage in Paris, he's shown that he's ready to deliver his best ever major performance. He understands what awaits him and he understands what he can do for his team. Now is the time for him to be the real frag star. Tessez, the final core member of this epic roster. He has never backed down from a challenge. He has answered Cadian's calls always with no fear in his eyes. And as long as he believes, you better apprehend that there's still hope. Make some noise for Heroic! Heroic story is one that many teams envy, but
they still want to lift that major trophy. And for them, they have not fallen to an underdog just yet. But could it now be the time? These games have been tough for many of the teams. These games have shown us that the experience only matters on the day. Exist, Ash, they're joining me on the stage. And Ash, this is your toughest challenge yet by far. How did you get the guys ready for this? How did you prepare for this kind of a game? Parlez-vous uh, français? Uh-oh. No, no, you're English, mate. You can talk to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I guess uh, these guys are probably the hardest team out of anyone we've ever prepared for. It's, I think it's kind of testament the way they play. They're, they're clearly really good at what they do. And it's going to be a tough one for sure. And how do you plan to get under their skin? How do you plan to throw them off? They don't get upset, it seems. Well, we'll give it our best. We've, we've got our own game plan. We'll just try to stick to it, and hopefully it's enough. And how proud are you just of your team so far to be on this stage, to be so many inexperienced players who've been able to deliver in such a big way? Oh, I'm unbelievably proud. It's, it's just amazing the things we've done. We've, we believe in ourselves, and hopefully this isn't the end of the road for us, and we just want to keep going. One game at a time, we're going to give it everything we've got. That's what it's all about. Now, Exist, underdogs have had a lot of success so far in this major, but you guys, you've not fallen to them. You've done very well when it comes to it. Why is it for Heroic that you can do that? Well, I mean, I think like this, this like Taiwan CS, you need to be very careful with that. I think uh, there's only a, a, a few tier one teams, a few elite teams out there right now. So, but I mean, Game Legion and uh, Apex, for example, they're two good, they're really good teams, and they've uh, they're on an upswing lately. So, looking forward to it. And when you've been preparing for Game Legion, what have you noticed that's different to some of the elite teams you're usually facing? I mean, that's the thing. We don't really prepare uh, any different from if we would play like Navi or, or Face, right? It's okay. still a very good team, and we do as we normally do, and, and that's it. But is there much difference in Game of Legion compared to the other best teams you normally face? I would say like the biggest difference is that we're not used to playing them that much. If okay. we play like Face, we already have a game plan, right? Yeah. Now it requires maybe we need to watch a little bit extra, you know, because we don't play them on a regular basis. But I, right. I would say like in-game stuff, it's, it's mostly the same. I, I'd say most teams. They're very similar. Okay, well, let's see how it goes. Guys, shake hands, take your position. It's time for our opening semi final matchup. Exist seems to think he has the answers. They seem to think they've got the plan. But Game of Legion, they've been doing it time and time again. And they certainly have this crowd on their side. Guys, one last time before we go into this game, make some noise! <laughs> David versus Goliath, the Titans versus the underdog. But turns out the French connection of Kios Jacob makes him the only hero in this arena. Beautiful scenes in that intro. I think by Vitality, they get it. The Hive, they get it. You know, they want to make sure that Heroic is getting a tough game. They want to make sure that Heroic is being put under a lot of pressure. And if there's some way, somehow, that they can contribute to Gamer Legion taking down Heroic before they potentially meet Vitality in a final, I think they'll do everything they can in the crowd in order to intimidate Kadian and the boys. I will say, though, that the way Kadian and Heroic uh, conducted themselves in Brazil at the IM Rio semi-final against FURIA. That's probably 10 times what they're experiencing today, so I doubt <laughs> it'll have any effect whatsoever. They're literally the villains anywhere yeah. that they go. They're used to receiving booze. You can just see Kadian lapping it on up. He's like, come on, boys, give they it up. They thrive with that. They thrive with that. You know, they use that as fuel. They use it as energy. Yeah, it's become, it's become a villain arc for Kadian there. It's a villain era that they have instilled. And really, what happened at Rio, I think that Kadian tried playing the crowd over a little bit. You know, he brought the Brazilian flag out and they were like nah <laughs> nah we see right through that Canadian <laughs> and so he doesn't even go for it doesn't try to actually pander to the French crowd said in an HL TV interview he said we're just gonna play and we're just gonna win so that's what I expect here today and that's exactly what they have been doing so far and pretty much every playoffs we see them gracing throughout 2023 I, I love that we got to hear a few words from exist because we were chatting to get right just yesterday up here on the desk we were talking about you know the emotional scenes of, uh, of NIP lifting their first and only major trophy exist was right Right on beside him, Jacob. It will be an incredible feat to see him lifting a trophy for the first time as a as a coach. That'll be that'll be incredible. I, I think when they first brought in Exist, we were all questioning what what can Exist add to this heroic squad. I think the reason why he was brought in is that he's very calm. Uh, he's never been outspoken in that regard. He's never been a 
a guy that, you know, walks into a stage and, and takes over the show. You gotta have the spotlight on Kaden, and I think Kaden loved that. I think he loves the fact that he have a calm coach behind him that sometimes can help him to just calm down a little bit. And I think the value Exist has brought to Heroic cannot go underrated. Sometimes all it takes really with a coach is just bringing someone with a championship pedigree. And the fact that Exist was part of that legendary 82-0 squad with NIP, and the fact that he has won his own major title can be the, uh, the second coach who has won a major title both as a player and as a coach following in the footsteps of devil walk you know that exists is going to be gunning for it but i think that really the brain of the operation is still kadian for mm. heroic uh, and that's where it becomes really interesting to compare and contrast both of these teams obviously we've had the conversation you know about shui really showing up some incredible t side calling particularly on their hometown map of overpass won't be seeing it in this series you know rightfully so for uh, heroic to be banning that one out and it's going to be interesting to see if shui can bring it up to the Big guns because this is an intimidating, very proactive team to be facing on the server. This is without a doubt the biggest game Gamer Legion perhaps will ever play in their career. Yeah. That's, that's a fact we have to acknowledge. It's not given that they're ever going to make it to a major semi-final again, whether that's in CSGO or in CS2 or wherever they're going to end up. This could be the one chance they have at making a dent into it. It could be the one chance they have at making one of the biggest upsets ever, which would be Gamer Legion going into the grand final of a major. Shui as a rifler, he's aggressive, he's proactive. I like the way he's playing. I like the way he's productive on the server. So yes, I think he stands a chance of actually giving it up and putting up a fight against Kadian. The way I would pit them against each other is that Shuhei, to me, has has risen up to be the best in-game leader that is in Tier 2. But Kadian is the best in-game leader in Tier 1, and then, by therefore, you would say he's the best in-game leader in the world. Shuhei has shown such promise, such ability. They have still the best 4v5 win percentage at the Major, and they are rookies to this stage of the Major. They have played the Challenger stage. It didn't go well for them at Rio, but they have learned from that. They have built, they have worked through that online meat grinder, and they have shown that you can sharpen any single team to become world class through that rigor. And it's kind of crazy, you know, obviously we saw them gracing the stage just yesterday in that game versus Monty. I love that we got to see them, you know, potentially shaking off any nerves that might be there, considering for most of them, this is the first time that they ever made it to a major playoffs. And we saw Ima really shining bright. Going to be an interesting comparison between him and Stan coming into this one to see who is the real star in this Yeah, server. the two riflers, the two difference makers on, on each of their team. Ima, the way he was playing yesterday was absolutely fantastic. If he can just be half as good against Heroic on the stage today, that could be a very interesting matchup. I think the key for me when you look towards Gamer Legion today compared to yesterday is that there is no expectations whatsoever. The fact that they are in the semi-final already is a victory in itself and no one, absolutely no one expects them to beat Heroic, let alone take a map from Heroic. So today in this game they can go in and they can play free and I know it's a cheesy card to play but sometimes that elevates teams of the caliber of Gamer Legion. And sometimes it actually just puts the pressure on to Heroic. Certainly. We've, we've seen Heroic crumble only a few times this year, losing to G2, Vitality, Na'Vi in big games. But really, we've already talked about the fact that they don't really lose to underdogs, but this is a game that's just so obviously handed to them on a silver platter. They should be looking at Ancient and saying, we cornered them in this veto. We pushed them to a map that they haven't picked in a first phase for at least three weeks. They haven't picked it at least in the majors at, at all. And so for Heroic, the prep has paid off for them. They're looking like this is a matchup that should really just elevate them to that Grand Finals where they will eventually meet a likely Vitality. And that's where I really trust Heroic coming into this one. We can hear teams saying, yeah, we're going to be playing our own game. We're not underestimating our opponents. But Heroic show that time and time again. They respect any opposition they're playing, and we know they will have been putting in the prep work coming into this one. I spoke to the performance coach later today, or earlier today, sorry, about how they prepared for it, and he said we do it like we always do it against everyone. It doesn't matter if it's Vitality, it doesn't matter if it's Gamer Legion, doesn't matter if they're playing Complexity or someone from NA who sucks. Heroic <laughs> will always prepare the same for every single team and they'll always give them the respect that I think Gamer Legion so far have deserved and demanded in this tournament. The way they've been playing, if Heroic is not respecting that, that's the first mistake. There, I mean, there's even though Exist didn't really talk about specific yeah. prep for Gamer Legion, they already beat him in the veto. Like, I mean, you're showing it right there. You can't really sandbag that kind of comment when you're actually already defeating them at that stage. So. Maui, we spoke about Ancient already. You were saying, you know, uh, Game of Legion were certainly going to be cornered uh, in this veto. Why do you think Heroic, you know, could potentially have the upper hand coming into this one? Is there anything Game of Legion might have been looking at saying, hey, we could potentially take advantage of this? 
Well, I think that really any map that isn't Overpass, Shuhei just has a little bit more difficulty calling on. I think that's something that has been really drilled for him in Gamer Legion. I will say that one thing that I've loved about Gamer Legion is that I think that their nade usage, along with Apex's on the other side of that se that other semifinal, I think it's actually a step ahead of some of the Tier 1 teams. And so even though I've got Heroic as a very strong favorites here on map number one, there are these little bits of efficiency that I think that Gamer Legion are exhibiting and using to their advantage where some of the Tier 1 teams are maybe throwing an extra nade early in a round. They're sometimes going for a spam that's maybe a little bit outdated by Tier 2 metrics. And a lot of teams right now are looking at this Major, they're seeing a team like Gamer Legion, and they're saying, we're doing things better. We're doing things better than Tier 1 teams. It's just that we don't have the personnel to actually get us there. And Gamer Legion, they've shown now that they actually do have some of the personnel that have stepped up. Ema, Kioz, Acor, all of them looking at, like they are in career form right now. And so even though, on paper, the players are so much better for Heroic, Gamer Legion is punching up right now, and they're doing it with potentially a better tactical uh, structure behind them. I can't, I can't say anything against that, I'm not gonna lie. I'm struggling to find an argument as to why Gamer Legion should win this game. Yeah. You know, the way they've been playing so far has been fantastic, but it has been against teams who are not the same caliber as it works. So mm. once again, I guess we just have to sit back down and, you know, watch how it's gonna unfold. And let me make it abundantly clear on this one, right? If you play this game 10 times on this stage, I would say Heroic win 10 times. But if you play it 11 times, there's a chance that Gamer Legion would win one out of those 11. So if you're a Gamer Legion fan right now, you just need to hope that this is that 11th game. Well, if this major has proved anything, we never know what is gonna be happening in this arena. And it's time to put the answers to that question. We have ancient we have Inferno, we have Mirage. If we do so need it, it's time to get this semi-final underway. Oh, Jason, I just want to take a moment and just sort of soak it all in, the joy, the celebration of Counter-Strike. We are ready with the first semi-final here in Paris. How do you feel on this fine day? Oh, I'm, I'm ready for an upset. I'm, re I'm ready for a surprise. That's, I, th I think this entire major has just conditioned us to be expecting and ready for the unexpected, right? It's been absolutely crazy. I mean, if you think about this too, Heroic as a team that we feel like has never really been upset, they've been immune to it. Well, Ema on Gamer Legion has been the best player in the major thus far. Let's get it on! Opening map is going to be on Ancient, and we have got Gamer Legion versus Heroic. A semi-final to decide who goes to the grand final. Heroic, obvious favorites. Definitely look like the better team, but Gamer Legion, they've surprised the whole way through. And look at Heroic already throwing in a couple of tricks here, Jason. They're actually pushing Tessis and Kadian out, and this is so early on. This kind of a push usually slows down, usually wait around, but they're just going to keep on going. Kadian ready to turn the corner and start with a kill here in the semi-finals. Take it now, Kios, and he deletes Imma as well. And the game is up right now. Gamer Legion, they just have to go for the B-bomb side right here. The game's not up, the game's over. Sound's got another one as well. Isaac with the rebuttal, but again, that flank is going to come in. Shui and Isaac have to fight their way out of this, and at this point, maybe the plant is all they can get. Two versus four, but another kill makes it just three, oh, and no. now two. They missed so many shots, what's happened? Kadian trying to see if he can recover for his team. He's gonna get the kill on Isaac. And it leaves Suhei here. One versus two, the captain of the team, but he's gonna get shot down. Kadian with the triple kill, but that almost got out of hand. Yeah, well, that did get out of hand. What a great, great job from Kadian and Tessas to pull that one back. Three kills on Kadian. Now you gotta wonder what happens if he doesn't get those initial two kills on the flank. More than anything, though, obviously a very bold call tactically for this kind of a push. But as we know, Kadian likes to set the tone. Kadian likes to play an emotional metagame as well. And he's letting you know they're not gonna be scared to push. They're not gonna be scared to push up and throw things at you that you're not expecting, that you're not ready for, that might not always feel like the best idea, but still gonna catch you off guard. Yeah, it's such a risk. But then again, I mean, playing it passively on the CT side of this map could also in itself be a risk, right? If you keep two on A, one in middle, two at the B bomb side, and they do what they were going to do, which is basically an all in on the B bomb side, you're trying to defend two versus five for a minute there. So it might just be worth it. Two Galils, one Tech Nine. Oh, nice grenade that lands on them before they even get anything really underway. Stown put under some pressure here, but he's handling things all right at the beginning of it, at least. Immer, though, coming back, and he sprays three of them down. That is a massive way to get back into it. He's crouching forward, doesn't even reload. Just nine bullets left in that magazine. If someone was gonna come through here, shush. Oh, actually, Ima, is he gonna go through? He's waiting for it on the other side. There we go, but he doesn't quite check it, and Shush will take him down. He didn't need to do that. He didn't need to do that. He's opened up the opportunity for Heroic, two on two. There's no kits, though. Oh, Kios falls next. And it's Acor, a Deagle, all that remains, and tucks himself in, and now Shush has picked up a kit. He's got plenty of time for this. And that's a quick shot from Yabby. 
and the defuse is in. Some very tight rounds at the beginning here. That's gotta be scary for Heroic knowing that, you know, they almost could have lost both of these rounds, but at least they should have a little bit of a, of a chance of doing some more here. Jabby, very low on health at the end of it. They'll pick up two M4s to bring into the next round. Third one is coming up. With that much damage and with a bomb plant, do you just force it here if you're Gamer Legion? Do you just I, say, yeah, I think hell with it? I mean, I, I'm not going to argue against the idea, right? What they're going to do is drop down and they're still going to buy. Going to be a half buy. Mac 10 coming out, Tech 9's coming in out, so not throwing everything at the wall. But bringing some elements of danger to keep limiting that economy. Look, that should have been a one round for Gamer Legion. That should have been. Ima, despite the incredible three opening kills that he gets to put him in a good position, throws one away coming through that smoke. Not necessary. He's going to have to pull himself back out. They rinse and repeat. B rush. And Tessas can't land any of the shots, but Stown is there in cave doing all the work. Oh man, they got so deep onto the bomb site, and yet they weren't really able to do anything. They even had the Molotov down in front of Stown, so that probably should have been the end of him. Kios now. A little bit more damage here would be good, but it's not going to be possible. Heroic, close to losing the last previous rounds here, but now all five members surviving. And if they're dropping low on health there, it's not going to make a difference. 3 and 0 for the favorites to begin the semi-final with. Yeah, and that, that puts away a lot of danger from all the losses in the second round, right? All, all five people survive. Heroic probably thought that was going to be a buy round regardless, but this is three rounds in a row that Gamer Legion has attacked that B bomb site. Heroic's now shut him down each and every time. So with the AKs out on the board, this should get a bit more normalized, more towards mid control, more spread out, more standard, you know, lane control as well outside of the B site. And let's see what Gamer Legion can do there. Yeah, they're going to have the AWP on A-Call. You know that should be able to make the difference. Not that it's necessarily going to be easy. Orping T-Side and opening it up this map. It's a lot of choke points that you can get caught in. Some spray through the smoke. Really standard stuff here. Am I going to evacuate behind the Molotov? Doesn't really want to stick around for it. Early mid control for Heroic, which also leaves that A-Bomb side undefended. And this is where the homework and the research really comes in. If you're Gamer Legion, do you read this setup? Do you have a feeling that maybe Heroic are just not even at the A-Bomb side at all? I mean, what you what you got to be nice, happy about if you're Gamer Legion, look at all the utility they have and then contrast that. Oh, there's the aggression from Kadian. Once again, Heroic showing a little bit of boldness in these pushes. Now the defense is going to sink back towards A. However, the nades could be an issue. The nades could be a problem because it's full sets across the board for Gamer Legion, and it's very light due to that mid-control from Heroic. Yeah, Sue here hanging around outside of the B-bomb site. He throws in a flashbang again just to keep them honest, to keep people on this side. Jabby and Kadian, they are feeling a little bit lonesome over on that A-bomb site. The rotations right now are so far away. Sue is actually going to get caught. Oh, no, that's a little bit of an issue. Shush takes him down. Yeah, he, he reads this. He knows what is coming next. The flash, the smoke is up, but it's a four versus five. They can afford. They don't have to fight to the death right now. They can go for the retake instead. And I think that's what they're trying to do. Tessus will get blown up, though. Acor landing his first kill of the semifinal. And it is a four on four. And with that much damage on Kadian, now actually heroic. They're in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, massive issue, especially with this angle from Acor. No smoke in the choke point, so the sniper is able to take complete control and advantage of the situation. And I think Heroic's calling the save. Already backing off towards middle, they want nothing to do. And again, it comes down to nades at the end of the day. Nice clean entrance into the A bomb site, but with no flashbangs, no smokes, no nothing to get back in for the retake. Heroic call it off to preserve the money. And it's the right call to make. So first round for Gamer Legion on the board, and now they've just got to protect the guns. Yeah, that blast radius is really huge on the map. If people don't know, it's really often that people die in this one. In fact, Acor will end up blowing up. They're going to be able to save the AWP, and they will take out Shush at the end. So it wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. Now, one little micro thing that occurs, too. We saw the play that Shush tries to make through the smoke. That gets punished. Heroic was ready for that. One person watching the smoke, one sperm spamming the magazine. And Shui gets caught unawares trying to take advantage of a reload. We'll keep our eyes on that battle. Three to one for Heroic. And a timeout is taken. A pause in the action as Heroic wants to talk things over. And typically when you take middle that aggressively as Heroic was doing, it does mean at a minimum, you're gonna have probably one defender and he will be towards that donut position. So a good read for Gamer Legion, probably something that they've talked through beforehand. And because Heroic did after all lose a fair few rifles at the beginning, they just didn't want to go for that uh, four versus four retake. Low on health as well, I can't really blame them for it. 
Round number five is coming up in Game of Legion. The fact that they announced themselves early on. Again, if you're the underdog team, you really don't want to go really far behind. Like, you want a chance early on to claim some rounds in the opening half. Yeah, and they already had one missed opportunity in, in round number two where they could have actually turned it for Mima. So they've, they've let that one kind of slip out of their hands. And now it's about grinding this out and getting some kind of an advantage moving forward into the half. Round five, back in play. Off in both hands of or both teams, Acor and Katie, and each with one. And again, more slow pace, less bodies towards the B bomb site than how Gamer Legion opened this half. Yeah, that in itself could be such an interesting battle. I'd love to see Acor versus Katie, and I'm sure Acor's going to be feeling really, really confident in that fight if it ever comes up. Shush just inside of the A bomb site, feeling a bit lonesome once again. Yeah, he's going to get tested, though. He was tested in the previous round as well. The only player here, Yabi's the closest, and he's in up over in Red Room towards middle, so he's quite far away from any kind of a rotation if Shush gets in towards trouble. And any mistake against Acor's op could spell his death. Yabi smoked off is now going to shift back to provide that support. But it's all about this op. Oh, and it's got the pick. It's got the opening. Yeah, Molotov to control the peak on the other side, so he only has really one angle to cover there. And Jabby is thinking about it, you know, do I actually want to go for this? He will, but Acor absolutely blows him up. Five versus three. Another save. It's already yeah. called. They're backing Instantly. off. This is cool from Gamer Legion. Back-to-back -back rounds. They exploit the A-bomb site. A light defense. And that's... That's on the back of going fast B, the first three rounds. Like, it was just, oh, I mean, one round away, they were forced to do it. But the other two, they really just went for it. And, and now they're exploiting this part of the map. And that angle as well, Acor's gotten two picks. And that's something Heroic's going to have to know as they rotate over when that A bomb site is under attack. Gamer Legion is actually moving into this bomb site without a smoke in that choke point. They're more than happy to just post up the opper and give him a chance, give him an angle to find a pick. And Acor finds both of them. Two kills. And it's three to two. Money's still good due to the saving from Heroic. But Gamer Legion closing the gap, keeping this close early. Yeah, now this is interesting, right? Because if Gamer Legion continue to find success at the A bomb site, it's likely Heroic will have to loosen up on the mid defense, which for Suhei will open up the, the book, right? I mean, suddenly he can, there's so many cool strats on this map where you can push into the red room, you can actually split the bomb, the whole map up into two and basically go towards CT spawn from that position. So. I'm sure if this keeps up, then Game of Legion will actually just have more strategies to fall back on eventually. We'll see how long they keep trying to press the issue over at the A bomb site. Already, Shush there a little bit forward this time. He really wants to make sure there are no fast plays happening. And Kadian is nearby to listen as well in the donut position. But yeah, they're a little bit more lax on the middle this time around. But beautiful work from Game of Legion at the beginning. This is exactly what you want to see. Three-man take of the middle on their side. Yeah, and more importantly, just watching them contend, watching them hang in there, watching them come back in some of these rounds, find openings in some of these rounds, and Yabby might be the one in trouble, but you can see the change in the defense with Kadian over in Donut, one player in Red Room. You even have Shush defending the eight bomb site, so plenty of bodies to deal with this. Yeah, spam through that. It's a little bit late. No one's on the other side. Yabby's just waiting patiently. He hasn't moved an inch from that position, hoping that someone's going to give him the cue. But nothing happening yet. Kadian has smoked off in the donut position, and actually, it looks like they might go while that smoke is still up in the middle. 50 seconds left here. Great piece of utility over at B, though. They defensively smoke off the ramp, and look at the shift while this smoke is up. They have about, what, 17 seconds to make it work as they rotate over. Now three defenders at the B bomb site. This is perfectly called from Heroic so far. And another smoke to land on top. That's going to burn all of the time. There'll be 20 seconds left by that time that smoke disappears. If your Gamer Legion waiting for that is a nightmare, and they don't even want to do it, they say, okay, this might also be a risk, but at least we're not going to be running through the smoke. Let's try Kadian's and see if we can off. rotate back. It's not, the, it's not a bad move right now. Kadian, he's the only one here. Shush is coming in from CT spawn. He's going to get shut down. They should have known that something was up, but they just weren't ready for it. Shush, good shot onto Kiosk, but the bomb is still in the hands of Suhei. Oh, they're going to run right into it. Even with the spray down, he mows them all right down. And it's Tessa's on his own with absolutely nothing to do. What a ridiculous setup. That is the best player at the event delivering high impact in the semifinals. That's got to feel good if you're Gamer Legion. Your star player has shown up to play. I can't believe it. Again, you mentioned it earlier how there was no smoke. I think when Yabby earlier made the crossing this time, no flashes to set anything up with, right? They just run in, and it, it's, it's a huge choke point, so they just get bunched up on top of each other. Tessa's here, trying to do a little bit at the end of the round. Emma's pretty far away from the blast zone, and even Tessa's will not be allowed to escape. Gamer Legion, they tie up the game. 
and make it a 3-3. Yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna make a, they're gonna they're gonna force an awkward decision out of Heroic. kadian has got 7,800, everyone else is dirt poor. So they're gonna have to figure out what they wanna buy. They can throw an op on Kadian just for the risk with some upgraded pistols around him, but this is a beautiful triple spray down. On the transition back, there he is, the tank. Yeah, he's in the arena, a legend of the game was before CSGO even came out. That man deserves thunderous applause. RPK in the house. And Acor lined up at the bottom of ramp. Well, this is awkward. Good little boost to try and get the early kill there, but the fact is, Heroic are kind of getting pushed around on the map here. Once the rifles are in play, Gamer Legion starts to look a bit more confident. They don't have any pressure on them in this round. They know the heroic economy is not going to be very good. And they know that that orb isn't play now. Even a little bit of a gift, you don't even lose a player to it. You just hear the shot ring out across the map. And you're going to be aware. You can see Immer is making sure nobody's pushing over on this side. They are giving a little bit of space here for heroic to make a mistake. But a luxury, Jason, if you get three people this deep into the tunnels at B, I mean, you that's... As yep. close as you can get to winning around without firing even a shot. Well, Ima's gonna get some attention again. He's hearing footsteps on the flank. He's gonna call it out. First kill is his. Wraps around for middle. Can't spin in time. But this shouldn't be any kind of an effort from Heroic. This will be another save as the AWP is just too valuable. Bomb has been planted. The AK-47 on Yabby as well. So Heroic still playing the money game as they got locked out of another bomb site. And Gamer Legion is gonna take a lead. Four in a row for the underdogs. Yeah, this has been a terrific start, truly. Acor getting a couple of important shots, but obviously Imma with uh, some of those triples that he has landed already, that is gonna put you just over the edge. And now just Heroic looking for an exit if they can. Steal a rifle, anything that you can grab your hands on right now. It's he side of Ancient, so quite the interesting scenario that's unfolding here. We get far away from the bomb. And nobody dies to it this time. One round lead, Jason. One round. It's pretty crazy to see him get here, though. That's a little bit of a shock of its own, but Gamer Legion keeps surprising throughout this whole event. A second time out burn from Heroic heading into round number eight. They need to have a conversation quickly because the defense is starting to get overrun and in multiple parts of the map. At the B-bomb site, in middle they've been challenged. They haven't been able to stop Gamer Legion, and obviously A has been a massive weakness. Yeah, and you would love to see Heroic try and do what they did in the pistol round, which is push up. But again, that's not a strategy you can just default to every time. That's sort of an ace up the sleeve kind of round where you say, okay, well, they already used it in the pistol, right? That risk so they're is gonna too be much. Win. Yeah. Well, we even saw Kadian get a little frisky down mid in a, in a round earlier. Fa flashbanged into a peak deep. But he's got the op now, so he's staying a bit further back. More than anything, you touched on it. Gamer Legion's been able to get map control in different portions for free and really lean on it, really use it as leverage to punish Heroic's defense. A very small contingent of Heroic fans making their voices heard inside the Acor Arena. Javi pushing forward, that was his opportunity right there, but Sui takes him down instead oh, and through oh. the smoke. Emma breaking Shush apart. Hadian and Stown left. It's just the first beginnings of the round here. And even Kios on a flanking mission. Stown, he's kind of aware, but it's not going to make any difference at all. Great headshot. Heroic getting hunted across the map. Gamer Legion, they're just they're breaking open this first half completely in their favor. Yeah, they're getting absolutely busted, Heroic. This is rough. What a good sequence from Gamer Legion. And that is a switch up in the defense as well. That's out of the timeout, going for a little bit of aggression, trying to get some advanced positions to deny map control, and they're punished all across the board. And Cadian's just got to be left trembling, trying to save this up. Stepping forward for a little bit of trickery to keep the Wolves at bay. Yeah, this is something that he does really well, Kadian. Keeping people guessing. They are kind of aware. Leg shot as well, and he's going to get hunted down. There is no escape. Isaac to get the last one. And the fist bump's coming out now. Gamer Legion, they love life at the moment. I don't think many people thought Gamer Legion were going to be able to make the semi final at all, but to show up on a day like this, hot out the gate, putting pressure on Heroic right from the beginning. Scoreline is 5 to 3 as Gamer Legion go on a bit of a streak here, five in a row. 
It's a very young team showing a very impressive level up on this stage. The inexperience we always talk about as a factor, it's not showing yet. And you gotta give props over to Shui, the 20-year-old in-game leader of Gamer Legion, really working this map well at the moment. Five in a row now for Gamer Legion's attack. And Heroic yet with a response, with a rebuttal, with a stop of any kind. We talked a lot about Kadian's leadership skills, and I think for good reason. He really is the engine that's going to drive this team forward, and they need him now. But Sui as well. The, the fact that he's brought them here is wild. Stan smoked off in the middle now, and they're going to be gravitating back to the B-bombs. They're so unpredictable. They're, they are, they're winning fights everywhere, Jason, so the whole book is open, and they can yeah. do whatever they want. Yeah, we're not seeing that sole player at the A-bomb I mean, Yabby's close by over, and Donut Shush has some options if he gets a kill off this boost. And now, oh my God. look at the weakness Gamer Legion is finding again. Moving and rotating around the map. Heroics still have no idea what's coming. Heroics alone. Kadian is alone defending this bomb site, and he's going to get aggressive through the smoke. One shot, but that's it. Yeah, they know by the time that they're on the bomb site, and that's too little, too late. Acor's gonna find a kill there, and a smoke going up. Shush and Tessas, I mean, you could if you find this kill, no try to way. risk it. Flashed on through. Suhei trying to hunt down Tessas. That is so aggressive, but the fact that he's solo on health, even if he doesn't win the fight, how can he get back into the retake here? He's got the only kid as well. If he gets taken down by Kios, it's all over. Yeah, you're exactly right. Shush gonna be walking in. He could be the guy to open it up, but the truth is, you're right. That Diffuse kit is worth the entire round at the moment, and he might not even be really trying for this one. Flash to set it up, a little bit of a peek. Kiosk good for the kill, and now the kit has been lost and shushed in the crossfire. He'll go down. Kiosk and Acor with a double kill each in Gamer Legion, marching on in this opening half. Bro, this is looking easy. This is looking way too easy for Gamer Legion. This is incredible. They're finding all the weak spots. Yeah, they're calling it. Finding the empty A bomb sites early, and just hitting that until it starts to hurt. And then when Heroic are a little bit pressured, they go towards middle, they go towards the A-bomb site, and they show up at B just when they need to. And because they've been punished so much, Heroic is really kind of holding back conservatively in these mid-rounds of finding that information. They have no idea what's coming. Gamer Legion playing a real clean game in these last six rounds straight. They absolutely are, and the pressure is on Heroic now once again. Back to pistols. You would love a miracle round here where you pick up one with just the five sevens and eagles. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Gamer Legion about to be at seven rounds if they can dodge the eagles. Emma, Ooh, actually, usually that spray that he's really, really good at, but this time he's going to get bested a little bit with the five seven. It's all right. Isaac's holding onto the bomb side. Everyone else is streaming in. The real oh, the question is down on the flank. Shui could catch him. This is huge. Timing is everything. He knows someone's likely going to come from behind, but he could find Acor, and he will before certainly falling to Shui. But no, what? not at all. What a turn with the MP9, and it's all come crumbling down. Kios left and can't handle it. The burst of a lifetime there for Stown. I can't believe he just kept jiggling back and forth and just sending out little pellets to hit Sui at the end of it. That was the that was the round that they needed so badly. That's losing six in a row and Heroic making it back with a good flank and some really impressive work here for Stown. This first kill is basically for free, but the follow-up one is way harder to get. Oh my god. And this time, it's almost like the boldness of having those pistols allowed Heroic to get to jump on some of those flanks, right? Stown making that bold play, pushing up middle, wrapping around very quickly. First time out called for Gamer Legion. They don't want to let this slip away. They've done such a good job. They have so much money. Kia's at 14,000 before the buy. They've got multiple rounds of buys before they run out of funds. So Heroic's going to have to do this a hard way. Time to plant their feet, go on a run of their own. Yeah, and Exist looked like he was saying, you know, calm, calm things down here and just don't get too ahead of ourselves. Still a very open game. It's just that it's impressive for Gamer Legion, but nothing has really been decided yet on the map. Still a lot more Counter-Strike to be played, so we don't want really to get too ahead of ourselves either. Gamer Legion led right now on the board by Immer, but Acor and Isaac are right there behind him. It's a really good trio of players that's carrying them forward into this opening half. Let's see if Heroic know what they're doing now with the rifles are back. Very passive at the A bomb site. Shush watching from CT spawn. Yabby over and Donut. So Shush can be mobile towards middle if necessary. Make a decision based off what information Yabby sees. 
B defense is shored up pretty well with Kadian and Tesses down over towards Jaguar. And for the moment, Gamer Legion just waiting. Again, that really far back defense on A. So if Gamer Legion late in this round decide to go there and they have the right smokes for it, they might be able to get a bomb plant. But it looks like the bomb is still on the opposite side of the map. So they're going to try and set that up. Shush going down early. That's through the smoke in the middle in the red room. He just blows him up. But here comes Sneaks in a kill. Takes out Kadian. And now walking right through Ima. He was seconds away from having that one in Stown. They're under pressure right now, Heroic. I don't even know how they can communicate. You've lost the entire map. Yeah, that's the worst timing for that opening kill from Ima. It pulls all the defense back from the B bomb site, which really makes Kadian exposed. And now they're scrambling. Nobody can support Yabby. He's all on his own for this entire round. I mean, if he can get the kill on Isaac and maybe stop Kios from coming in, there's a slight slim chance here. But it had to be Heroics from Yabby. There's the first one. He is well aware of what's coming next, setting it up with a grenade, but actually they're going to call it off. They're saying, all right, Let's not go there. Let's yeah. try and see if we can switch it around. Emma in the middle, catching Tessis, and now instead it's on Stown to defend it. A one-man army in the bomb site. One versus four, and he tries to get the spray, but he cannot. Time for the bomb plant as well. Kios finding that last shot, and Jabby is on his own, way too far away from the action. Yeah, he can do absolutely nothing. He was isolated that whole round by Emma. What a great position for the flank. The opening kill. Oh, a little bit of spam. A little bit of spam gives away Shush's position. And Acor eventually realizes he's staring at the side of Kadian. One round for Heroic after losing six in a row and then Game of Legion just strike back immediately. And that mid position, I think we talked about it earlier, right? That's the problem if you give up too much mid control, the T's can start to get in there. Now, the fact that he opened it obviously with a shot for the smoke is a little bit ridiculous, but once he's done that, he controls the entire rotation on the map. It's impossible for Heroic to really help each other out. And you can see tactically how that just completely breaks them down. Seven to four, round number 12. And this is just a wild way to get this day started. Yeah, I did not expect this whatsoever. Gamer Legion up by three. Heroic going to have to buy with a single saved rifle. They got plenty of M4s to bring up next to it, but no op on Kadian. Hasn't exactly been super impactful, so maybe not the biggest deal in the world. Let's see what Heroic have this round. Still looking to find a solution for this attack. They really haven't. Stown looks like he wants to join Jabby and Kadian. I like this setup because it does mean if there is a fight in middle early, you are going to have so many good chances. You can get flashed in if you're Stown from the middle. Like, there are a lot of ways you can help each other out. You just probably can't hold it forever, right? Because you will run out of grenades eventually. So if the T's and they're already not fighting really at the start of it here. Ooh, that's scary. Acor, quite lucky to be alive. Yeah, that's a great start. Make Acor a little bit passive with only one HP. All the spam starting to do a lot of damage. Shui's down to 34 as well. And Stown's starting to get a little bit peaky. He's got reinforcements behind him if he goes down, but timing seems to be with him. And he's got one controlling B lane. Smoke is up, and that's going to help out Stown and Yabby on the other side. They were really trusting in that to work out. This is a little bit more aggressive from Heroic, and it seems to be working out so far. Wide swing for Stown. Kios is out of the round, and actually, Kadian, what a ridiculous move. He pushes right through the smoke, and they were just not ready for it. But look at how Gamer Legion is restricted from moving around the map in this round. The mid control that whole time, B lane control that whole time, maintaining aggressive aggression from the mid player, from the cave player. You're not giving Gamer Legion room to work with, so Heroic have at least found something to get him back on the board. The question is, can it be consistent? Can it happen round after round? I would love a replay of this round where Gamer Legion, instead of doing what they're doing here, which is about 55 seconds, right, they're pushing for something. If they wait, because at about 40 seconds, Heroic had no grenades left, which means they can't smoke off the middle, they can't smoke off the doors outside of the B-bomb site, and they probably will be forced to fall back a little bit. Now, it's risky, obviously, it's risky to leave the clock that low to wait it all out, but I think in a different world, maybe Gamer Legion will try and do that, and then we'll see if Heroic are going to be able to hold on to the last 30 seconds of the round. We saw we saw him do it earlier in this half. Gamer Legion did it to great effect, waiting out the utility. The problem this round is Heroic is able to find some kills while those smokes are up, right? True. So this round, it's just executed a little bit better from Heroic, helped out by some early spam, and a second timeout taken from Gamer Legion as well. Not simply content with preserving this lead and being happy with this lead, but wanting to build on top of it. Three rounds remain in this first half, in this first semifinal in Paris. A chance for Ash to get into the conversation. 
pregame interview seemed very comfortable, very confident in the game plan they came with. And it's working so far. Yeah, the rise. I mean, we talk about the individual players even getting here, but obviously as a coach standing behind them, just being able to do it over and over and over again. Ash has put in a lot of homework. There's no question about it. What a way to get this started. Seven to five, ladies and gentlemen, as we get back into it. Round number 13, ready and live and heroic. Way on the back foot at the moment. They need somebody to step it up here. Stown is already doing very well. He's actually top fragging in the server in spite of the fact that Heroic are losing rounds. So just one more player. Anybody else that's willing. We know they have the resources on the team to be able to answer back. One, just, you know, one to one in terms of firepower. Heroic are not gonna be outdone by anybody that's left in this tournament. Here's that aggression again, wanting to control B lane, using Stown to clear things out aggressively. Shush and Yabby pushing down mid late. Ima looking for a further push. There's a flashbang setup. It looks like, or excuse me, that's a Molotov. Off the contact from Yabby, Shush will drop flames. Look at how many grenades they spent already. Game of Legion, I mean, if they just wait again, keep waiting a little bit. Yabby up close, sure, if you swing into that right now, but what happens if another 20 seconds go by? They're gonna try and see if they can test it out right here, and they just get the opening. Sure, the Molotov is down, but they're still fighting. Isaac, two great headshots to open up the middle with. And it's a three versus four. Tessas and Stown, though, they are aggressive and they're holding it still. They don't have any more grenades and they're leaving Stown alone. Jason, this seems like madness. Yeah, because mid's exposed as well. It's Stown, just him. And they're quiet. Tessas is coming back now, but it might be a little bit too late. He's going to call it in. There's the bomb on the ground, but Tessas is getting overrun. And Stown, he can't escape. He has to stay in this tiny corner to fight for the death, and it's going to be Acor to take him down. Oh my god, yeah, they're just finding everything. Katie and. That rotation getting caught before you get there to help out Stown. Gamer Legion on eight rounds. I wonder what would have happened if they would have kept the Stown and Tessas, you know, set up early towards that ramp, but they just pulled it off at the wrong time. It's the problem. You lose both players in the middle and you feel like you're almost required in case Gamer Legion is challenging and taking that space. What a heroic stand for Isaac inside the flames to find the second headshot. Absolutely beautiful. And Acor hits one blind. Yeah, Yabby's got to be frustrated. Three-round lead now. Gamer Legion's gonna take a lead into the second half regardless of what happens. Heroic fighting to stay alive on Ancient. Yeah, be the kind of player that will step into a Molotov to try and win you a semi-final. That's, uh, that's one hell of a move. Stown and Kadeen again pushing up. I don't mind this at all, but now we're back to a repeat from earlier. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen this. It's been a while since Heroic has seen this, and once again, it's only Shush. Yabby and Kadeen aggressive in middle. They'll yeah. be able to get towards Donut, but they'll be smoked off. His job here is to just get a kill and survive. That's the only thing he has to do. There's one. The spray on the second is almost perfect, but he'll stay alive. Isaac still living through this one. And now they're up close. Heroic with a one-man lead, but we've seen earlier how quickly that can disappear. One shot for the... Oh, and actually, they're going to be running through. The bomb isn't even planted yet. And they're losing. Jabby and Tessas both, and now some shots are ringing out. Acor with the AWP. He'd love a bomb plant right now, but he's feeling a little bit worried. <laughs> now Molotov goes down right on top, but they have the man lead now. Gamer Legion, they're bringing it back. That's great utility from Heroic. They just get checkmated by one more smoke from Gamer Legion. Plenty of time for them to get this bomb planted safely. Yeah, you're right. Shush, trying to walk through, he's instantly dead. Caught by the Swede on the other side, Sue in the middle, catching the rotation. It's just Kadian, and there's nothing he could do. We've seen some mad clutches out of him in the past, but this is too much to ask for. Sue goes down, and round number 14, the Gamer Legion. Absolutely nothing that Kadian could do about this one. Doesn't have a kit, and they know exactly where he is at the moment. Even getting the opening, even calling in the rotation, they just can't make this defense work heroic. Yeah, I think the biggest problem was with so many forces in middle and so many forces in B, you actually had three to four heroic players blocked behind the donut smoke. A blown rotation, so there was no one to challenge towards Temple on the retake, no one in CT spawn on the retake. They were all just desperately coming through the smoke, and Kadian goes down anyway. That is every resource taken from heroic. No op in this final round of the first half. Nine to five, Gamer Legion. They've shown up in a way that I certainly was not expecting. They look confident all throughout this tournament. Yeah, it was a bit of a rocky start potentially, 
but they've been leveling up. We've talked a lot about it from some of the top teams, the idea of peaking in a tournament, of, of giving your best performances when it really matters. And they've been doing that every single time. Round number 15 is here. The last of the half, an heroic. They badly need a sixth round. They need something to try and recover this momentum a little bit. They've fallen way too far behind. The Gamer Legion outright winning this opening half. And now they're doubling down again on that a position, which again will leave the mid a little bit weaker. And they also don't have the grenades from earlier, Jason. This is miserable. No, but they've at least got Yabby there looking for information for anyone walking out mid towards Donut. This is going to be another heavy A play. And do you have the tools necessary to stop this? Kadian will pounce off of the contact from Shush, but it's weaker weapons. It is. MP9 up close. They definitely don't have the tools. Acor does! A massive hammer to shot down Shush and Sui. He might get a team kill in the middle of it. It's a little bit uncomfortable, but he's still the man lead. And Isaac finds a headshot. It is just now on Tess's. They know where he's coming from. He got that double spray down. They know everything. One they, versus two here. They can bail out. They can bail out. Ima's not in mid to keep track of Tess's rotation. Oh. But that little last piece of utility that Acor throws out while we're treating is going to keep Tess's frozen at A. Plenty of time to get into the B bomb site. Plenty of time to get an advanced position and the bomb plant as well. This leaves Tessis in a near impossible clutch. 1v2. Yeah, he's realized now, but you're right. No kit. He's got to find Ima early. If Ima makes a mistake on a peak. Yeah, he needs to find out. He just wants to get a feel for where Tessis is. Is he middle? Is he coming through this side? Or some planking all the way to the T spawn? That's the only thing that he cares about, just getting the information. And Tess is, he's seeing nobody, he can't find it. Emma sneaking up on the other side, and there we go! 10 to 5! Gamer Legion, they have arrived in the semi-finals, and Heroic left wanting, they need a comeback, and we'll see if they can. I was one of the first people who had professional playing experience to step into broadcast work, and I felt like I had a voice at that time that no one else could provide to give insight into the thought process of being a player and the romantic story of how tactics change and across a single map and the decisions that teams and players are making that and how they adapt across across a half of Counter Strike. I felt like that was something that I could help provide in the commentary booth that, that no one else was doing quite yet. And just across the next year after after making that decision, just things fell into my lap that allowed me to give Counter-Strike more and more attention and more and more love and then a full-time contract comes to be a commentator. It was just a sequence of things that just kind of allowed it to keep blowing up and I never looked back.
Oh, flashing entry, flash. Flashing shot. Flashing shot. Okay. Nice, 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 nice. I'm holding the cave. One more mid, one more mid, guys. One more mid. Coming heaven. Holding heaven. That's a cave, guys. Heaven. Nice cave, guys. Have guys. City. I have cave and city. Always. One cave. Cave. I'm blind, blind. City. Cash shot. City. Cave us. Cave us. Pick up Freddy. Pick up Freddy. No! No! Fucking go, guys. Exist mentioned there were very few elite teams in Counter-Strike today, but we would put Heroic firmly in that category. But they are facing quite an obstacle. Five to ten, they are down heading into the second half. And for a team who wants redemption from losing the Rio Finals, they've got a lot of work to do. Oh, it's, it's been made way more difficult already. The Nemesis from Rio in Virtus Pro did not even make it here. And you might think for Heroic, they're thinking, well, that's it. Like, surely at least we get to the grand final again. We're one of our toughest competitors already out of it. We're going to get into the second half here. It's 10 to 5. Paris, are you with us? <laughs> well, let's go, Jason. Pistar this is better be a start. Here we go, mid push. Little bit of aggression from the Gamer Legion Defex. Oh, Kadian, how does he get two? He didn't deserve it. He had to claw it out of their eyes. And it's just Isaac left alone. So much to do, and he can't handle the pressure. That is the kind of stuff they were dreaming of. Agroi, they had a little bit of a break to just recollect themselves. And now Kios and Sue. If they steal this round back, that would be devastating to Heroic. Shush is making absolutely sure that's not going to happen. And now, just Sue left. And I mean, at this point, you could even justify saving the armor. There's no, really, probably no wrong or right move here. If you can fight, you know, you can try and swing yourself back into it and just, Ooh. you know, warm up that pistol a little bit. But this round should be impossible to win. Yeah, absolutely should be. And he's not even going to move past this point. Oh, maybe he will. Maybe he will. No kit. And as you mentioned, this is pretty much impossible. He's looking for any peak, anything that someone's going to give him. Tess is in the back lines, trying to cut off the flank. He's going to fall this down. That's pistol round for Heroic. Both pistols in their favor, but still a ways to go. I kind of like that, though. That almost looks like Sue is saying, I'm going to make it painful even if we lose the round. Like, I'm going to try and see if I can make you lose yeah. before more people. That should have never happened. Kadian should never get a second kill in that fashion. First player coming down mid, small mistake, not clearing that deep corner. Really wanted getting involved in the fight towards the B bomb site and just takes his eyes off the prize. Only pistols, not even armor, not even any kind of an upgrade for Gamer Legion. They're gonna go for a third round buy. I mean, they have the bonus, right? They have a little bit of a buffer here they can work with. They don't have to, they're not desperate to try and force into this round and I can kind of respect it. Stack of the B bomb site, it's a roll of the dice. And Heroic, we mentioned earlier, the, the desk were talking about it too, how they are one of the least likely teams to suffer an upset the way that things are playing right now. So they should be able to do some research and you can see they're doing exactly that. Send out KD with a Mac 10, just let him off the leash. And find some more kills. They will clean up this round, only losing Shusho. They actually do attack the stack, but with the flank coming in, it makes it very easy to win. Yeah, but also the, the weaponry they went up against, and knowing it's unarmored USPs, they're saying they know the third round buy is coming. They're going to be aware of it. Timeout is taken. Early on in the half, a third timeout for Gamer Legion burned. As they want to have a discussion. Very important round for them. With the M4s coming out a little bit early. We got such a great blueprint from Sue on the first half of how to break down that CT defense. Once they started winning at A, it softened up middle. They exploited that more. They started exploiting the B-bombs. It was just so, it was so well laid out for us. And now the question is if Heroic could do something similar here. Yeah, well, that's when the underdog gets to dictate the action, right? You get to attack where you want to attack, and Heroic weren't able to stop it. But now on the CT side, you got to exert some influence so you're not playing to Heroic's tune throughout this half. Kadian going to stick on the MAC-10. Yeah, I can respect it, although it's helmets on everyone on the other side. Something to always keep in mind whenever you see a Mac-10 or a Galilo in play. And they're going to be fine, Gamer Legion, on that front. They do pop through the middle, put up a smoke of their own, and Kadian charging. <laughs> he really wanted that fight, and he definitely got it. Isaac shuts him down. Four versus five to begin with, and even if it's just a Mac-10 lost, I mean, it's still a man down now pushing forward, and shush! I don't know how he knew. But he read that very well. Just prepared for everything. Acor's pushing through a smoke. Oh, they'll never expect this. Surely, they were already close up in A earlier. They won't expect this mid-round push through the smoke. Oh, no. 
The timing here. He's going to be walking right into Yabby. He sees the shadow. He's good for the one kill, but he has no idea that they're already out. That was a sick move, but it might have backfired in the end. Three versus three here. And Isaac going to be making his way through the tunnel. Trying to get in there. The Molotov will slow him down. Kyosun Sue is coming in from CT spawn. They have one smoke left and no defuse kit at all. So they're going to be in a lot of trouble to try and retake this. If the bomb goes down, but it won't even happen. Isaac just picking them apart. Stown is on his own. Not a better player right now you'd want in a one versus three, but my God, it's going to be hard to win. Now he does have a chance to maybe slip the net here. Bomb on his back. And he's going to be walking away from that one. Yeah, he knows the position of both players. Yeah. Chaos gave it up in Temple earlier, and Shuey made some noise jumping back, so Stown has a complete read of this. Off to the other bomb site, and just now, Gamer Legion is going to start putting the pieces together. Nobody's home at A. They got to be cautious to clear up behind some of the boxes, but they should start to get the piece of information, and the plant going down is surely, surely going to seal it. Although oh. Stown with the fake buys them a few extra seconds. Seconds they might end up needing in this with a 10-second defuse ahead of them. Every single second is gonna count. Stown um, needs to look for a fight. One fight before the bomb is tapped. Is he gonna rotate all the way around? It looks like it. In a position where you could get those wall bangs, especially if they're defusing for 10 seconds. Oh god, that kit could end up making the whole difference here. Kios, yeah, they're gonna be smoking it off, but the Stown really care at this point. Tapping the bomb once, he walks right through and Stown it. Doesn't get any better than that. Now a lot of trouble, 10 seconds on the other side. He actually will hit him down to 25 health and he has to come off the bomb and Stown in a one versus three to bring Heroic back into this opening map. That is a tough loss to swallow if you're Gamer Legion. So close yet so far and Stown makes his presence known in these semifinals. Coming through the smoke, calling the bluff and challenging. Not leaving it all to chance with the spam. Absolutely perfectly played. There was point, 4.97 seconds left. If he had had a fuse kit, Jason, he would have defeated about a 300th of a second at the end of it. So that would have made the difference. That's what the defuse kit will do. Remember that. They just couldn't afford it. Obviously not because they don't know, but Game of Legion hold the start to the second half that they probably wanted. They wanted that first buy round to be the knockout punch against Heroic. A team of this caliber, Jason, you want to put them away when they are down, when they are wounded and feeling weak. And that has already a little bit too late here. Heroic, they're certainly feeling the, the fire at their feet once again. Yeah, great call from Kadian this round as well. They spot the B aggression coming out of Cave. So Kadian just says, that's a lot of resources on this side of the map to execute that, but hold the phone. Two kills back in quick succession. Oh, they're going to go for this. Why wouldn't you? You don't have that much to lose. And on the other hand, if you win this round, it's going to be a shot to them. Good trade once again. Shush out here, he's been found out. They can probably guess where Gabby is. And he's not line up for them. All right, they lose what they had, but they wanted to see if they could put some pressure on. It will 10 to nine, heroic, winning for four in a row to get back into the second half. And that is, that's horrifying news for Gamer Legion. Yeah, it is, but now you get a little bit more money in the bank if you're Gamer Legion. Now you're gonna see a couple of kits picked up, which was obviously the biggest issue in the previous rifle round. Acor's got the AWP. So a much more staunch and powerful Gamer Legion defense coming into round 20. But between some good calls and a nice clutch from Stown, this is a great start for Heroic. Now within one. Yeah, they are getting there. One flick of that AK. Jabby trying to take down Immer, and he will eventually with a little bit more of a burst coming out. Those are the kills that Gamer Legion can't lose early. This is a minute and 40 that they're playing with a man disadvantage. Heroic is going to chew this up, this half, if it happens too frequently. It's so hard to blame Immer, though, the way that he's been playing throughout this tournament to not have the game. He obviously, he's going to have the confidence, right? He's thinking, I am going to fight. Yep, that's exactly right. Tessas has walked through the smoke in the middle, taking a huge risk but he's found an empty red room in there. And again, we saw what happened in the first half when Immer and Sue made their way into the middle. They're in trouble right now, Gamer Legion, whether is, they know it or not. This is where if you're Isaac pushed up in towards A, you, you kind of have to make a push. Even though it's a little bit risky, you have to start moving. You're the only player who can gather information. Your teammates over at B are under pressure. They know there's presence in Jaguar. Acor with an AWP can't shift over on the rotation due to mid being lost. Isaac has to make this play, and I think it's just coming a little bit late. He's doing what you want it, but you're right. Timing is everything. Shush gonna get the one kill, and Yabby on the good return. And the B bomb side's lost, and Tessis is controlling the rotation. They have absolutely no fear at the moment. Stown 
He's walked into middle and actually making a fair bit of noise. He might be found by Isaac, might be close to a free kill right here. Yeah, there we go. But still, it's too late. They can't really win the round again. They do not have the defuse kit. That will tie up the game. We're at 10-10, Jason. A little bit of a hunt coming, though. Well, Acorn Isaac might have some challenges to these weapons. Tessis is walking into the A bomb site now. Yabby's over at mid, keeping them pinned down. I don't know how far they'll go because the money's not great for Heroic. And it seems like everyone's just called a stalemate at this point. So, 10 to 10. If you didn't know already, you can see the power of that mid position for the T side. It just makes it so miserable. You were even, you even called it like 10 seconds before it happened, right? Isaac did move out of the A bomb side. He had the same idea as you, but it's such a long map going around that he couldn't make it in time, unfortunately. And I mean, that's again another thing though for Gamer Legion. If they had more grenades at the B bomb site, maybe they could have slowed it down more, right? If they had two yep. Molotovs, then they can buy time for Isaac, but they just don't have the utility. Well, also, when you lose a player in minute, a minute and 44 seconds, you're going to have to burn a little bit of utility quicker than you'd like. Yeah. You want to keep that hit off as long as possible while you try and find an equalizing kill. Fourth and final timeout taken by Gamer Legion early in this second half. A lot of rounds to play where Ash can no longer get involved unless Heroic allows it. His last chance to get his boys on the right track. You saw that little smirk from Katie looking his teammates deep in the eye saying, we've been here many, many, many times before. We know what it's like to make a comeback and we've been on this stage before. We know how to handle the pressure. 10-10. Cobblestone fans rise up. They're ready, Jason. They've been waiting. It's the moment they've been waiting for. They just want the Dragon Laws. I know what you guys are into. Round 21, up in the hands of Acor. That's going to be in Donut. Three defenders at the B bomb site, but Kiaz and Ima, very weakened. Deagles, Zui with the SMG. So the rifles leaning towards mid and A, and that looks like it's exactly where Heroic want to go. Oh, another opening find in middle. Beautiful from Tessas. Yabby's, Yabby's challenging up the B ramp right now as well, but Tessas controls everything. They're just so deep on the map. You can see Sue is running back. He has no idea that someone's going to be there. I'm not feeling so confident in Heroic. Once they get fired up, they just look like the scariest team in the world. Acor's trapped. If he wants to survive this round, he's got to fight his way out. He's got to fight towards middle. He needs to hold this line against Tessas. This one kill could open up his escape, but it's going to be tough. Tessas has the angle. Nice and easy as you like. It's only going to be Emo with an AK. And Heroic take a lead. Their first lead since round five. That little Danish corner is <laughs> being quite loud inside of the arena right now, trying to cheer them back on. They don't even need that anymore. They're doing fine on their own. Himmer getting flashed out and sprayed down by Shush. Do you agree with this, Jason? It feels like the, the T side for Gamer Legion was so impressive, but this T side for Heroic feels so much more forceful. It feels like they are just taking parts of the map over. They're just winning those fights in the middle. They just don't care anymore. Yeah, it's. I mean, part of it's that clutch from Stown was obviously <laughs> wonderful, but since that clutch happened, we haven't been able to see Gamer Legion's defense. They've gotten picked off in mid twice really yeah. early on in the rounds. We haven't even gotten to see what this defense might be able to do if they have a man advantage, if they go into the mid-round with an even affair of a five-on-five. Five. They must sustain early here to give themselves a chance, or else this is going to spiral out of control. And all that emphasis towards middle, Heroic's playing the same game. Success in middle is going to weaken the B defense, and Heroic want to exploit it. Chaos. Good smoke down to try and slow them, but the utility is so good from the heroic side. They pushed him out of there, Sui in the corner, and he's not even ready for that push. Down will go, will get the kill, and Shush is going to keep it going. Kios, he wanted to be the hero to fight his way back, but he can't. Three versus five, another bomb plant, and Gamer Legion, they need the rifles. You'd love to see a heroic retake of this one, but it's not going to be possible. Leave it alone, save what you got. The Danes, once again, look unstoppable. They are going to be winning seven rounds in a row to kick off the second half with. And I think now they're going to be way more dedicated to the hunt. They've got cash build up. They've got some momentum. They want to take some rifles away. Acorn and Isaac will be hard to find, but Ima over in middle is on an island of his own. So many choke points to worry about. He's been spotted now, and Yabby is just going to stroll in and find an easy kill. Oh, Acor, you better be careful. Good thing you hit that shot by one more. Cadian's wrapping around. 
So critical to keep this. Oh, shot not baited out. Well done from, from Acor. He's going to survive, but it's a two round lead still for Heroic. All right, that got a bit expensive. Acor could have easily been dead, but well played on his part. Seven straight for Heroic coming back into this game. It was a 10 to 2 run in the first half for Gamer Legion, but that seems so far in the distance now. Heroic in complete control. Is this what it means, Jason, to be the second time in a semifinal of Major? Is this what it means to have the experience to be able to summon this kind of strength? Because they really look defeated in the first half. Heroic rushing it off like it was nothing and bringing it back straight away. Isaac and Emma in the middle. Sue playing that Jaguar tunnel. And Kios a little bit further back on B, but they don't have that much to fight with here in Heroic. They can you probably already sense the weakness. No grenades are being thrown on them on the ramp. There are no smokes or Molotovs or anything going up. Maybe in Bola Krieg, just for the fun of it. Good spray through, actually. Both Acor and Kios getting tagged up by that one. And yeah, I mean, Acor has to ignore the damage he's taken. He needs to be very strong with this AWP when this hit eventually comes in, if it eventually comes in. But Kadian's not investigating everything or anything. This seems like it's going to be a finish at the B bomb site, regardless. One minute left on the clock. And that's a nice opening kill. There's Acor. Will the presence of the AWP force them away? Yeah, you wanted him to be aggressive. He's delivered so far. More spam coming out. Ooh, through the smoke, they almost catch Kios. And you're not expecting, now you'll know, now you'll recognize the sound of that gun and realize there is a scope on the other side, even if it's not the AWP. They're really worried to cross Jaguar over towards middle where Kadian is to kind of change the angle of attack towards the A bomb site just because of that AWP was in cave earlier. So Tessa's Yabby and Shush might be pulled into this B execute. There's the AWP again from Acor. Heroic getting picked apart in this round. They've got one final play. This is a desperate play. 20 seconds, but hold the phone. Kadian runs right in and spikes Isaac towards that position. Immer, oh, it's the running gun! The 5-7 coming up, huge for Gamer Legion. And they will win another round, losing so many in a row. They needed this. They need to slow down Heroic any way they can. Yeah, so desperate. You could see from Kaden getting that opening kill. Caution to the wind. What a great round from Acor. Having an impact where his teammates haven't been able to at the opening kills. Kadian never expected Ima in the corner. A nice double kill with the 5-7 and a timeout called from Heroic. They want to ride this wave all the way to a map one finish. They don't want Gamer Legion back in things. No, why would you give them the opportunity? You have them right where you want them. Their economy all the time in this weird limbo where you have to try and force it up. Of course, now it's going to be a little bit better. And Heroic, they're going to be able to put a full buy into this one. All the rifles they could ever want. 12 to 11. Round number 24. Kios and Sue a little bit lower on the scoreboard right now. A couple of good rounds out of them could actually change the tide of this battle. One or two rounds. And Gamer Legion are going to feel fresh once again. Imma, I don't think he spotted anyone on the other side. They're going to be walking through the smoke any second now. He's got Isaac on the crossfire, but it's down. That is a fantastic opening in the middle, and Tessus is ready. Imma, that was desperate spray through the smoke, hoping you get anything. And they can't. Three versus five. And Yabi's holding tight here. If they walk into it, it's a free kill. He's just going to take one step to the right, and he will be dropping Kios. Five versus two now. It has to be a triple kill. It has to be a triple kill for Shui. They're only going to give him a look of one. Sound is still there in the doors. Acor is getting wrapped to pound quietly. Oh, the transfer is not quick enough. And it's over. Sound's going to find an MTB bomb site. They don't know the position of Acor. They could guess it. Well, I guess if Acor finds the bomb first, that's maybe the only way this round is going to be working out. Kadian is walking in there. No, oh, Shush is wrapping upon him now. This yeah, is he's done. walking up behind him. He's surely sandwiched in and absolutely dead. Gun barrel is there, and Shush not even going to bother with a knife. He'll take him out clean instead. 13 to 11. A small speed bump in that previous round, and Heroic, they are right back on track. It's not done yet. There's Maybe it's a big speed bump, because they, they remember, they won that as an eco round. They've got weapons to buy here. Sure. Gamer Legion going to fight right back, but this might be the last chance. This might be the last speed bump in there for Heroic. If Gamer Legion can't solve it right now, Ancient will be over. This is 
what it means. To... Oh, look at this call. Yeah, look just at the right map. out the gate. Nobody's home. Gadian has this defense on a string, but they're getting an idea of what's coming now. And actually, Heroic not moving in as convincingly. So the defense will arrive as this first round of smoke's clear. Yeah, they might have been worried about some kind of utility, but it never really arrived. So they're going to know that. Ima. Here. He is on a bit of a flank through the middle, but Jabby's walking in behind him as well. He could get shot in the side of the head, and there we go. Jabby just finding him out in the open. And that's that's another thing that the slowdown for Heroic has given them. Pulls the defense on the other side of the map out of position. And now you've got no idea what's coming. Down with another Isaac cut off guard. It's all falling the way of Heroic. Masterclass offense on Ancient and Gamer Legion have nothing to say. Stretched apart in this round, Jason. They just got pulled all over the map and they weren't able to handle it. Tessis will take the kill on Sue. And now it is Acor again, one versus four. Last time, maybe it was a one in a million. This is a one in a billion. He's far, far away from any action at the B-bomb site. And Heroic, they will be at 14 rounds. This has been an unbelievable run. Sure, they're losing some rifles here at the end, but they are happy to try and take this away. They know he will not have the money to rebuy this rifle. Yeah, this is actually super valuable to take out of his hands, and I think Stown's gonna do it. All right, at the end, 14 to 11. Gamer Legion have no timeouts remaining to slow down this push from Heroic. They have very little funds to fight back with. This might have to be a half buy. Let Heroic get to 15 and hope you can finally figure it out on defense to rattle off four in a row for overtime. Calling the freeze when you're basically on the A bomb site is also a very tricky way to play, right? Immer's probably thinking, okay, at least they're going to be preoccupied moving towards A, but then the whole round slows down. Heroic, they find that one almost free. And you know they're going to be desperate. You know they're going to be going for some kind of a push, and Heroic's able to pick them all apart. Here's another one. Right through the smoke in A main. Acor and Isaac. Oh, they're going to meet this. Flashbang is perfect. Handled perfectly yet again from Heroic. Into a five on three, and Ima's rifle hasn't even had a chance to say a thing about this round. You know, the one tool that they did have, sure, they picked up an AK here, but Heroic already going to be at the A bomb site, ready to put the bomb down. Kadian picking off Kios as well as he was trying to make his way out. He did have an AK on his hand, so he probably wanted to make some sort of a play. But it's done and dusted here. Sui, he's close. He can stick around, look for a rifle, but he can't win the round. 15 to 11 going to be the scoreline. Heroic with an absolutely world-class performance on this second half, showing what it means to be a championship-level team. This whole half just feels like Gamer Legion, the best they could do is fight to keep guns in their hands. The only round they won was a desperate one with five sevens, deagles. When rifles are out, they cannot handle this heroic attack. Ima is going to be allowed to survive by heroic. And it's a four-round lead. Four chances for Heroic to take this opening map of the semifinals. Stown showing up today for the first map with 23 kills so far. A huge reason why they were able to bring it back. And you mentioned it earlier, that one versus three that he managed to clutch for himself to get this whole thing going, to get everyone fired back up again. Four rounds in a row for Gamer Legion. That is what they need. And there's no delaying it here. M4, you are out. They're like a couple of nades. They have the defuse kit this time on Emma. Gotta be happy about that. They need to start a round, Jason, without losing a player right off the bat. They need to get a little bit of some kind of momentum on their side. Find a five versus four in your favor instead. Acor boosts it up. Both teams with a really passive opening in this round 27. Heroic looking for trickery. Gamer Legion just playing it safe. Not wanting to lose it outright in the opening stages. Tessis and Stown now just walking out the middle. And they've smoked off him. He can't really do anything about it right now. And he's lost that find almost every single time. It looks like they're gravitating towards the B-bomb site. And Sui's making a counter rotation on the other side towards A. That might be real bad news for Gamer Legion. We'll see what this boost can do if it ever comes into play. 
Eco wants that first shot. And actually, there will be, I think, a boost on the other side. Flashed on over. Oh, and they failed the boost in the middle. Emma, that's what you needed. Finally won that fight. Taking him 12 rounds. Oh, this is desperate now. Jason, only 24 seconds. The Pom is dropped in the middle. Yeah. Thou now picking it up, but Isaac and Sui, they're going to be moving up into Donut. Three people coming at them, only 17 seconds. One good kill here for Gamer Legion. That's all they need. Isaac will give them two. And Sui will absolutely be able to shut it down. No chance now. Out of time and out of play as a heroic. Game of Legion, they need four in a row. They've got the first one right here. And they got it emphatically. Three players surviving. Good challenge from Ima, not going away from the fight that he struggled with all half long. This time coming out on top. And perhaps a little bit too conservative from Heroic as the clock dictates the action at the end of the day. Again, a nice double from Isaac. And the double push in Donut works perfectly. Three more chances. Game of Legion, they only need to slip up once here. And the opening map of the semi-finals will be washed away by Heroic. And look at this. Smoke in the middle. They're going to be coming through against Isaac. He's ready to set up another double. And even if he's blind, he'll be able to get it. He's running through with the USB out and nearly makes it a triple. Bomb is on the other side, but he's done so much work here. Three versus four. Spray is excellent. And right for the smoke, he's going to be catching Yabby as well. All on Stown. They don't have that much to work with Heroic. They gotta be real careful. Man, Gamer Legion has been surprising this entire event. Every stage that we've played, they have been a surprise, and they're doing it once more here, showing a little bit of fight right at the end of the day. It's gonna be two in a row, and Heroic's money is in a troubling position. This might be a great opportunity for Gamer Legion to challenge for overtime. Stown's gonna find one. Not nearly enough. No, and three more to go. They know where he's coming from. I mean, again, you can't really win around like this. You need a huge mistake right now for the Game of Legion side. They've already tagged him up. There we go. Emma making absolutely sure. No clutch is going to be allowed for. Good triple on him. And Game of Legion 13 to 15. And we're going to go down to the 29th round here. Heroic running out of chances to close it. And like you pointed out, the money suddenly becoming a big factor. Yeah, and that's why they're calling this fourth and final timeout, Heroic. Figuring out where they want to go with it. Kadian's got money to buy himself an AK and drop one over. Tessas can get one as well. They can go with three rifles. They can allow Kadian to get a hero rifle and play with it solo with some half buys around it. Save for that final round of the map. But all of a sudden, right at the end, Gamer Legion's got a little bit of fight left in them. Imagine having to make the call right now for Heroic for how you find that one more round. I mean, it's good that you have a timeout to talk it through. You've been winning that fight against Immer, even if you had a good round right here. Do you want to try and put the pressure on again? They haven't actually been straight up attacking him. I mean, they've, they've, got, they've had some free fights from him, but maybe you, you can go at him, right? You can even flash your way through this smoke that you're setting up right now. You can actually try and see if you can take him down. They are going to be in the middle. Early grenade to try and slow it down just a bit. Kadian goes for the AWP. The only weapon Heroic bring in to fight in this round. Some upgraded pistols next to it. But all eyes on the captain of Heroic. What can he do with the only weapon? He wants an isolated duel, a single one-on-one -on -one with the AWP in towards the A bomb site. Ima and Isaac are there. He might get what he wants here. Isaac feeling the pressure of getting hunted down. Katie and lets loose a bullet and takes down Ima at range. And Gamer Legion now, they are in trouble once again. Kadian setting up with the AWP. Not quite hitting that shot, but he has a grenade to at least be able to fall back from the position. And Tess is moving up, playing it close with a Tech-9. How do you get through the smoke? This retake has to come through. Gamer Legion, they're in trouble. And Kadian again, landing another shot on the AWP. Aiko wants to get through. Stout's going to be taken out. It's Yabby now with the pistol. And Kadian hiding back here. Sui, he's run out of time, and down he goes. Yabby will pick it up 16 to 13 as that AWP shot echoes through. And the first map goes to Heroic.
growing up as, as a kid, uh, a pale, pale kid. I was wearing glasses as well. I've been cross-eyed my entire life. I was the perfect case to be, to be bullied in, in school. But it's funny, a picture like this, it's sort of the cliche or like stereotype sure. of a gamer. I was living the stereotype. I was sitting in my room a lot and playing yeah, yeah, computer and games. I have a, a massive scar starting from up here, going all the way down. I'd buy a hot dog, buy a, a cola, two bags of chips uh, and another. I could definitely feel that I was losing control. When you want to lose weight and when you want to change something drastically, there's always a lot of first steps. I think people sometimes need to hear that it's okay to struggle, it's okay to fail, it's okay not to be able to reach your goal instantly. I think there's certain parts of my story that everyone can relate to. The ability to go AFK, to remove myself from the gaming space just once in a while, to recharge the batteries, to feel the desire to get back in, is essential to me. What began as a masterful tea side for Gamer Legion was firmly answered back by the Danes in that second half. The punch back too little too late for Shuhei as Heroic deliver the finishing blow. An essential bounce back Jacob from Heroic after a first half where arguably a Gamer Legion, they were dictating the pace. I was starting to get very, very roared on behalf of Heroic. Very worried. They won the pistol round, they converted, they went up 3-0. We think to ourselves, it's normal business for Heroic. They'll cruise their way through this game. But Gamer Legion and Shuhei wanted it very, very differently. Some extella calling coming out of him. Very good pacing as well, I would argue, on that T-side. They found the loopholes in the defense of Heroic, and it felt like a lot of the rounds they were winning the round with ease, you know. They didn't have to fight for them. They didn't have to necessarily, you know, go into a clutch scenario, 1v1. A lot of the rounds Heroic just opted to save because they simply got outplayed on the server. And to me, that was all down to Shuhei. I think that what Gamer Legion showed in that first half was the class in terms of the depth, in terms of their T side, the way that when they were setting the pace, they were able to call fast ones, they were able to kind of trick Heroic with some of the plays a little bit, or just work off of the timings that Heroic were throwing out there. And then also when Heroic actually kind of punched back in that half, we saw that Gamer Legion just had the protocols necessary in order to kind of play against the tempo that Heroic was trying to set. They still were able to take mid control late. They were still able to go for late crunches onto bombs. So even though that happened, it was Heroic that just ran away with it when they were on the offense. Yeah, trying to look on the bright side here for Game Legion. I'm really glad that we did get to see some incredibly well drawn executes in that first half. We were hoping that Game Legion could be putting it up to the big dogs. Unfortunately, not enough to be sealing it out, but that was a, a really good first half that we saw from them. It was a really good first half. I think Game Legion deserves credit for that first half, and against any other opponent at this tournament, I think that would have been enough to get a victory. Unfortunately, they're facing Heroic right now, who are playing some stellar kind of strike as well. Well, let's put that Game Legion tease side under the spotlight as we move on over to the Mahone zone. 
That's right. What I want to talk about today was Gamer Legion's ability to just read the game, and that's why they're so successful on the T side. So let's take a look at this round here. Round eight. It first starts off with a timeout from Heroic. Now, typically, whenever the CT team makes a timeout, what do you expect? You expect aggression. Heroic, they go for aggression here towards this lane side. And look at the way that Gamer Legion respond to this. First thing, Shui, when he comes in, he tosses an immediate flash over towards that ruin side. The flash pops right about here. Now what that does is it actually splits apart this double peak that Heroic had planned because th what was supposed to happen here was that Stan he was supposed to peek with Yabby here towards that lane side, but because that flash pushes him away, that flash forces Stan away. That allows Shui to then take an isolated fight against Yabby. Now at the same time, Ime towards this mid position, he gets comms that this mid push is coming through. He jumps up, he doesn't see anybody, he doesn't see anybody. So what does he do? He spams. Now this looks like a lucky spam, but if you look at the placement of the spam, it's actually very calculated. It's right next to the shelf positions, right next to these boxes where typically CTs will want to come up towards here to reinforce that side. So this spam, very calculated. On top of that, A Corp. As soon as he sees that there's no Molotov there, he takes the opening towards this B site. And the moment that he sees these nades flying over, he knows for sure it's an aggressive play towards mid. This has to be the only person towards the B site. He catches Shush. And look at the way that Acor does it as well. Because the floor is actually sloped, he actually crouches across towards the other side. And what that does is it lowers his elevation in such a way where he can actually pop his head up on the left side like this, where he can pop his head up like this as opposed to this right corner. That allows them to find this kill onto Tessus. And as soon as they find these kills, they're able to take the B site, and it's just like that. So this is the reason why Gamer Legion were so successful on that T side, is because they're reading Heroic's moves, and they capitalized on it perfectly. Danny is so correct. They were just reading Heroic like a damn book. And I love that we get to see just one of many examples of Acor actually managing to open up the bombsite uh, for his teammates. Yeah, he did well. Uh, exceptionally well with the AWP. The fact that he was uh, finding the opening kills, the fact that he was being set up with the utility, the fact that he delivered as an individual. Great to see Acor also find some footing in this game. We've spoken a lot about Ima, we've spoken about a little Shuhei, but Acor has also had, you know, in, in all his silence, almost a very, very solid turn. Gentlemen, let's do some counting. What comes after eight? Nine. Nine. Nine that one under the spotlight as well because man this is just so ballsy coming out of Gamer Legion. Yeah it's another Gamer Legion where they walk up to the watch this bomb side and they trade their way out of the problems. Back and forth right here it's a 3v3 but look at this from Shuhei just charging down CT spawn. At this point when he's throwing the smoke right here even if you were to stop the clip that's it that's done that's dusted but Shuhei he wants to go all the way down into <laughs> CT spawn and that was a little bit of an overstep. It speaks volume to the confidence that he's playing with right here but that could have been a game changer that could have been a round for Heroic so I will argue that even though the play a very, very good first T side. They also played with an awful lot of confidence. Otherwise, Shuhei wouldn't have done what he did right there. Yeah, you could see in that play right there that Shuhei just felt like anything he could do at that point was he was untouchable. And it, maybe that was to his detriment in some ways, but with how that half went for him and how it went for Gamer Legion, you have to respect the fact that he wanted to take the fight right to them because if he doesn't take the fight to them and he just kind of runs those strats, then Heroku are just going to think, okay, this is going to, we're going tit for tat, blow for blow. This is more or less expected. But once he throws little curveballs like that, into Heroic's face, then they're going to actually start to rethink, wait a second, who is it we're in the server against? And that paid off, right, in dividends, because that was a six-round streak for Heroic on that first half, but, uh, for Game Legion, rather. Yeah. Then Heroic answering back uh, with round number 10 subsequently coming. Yeah, they look very solid in, in round number 10, I'm not gonna lie. A force by coming in for Heroic right here. You see some of that individual skill and maybe one of the first times where Gamer Legion couldn't quite put up the efficient and the clean executing towards the bomb side. It starts out pretty well for them getting a couple of trades, but at this point, they're just fighting for no reason whatsoever. Th this duel right here is really just shocking to me. Uh, the fact that Stown is able to find two with an MP9, I'm pretty sure we thought in the green room that Shuhei had heard him and he should have alerted his team to the fact that Stown was there. And I think that's a little bit of the class difference between these two teams. Even though Gamer Legion can call excellent strategies, even though they can put some great plans together, sometimes it's just individual cali cal quality which is going to lift Heroic above Gamer Legion. We saw much more of that in the second half when the Gamer Legion players, when they're spread out on that CT side, it's a lot harder for them to actually just fight one-on-one -on -one against Heroic when there is a flash that's popping right in front of their faces. Gamer Legion getting six in a row. Heroic says, I'll raise you one. I'll give you seven off of that second half. 
half. Uh, and it was kind of incredible to get to see that bounce back, as Maui was saying, down to some really uh, incredible individual form coming out of the Danes. Yes, incredible form coming out of the Danes. I highlighted two players going into this game, two players that have the potential to be a superstar on the server. That will be Yabi and that will be Stown. And they were the two highest rated players on the T side on the entire server. Not necessarily only them, you know, powering Heroic through that second half, but when you have players with the caliber of a guy like Stown, when you have an individual who's playing so, so well and who's so stable in his decision making and his output on the server, it is hard not to imagine that at some point in this game, Heroic were bound to wake up. And they did that in the second half. I think right now, when you look towards Heroic, what is the difference between them now and half a year ago? It's the fact that Stown has a playmate in Yabi. Those two as a duo right now is making a case to be very, very strong and a duo you have to fear regardless of who you are. What's scary now for Gamer Legion is that they've woken up the beast. Heroic were tested there in that first half. What Gamer Legion were try was trying to throw there was a haymaker, but it ended up just being a glancing blow. If you get 10 rounds against a tier one team like that in a stadium event like this, you're supposed to close. You need to close. On your map pick, switching to the second half, you need to do better than what Gamer Legion did. They couldn't get it done. Heroic now feel like they are the ones that are in charge. And when you let a favorite have momentum, the series is likely over. And that's exactly what we were prefacing coming into this, right? As much as there have been so many incredibly discovered positives coming out of Gamer Legion, if you are going up against Heroic, you better damn close if you have that advantage because the Danes, they are just going to destruct you if they if you even give them an inch, right? Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I think the, the game is sort of following the path that we kind of expected. Gamer Legion, they remain competitive. I think the mini comeback they did in the second half as well to make the score 16-13 also looks better on paper than it perhaps were on the server. It did feel like Heroic already had one eight ancient, you know, halfway into that second half. So, yes, Game of Legion, they're putting up a good fight, but in terms of whether or not they're able to take down a team like Heroic, I think we prefaced it already. They shouldn't be. Yeah, and, and I think it's Heroic again showing why they're just the most consistent team in Tier 1 CS, that they're not necessarily momentum-driven. Like, they used a couple plays themselves to get some of those individuals activated. People like Stown peeking from Cave off of a support flash from one of his teammates. There was always some kind of plan that was in place, whereas you see a team like FaZe, maybe, against a team like Gamer Legion, and they're just going to play back. They're going to say, Oh, we're going to wait for that mistake that's going to come. The thing was, Gamer Legion wasn't making many mistakes. It was up to the individuals from Heroic to go above and beyond by just hitting nasty shots and having good plans on top of it. And we're talking about a second map coming into things. Heroic's pick, obviously, uh, it's going to be Inferno, and things just not looking, you know, at any brighter for Gamer Legion to turn this series around, potentially. Not at all, not at all. Heroic have played Inferno twice at this tournament so far. They beat FaZe quite convincingly 16-7. to They beat Team Liquid as well 16-11. to So they're already taking down two of the best teams in the world on the map of Inferno. Now, take nothing away from Gamer Legion. It's not a bad team on Inferno. They played a lot as well the past three months. They have a lot of records on it, which means there's a lot of material for Cadian and Exist to dive into. So, again, I'm, I'm struggling finding an argument as to why Heroic were to lose Inferno. They've looked solid so far. Even against FaZe, they were down 5-2 and ended up winning 16-7. It was dominating coming out of Heroic. So, I, I, can't, I can't tell you. I can't lie. I can't tell you why Gamer Legion could win Inferno right here against Heroic. Yeah, I'm having a pre pretty hard time also. Um, I, I think this is where the series ends. For me, Gamer Legion had to win Ancient if they wanted to have a chance in this series. It didn't happen. I think this is already why Heroic has kind of flexed into the map pool, forcing Gamer Legion off of their perma pick in Overpass. Like, that itself was such a strong move already in the veto that Kadian exists. The rest of Heroic, they probably thought in some ways we had already won once that veto came in. Well, speaking of maps, you guys can have your say in the show match over on Blast.TV. If you're not watching over there already, make sure you switch on over to that platform and get your votes in because you just have one more ban left and my heart is broken because they decided oh, to ban what? out Anubis. What is wrong with Why these people? Why would you do that? The fans have betrayed me. So I've we've got, what have we got left? Inferno and I always struggle with the third. Nuke. Love that. Ooh, ooh, okay. Nuke, I think nuke it, would be fun. I like Nuke. Please don't, yeah. Inferno. Please. I'm like nuke. I think Nuke. Give, me, give us new. Yeah, please. please. Come on. But we do have Inferno now. Uh, Maui, you've been saying uh, you don't feel like there's hope for Game Legion to be turned this one around. You were also saying a similar sentiment. Jacob, anything that we should be looking out for? Do you feel like, you know, Shui might have some uh, cheeky t calls on this one? <laughs> it's going to be tough for him. I think one of the things that Heroic does so, so well is the banana control they always do. They have Yabi over there. They have Tessas over there. They have Kadian sometimes chiming in as well. That trio is always controlling bananas. So if I'm Game Legion, I'm going to test Shoes in Pit. I'm going to test that big bomb site to begin with. 
see if there's a bit of an opening and see if you can drag away Kadian from Banana, which potentially could open that avenue for them. But it's tough. It's very tough for Game League. With, with Inferno and how it's been playing out at this event, there's a couple of teams that seemingly have un unlocked why it has become so more, much more T-sided. And to be frank, I just haven't seen Gamer Legion prove to me that they know what Hooksy and G2 were doing to win over 80% of their T-side rounds on Inferno. Those were the people that were pushing forward the meta of what's possible. And Shuhei, despite the fact that I think he's such a phenomenal caller on Ancient, on Overpass, I don't, I've never, I haven't seen it on Inferno, unfortunately. It feels a little bit more typical in terms of what you would expect on this map. And I think Heroic actually play a very similar style. They're not necessarily pushing the meta in any serious direction, but they're both just trying something similar, and Heroic just has the higher quality player. There's one player you look out for here on Inferno, and that is Kadian. He is averaging a high rating in particular on this map of Inferno, and he likes to roam around. His average rating on the T side on Inferno is 1.12 for an AWP player who's calling as well. That is incredible high. He loves that map, so watch out for Kadian. Well, we are moving on to map number two and it is the pick of the Danes. We do see Inferno gracing our screens and only one more map potentially separating Heroic from the coveted Grand Finals. Coveted Grand Finals indeed and Heroic have made it deep into the playoffs of every major that they've played in. Now they have a chance. One step closer to that trophy that they missed out on in Rio just in the Grand Finals. One last chance to make it to that biggest stage tomorrow evening and fight for one of the final or the final major trophy in CSGO. It's never looked more doable than this for Heroic, right? It's lined up for them. They know that they just have to win this map and they're going to be back in the Grand Finals. They have the experience from last time and I'm sure they want to make their way back. Game of Legion versus Heroic. The second map is coming up right here and right now. And on we go, Jason. It's Heroic starting on the T side and Game of Legion. They're going to be on the CT side to begin with. And my god, the desk laid it out for us. They need every single thing they can get Gamer Legion. Heroic are going to be strong on this map. And Kadian in particular, like Jim Pimp was saying at the end, you know he's going to be a powerful player on this one. Sui looking for the early shot here with the USB, maybe luring them right into the Deagles, or into the Duelies, rather. There is a flash to set up for the corner if they want to go for it. Yeah, but I think spawning Kadian, they're going to hold back on it for just a moment. This is tense over at the half wall. Tess's turn for that flashbang that might come in. Both teams holding their nerve for the moment. I think it's Shush flashbang they have to worry about. If he pops that right over the wall, a little bit of a boost. That'll reveal something. There comes the flash to set it up, and Echo just stuck him back in the corner. They found it, they isolated him, and they've taken him down. Tess's did a good job. He runs out of bullets, but it will not make a difference. Three kills to start this pistol with. Game of Legion, there's not much they could do right here. No. Try and get some kills if you can, but you're not going to be winning the round. They just got worked. Absolutely set up. A little bit of presence shown on a boost to set up that flashbang, which is perfect. The duelies tucked behind sandbags, awaiting a defensive flash that was just too late. Nice openings provided by Tesses and Stown. And an early start for Heroic. That pop you heard right as Echo was going down was from Kios throwing the flashbang inside of the bomb site to try and help out Echo to try and swing the tide of that battle. But whatever that flashbang went, it just didn't wasn't in the perfect position, right? They weren't nearly flashed enough. And it's gonna be... It's not for that position, right? It's meant to allow them to swing, and unfortunately yes. they were so defensive and tucked down it. Massively ineffective. Shush falls as well, right at the end. And I hope Gamer Legion had a good chat between matches because their defense on Ancient was a sieve. There was nothing holding back Heroic, and it could be something similar here on Inferno. In a mental game of, of recovering from what could have been a, a map one, the way that it played out to begin with, and then the inability to close the door on Heroic and leave them wanting on Ancient, just you're going to have to find a way to forget about that right now. You'll have time after this game, whether you win or lose, to think about it. Right now, oh, oh, in the middle, there it is. shush, the spray, it's immaculate. Taking down four of them, and Immer on the duelies, just running away from the action, but yeah, a little display of power from Shush. Yeah, well, give us a little cowboy glimpse if you're Ima. Go for a couple kills of his duelies. Gonna turn around, he's gotta find the range, the distance, the time to pounce, and oh boy, Shush with an ace. To start Inferno, Shush gets all five kills, and it's two to nothing. Yeah, no cowboy heroics coming out this time. Okay, Game of Legion, it combines to this one, so it's not all bad. I mean, you know this can happen. Obviously, the attempt is to try and overwhelm a single player that's down there, but once they line up for each other, it's a little bit too much. 
M4s in play, but some notable grenades that are going to be lacking. And again, a defuse kit not there. Those are Molotovs. They're going to need them at some point. Light utility, as you mentioned, they don't have a lot of it, so conserving things down banana. So he's just going to keep top banana control. Heroic not fooled at all. They know it's going to be a third round by two Mac 10 still in play on Stown and Kadian over towards banana. Smoke's thrown out mid by Heroic to keep the defense honest, but this is always going to be a hit at this B bomb site. It's Suhei and Kios to defend. Yeah, they knew that there was two people at top mid. They could probably assume that there was a third one in the pit somewhere because of the pop flash that was going in. Although look at the rotation coming from Gamer Legion. They're going to have three people here, but it might be a second too late. Smokes are already up. And look, double run through into construction. Suhei gets completely bodied by Stown. And now Kios inside of the bomb site. He needs some backup, but it's not going to be coming. And they just clean it up like it was nothing. Imer and Isaac, they did, didn't even get to rotate out of the A bomb site. I was going to say, did anyone even shoot a weapon? That's so easy for Heroic. That's free as hell. And Kadian doesn't even upgrade. He keeps the Mac 10 for the moment, but that is way too easy. Oh, I like this. Look at Shush. Hold on to the bomb plant. Get your team in a position to hunt down the weapons. Oh, wow. Heroic want to be ruthless on this potentially deciding map. You're feeling confident if you're delaying that bomb plant. I mean, you know that they're not going to be showing up, but still giving away a chance maybe to hunt another rifle down. That's all they're going to have. That double push towards CT spawn and construction, and obviously the fact that they get the Mac 10 jump around the corner will definitely win you the round like that. But that's not every day. Sometimes T's will push you on that side, but Putting two people in there, definitely a little bit out of the meta. It works really well. They're not getting found, although he will get the kill on Stown at the very least. Isaac is under some pressure, and they know exactly where he is now. So one of the rifles gone. Emma's going to be a little bit careful that he doesn't run too close to the explosion. Slowly getting chased down here. <laughs> oh my god! Everything is going the way of Heroic. In the waning seconds of that round, they find him with a wall bang. 3-0. And nothing saved. Good luck in round four. Some pistols being upgraded. That's disgusting from Stown. But yeah, this wraparound and the slow pace of this B hit, what are you supposed to do when you're left in the bomb site all on your own? That's a horrible way to start a half if you're Gamer Legion. That makes you feel absolutely terrible. It makes you feel useless. And they'll be fighting against those vibes this entire time. They upgraded some pistols, but that's about all they have right now. I mean, they they pulled a miracle like this once on Ancient, and it, it did sort of inspire a little bit of confidence, but to have to rely on this, right? To have to rely on them walking into a stack for the five sevens or the Eagles or whatever to, to pick up a couple of kills each. It's not what you want to be doing early on here. Tess is testing out the walls as much as he can. And Aiko is playing solo on this side of the map. Yeah, no stress at the moment, just probing. Lured the entire defense over. 52 seconds left on the clock, and Heroic is going to start knocking on the door up middle. Utility being spent just to get up and control safely. Looking to pull anyone over at B out into the open so Stown can grab information for the team. But there's nothing to stop Heroic. No, short of Acorn getting three kills in, in succession here, this is going to be a very easy round for Heroic. Actually, they're going to turn it into a B-split, so maybe not. It's, it's interesting. I don't know about this one. 25 seconds, Jason. They're running into a three-man stack at the moment. They did get one of the kills. Sui so playing up close to the 5.70. He's the instant headshot, and he'll get it as well. And now the clock is getting a bit dangerous. Only 15 seconds. They might have made a big mistake here. They're still finding the shots, and Isaac, the only one left. 10 seconds on the clock, and a wide swing for Tess to open up the bomb site. That got scary. That got way worse than it needed to be. But Heroic still win the round. Yeah, that got real sketchy. Heroic maybe playing a little bit too cute for their own good. Almost get caught out, but well done from Tessus. Some critical kills, defending the bomb planter as well. It's four to nothing. Now the AWP is out in the hands of Acor. That was a huge piece of the puzzle on Ancient, even though it never got going on defense. Here on the CT side of Inferno, if he can catch fire, if he can be mobile, be confident, take some early peaks, get some opening kills, 
That would be a massive benefit for Gamer Legion. At a quick angle towards alternate mid. Oh, he's almost stepped wide enough to see Shush down in the middle, but it's very risky to try and do it. There's something there to work with. 18 health. And if you're on Blaster TV, you can vote for the first player that you want to see in the show match. Right now, it looks like it's going to be simple. I'm not surprised whatsoever. Round number five, Jason. They have still some grenades to work with here for Gamer Legion. This is kind of doable. Double setup towards the quad side. You like this defense? Yeah, I mean, look, they don't have a Molotov. They don't have that. That smoke is just deployed now. That's well timed, so that might make things a little bit easier. Minute left on the clock. Heroics will have plenty of time to think of different options. And actually, they're not super confident in that aggressive defense. Leaving Ima all on his own. Boosted up right next to Boiler. Here comes the set piece. Shui's wrapped around, and now it looks a little bit strong. Yeah, he's got a Molotov that he's thrown down, and a smoke on top. He had two grenades left, and that's going to open it up. But the boost is completely naked to Tessas. Walking in on the other side now. Sui and Isaac, how do you get back into this round? Smoke up deep. Another one going down. There was a gap, but it's going to be gone instantly. Sui knows he has to do something to get his team back on this one. Even low on health, he just wants to find something. That's Eight the bomb. Ball. The bomb. He can't find the shot, though. He did get the first one. Maybe a chance. There we go. He's dropped now. This is a nightmare. Heroic. They had the entry, but they could never get the bomb down on the low ground. And Sue going to be able to pick up the last couple of kills there. Eiko, though, definitely the one that saved them. You're not going to get a gift like that from Heroic too often, though. I'm not quite sure what caused Heroic to stall out on that hit. They get this opening kill, able to jump out and wrap around lane. It's the perfect call. That round looks beautiful up until the point where there's a gap in the smoke and Acor gets some clean looks. But it felt like Heroic could have had control of that bomb site any number of times. But Gamer Legion get their first on the board instead. Three round lead. They were in position for it, no doubt. Anyone would have made the jump down there with the bomb, and at least it would have been a bomb plan and a tougher round for Gamer Legion to try and win. Run boost over the middle for Acor to try and take a deep look down there. And actually, he's going to be rotating back with Emma as well. They're a little bit worried that there might be a faster play towards the B bomb site. Forced out an early piece of utility from this B defense. Just a narrow shot flying past Kiaz's head. But that's going to be intimidating that Kadian's willing to challenge with the op into the bomb site. Oh, he spotted the Molotov. A little bit of damage. Nade comes out, almost takes him down. Just a little bit more chip damage. And Heroic might just fall into this B hit now. They know the position of the op. They know the position of the rotator. How does Sui help out Kios, who's at the back here? He's smoked off on both angles. And he's going to walk right through it. That's bold. Ready to try and play around the fountain. They should know where he is. I think they heard that footstep right there. And they just hard clear it out. Kios on his own. And they're slowing it down. Heroic. They're making it so hard. He would love like a quick fight where he can really just, you know, swing around the, the, the pillar and try and take him one at a time. But they just slow it down. And he gets very nervous in the back of the bomb site. Yeah, well, I mean, it's great that he got in. But neither one of the two defenders were actually watching to see how Heroic was progressing. Kios had nades out that whole time. Not able to stop the opening kill from Shush. And that gives Tessas all the control, all the space in the B bomb site. So a Miss Q and Heroic get everything they want. Five to one. But Kadian wants these weapons. Yeah, realizes one of them is down there. At least put on a little bit of pressure, but looks like he's going to try and keep the AWP alive. They're probably the better choice. Five to one in favor of Heroic. The second map in the semifinals, and it is looking beautiful for the Danes at the moment. At least for five of them. Not equal. Yeah. Oh. Ah, oh, he blew up the chicken. A little bit of nerves, taking a shot at everything that moves. I mean, if you were going to be nervous, then now it's the time for it. First time out called by Gamer Legion. Ash held onto it as long as he could, but now he wants a conversation. Try and get the boys fired up. You're gonna buy coming into this round. Kiaz will get a drop. It'll be another strong position for the defense, but heroic today, this T side is clicking. We haven't really seen Gamer Legion try to take deep banana control. Is that something that you'd like to see them try? Is it, is it too risky? You might as well get, you might as well throw it a shot. What have we got? What have we got today? Mac 10s, Jason. A Mac Daddy. He's pulling blues. 
Unacceptable. Give it a shot again. Yeah, a couple of the times they've had Vice Gamer Legion, they really haven't had the nades. The Molotovs to go deep down right. They really haven't had like the entire kit of utility. You need to take that deep banana control. But at this point, yeah, switch things up perhaps and go for it. Although I don't think that's the main critical problem they're having. Heroics equally not really challenging banana early a whole lot. Next case is going to be a knife, Jason. I'm calling it down. Isaac's in trouble. It's all down to timing on this jiggle. He's going to swing right into it. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Lucky to be alive. You don't like to see that. 12 health on him. All about the timing on this one. Look at how much pressure Heroic's able to apply, though, early on with these opening moves. Last round, it was Katie and challenging into B with the AWP, forced a defensive smoke. This one puts Isaac down to 12 HP, and he has to drop an early smoke as well. Heroic having a lot of success in their opening plays and now into mid control. Yeah, look at the minimap. Look at how far back Game of Legion are. Pushed back into the A bomb site. They're not out on Banana. They really don't know anything about what's coming next. Stown's going to be creeping on in and might have had the chance there, but Sui, could it be better this time? Taking down Stown and now they're going to try and see if they can hit this bomb site. Same recipe for Heroic. Four people entering. Kios flashed into the fight, but the counter flashes are just as good. Eight for one, it's double, back with a triple, and that will be plenty of enough. That's the firepower that they need. Game of Legion now with a second round on the board. Yeah, this time as well, able to put a stop to Heroic's attack. A Molotov, a smoke on top of it, forced them into an uncomfortable execute, and Heroic get annihilated. Good shooting from Acor, the AWP comes alive. Yeah, we take that. Shush and Tessas both having the same idea to jump up over the top. Flashbangs delay them, and obviously Acor puts a stop to everything. Well, let's see how much it slows down Heroic, right? Because so far, nothing really has. They're going to be putting some pressure on this one. Suhei, though, good for the first opening shot. The Molotov finally going to spread far enough to burn him. But he'll put up the smoke and just make a run for it. That's a good win. That kill might have actually won them the round. Nice job from Acor, though. He actually peeks down mid, gets away with one, and actually spots exactly where they're progressing on the map. Oh, headshot angle. Yeah, he's got that. It's going to take Acor away from mid. It's going to take Ima away from mid. It's going to give space to Heroic, and now they can work up rap side. Yeah, and I bet you if Yabby had more health, he would have been pushing Ima running out of the Molotov like that, but didn't really feel comfortable. Kios here, just playing around a little obelisk. He's good for the one kill, and the spray is great. Double on him, and Acor, not even scoped up, but still lightning fast to take down Kadian. Game of Legion finding some back-to-back -back rounds here, and even better, getting the heroic economy all the way down. They can't really buy into this round. Game of Legion might have brought themselves just a little bit of breathing space. Yeah, this has been a wonderful recovery. Three of the last four rounds in their favor and doing it all pretty clean. Acor's AWP has helped out in a big way, but more than anything, they're keeping track of where Heroic is on the map. Perhaps benefited by stylistically Heroic playing these grouped up 4-1 T-sides. Might be time to spread that out now. And Ima's getting a bit of courage, a peek down in towards alt mid. Isaac in the open, Molotov put out, but he loves this fight, but not for long. That should be enough. That should be enough of a slowdown. M4, well... <laughs> was in the hands of Stown, but it took a grenade. I think if they if they if they could have cleared out the apartments, they could have tried to see if they could get the pop down towards the pit. It's not gonna be possible here, and Emma will clean it up at the end. That's a cool. nice triple. It feels like the game has started. It feels like the game's finally. finally here. Both teams, the defense locking things down. A good mini comeback from Gamer Legion so far, four to five. They've got some energy back into the Acor Arena as well. A timeout is taken from Heroic, their first. Yeah, Heroic really managed to silence the crowd on that first map, and going into the second one, it's been a very similar story. A five to four. And Heroic now having to dig a little bit deeper. They are on the T side, so the fact that they got five rounds is already probably make them feel fairly confident. But obviously, being in the semifinals of a major, you're not thinking about, like, is it going to be five? So you just want all the rounds, every single thing you can get. If they can make this an 11-4 half, they will. 
Right now, it's Shush on top of the scoreboard. He did start with uh, an ace in that early round, so still nine kills on him. Tess is at seven. And Ikor and Ima are the two players on the other side that are trying to put some pressure on. Three man set up at the top of Banana. We talked about whether or not they wanted to fight for the deep Banana control, which will give you some other options defensively. So far, just putting a couple of shots through, but they are pretty aggressive here. Yeah, this is the most aggressive we've seen them just for a triple nade deep. Doesn't do nearly as much damage as they would have liked. Shush and Isaac exchanging fire down mid. Oh, look at, you want to talk about aggression. Pop flash, a chance for one, a chance for two, and even a dink on Kadian. What a nice opening from Suhei. Heroic, they were so far back and they still just weren't really ready for it. Tess is going to get caught as well. Surely you're not doing anything else that deep on the ramp, really. Yabby brings one back. But from the looks of things right now, Yabby would have to do all of the work. Yeah, Yabby has to open something up over in Halls. He's the one chance that Kadian has to get involved in the action. Two on three with 50 seconds left on the clock. And perhaps grouping up towards Banana saying, maybe it's just one player. Maybe they've shifted two back to the A bomb site. Maybe this is where we want to attack. And they'd be right. They do have two smokes. Yeah, but how do you get past this? As Acor. soon as Acor gets flashed off this angle. Oh, there it is. I guess the answer is you don't. Acor's got them both. Yeah, at that range, and Acor looks warmed up. Everyone from Game Religion looks warmed up. They all seem to have gotten into this. This push from Suhei, the aggressive stance in middle behind the smoke. Obviously, Acor's off is heated up nicely. Things looking good all of a sudden for Gamer Legion. Four in a row and five of the last six. And tying up the game. Heroic were primed to run away with this first half, but they've really been slowed down. And again, the economy is catching up to the Danish side now. Got some Tech Nines out. Got some P250s and a Deagle as well. Any damage they could do in this one round would absolutely help them out later on. Game and Legion down to uh, two players in that previous round, so you definitely want to be in a position where you can do some damage here. How do you find someone, though? Sue up close to the bottom of Banana. Got a crossfire with uh -oh. Kios. Oh, this is dangerous. He's going to have the reload back in time. Sue, good for only the one. And Kios, you want to be real careful on this one. If he'd taken a bullet to the face as well, that could have been at least a bomb plant on top for Heroic. Yeah, well done considering that timing on the reload. That was almost a catastrophe. Back up towards mid, but Ima's got an aggressive stance as well. Actually, if they could neutralize him, Isaac would be left alone at the A-bomb site. Kadian and Yabby gonna take their time. Yeah, Over towards him. apartments we go. He saw the smoke in the middle and he's reading it very well. He's saying, you know what, I'm gonna go find out exactly what is going on. He's found empty middle. Isaac just has to not die. Just don't even fight for too long. I mean, maybe if you get a first shot here, it's gonna be just fine, but you don't even have to stick around. Kadian, there's not much he could do. Swinging out wide and Isaac will be able to close out the round. Game of Legion back with a round lead now. Six to five in their favor. Yeah, this is lovely. It looked like Heroic might run away from this half. What a good lockdown from Gamer Legion, spurred forward by Acor in his op. And now they've got money behind this. They've got swagger and confidence in their peaks. And they've got a one round lead. Trying to even things up and take us to a third map. That would be Mirage, still a long way away. Yeah, Heroic have already proven once before that. You really can't underestimate them, even if it looks like Game of Legion is going to be playing very well. It is not over until it's over here. Tess is clearing out the A apartments. Down and Kadian working as a duo on the other side of the map, and they're going to be clicking out or clearing out Banana at the moment. But once again, Game of Legion are kind of giving up on that. They're saying, we, we don't want to stick around and fight it. We'll let you have it for now. And that beat defense at times, that's how Rory got their success early on. They were able to overpower it whenever it was this double setup. Acor is going to get tested here. Yabby and Tess is all oh, horrible timing. They know they've got the advantage and they press it. Defense shifting to close the gap. Utility being spent and Stown listening for information. Ready to make his move. Yeah, tested and coming out a little bit short on that one. Now Tess is going to be able to help out if anyone tries to rotate. They are going to get caught by him. You can see he's set up for it here. Isaac not going to get flashed around the corner. And actually, Tessus, he gives up on the angle. And that's a mistake. 
Maybe Gamer Legion can come back into this round. 40 seconds. Flank is coming in. Yabby, he's got the grenade in hand, and there's the timing. Imma able to pick up the kill. Heroic, they had their opportunity, but now it is gone. Katie in the last one left. In a one versus three to try and clutch this round, but he has no idea where they are. Well, Ima's even given up on the flank. He's rotating all the way back through CT spawn to join up. Cadian sees one. He'll have no idea about the second, a double peak. What a defense from Gamer Legion, and uncharacteristically, Heroic give him the opportunity. There's been a couple of times in this match so yeah, far. Yeah, now. Yeah, where it just looks like Heroic maybe are overthinking things a little bit. If Tessus just holds this angle and he wins this fight, that's going to be a huge one, but obviously Immer in the middle. That one took almost everything away from Heroic. I mean, you have to say, good utility dump as much as Gamer Legion had at the B site to delay that B hit as long as possible, because that's what allows the flank to come in. And there he is. There's the boy getting hyped up. Feeling it now. Two round lead for Gamer Legion. They should be feeling it. They're building something amazing here on the first half. Early fight one, Immer again, back on the scoreboard. Sui, wide swing behind the flashbang. And he's at least good for the one. They know Kios, they could see it. He is the one that threw that flashbang. Oh my lord. That's really risky. How bold. Kadian ready to take the fight, but he can't defeat Kios on this one. Shush and Tessus just left and they're getting over for a flank. There's the bomb down and he just wants to keep on fighting. Kios finding more multi-kills. He is building a name for himself tonight. 13 to 5, Jason, on him. Yeah, Ima's, Ima's really working this map very well. He's being super proactive on defense. This is the opening kill, challenging Yabby at an awkward moment. But he's been active behind the smokes in the middle this entire half. And Gabriel Legion has forced yet another timeout out of Heroic. Heading into round 14, their second as they have been stumped and locked out. Not even a bomb plant in the last seven rounds. It's unbelievable what's happening here because the story was really unfolding nicely for Heroic. It was about them running away the first half and possibly just cruising straight into the grand finals. And now the mood has completely changed. Here we go. What have we got, baby? Don't let us down. This one's Oh, no. Nice. I can feel it already, Jason. You know it too. It's set up for it. Oh, it's oh, it's another blue, Jason, isn't it? The blues just keep on coming. Another run boost, a chance for Ima. Oh, this is what I'm talking about, baby. I love this. He's got the hot hand and they're setting him up nicely. Another opening kill for Ima. Suhei, deep down banana finds two. Second player was so flashed coming through that one, never stood a chance. The Tech Nines have man. fallen short here for Heroic. Oh, Kios, yeah, that's the right idea. Do it again, my man. Good double. And a 9-5 to five score line as we go into the 15th round. If you're Heroic and a round like that comes out, you feel like you've lost complete control of this map, like you've been absolutely <laughs> ruined. It's they have all, lost control. It's all gone horribly wrong. Crowd chanting for chaos. Chaos, chaos, chaos. Final round of the first half. Yeah, they love him right now, don't they? He's had one of the hardest jobs so far, which is defending that B bomb site. Often in a very, very tough attack from a, from a heroic. Now the Danes are on the back foot. They need a sixth round here just to kind of prove to themselves that they can do something. They've lost eight rounds in a row. Gamer Legion have taken over the first half completely out of nowhere. Yeah, but this Gamer is and fast. Isaac, they're on their own. This is fast pace. Heroics change the timing. They're going to wrap around the bomb site. Oh, Ima and Isaac, are they even aware of the possibility? Are they going to be ready for this? Ima doesn't look like it whatsoever. Made in hand. Oh, pinned down behind the box as well. Gets one. Isaac has helped recover, but Stown is too much. He almost had the second kill Ima for a minute. I believe he could. Stown's going to be picking up the AWP. Some shots are ringing out, and there's a good kill. Kios goes out of the round. Acor and Sue, how do you get this retake on? You need to find a kill right now. More grenades are just raining down to lock out that library position. They're trying to run their way through, but Kadian is able to catch one. And all on Acor, he can't get the job done. Nine to six at the end. But Gamer leads you with an unbelievable comeback in the first half. We'll see if it's enough for the second half.
I think what makes me proud of myself is actually not so much like the trophies and the winning moments. I think it's more like how I behave as a leader. It's a bit like uh, narcissistic, but sometimes I would wish I, would, I had a leader like me when I was like playing at a younger age, because I think that my career has definitely had like a really uh, bumpy road, and I think like under different reigns, under different leadership, there's a chance of things would be different. I guess you can say I admire to try and be the leader that I wish I had early on in my career. Nothing long. Nothing long. Nothing long. No. No, no, no. Oh, he went back. He went back. Yeah. Not sure. Not strong. Not strong. Do it. Flashing. Dead one. Pop. What should be? What should be? Banana coming. Should be one. Two. I nice smoke it. Yeah, do it. I'm holding flash. Coming nice in. Smoke I'm flashing. All but two. All but two. Red coming again. in. I'm land. Two dead. Nice. Nice. It's one. Nice. 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 The tension, the seriousness of our major semi final has descended on Paris. Gamer Legion have fought back in the opening half. They looked like they were going to get absolutely knocked out, but they have strength that nobody knew existed in them. 9 6, Jason, at the end of it. They are primed to take the second map. They can do it and get us on to a third. They might keep this semi-final alive a little while longer. Yeah, but overcoming Heroic's defense is no easy task. And once again, we're gonna get a CT push on the pistol run out of Heroic. And Kadian's gonna have a real early flank. Knows what's coming, but they've gotta slow it down. And indeed they do. Yabby, Kadian, fill up the scoreboard. The dually is just way too much in this one. And Isaac, he snuck back through construction, but they already know they've got him triangulated and now the entire rest of heroic are showing up on the other side so pistol round here it's going to be good for heroic Cadian with the triple and after losing eight rounds in a row they they come back and do a little bit here at the very least yeah grab the last round of the first half grab another pistol round under the belt they won both on ancient as well now both here on inferno gonna make things just a little bit more difficult for gamer legion to win you don't get that easiness of fighting against pistols. 
And with no bomb plant, Gamer Legion going to save up entirely for the third round buy. And you saw what happened in the first half at the beginning when Gamer Legion didn't really have the money. They didn't have the grenades to lock down Banana the way that they probably wanted to. Definitely cost them a little bit early on. So Heroic hoping that they can make their way past that a bit earlier. And just start with all the weapons and all the grenades that you want on the CT side. They do make such a difference on this map. Oh, they're just going to have a little bit of fun. Fitting in Paris. We've seen shocks. We've seen RPK. Gamer Legion now taking a French timeout. Yeah, Kenny in the building as well, I know, somewhere. So we've got all the French legends coming out, which is only fitting. Wouldn't want it any other way. Speaking of French Counter-Strike, I mean, Vitality are still yet to play later on today. Oh, they missed the chicken, Jason. They're looking to cause just a little distraction to force some utility out of the defense, but Heroic doesn't give a damn. And actually, Tessis doesn't even have utility to spend, so him and Shush are just chilling, waiting for this final play to come in. For Gamer Legion, looking to continue silencing the doubters, looking to continue proving everybody wrong with their run in the Paris Major. For Heroic, this event is about redemption from their loss in Rio. It's about completing this run that they've been on coming out of the online era. Their rise as a team and as a unit, yet to hoist a major trophy. They've gotten so close. Looking to do it here in Paris. Unquestionably, from the outset, one of the favorite teams to make it all the way through. All right. Nicely done, boys. Well done, lads. What? Congrats to everybody involved. Nine to eight, one round lead for Gamer Legion. They've got AKs back on the board in round 18. And holding on to the MP9s. A bit of a bonus round that's coming up from Heroic. Not necessarily a bad choice. Think out of all the maps, surely Inferno is one of the best ones to have an MP9 on on the CT side. Well, both of them are at the B bomb site, so perhaps a little bit shallow on the defense there in terms of stopping power. Gamer Legion just now has control of top banana. That's going to pull KD in to start shifting towards CT spawn. Utility dump from Tess's. And I think Gamer Legion's just going to be happy with the control they have and just go for it. Are they going to be able to spam? enough down through the smoke well now that Tessis is running away this is started looking incredibly sketchy yeah interestingly that he's doing it as well uh, yeah i was gonna say he's getting called back because shush is aggressive in mid so is down they see nothing they all know it's gonna be a b hit and here we come yeah this boost is gonna be impressive they need the first kill and they need to survive as well gabby oh actually Tessis is powering on through that is a lot of chaos on the b bomb side gabby they still don't know about it and he's gonna get one more kill but they catch him through the smoke and Katie, and do you want to risk it? Do you want to wait for the teammates, or do you want to go through the smoke? And the answer has already been given. Shush has nades, and sound on the flank. This is a smart call for Katie to be patient. Yeah, flash goes out, but nobody really peeking behind it. Going to be smoked off on the one side. Actually, that smoke will block off down, and there's going to be a good kill. Sui is out of it. A call, one versus three, and he's not going to be able to do anything about it. Shush just going clean through. Oh, man. Heroic winning the early one, surviving with the bonus round. I'm going to tie up the scoreline 9 to 9. That smoke that's thrown over towards the banana side on the retake, you have to assume that if any of the Gamer Legion players would have been playing there, they would have never expected Stown to come in with the flank, right? Yeah, that's the idea of it. Wasn't even needed, though. Good job from Shush on the retake, and Heroic continue to barrel forwards four rounds straight three in the second half right, that ties up the game pockets of the heroic fans here in paris trying to drown out the rest of them that were heavily on the game allegiance side it's katie in to begin with shuts down a core in the middle getting a little bit close here for the pistols that could have been a kill on Stown. That's not a bad range to take the fight with. And oh, dear. Sue, that should have probably been a kill. Yeah, they had their chances. This round was about a li limiting the, ec the economy that Heroic was going to work with. And they don't get anything that they would have liked. Ema's going to be smoked off with his deagle. Stop, 
Yeah, just a deagle and nobody to find at the moment. Bomb is down in the middle, so again, you're right, some damage here would have really made a difference. Yeah, this is going to make Herog feel a lot more comfortable. With a one round lead, they're going to be up 10 to 9. All the money in the world. And bang, Shush finds him at the end. I mean, we saw it on Ancient. The way that it played out, that first half, very competitive. Looked like Gamer Legion were going to be able to take the whole thing. And then on the second half, Heroic never looked back. They just ran them down, hunted them down, and decisively won that ancient map. Even if it was close at the end in terms of the overall score, Heroic just looked like they were unbeatable on that map. And Heroic, have, do so the same thing again. Heroic have so many options on the CT side new too now with this amount of money. We know teams on Inferno play it pretty conservative on retakes, very hard bomb sites to retake, so save a couple of guns here or there. Heroic might have three or four buys behind them at this point. Let's see what Gamer Legion's got. They've got a giant hill in front of them they need to climb. What a setup. Equal. He did get the flick in as well, but not enough for the kill. One round lead for Heroic. It doesn't seem like a lot. But it's the money, it's the economy that's on their side. And it's the slowdown for Gamer Legion that they never recovered on the opening map. They weren't able to summon the same strength that Heroic were. And at the end of the day, that's easily the difference between being stopped in the semi-final or making it all the way to, through to the grand final. Just that little bit of difference here. All of the money spent on Gamer Legion. As they are taking a look at that banana position. And once again, a stack for Heroic towards the B-bomb site. Kadian's there with his AWP. Tessis is in support with Utility. Yabby boosted up. Even Stown is actually kind of shifting around at the moment. Picking up some nades to head back towards me. But he had a deep angle from alt mid. So, I mean, he's able to let Heroic know that this stack is still in its right position. Gamer Legion not really challenging anything on the map at this point. Yeah, whatever you want to do right now, I feel like pushing back down from where he is is going to be important, right? Because you can't let him get this information for free. And Heroic's happy to let you have Banana. They love it. They want you to finish there. Oh. Nicely timed Molotov. He's going to keep Acor at bay. Down to 55. Yeah, that actually couldn't have been better. 40 seconds left, and Kadian is making the rotation now. They have a good feeling about this one. Look at how many nades are left on Heroic. If they just get into position, the grenades alone could make the difference. Kadian, oh wow, that's a dangerous move, but he just runs right out there, flash on the one side, trying to keep them back. We're down to 24 seconds. If you want to go, Gamer Legion, it's going to have to be right now, but again, the utility for the Danish side is just overpowering. 15 seconds on the clock, they're running out of time, no time. Jason. They have to go right now, and it has to be flawless. 10 seconds on the clock, and Stown is ready to destroy them inside of the bomb site. No scope for Echo, only four seconds left, Doesn't and the bomb can't, they can't get it. They had the kills, but not the time. And that's a worrying sign. Gamer Legion never pulling the trigger on that hit. They were moving into it for 30 seconds and just never actually hit the go button. Even if these kills all go the way they wanted, I don't even know if they have the time for that. That is a tough setup to break to be able to safely plant. Two round lead now for Heroic. And that's a frustrating loss, right? You had the kills, you just you needed to go a little bit earlier, but that one Molotov as well to slow them down. I mean, it all comes back at the end of it to make a huge difference. And because they Alien, keep... Oh, oh. And this move. Emma blown up at the start of it. And because Gamer Legion have three players surviving, even in a loss, they're kind of forced to buy up around it. This is a great chance for Heroic to springboard this into a suffocating lead. Acor's playing with death, and oh, okay. Somehow he finds one. Sure, you need a flashbang to get rid of him here, or he will definitely get at least the one kill. Stown in the middle as well, holding on his own. Oh, that's coming down everywhere. Stown holding up his end of the bargain, and I sack. He gets a great transfer. I have no idea how. Stown and Shush both blown up, and now the rotation for them. The Acor ready to snipe them out of it. Gamer Legion looking for their first round in the second half, and they just got it. Yeah. No reason for Kadian to go for this. Nice round from Acor, but it's all on Isaac. That spin is unreal. Gamer Legion needs a little bit of Counter-Strike love to get their first round in the second half, but they'll take it. Yeah, and it's still early on. I mean, they, they have lost five in a row, but it's not completely done yet. They can still make it back and win this. Acor's played a magnificent game. He's got 16 kills. 
with that AWP fighting all over the place. He's going to be caught eventually. He has to run from the bomb plant. And Isaac wants that off. Might give a chance over to Kadian. He's going to go for it. Oh, I love this. Kadian is out for blood, and Isaac wants nothing to do with the fight. The intimidation factor. But cut into a one-round lead. What a way to start this round. This is nasty. This is what I want to see. He knows there's one behind him. <laughs> what a transfer. 90 degrees of perfection. That's unbelievable. But that's what you need. And you need a lot of it right now. We're going to have to see more of that out of Gamer Legion. Or they might be left in the dust here. Another timeout. Third one for Heroic as we enter into the 22nd round. Money's not pretty for Gamer Legion. I, I, that's not, I think what this timeout would be about for Heroic is knowing and realizing getting four kills even in a loss in that round before they had three players save, you know their money is not any kind of strength for them. So a win here is massive. Start setting up Heroic's final walk into the Grand Finals. One round separating these two teams. But one map on the side of Heroic already. The pressure will be on Gamer Legion. They'll start to feel it soon. A little bit of a flash around. Chaos, that's a good opening. He probably should have been dead there. The Tessas will at least get the revenge. And the money on both sides looking very questionable at the moment. Tessas deep Molotov lands way behind him. He sees an opening. If he finds out that nobody's here, but it's going to have to be quick. Shush is alone. I don't think there's going to be time. They might have found the opening here. Oh, they're it's going just quiet. him in the pit, and they know exactly where he is. Molotov on top. He could try and buy time, but it'll be another 10 seconds before any of his teammates even begin to show up, and they just edge him out. Aiko will find another kill before he's down. Bombs in pit. Bombs in pit. They can't get into the bomb site. This is still a fight. This is still a battle. And Gamer Legion, oh, this is going to be a tough one to work out a solution. Oh, well, that might do it. Jiggle coming in from Suhei, and he makes the run, risks it all, running into the bomb site. Man, you're right, that did get a little bit too close. But that's a tight game. Jason, we're going to be at 11-11. Yeah, this goes the swing. The economic swing goes the other direction. Now it's heroic who are out of funds, especially if Isaac can hunt this down. If he can find this timing, almost connects. 54 HP taken off. But that'll be it. It's going to be tied at 11, and Heroic have no money. Yeah, Ima looking to see if he can steal the rifle. Got to be careful you don't lose too much. I mean, that AWP is pretty worth having on the Gamer Legion side. But a tied game. Second oh. map, and there we go. A nice shot as Stown tries to make the jump for information. All right, this gets interesting. <laughs> Gamer Legion about to take potentially a one round lead. Right in the closing stages, survived an early onslaught from this defense and they found a way to crack through. They've taken the money out of the hands of Heroic. Grab a lead and ride that advantage. A stack at the B bomb site, a smoke over on the A bomb site, just to try and see if that's enough to push somebody into it. And they got that wall set up at the back of the B bomb site. Why not? It might be a shock, but if it's the Mac 10, nobody cares. They don't mind sacrificing Kios for this one. It'll be absolutely worth it. Sue is thinking about it. There's the tower. And he's not going to be surprised by that one. So they've confirmed it. Yep. You know what's coming. And about at this time, Heroic says, good luck, shush. <laughs> Have fun. See what you can do. USP and Boiler. The only presence at this bomb site. And OK, well, doesn't even get really a chance. Ima adds one. He's going to spray them all down. Quad kill from Ima. And it's 12 to 11. I think this arena might be on his side, Jason. They love him in Paris. 12-11, Gamer Legion, they're in the lead. Hard to believe it. But they've actually overtaken Heroic. Looking to do what at one point looked like it was going to be impossible. 
And now I'm not so sure. Heroic. They spend everything in this one, but look at the results. Yeah, Tessa's had money to drop an AWP over, so I think that's going to help things out massively. They've got good utility. It's the lack of kits that are the problem. It's potentially the MAC-10 that could be a problem with nobody having head armor. Yeah, and the utility as well. They wish they had more grenades, Heroic. That's what got them one of those earlier rounds. They've been really good at using grenades, but now they can't buy them. Hadian. Just better on the fight in the middle, a call. I don't think you would have expected that op if you're Gamer Legion. I don't think you would have expected an op to be in the field of play or else I don't think Acor actually takes that fight dry. They might smoke him off instead, flash him off the angle to set him up. But Gamer Legion's not done yet with this A bomb site. Chewie's throwing a little bit of a distraction towards Banana. Yeah. And Katie's actually pulling, pulling them back as well from the holes pop. Stown has a really important Molotov in his back pocket that could settle this round. 50 seconds left, but if they want to get out of the apps here, if they run into the flames while they're trying to do it, it's one of the most uncomfortable positions to be in. Here come the early grenade setup. 40 seconds. That one round lead, Game of Legion. Don't let go of it now. The spray is pretty good with the early from us, and Stown is there to just take it all away. They have the three-man setup, and there's no getting through it this time. Isaac, every single player is going to be coming for him. The spray and the follow-up, it was nearly good, but more reinforcements keep showing up to the A-bomb site, and Tessis will find him at the end. They will upgrade into at least an AK, another one as well to be picked up. And Heroi not letting go of this map easily. Yeah, and that's a very strong defense in a situation where you need it, where you need to build up some money. Good job from Stown rotating over, ignoring Rapside to shore up this defense. And it works beautifully. The crowd wants Legion. Round 25. Yeah, at this point, I kind of want Legion as well. I'd love to see a third map between these two epic teams. I feel like we deserve it. But again, this is where, imagine the pressure on Gamer Legion. They've never been here before. They don't know what this feels like. And for Heroic, they've been through hell and back. Yes. They know exactly what to do in this scenario. They know exactly how this feels already. Kios making a play around the Molotovs. Solo Man and Banana to apply pressure to the B-bomb site, but Heroic shifting everyone away. Kadian's op sliding through CT spawn. How much do you have to trust Tessus to be alone like this? With no utility. And not even really checking it. He's just deep in the corner here. And this is actually a classic Heroic move. If you do this four-man setup, they will very often try to put a little bit of aggression behind it. Not quite going to keep pushing in the middle. I thought they might. Three men set up at A, two at B now. Yeah, they wanted to rotate back to B off that gamble, but Tess has called him off. Oh, he's so blind down, and now the pressure is on. One misstep here, and he's going to get his face blown off, but he's good for one more kill. Hasn't reloaded yet. Looking for Suhei. Immer in the pit is going to be taking a kill and a good follow-up. Stown gets blown up inside. He has been the rock of this A defense time and again, and this time they get rid of him. A little bit of alert coming in. Tessis. Keeping the round competitive. The bomb is only just planted. Do you risk this? I think they're going to see if they can find one kill. If maybe one heroic. kill, and maybe that pulls the trigger on it. But you're right, this is risky. If they go for it and lose everything, oh, baby, Gamer Legion's going to look good down the stretch. Where is the kid on Yabby? But this is a very hard round to win. The Flash is looking godlike at the moment. Tess is making a jump down right into the pit. But Suhei catching it with a mid-air shot. And that will be the end of it. They don't lose the rest of the rifles, but that is very, very risky. Heroic potentially bankrupting themselves. It's going to be 13 to 12. And this time, no one from Heroic is in pit to create any kind of a crossfire. Look how much room Ima has to work with. Look how much safety he has to look for fights. A brilliant follow-up. Stout's position had already been known. Oh, my God. Yeah, That's take him out of the shot. sky. Why not? Look how quick that is from Ima's point of view. 13 to 12. Heroic's going to invest everything into this round. Oh, Gamer Legion might just steal this map away right at the end. They could. Heroic off with the fiery five rounds in a row to begin the second half with, but they've really been slowed down. Now they're going to be boosting in the middle. They wanted to. It's going to be cancelled. I think they failed it a couple of times. 
They're yeah, making a lot of movement in that last round for the defense, right? Yeah, they're making a lot of bold calls right now. Very shifty defense in the previous round, flirting with that retake in the three on three and no money. This time a boost over the mid smoke. Heroic's playing a dangerous game. Ooh, that flick not coming through, Kios. Bit a bit quiet here, but a good opening on this one. You want to try and double down on the aggression and flash your way into the next fight. That's what they're discussing right now. Smoke is going to be going up, and Yabby just hiding inside. They have no idea. Stalin is coming in to try and help him out. There comes Yabby, but it's too late. Kios in the double opening hit a missed shot. The Hudson oh, no and Dyer knocked back. He is mad. Why has he done that? This is a major, and he is trying to hunt them down with the knife. Tessis and Shush are left, but there's nothing to recover the round. They can't even really escape. Absolutely bloodthirsty. Oh, this feels so good. If you're Gamer Legion, you know what the opportunity you have here on Inferno. Complete control of this map now. Up two rounds. I've never seen anything like that. That's just the moment presenting itself. And look at what they've done. Look at the atmosphere they've created coming from nowhere in this major to be in the semifinals. Being on top of one of the best teams in the world, a chance to close it out. A chance to bring it to a third and deciding map on Mirage. Just two rounds away. Fourteen to twelve. Yeah, they are almost able to take the map. And just imagine what it would mean. Ash is just laughing in the back as he watches one of his troops try to entry with a knife on the B bomb side against the AWP that failed his shot. I've, I can't even believe what I'm seeing. Fourteen to twelve, ladies and gentlemen. Twenty-second to seventh round is coming up here. We never thought Hero could be in this situation. No. We never thought Heroic would have to face this kind of pressure. They probably didn't think it either. But all that experience we touched on, them going through hell and back, the way that this team has come together, been molded by adversity, this is where that gets tested. This is where that unit gets tested. They found the strength on the first map. They've already proven that they got it. But for Heroic, what do they have to work with here? Five sevens from us, one M4. It would be crazy if they were able to pick up this round with just that. And they've been trying a lot. You mentioned it, right? A lot of boosts, a lot of stacks, a lot of movement happening on the CT side for them as they are trying to figure out what's going to be happening. And Sue is calling an amazing second half here on the T side. Oh, good find from Eva. I can't believe it. Gets you a third. Just shuts him down finally. But that's job done for Ima as he sits the rest of the round out. Ooh, Katie and Astana just get there, but would it really make any difference? Smoke up, not even going to really bounce in the right direction, and he just has a USB on the other side. So yeah, he could try some shots through. But I don't think that's going to deter Gamer Legion right through the smoke. Isaac making it work. And he can try and save the AK. Maybe find another rifle center for Cadian, but it will be 15 for Gamer Legion. As Heroic give up on any chance to fight for the bomb site. One more round, and the story will continue. What's already been an unbelievable story for Gamer Legion to make it to where they are, powering through the quarterfinals and into the semifinals here tonight. And then one more rifle. Okay, that's something for, for Heroic. That's a lifeline. Yeah, it's going to help out massively. Tess is at 1,900, it's down at 1,500. Not the prettiest bunny in the world. Gamer Legion has three chances. Three chances to close this map out, continue fighting in the semifinal. None of them will be easy. You know what's going to be a really uncomfortable experience for Gamer Legion is if we go into overtime on the back of losing three, because again, we're on a huge stage. This is something that they've never experienced before. And suddenly losing the grip on the match and going into overtime could easily be what puts them over the top here. Tell you what, they look calm and collected though. They do. They don't look like it's getting to them. Round 28. 
24 kills on Immer. He's living up to the hype right now. An absolutely godlike performance from him. Heroic need three in a row. They're dreaming of ending it in two. They would love nothing more than to skip Mirage and head straight into the grand finals. Couple of shots through. Again, they're going to leave Tessis alone. This 4-1 defense. It kind of partially worked last time because they also had a lot more grenades than they do now. Still a minute left, and they're going to be I mean, another 20 seconds, and they'll be out of most of these. Yeah, Gamer Legion has to be a little bit careful. This is where those nerves can really slow things down naturally, and if they slow play this too much, we've already seen one round of theirs slip away due to time on the clock. Heroic allowed to save some utility to the one-minute mark, and that's going to delay them even further as Yabby shifts over. He's got a Molotov as well. And Gamer Legion, again, yet to provide any pressure on the map. There is a really big weakness at the archway at the moment. If Game of Legion find it and wrap around, they, they could do some damage. Yeah, they don't have any time for that kind of a split anymore, which is why Sound, you can see him towards Pit, is watching for the wrap around. But this is all on KD, and first shot is his, and he delivers. Yeah, taking out Kios. It's a good start by Immer. Swinging back into it. One kill, one more step in the right direction. Kadian getting hunted down, but he knows Scott Suhe. It's all gone in this one. Acor killed at the end. That is what you want to see out of the captain of Heroic. Four kills to bring it a step closer to the comeback and into overtime. Hell yeah, there's Kadian. What a sequence. You think he's going down as soon as the pit player falls? Closing the gap on him real quickly. Tough to manage, but he sees it coming. A nice no-scope on Asuhe, and Akor had nothing to do. What an effort, what a stand from Kadian. Now just two more chances for Gamer Legion. Yeah, you're right. One down, two to go. Early three-man set up at the B-bomb site, which is what we've been seeing out of Heroic for a while. And it hasn't been punished too badly. Haven't been many rounds for Gamer Legion where they try and go really fast up the middle. And again, they leave Tessas here. They're trusting in this system that they built. Yeah, being stoned, thinking about it. Smoke is up on that side, but eventually they're going to have a clean look into the middle. It's the jump out. A couple of shots ringing through. But no connection for the smoke just yet, and the Molotov could have put some pressure on Yabby in the corner. In fact, he doesn't have a smoke, he just has to try and run out and take the fight. There's nobody there to catch him, so a little bit fortunate for him. Yeah, and he's on his horse now over to the B-bomb site. He sees that clear, he sees that Gamer Legion took mid but didn't want to keep it, so now he shifts over. Tessas is going to have to back away. However, no utility between these two defenders, just Yabby with this one smoke. And he's holding onto it as long as possible. 35 seconds. Again, the clock is an issue for Gamer Legion. Surely, if they go B, it's they gonna can't. be No, they're really running out of time. 25 seconds. You're right. KD in a new position down in the pit. He does get the leg shot. Immer is coming in from the apartments. There might be a shot at it here still. 16 seconds. Suhi with the one opening. Stown inside of the smoke. He's dropped the bomb on the ground and continues to spray. This is a godlike defense from Stown and he will shut it all the way down. Acor, there's nothing he could do inside. He is out of time. Stown to the rescue for Heroic as they bring it to a 30th round. Back-to-back -back desperate stands at the A bomb site. First Kadian, now Stown. Nothing to do but hide into the smoke and wait for the perfect moment. And boy, does he find it. Sue's looking. Sue knows, but can do nothing about this play. Absolutely disgusting work from Heroic's defense. One well, look at the money for Gamer Legion. A bomb plant would have made a world of difference for them. They actually don't have that much to work with. If you have an ace up the sleeve, some really nerdy strategy that you've been practicing and haven't shown anyone, now would be the time to do it. Yeah, the problem is, regardless of what the strategy is, it's the firepower behind it that's going to make the difference. Gamer Legion had their two chances. Without bomb plants in those two rounds, money is tight. Kios has dropped down to a Tech 9, so is Isaac. They're going to be really struggling for rifles. In fact, descending to Galil's and a scout. 
Gamer Legion can feel overtime looming. 30th and final round of regulation. They had a work right where they wanted them. Low on economy, but they managed to save a couple of AKs and keep it rolling. Kadian had the quad kill, now Stown with the triple. And now Heroica looking for one more round to bring this into overtime and stop Game of Legion in their tracks. It's the same setup, except this time it's Stown playing over here. And that's interesting. Oh my god! <laughs> Take this bullet. That's, a call gets deleted. That's so unreasonable. What a shot from Stown. Kadian shifting over the heroes over the past two rounds for Heroic. Powerful defenders for this B bomb site. And Gamer Legion is going to walk right into it. Yeah, and Kadian, he was relocating back. And now he's in an even better position. Could get smoked out, but he's probably going to try and play around the edge of it. Molotov to slow them down. And now Tess is going to be coming in for the rotation. He's already running for it. The window is closing for Gamer Legion. If they want to end this right now with Inferno, if they want to avoid overtime, they need the entry. Down. He's good for the one. There's still a slim chance, but the gap is closing. Tessus is inside of the smoke, 30 seconds, and he's walked clean through. Imma trying to recover this round, trying to win the map for his team, trying to get to a third and keep the semi-final alive. Isaac, he's got some health left on him as well, but the reload right on top. Hold the phone. Hold on. They're trying to get the bomb plant down. Imma getting blown up, and Isaac, he gets the... The stunned faces, a shocking upset. We got back three, baby! Heroic look like still one of the most dangerous teams. What motivates me is just the feeling of unfinished business. This team of youngsters are hungry. Me and Stout, we played together for soon four years. He's been twice named as one of the 20 best players in the world. The Roic are just so fucking cool. They are playing much more aggressive. It's all calculated. Leaving Counter-Strike Global Offensive with the last major title. Nobody's gonna come take that away from you. Nobody's gonna say they ever won the last one. You fucking did it. Anyone we draw is gonna be feeling way worse than we are drawing them. There's no question, this is the culmination of everything that we've been doing for the last 10 years.
the students become the professors. It gets damn close, but Gamer Legion are the ones to school Heroic on their own map pick. I was convinced that Gamer Legion's time had gone. I was convinced this was going to overtime. Somehow, someway, Maui, we are going to a third and final decider, and I am so happy about it. What an incredible string of of composure there from Gamer Legion, winning seven of the last 10 rounds. When their backs were against the wall, they got even stronger. It did feel like that was Heroic's game to lose for the majority of it, winning such a great string to start off with, looking overall like such a, just a great team. We've seen them play Inferno against some of the best competition in the world, taking down tier one opponents time and time again. But Gamer Legion get it done. We didn't think that this was gonna happen. We did not think we were gonna be on a map after Ancient went the way of Heroic, but props to Shue, props to Ima, and props to a guy who we never even talk about, Isaac. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I'm not gonna lie. The way the way Gamer Leading conducted themselves in that game was just nothing but spectacular. The fact that they get off to such a poor start on their CT side, they then round out by winning eight rounds in a row on the CT side, and then moving into the second half, you said to yourself, they win seven out of the last ten rounds, and I felt like Heroic had it in the bank, yes. but I guess not. Once again, Gamer Legion surprises. They punch above their weight, and I guess we can't even keep saying we're surprised because they've done <laughs> it throughout the entire tournament. They've done it so, so well. It's amazing. So much incredible resilience mental fortitude to be hanging on into that one as well because of the rounds we saw happening at the tail end. We're going to run round 28, round 29, back to back, because we thought Heroic had it in the bag after some individual Heroics. It was two massive plays. First and foremost, coming out of Kadian here with the AWP. And don't forget that Gamer Leading could have won this game 16 to 12 had it not been for Kadian right here. This kill, the third one with the no scope right here, is fantastic from him. And you think to yourself at this point, all right, Gamer Legion, it was a decent attempt. You get another shot right here, but then he's down, going inside the smoke, getting a nasty triple kill. And the time is of the essence right here. The bomb is down on the side, and the third kill right here is easy for Stown. And Heroic at this point, up 15 to 14, or down 15, 14, I was sure. I almost oh, felt like yeah. it was guaranteed that we were going into overtime, but I guess they wanted it differently. <laughs> Yeah, I think also when you talk about fortitude, Freya, we have to talk about the fact that this was basically heroics to lose because they won both pistols. They won the conversions. They even won the first gun rounds. I've heard some lazy interviews from people before where they're like, ah, we just lost the pistol and we lost the first gun round. It's like, well, then you're probably the worst team. But Gamer Legion did that, both halves, and they were still able to come back. So even though the scoreline was 16-14, you could argue Gamer Legion were way better than heroic because even though they lost the more random 50-50 pistols, they still fought back when it mattered with conditioning, with great calling, with great mid-rounds, and also just their players were so, they clutched up. Yeah, completely. we saw some incredible clutches going down, not least in round number 30. So let's hear the winning moment in this mic'd up moment. And take space. Bob. Top first. 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 I'm checking banana. banana also. I'm checking banana. Could still be Wait, dark. I need to reload. I can reload. Be dark, yeah. Burning. Just plant, 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 plant. Out, 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 out. out. Plant, 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 plant. 51. 51. 51. 51. I can double pick. 2, 2, 2. Close. 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 Legion and man, it's just incredible that Isaac can pull that off in literally the 11th hour. Let, let's play it one more time. Let's break it down from I, your perspective, guys. Okay, we're getting into this one. <laughs> Two versus three. I need, I need to talk about this Cadian swing. Cadian, you're not the main character. You need to play within the structure of your team. Everybody else is trying to get involved. They're trying to push up. And Cadian just goes for this hero swing through a Molotov because he wants to be the hero of his story. It came back to bite him here, and I'm getting sick of it. I don't want to see Cadian do anything like that because you can't just treat Gamer Legion so lightly like that. Play with your team, trade off of them, and they would have went to overtime. And you, I could bet if it went to overtime, Gamer Legion would have collapsed. I want to see it one more time because there's one more thing I want to point out right here. One thing is Cadian doing what he's doing, but look at the utility on the heroic players. There's so much to throw with. Molotov flashes everything you need in order to orchestra a retake. So yes, there was a brain fart coming out of Kaden. There was no need whatsoever to keep applying the pressure. That is the way heroic play Counter-Strike sometimes. And we, I guess sometimes we give them the benefit of the doubt. It, it, it can't work out every single time. But in a situation like this, where you're up against an underdog in a situation like this, 15-14, you have all the utility in the world. You know where both of the players are. You are supposed to handle that better. 
And, and the thing is that Heroic can construct great retakes when yes. they have utility. Yep. They've got the procedures and protocols necessary the best to put the that world. back. Yeah. And the thing is that they know that it's just going to be so much stress on Gamer Legion, but once they get that singular kill, then they start to believe. And if you give them a little bit of hope, then that's when Isaac can take it all. A guy who's just been so quiet for them. And even on the first map in the playoffs, he was nowhere to be found. Started ramping up in that series versus Monty when they beat them 16-3 and showing that he is worth having on this Gamer Legion roster. I know people are going to look at some of these players, Emma, Shuhei, and say, get him on a better team, get him on a better team. Well, they're, they're in the semifinals right now with a roster where you want to count out everybody else on this team, but they are contributing. They're showing that they can stick it to what we were calling the most consistent team in Tier 1. I think for my money, what makes this win so impressive is the fact that I felt Heroic played a decent game of Counter-Strike. Yes. It wasn't Heroic playing necessarily bad. Sure, they can be better. And sure, as you spoke about, they won the pistol, they converted both of them, so they got off to good start in both halves. In the buy rounds, Gamer Legion were miles ahead of Heroic. They were by far the better team. And yes, I want to give all the credit in the world to Gamer Legion, because Stown had a fantastic showing. Some of the individual players from Heroic had fantastic moments, and yet Gamer Legion were still able to power through that. So this is a win where you can take absolutely nothing away from them. We've been mentioning Isaac's name a lot for that final round, and rightly so, but there was another moment in this game where he proved instrumental. Let's go back to round 21, because this was kind of, a, I guess, a pivot round for Gamer Legion to be staying in this in the second half. To me, that's when it started. The, yeah, the, the pivot is key, Freya. What you're saying right there, opening pick, going the way of Heroic. Acor able to find an evener right there, taking down Yabby, but then they've got this Halls pop coming out. Shush right here at the hay cart. And the kills are going the way of Heroic, but look at what Isaac does here. <laughs> boom, boom. Bada bing, A, B, C, it's done. And he gets those two out of nowhere. A perfect 90 degree turn. Get your pro actors out, because Isaac's got his. Without that round, without that play, they would not have won on Inferno. Right here. Heroic were on track to actually shut them down completely on that CT side. And as you said, when Isaac spun around right there, got the 180 kill, they ended up winning that round with Acor being on 15 HP as well, getting an additional kid in the middle. That was not a round they were supposed to win. For two seconds, it was a 4v2 for Heroic, and they lost out on that one. And I think that was one of the moments that really turned out to be the key for Gamer Legion in order to believe they could come back. This is where the fairy tale fantasy, the dream for Gamer Legion, looks so damn beautiful. Obviously, we're going to be coming into the third and final decider. But the fact that we were prefacing this Maui, saying there is no hope for Gamer Legion coming into Inferno. They had to win their first map of Ancient. The fact that we see the fortitude, the resilience to carry it on through and actually close out map number two, uh, it, it's, it's just beautiful from them. It was slim margins that got, got Gamer Legion that victory. I would say that we saw the, the great performance from Stown. Even though Kadian had that one fumble on the last round, he actually played a pretty good game overall in my eyes. And so for Gamer Legion, I have to credit a few things. I mean, Ima, obviously, Isaac for Clutch up. Shuhei, though, was doing a great job of maneuvering around the map, taking banana control, taking A control, not just hammering B over and over and over again. Because it was working early, he actually was able to condition Heroic and keep them honest. When every time Heroic were in a defensive setup, it was almost always a 3-2. And that's if that's what you're playing against, that's actually almost to your favor on the T side, because so many teams have figured out the perfect nades, the perfect executes, that once you get a little bit of space, three guys on that A site, you can deal with it. Gentlemen, let's emotionally reset and refocus because we are now knocking on the doorstep of the third and final map that is going to be Mirage coming into things. Uh, Jacob, can you give us a summary of how we're expecting things to go down uh, given the team's history on this map? Yeah, I think Heroic right now are looking very solid overall on the map of Mirage. In the past seven games, they've only lost one game and, and that happens once in a while. Apart from that, they beat some of the best teams in the world. They did lose out to Team Liquid in a very good game by Team Liquid, so I don't necessarily want to worry myself too much with that. Whereas for Gamer Legion, it's more of a mixed back. In this tournament, they played it five Five times already. They beat Mouse, then they lost to OG, they lost to Navi, then they beat Nine, and then beat Monty. So they're beating good teams, but they're also losing to teams that are nowhere near the level of Heroic. So I think when you look towards Gamer Legion right now, we can throw out all the analysis, throw out everything we know about these two teams. This game is living its own life right now. It is a final decider, and we did see Heroic play Mirage against FaZe in the quarterfinal on the third deciding map, and they absolutely destroyed FaZe Clan. It wasn't even a game. It will require one more surprise coming out of Gamer Legion. And question remains, is there more in that tank? I feel like we've seen so many throughout this tournament, and they would need one more. Uh, yeah, you, you look at the results, Freya, and it's impossible to say going into this, anything other than Heroic are still the favorites. Mm. They fumbled the bag on Inferno. We saw some errors there, but we also saw, in my eyes, some overperformances from some of the Gamer Legion players in key pivotal moments. On Mirage now, going into it, I think that 
just again, the results really speak to how strong Heroic are on this map. Their win rate in the past three months is exceptional, above 80%. And the fact that they defeated FaZe in such a convincing fashion, where every time FaZe wanted to take any space on the map, they were shut down. Heroic always had an answer, always a way to upset them and disrupt their playstyle. So Gamer Legion, they got to tighten up once again if they want to try to take anything from Kadian and company. When we uh, when we spoke about Heroic taking on FaZe Clan on that third deciding map of Mirage, we spoke about Kerrigan being a weak link. I'm looking at the stats for the Gamer Legion players right here. The last 12 maps they played, Isaac and Kiers is on a 0.84 rating, both Ooh. of them. So those are two weak links. Those are two players that I'm 100% sure Heroic will target in this game. Can they play a good game? Gamer Legion has a chance. Will they fumble? They don't have. Well, the Cinderella story certainly continuing for Gamer Legion, but it all comes down to Mirage. One more map separating either of these two teams from the Grand Finals. A semi-final that is worthy of the CSGO send-off. We still have to find somebody to send in the grand final, Jason. We're going to the third map. It's on Mirage here between Heroic and Gamer Legion. Talk to me about what is the madness that we're seeing here and, and what's going to happen on this third map? Yeah, I, who knows? Who knows? Because I think all expectations have been blown out of the water after the first two maps that we saw play. I mean, yeah, you can kind of go back to Heroic and that win over phase and how dominant they looked, how strong they looked, win percentages on this map. But what we've also seen is Gamer Legion surprising us every step of the way. And I mean, no one even had him winning Inferno. Like, that shouldn't have been possible. So the fact that they're rising up to meet these challenges is absolutely crazy, and it throws such an X factor. When you think of guys like Isaac stepping up with the spray transfers that he's had, the 1v2 to win the map, you think about Emo with the map that he just had, all of that can change any preparation that you have coming into this final deciding semi-final map. Well, we'll find out right now if it's gonna be the full reset, if Game Illusion can pick up the momentum from winning that Inferno map and bring down Heroi because they're going to be strong on this one as well. They are an elite tier team and it's taken everything that Gamer Legion have got so far to bring it to this level. And I don't know, again, they don't have the experience. You said that they are playing like they are experienced at this level, but this could easily be where the cracks start to show, where they start to make a couple of mistakes, and maybe that'll be the end of it. Yeah, but I think we're at the point now where you got to give credit over to Gamer Legion, right? We've, oh, been, yes. we've been looking for those cracks through the first two maps, and we didn't see them. They've answered the bell each and every time. Made Ancient a very competitive affair, 29 rounds of play, 13-16 loss. Obviously, all 30 rounds on Inferno. They withstood the best that Heroic had on those two maps. So I'm going to give them some. I'm going to give them the credit of the doubt. I'm going to let them. I'm going to come in and see how they play on this map and what they're able to respond with, because they've delivered each and every time. There've been questions about it yeah it's been really beautiful and really shocking as well i just it's been such a run for them and now i mean they, they do deserve the the benefit of the doubt you're right they do deserve that at the moment we are going to be ready to head into it third map coming up here the first semi-final paris are you ready <laughs> beautiful then let's get this game back on the way third and final map of the semi-final is coming up right now Pistol round, Gamer Legion on the T side, Heroic starting on defense. And once again, Heroic's won all four pistol rounds in the series so far. Gamer Legion would love to just have one. Just give them one. Just give them a crumb of something to work with to start these maps. And it's a B hit right out of the gates. Yeah, Tessis is set up. He's trying to get some headshots in, but he's been denied. And Yabby's there to help him out, but already Gush down. Emma can almost make the full 180 spin to get that kill, but not quite. And Yabby, he's deleting them click by click. They're just oh! Canadian with a drive by the takedown. Chaos and Sue and Acor trying to find their way back, but they're running out of space. There's nowhere left to live on this bomb site. Canadian just running them down. Three kills on him, and now he's hyping up the crowd again. Antagonizing them, Jason. That's a, that's an attitude. This is a round from Kadian that just shows he is here to win this map. That is bonkers. Look how clean he is through the entire situation. Looking for the haters after the facts. One nothing. Five for five on pistol rounds in this series. Second round. And yeah, there's not that much to play around with here. No bomb plant, limited options for what you really can do. You know, Maui was saying on the desk that he isn't the main character, but in Kadian's own little play, he probably is, you know? And on some level, yeah, it can backfire. It can really backfire if you think that, but it can also propel you to greatness if you follow through on it. And we've seen that plenty of times from Kadian as well. Let's see if it's gonna be 
greatness or defeat here tonight for him. Oh, jiggling that one away. He's got some backup. They can't really run him down. So he'll be just fine. HE to soften it up, and now the rest of the cavalry has arrived. Isaac is on his own. So this will be a very easy round. Nothing too special going on here. I wonder how much of the early stages of this opening half are going to be heroic trying to kind of introduce a mental game into it, right? With these kinds of aggressive pushes that did it against FaZe as well. Just put Gamer Legion on notice that every inch of this map is going to be contested, that every step they take is going to be met with the heroic defender. Harass and disrupt everything. First gun round coming in for Gamer Legion. If they can pull up that plan, that would be amazing because Sue is really proving to us in this major that he is an excellent caller, right? So if you give him the space instead, the space that FaZe never had on this map, he'll probably come up with something he has so far. First fire round coming up now for Gamer Legion. Chaos hanging around over at the palace on the A side of the map and the rest of the team split the middle. Could be a slow mid-take coming in from Gamer Legion once uh, another 10, 20 seconds have gone by. Yeah, Isaac is going to uh, come on, come back and throw a delayed window smoke towards middle, and Suhei and Acor will make their move. Ima can come through underpass, but for the moment, he's watching for a B push. And actually, utility in mid is just meant to keep defenders in that position for the moment. Isaac has transitioned over towards A ramp, but Suhei alone to get top mid control. So the aggression won't be coming towards this part of the map but two heroic defenders are occupied. Yeah, they're just starting to get back. This is really awkward. Shush, he was one second from getting caught out of the open. I think he, he was spotted as well. It could have been a free entry. Yeah, you're right. They know where he is, and they will burn him out as a result. This defense on the A bomb side, I don't know why they're caught swinging back like that. Emma, that is a perfect double opening, and heroic. Three versus five, but they're still fighting for it, maybe more than they should. He's going to continue and gets the spray down near the quad kill. Acor. Able to sneak in a bullet on the last one there, but what a tournament Immer has had so far. Yeah, and what a setup in this round for Gamer Legion. Utility in mid, the presence from Suhei, it does keep two defenders occupied for quite some time. You mentioned Shush just narrowly escaping death. Just that extra second it took to rotate, they just barely missed the timing. And nothing for Heroic to fight with at that A bomb site once he goes down. Perfectly set up and perfectly according to plan for Gamer Legion's first round. And this is the next problem. We felt it and heard it on Inferno. When Gamer Legion gets going, this crowd joins them. And they are decisively on their side. Heroic once again, the, the villains, which they're used to being, I suppose. Isaac gonna take a stand and he'll shut down Tess. There's nothing saved for Heroic. I think they have to be the villains. I don't think Heroic know how to play if they're not the villains. Probably true. Two to one. You know, some of the rounds that were looking questionable on the CT side of Inferno had to do with Heroic moving the defense around sometimes more than they maybe needed to. And this time, I'm so confused. I mean, there's almost always going to be somebody anchoring towards CT spawn, down in shadow, or just on the bomb side itself. Like, there should be someone who's doing that. I get that they wanted to check out middle, but that's the entire A defense sort of caught rotating back just as Gamer Legion were executing in the round. Still early going. If you're both these teams, you're still kind of testing the limits and testing what each team is going to come in with. Ooh, an opportunity for Stown on Suhei. Huddles up behind the boxes in top middle. Three defenders here in a triangle defense. Stown connector, Yabby window, and Tess's ladder room. This could be a knockout punch towards this bomb site. If Tessa dies, then there's no AP defense anymore. It's just going to be done. Suhei crouching right in, and that is plenty enough. Then you save. You save 100% yes. of the time as heroic. There's, as you mentioned, no defenders at this bomb site. No one's even close. Shush is just now getting towards the market opening, but Ima is going to continue his tear and take one weapon out of the hands of Stown. And the economy for heroic is too brittle. They back away. And we're all tied up at two. It's an interesting position even for Tessus to begin with, right? Because he doesn't have any backup there. It's not like his teammates that are near connector can help out. That's smoked off, right? So even if he got the first kill, even if he's traded, they still lose the round. He has to get the kill, escape, and then they have to go for a four and five retake. Like, there's so much about that round that I'm wondering about for Heroic. Good yeah. utility from Gamer Legion, negate the setup, negate his teammates as well. 
A nice clean win. So three rifles survive. Heroic will have a little bit to fight with in the next round. A quick tie up this time. We've seen both teams go on runs and almost fall flat even when they've been rolling with the rounds. Game of Legion, they've built so much money already. This is such a quick comeback into the first half. Sure, the pistols aren't really going their way, but the rifle rounds is where they're doing their real work at the moment. Three rifles saved on Heroic, and that's what they can bring to bear on this round. Now I'm gonna go for the boost. Thought for a minute that was gonna be the case. Instead, a push all the way to top mid. But Game of Legion see it coming. Yeah, they're going to know it's possible. The question is, do they want to attack it and wrap around it? Or do they want to just kind of wait and go elsewhere on the map? Do they want to go into the pressure? Ima is working underpass, so he can circle around Shush and Yabby. And based off their positions, Heroic is sticking in this setup. Yabby and Shush are going to fight to the death. Yeah, with, with no backup from the window any longer, very, very hard to come out on top of this one. Ima and Isaac are walking up behind him. It's even fortunate they get the first fight a little bit early there. Shush trying to escape, but he too will be caught. They call shooting him in the back. Three versus three. Not bad though, going two for two. Tessis is now going to make a play to wrap around, shrink this map, get in towards middle. There could be a rifle that he's able to pick up at some point during the round. Kadian with a single M4 still has down to keep a little bit of space. This is still well within the grasp in the opportunity of Heroic, but if Isaac finds this kill, and he will. It's all down to Kadian. Yeah, he's on the bomb side. Element of surprise is with him still. He knows that Kios is on the A ramp, but even if he finds him, he still has all of his work ahead of him. He will find him, just not the way that he was expecting. Two kills on Kios. And Game of Legion up to three. But because they saved some of the rifles, right, they can still. I mean, not in the last round, but previously, they kind of kept the economy going enough that they can still make a buy in this one. Two, three, the scoreline, and Heroic barely scraping through on this buy. No kit. Game of Legion look comfortable. Way too comfortable. Yeah, no kit, and yet to put a stop to Game of Legion once the rifles came out. Again, they want to fight in mid, and again, miss the opportunity. It's going the other direction. Molotov is going to put a lot of pressure on Yabby, who's now isolated and alone. Tessus creeps up Catwalk to help out. He's brought low, but a good rebuttal to knock out Kios. I mean, that the attempt to throw the grenade almost lost them the round. Two of them very, very low on health. But they're going to go and find a player here again, Acor. Not with his trusty AWP, but with the AK instead. And he's good for the flick. We'll take down another player, three versus four. Tell you what, Heroic might want to go away from this aggression they've brought out early. It's clearly not working. Whether it's early in the round, whether it's a mid-round, they're losing advantages because of it. Kadian's going to be forced into making a play. This is a strong play depending on the timing and how far he goes forward. Yabby's shifted over towards B because Kadian sees and hears nothing. Oh, wait. But they have the wrong information. The timing for Kadian is interesting, but the problem is still he's alone, right? So how much could you even do? Even if you find the one kill here, Tessus and Yabby are miles away. He can stop this plant, though. They've just come from A ramp, and Acor's been checking it from time to time. Oh, knife out. A lot of noise being made, and Acor, he's going to go back and check. And that is part of the problem of playing in front of a crowd. It is something that Kadian should definitely know. Caught out just a tiny bit, and uh, Tessus and Yabby, they're way on the other side. Bomb is going to be planted, and Game Elite will no problem winning the round, so 4-2 to two in their favor. Yeah, that was that was a cool play from Kadian, and it just it doesn't work out. Given up and falls flat. 4-2 to two for Gamer Legion. And again, tasked with just saving the weapons. Doesn't feel, feel that good when the best you can get out of the round is trying to keep another rifle into the next one. Four in a row. And Gamer Legion, they are going to be filthy rich going into the middle of this half. What a beginning this is turning into. Yeah, this is, I mean, that was all a recovery mission, right, from Kadian. and there's no guarantee that Flake would have even worked. All the early engagements go in the way of Gamer Legion. They're neutralizing aggression, neutralizing any plays in the mid-round. 
Everything's going well. Four to two and a timeout called from Heroic. Their first, because they're buried in somewhat of a hole at the moment, stuck in a rut. Whatever you want to call it, after the pistol round, they've got nothing. And you mentioned one of the problems already, right? The aggression that's been happening on the CT side has backfired on them quite a bit. And Game Manager you really seem to be playing a, a, a game right now where they are, they're slowing it down. They're saying, well, we, we're expecting you to push top mid. We were looking for you on the A ramp all the time. And as long as that's the case, Game of Legion will be happily wait, spend the first 30, 50, 40 seconds of a round waiting around, waiting for Heroic to show up. Yeah, Heroic really need to get Cadian's op in play. If they're going to be this slow, if you're going to get some opportunities in the mid-round with that AWP, let that be kind of your contact for, for Heroic, because the aggression with the M4s isn't working. But they're still a bit of a ways away from getting that op in the, in the battle. Two M4s in this one. And again, that same boost they wanted to use earlier. Might be good for one, but Isaac has some terrific spraying. And Emma will clean up the rest of it. The other M4 is all the way across the map, so nothing really to find about once again. Different look this time from Gamer Legion as well. That same kind of slow, calculated pause and opening, but this time it's just contact and plenty of bodies to trade kills up a ramp. And in the opener provided by Isaac. And you've got a recipe for a fifth round for Gamer Legion. Now, it's probably a little bit early on to start to talk about, but, you know, we've been talking about Gamer Legion and the stress on them and the newness of being on the, sea, on the stage and all the rest of it, right? But for Heroic, there is also another level of pressure, right? They are the ones that are sort of destined or meant to be in the Grand Finals, and now that is being called into question in a really serious way by Gamer Legion. They are saying, that's not going to be easy. We're not just going to back on down. In fact, we might try and prevent your run from even getting there, which for Heroic would be beyond devastating. Oh, this would be a crushing loss to take. Oh, this yeah. would be the most painful in probably the history of Heroic. No what doubt. A, what an obstacle Gamer Legion is turning out to be. Tess is not going to keep this weapon in hand. He'll go down to Sule at the end of it as the bomb goes off. A three-round lead. One of perhaps two elite teams in the world, Heroic, is getting quite a test here in map three. A five to two lead, yeah. A test that they're currently not living up to. They're not really passing at the moment. Round number eight. Bomb back in T-spawn, a little bit of a boost. Should write it, it sort of different looks all the time. Also a little bit quicker to go out to top mid this time. And we'll see if Heroic will double and triple down on the aggression if they want to keep on the fight. Or if they will finally slow it down a little bit more. They do have that AWP on the Cadian, and you were asking for that. Is that going to make the difference? We'll find out. Imma, he's snuck right underneath, and that's almost a free kill. Spins around, <laughs> what an opening! He is cracked at the middle of the map. Cadian will get one in return, but that also means... It's still a three versus four and plenty of time for Gamer Legion. And I think I think Gamer Legion is still going to come at this B bomb site. They're going to be undeterred due to the AWP. Man, Emma, this is an unreal performance in this tournament in these semifinals. Cracking open mid single-handedly. And it's all going to be in the hands of Kadian and his AWP. A quick reload, a deep breath before the action begins. Yeah, flash on over, he needs to give every single shot, missing the first one already. The flick on the second, not connecting. And now they're getting up close and personal. Katie and he gets sprayed down. Sue with the double. And Church is so far away that it will not make any difference. Even a kill or two would not have won that round for Heroic. Six to two, the scoreline. Jason, they are getting obliterated. They're, they're knocked out standing up right now. The individuals for Heroic are not there, not delivering anything, regardless of what the setup is. Regardless of what the attack is, they've got nothing so far in these first eight rounds. We came in talking about the phase treatment. Maybe Heroic could just, you know, do what they went to do here coming into the semi-final and completely crush Game of Legion. I'm sure that's the dream that they had in the back of their minds. And it's been anything but that. Every single map has been difficult. Even the first one. But that's that's the whole point, too. Remember, Heroic's one of the deepest teams we have in terms of how often all five players can deliver a solid performance. Don't too often get that extreme blow up, but you get solid performance game in, game out. Against FaZe on this map, it was Shush. 
blowing up on the scoreboard, but now you have nobody. None of the frags coming in for Heroic. That can stop anything. Shush, Tesses, and Stout are at two kills. We're eight rounds deep. This crowd was silent for a while, but they got something to cheer about. Again, Tesses winning the opening fight against Kios here, but Isaac, he's so swift to respond. And they're gonna re-smoke that window just maybe a little bit of second oh. left. Oh. He gets so much out of that. We're talking about a smoke that's delayed by maybe a second and a half, and that's a double kill for Stown. You can even see that, though. It's a labored spray on the first player. It's a great transfer, but nothing's coming easy for Heroic at the moment. They're fighting just to stay in this game. Sue on a ramp with the bomb. Shush could be caught out in the open. When's the swing coming? He just crosses out of vision, but now nobody defending the bomb site. Yeah, but this time it makes more sense, right? You just want to get a look at where they are. You're playing in a two on four, so just don't die alone. Just make sure that you get the info, you call in everybody, and they're going to know right now. 45 seconds. Sue is getting close, trying to crouch on in. He wanted that first headshot. Yeah, Stown's got a quick flank as well. Tess is over in CT spawn. They should be able to harass oh. and delay, but Sue is going to get tricky. Flashbang comes in, doesn't find the fight he wanted. Yeah, that one flashbang, that was their opening. They needed that kill. Time is running low now. This should be an impossible round. Two versus four. But Sue, everything comes to a standstill as he tries to get that first one. 18 seconds, he's still locked in, and Tessis will find him after going on a six-round loss streak. Heroic back with a single one. And the way that they won that, right, It's that's not the kind of round that's going to blow everything up. You're not going to feel super confident behind it. Yeah, you made it work. But you need something more right now. Heroic, yeah. the energy has left this team. Both those opening fights are a really, really struggle boss for Tessas and Stown. First time out for Gamer Legion. Might be a good chance for Heroic to have a conversation as well. They've got the off back in the hands of Kadian. Not a lot of money behind this, but at least they've got their first step in this final map. Yeah, the fans are here for them. They're not giving up at all. Doing everything they can, the Danish contingent. Overwhelmed inside the arena. Lead is cut to three, but we need more. We need a streak from Heroic. We need something to inspire confidence to make us believe this defense can do it. We have the AWP back. Some that they've been missing, but at least it's in play this time. And KD moving out in the middle, but the smoke are so just gonna be everywhere. Again, they have this very aggressive setup in the middle, which so far hasn't really netted them too much of anything. Run boost out there. Acor unable to get any CTs on the other side. What do they want to do? Stown and KD and are maneuvering the jungle. And they're going to make it a three-man setup at the B-bomb side. Which, no doubt about it, if this turns into an A-split, Stown and Trish are going to be in trouble. Well, the nice thing is Kadian with this deep angle with the AWP, Tessas and Yabby can rotate off if they don't feel the pressure. And in fact, Yabby's already shifted over towards window room. Tessas is going to join up with them. So Kadian, all the responsibility. Oh. And with no information towards Catwalk, it's a lot of responsibility. I don't like the fact that nobody's holding Catwalk. The four other members are right. Tessas is coming back now. That makes me a little bit less nervous. Bomb in the middle. Kios over in the A ramp. The next kill could decide this round. There's not that much time left. A course going to be found as the smoke fades in the window. 40 seconds here. Shush inside of the A bomb site. No more smokes for Gamer Legion. It. They've got to cross this with flashbangs. That's all they have, and it might be all they need. Yeah, that's a good setup to begin with. Yabby. Oh, he gets out dueled. Emma. Everything is working for him right now. Shush and Tessis there at CT spawn, and Kadian's on the other side. 20 seconds left. Isaac coming in with the AK and just snipes him out. Holy they were not ready for it. 15 shit. seconds. Clock is running down real low, but they're fighting for it. Tessis, the only one left as the bomb is being planted in the B bomb site. And he's low on health already. Gamer Legion, the late round calling on this one is God tier. Emma finding another kill, quad in the round, but they have completely outplayed Heroic. It's actually Sue on Catwalk who wins a heads up fight against Kadian's off. That's mental. And this is it, this round, Heroic had their chances. A missed opportunity there for Yabby that lets Ima know where his position is. You're right, that was. Yeah. Like, oh my god. It's not even Isaac, it's not even the Lurk. 
Kadian gets a heads up fight with the AWP and can't stop anything. Oh, the pressure mounts now. I don't care how experienced you are, what kind of hell you fought through in the past, heroic. The full weight of a devastating loss building upon them. Tournament favorites. Yeah, but that is being thrown into question right now. Game of Legion are making an impressive case for themselves. Ima, 13 and five on him. He has absolutely become the superstar that he was meant to be here tonight on the stage in front of the world, playing like he was always meant to be here. 13 kills and seven rounds for Gamer Legion. This opening half is nothing short of magnificent. And Heroic don't have an answer yet. He's down hoping for the Deagle, but gonna be denied. And again, this mid control for Gamer Legion, every single time they've wanted it, they've been able to show up and take it. Tessis is pushing out of the bomb side, but again, this is Something that Game Legion have been able to catch every time. They've expected the aggression, and you can see Sue is well aware. Well aware. Well, and also just paused on the map and just saying, let's watch everything. Let's be so careful. They've got to realize the desperation for Heroic is mounting. Is Aikho going to go flank him? Did they hear a footstep? I don't think they did. I think, he, I think he's just... They're just being ultra cautious. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if, if Tessas gets flanked from stairs by Acor, he's going to be furious. Okay, the grenade kind of suggests Acor is not really ready for it, and that's a good shot. 50 seconds still. And this, this gives all the information over to Heroic. This defense should be able to stand tall. Kadian must deliver with the AWP, but they know nobody's coming to the B bomb site. Perhaps worried about Catwalk, but with nobody in B halls, they have the players in the right position. Kadian reacts quick. He almost got caught, there was no grenade thrown. Good follow-up shot, Kadian. Double kill in the round, and that should be enough. Sue, shot in the back of the head, and Shush hiding on that ramp. And they were not ready for it. Man, that is late. It's really, really late to start to build something here for Heroic, but it's not too late. I think at this point, you're also thinking as many rounds as we can get just to give ourselves a chance. It obviously hasn't been a great half so far. But any kind of a recovery, we know Heroic's offense can just destroy and decimate the defense of Gamer Legion, so give yourself some room to work with. Second time out for Gamer Legion. A chance for us just to look at the disparity between these two teams in the major. Back at Rio, Heroic obviously getting to the finals all the way, losing. That's what they're here for, redemption from that loss to take that final step. For Gamer Legion, they didn't make it out of the challenger stage in Rio. For them to be knocking on the door of the Grand Finals is incredible. And continuing to bring the fight to Heroic. Round 12. Yeah, that is such a step up. All the way into the semi. Seven rounds on their side here. Well, the Heroic with some rifles. This is a f finally a, a slightly different look. They got some of the battle back with. Three AKs that they stole on the CT side. If they can finish this eight to seven, then I'm sure that's gonna reignite some of their hopes and dreams here on the heroic side. Gamer Legion have been able to neutralize these setups this entire half. They've had no issue with the aggression. They've had no issue with the advanced positioning. But heroic still putting faith in it. Yabby and Stown at the base of Catwalk. Tess is all the way back watching underneath. And another good read. If you're shush here, right, you just want to live. You just want to stay alive for the retake because you've got three people in the middle that are going to be coming in. They've got grenades. They can try and slow it down. Shush is looking for something. The I think grenades the crowd, the crowd making the everyone nervous. Everyone's turning around <laughs> looking for that flank through T-spawn. Here are the flashbangs. And here are the smokes to follow it up. Sure, she's set up for it. He knows that they're going to be coming. Stown and Tessis are in the middle to try and help him out, but he's missing all the shots for the smoke. With the bombs of 30 seconds, they're going to be running straight on there with the bomb. It's going to be clean for Gamer Legion. They get the bomb plant down. Kadian and CT spawned. He's good for the first one. 
And this has to be a retake. Heroic have to make this work. Four versus five, and I see him just as Immer shows up. Deletes one, rushing through the smoke, and he is surely dead. That is way too much. Four versus three now, and Heroic, this retake is looking real hot at the moment. Chaos and Acor left, holding on to the round, but only barely. This should be no way. Heroic, they are hungry to get themselves back and fired up into the game. But Molotov burning up Chaos, and now it's all on Acor. One versus four, he gets the first one there, but the bomb is being defused down in front. Oh my god, those are some sickening shots! But it won't make the difference. Heroic back with another one, two in a row. Faith in the retake from Heroic and all the utility they had to bring to bear from that aggressive mid setup. They didn't have to use nades throughout the entire round, so Molotov, nade combination into the bomb site, smokes down and choke points, beautifully set up. Nowhere for Kios to move. Fifth round for Heroic, and they've still got money. The defense is starting to build. Three of the last four, two in a row. Oh, right, there we go. Yabby, he couldn't really escape, or if he could, he didn't want to. Hoping to catch Acor in the corner. Tess is right here, out in the open, and even at the off angle. Kios is so good, he's gonna get one more right to the smoke. And inside of the bomb site, Kadian announcing his AWP didn't get the kill. So they know where at least one of them is. Shush, he might be in hiding over at the A bomb site. Yeah, he needs to make a decision. He's got to know they're coming for him. Sticking around behind the smoke for the moment. But the middle of the map is completely compromised. Oh, and so is Kadian. Isaac knows everything. This is so well played. Using the sound, he heard him jumping around. He knew everything. Using they didn't the, even have to find Shush. They don't care. Using the time as well. Kadian knows he's been spotted over towards Catwalk. He can't sit there the entire round with over a minute on the clock. He's got to make a play, and Isaac's there to punish. Another beautifully constructed round from Gamer Legion. Yeah, Shush not even thinking about that bomb plant. He knows that he's in trouble. Kios is hiding over here, and he was the one to open up the round with a double kill, and he's gonna get the last one as well. Nice triple on him. And Gamer Legion right back, eight to five. I'll tell you what, Heroic player is starting to look a little nervous. Tess is that round shuffling back and forth between Utility, Knife, and M4. That gave Chaos the advantage in this fight right here. Tess's did not seem prepared for it. And just a beautiful elimination onto Stown as well. All this mid-presence from Heroic is going to waste since they can't stop anything. How many times have we seen two players, three players in middle, window, ladder room, catwalk, connector, none of it's been able to work, even pushed up, not working. Heroic, right. they do look like the more nervous team right now, which is not how it's meant to be playing out, right? One of the advantages of having already been in a major grand finals is that you're not supposed to be showing those nerves. But Heroic definitely are. Double AWP, double MP9. And this is going to be a change of pace now coming in from Gamer Legion. They want to crack right through the smoke. And Chaos, he's good for the opening once again. Tess is trying to be the hero, jumping into that sandwich position. But Chaos, the name, the AK, he's just using every tool at his disposal right now. And he's done it once again. Kadian and Yabby fighting for this 14th round, but they need more than a miracle to get back into this one. Yeah, that MP9 is not going to be any kind of a stoppage. And Immer, he'll pick up the kill. Kadian on his own, running away with the AWP-9 on the side of Gamer Legion. They are so close, they can almost taste it now. Uh, everyone's stepping up when needed. Ima's cleared out middle on his own a number of times. These past two rounds, opening two kills for Kios. This one, he one-ups it. Three initial kills. And all these fights for Heroic are just awkward. They're not in any kind of comfort positions. And if you're Gamer Legion in this round, you throw everything at the hunt. There's still time oh, left yeah. in the bomb. Sacrifice all four players if that's what it takes. Get the AWP out of Kadian's hands. It is quite literally the only tool that they're gonna have in the next round. So yeah, you just sacrifice whatever you can to get this one. Bomb is gonna be going up, and Kios I think, is the only one within range that he could maybe try and hunt him down. He's certainly given it a shot, but Kadian will bring him down. So the AWP is gonna be saved only barely. Nine to five, round number 15 is coming up. And Heroic, I guarantee they can feel the pressure now. Maybe early on, you have a story in the back of your mind. You think, okay, we can make it back. We've been here before. You give the war speech. You try and make sure that everyone still believes. But Heroic, they were destined to go to the grand finals. Only Gamer Legion had a different plan in mind. 
Canadian is fighting for this one. He's got 14 kills. He's, he's almost catching up with Immer at the moment, but it's not enough. Not enough from the Riflers. Have really let down Heroic's defense here today. You can recover from five. Six would obviously be much, much better. And this slow opening from Gamer Legion has been so effective throughout the half, they've never had to change it up. No, they've changed it up at their own will whenever they felt like, okay, we can throw in a fast round and then it'll catch them off guard. And that's been working too. Sue has shown everyone what kind of a leader he can be. Sure shot close here with the deagle. Good on the first, but an instant return. Immer hasn't really given up an opportunity to get a kill yet in this map. Canadian. Yeah, they're going to be slowing them down on that one, but there's still 50 seconds left. Good nade. Yeah, 50 seconds, but that might actually dissuade Gamer Legion from attacking into the A bomb site. They're going to reset on the map, and now we get a little bit of mid round aggression from Heroic. They've controlled mid for the most of this, and actually, they're giving it up entirely. They're coming over to the A bomb site. 42 seconds, and Tess's is the one in trouble. When will Heroic realize this? When do they shift another player to B? How long until they realize that A has not under attack? Yeah, but he's starting to think about it. But Tessus is still alone. 25 seconds. If Heroic want to start the comeback, it better be now. This better be the best 5-7 of all time as they jump right down in front. Good shot on the first. He can't land the second. And now Yabby up close. 15 seconds here. Sue not ready. Grenade in hand and Aiko will take one more kill. It's still a two versus two. Eight seconds on the clock. And Kadian pushing through before anyone else shows up. His teammate is still behind him. The gun barrel is going to be showing. Ima, he knows. He's got the lockdown on him. The spray on through in the 10th round. Game of Legion. They're all there the second half if they win the pistol they might make it all the way to the grand final we'll see how that goes after this there is a feeling in the air hesitance to acknowledge that this is a goodbye of sorts 10 years on from the first major competition paris will be the last major in global offensive history a decade with a game we have obsessed over, lost sleep over, and can't get enough of. In life it is often remarked, we don't always know when the last time is the last time. An observation often used to remain present. But what difference would it make if you did? An art form in constant evolution. No answer or theory final. A battlefield that platforms individual perfection, while simultaneously encouraging the most elaborate cohesion. Victory, an honor reserved for just one. 16 legends begin. Only eight will take center stage for this farewell. French Counter-Strike, a region that has generated some of the most formidable rosters and individuals in history. All eyes on the Wu. CSGO's most precise weapon and his protege share a profound gift, combined into a daunting blend for any opposition. G2 are to be feared. Every combination of five souls has a different feel. Personality visible in their unified decision-making an unflinching trust in their leader, backed by prodigious aim. Heroic, indeed. Some players believe in luck. Simple, he believes in himself and his squad. Na'Vi tend to rise to the occasion, and there is no greater occasion than this. All 16 of our legends house players who share that same compulsion to compete. As one team overcomes adversity, the other succumbs to it. The understanding shared by these competitors is that euphoria and despair are a package deal. We, the enamored Counter-Strike fans, gather to witness who will lift Global Offensive's last major trophy. A question we will not have answered until Championship Sunday. But, like life, it is less about the destination, but the journey.
The final half is upon us. A 10 to 5 lead for Gamer Legion. We are about to send one of these teams home and one of them to the grand final of the last CSGO Major. Gamer Legion have shocked and surprised everyone here. This is truly a legendary run that they are on right now. They just need six more rounds. The second half is coming up. Paris! Are you ready? Here we go, Pistol Run is live. Final half of play for one of these teams in this Paris Major. Isaac, a passive defense. Ima in support, who's been absolutely incredible. He'll be tested here early. Yes, he will be. Everything matters right now. Oh, 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 oh. He's the lead. Oh, 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 the pace. They don't stand a chance. Kush now on his own, and he will not even set foot on the bomb site. He called here to delete him. Game Legion, they finally win a pistol. And it is so close to putting Heroic in the grave. What a time to get it. Man, he passes this test with flying colors. Look at this. Get out of my face, Tesses. What a disgusting display. He has put himself and his team on the Counter-Strike map. 11 to 5. Yeah, brings Heroic to Tech Nines. Desperate to fight back, desperate for a miracle. Something to pump them up, something that they can rally behind. I'm sure Kadian has already given them the wall speech, but so far that has not been enough. And Isaac is playing this one on his own. He's got the MP9, he's got the smoke up. You don't have to die for this one, Isaac. You can, you can fall back. You've got Imma out on the catwalk. Heroic can't go anywhere. They have to execute this. All five players in halls. They've got nobody in mid, no one towards A. And the fact that they've waited for this smoke, I think means Gamer Legion might realize what's coming. Ima's going to be fast to rotate off catwalk, and he's got an M4 at range. Yeah, he does. He's right there. Isaac, he's going to get the early spot on. He's right down below. Oh, good spray. Ima just continuing his reign of terror into this one. And even the MP9 is doing all the work. It's a good, clean shot from Yabby, but it is too little and too late. Kadian, he'll pick up the bomb, but only lose it a second later. Isaac, rock solid on that triple defense. Yeah, but Game man, at 12. Ima getting that first kill, the first player who can really aggress upon Isaac, is what sets him up for the triple, keeps some space in front of him. Ima up to 21 frags in this deciding map. A spectacular performance worthy of the Grand Finals. They're now just four rounds away. One AK on Tessa's, a hero AK to try and pick this one up, and that's a heroic move in the middle. He's opened it up and taken down Suhei. How much can they build? Just one single rifle in play. The rest are all pistols. And Kios, he's feeling a little bit of pressure now. They're going to try and hunt him down. They're coming in from every angle. The spray is good, though. It is a double, and they'll bring it back into a three-on-three -three with the bomb being planted. But Isaac, he sees the weakness and nice, clean shot, picking up Kadian. Now it's a two versus one as Isaac will get the spray on through, no problem. It all rests on the shoulders of Tessas. They know where he is. Bomb's not for him. He's got a challenge. Yeah, he has to He has to swing on this one. He has to be wide. Ten-second defuser won't even make a difference. Acor will take down his countrymen and put Gamer Legion at 13 rounds. Gamer Legion has caused upsets throughout this entire tournament. They need one more to get to the Grand Finals. And it's looking possible. We've had two close maps. This one ain't close. 13 to 5. This is an emphatic victory thus far. And Heroic is going to have to dig deep again. All those experiences. The world against you. The crowd in Rio wanting for failure. Heroic's got to dig from all of that to come back here. They're eight rounds back. This is the kind of comeback that needs a blazing hot start, right? You need somebody to show, to really embody that comeback in a single round and just prove that it can be done. They've got their backs to the wall, 13 to 5. And Game of Legion, they can, they can see the finish line right now. 
one good round win here. And they would have nearly done it already. I like this. Acor aggressive up in the hallway. Trained on that corner with the AWP. Shush. Something in him tells him not to peek that corner. And he's going to fall back from it. It's not worth it. He's not, he's not the action man at this moment. Oh, good damage done. But Ima commits himself to the fight. Drop by Tessas. He's had a couple of nice headshots to open this up, but that alone is not going to do it. Kadian slides into position on Catwalk, and Shush now might be a little frisky. Oh, That's close. Real close. But if you know the orb is on that side, I mean, you could be tempted to go to the B-bomb side, because at least you know you're not going to be running into it there. Kios is going to be found in the middle. Kadian, he's good in that one. Isaac and Sue, the crossfire. Is it going to be enough? Well, the early spray, certainly convincing. And actually, Heroic, they decide, you know what? We're not feeling comfortable at all. Yeah, they're calling that bad boy off. Over towards Khan. Suhei's gonna be here, and Acor still in a very safe position up in Palace. Will Heroic be able to read this? Are you expecting him to still be here, be here after all this time? It's obviously in the back of their mind somewhere. Suhei, that's an easy pick up. Acor with a kill. Kadian, good on the flick. We'll put a pause to the madness for just a second. 30 of them left as well. Two versus two here with the spray at range. Kadian, he has to come off the bomb. He's so worried oh. about getting locked down. Wide swing. Acor, that's a ballsy play. He might go for it again here. Kadian on his own back here, and he can't escape the bomb site, surely. Six health left. And this might be what holds on to the semi final for them. If they want to start the comeback, it has to start with a huge clutch right now. He's trained on the angle, but it doesn't matter. Isaac wide swing instead, and Game of Legion at 14. That position from Acor is so strong. And it felt like Heroic had a real advantage at the B-bomb site, but they get scared away after just one kill. Look at the battle just to get into this bomb site. Every step is challenged. Right. Gamer right. Legion, complete belief. Two rounds away. And look at how quiet they've fallen, Heroic. They are so silent on that side right now. The pressure is on. Nice <laughs> shot from Acor. Blows Kadian out of the sky. And makes it a quick four on five here to begin the round with. Oh, they're landed on thick now. This yeah. is a Gamer Legion that is not going to let this one slip away. Oh, a little bit of a peek up, maybe. Jabby good for the double, certainly. Even if Acor, I don't even know how, but he won the fight against Down down in the underpass. So it's still a three on three. Yabby will continue. Again, somebody has to be that person to step it up. Yabby now with a quad kill, looking to try and see if he can get the ace, but certainly he's already won the round for his team. Yeah. That's the kind of performance, but you got to think it's too late, right? This is going to be a 14 to 6 scoreline. They basically need a 10 round comeback after this one. Shush wants to take the last AK away. Yabby not thinking about the ace that you mentioned. He's thinking about winning the round. Nobody is too committed to the hunt, but they've got him boxed in. And bang, Shush finds him right at the end, 14 to 6. You wanted a round out of an individual from Heroic to get this off, to get this comeback underway. That might be it from Yabby. We'll have to find out. Heroic's going to have to find out if this delivers them the energy they so desperately need. Timeout from Gamer Legion. Yeah, and Imma, he's so fired up behind this. He's, I'm going to jump through the murder hole. I'm going to try and do it anyway. Obviously, you can get a better jump than the one that he got, but at the end of the day, probably didn't need to do it. But it tells you something about the kind of mood that he's in. 21 kills on him. And a massive lead for Gamer Legion. You could see the look on their faces here, heroic. They don't look anything like themselves. Remember how this map started? The triple kill from Kadian and the pistol, oh, taunting yeah. the camera. That's so long ago. That's been wiped off his face. A quad kill on Jabby. It's a, a very, I don't even want to call it a sign of life or some light at the end of the tunnel. It has to be a lot more than that. Immer in the middle, immediately back. The boost up, it's a classic. And that's the only thing they really got. They got an M MP9 as well. Oh, actually, Sue, he might be able to get one. The spray continues. It's great! Tess is getting blown up as well. Isaac there to pick it up, and now it's just all on Kadian. 
One versus three. How did it come to this? They had nothing to work with. And yet, Gamer Legion looked better than Heroic on this one. Ima's flanking. There's yeah, a timer on is. this for Kadian that he's not reading. He's not ready for this at all. A little bit of a shot. It's Sui to take him down. 15. Gamer Legion with one foot in the grand final. On the verge of it. And that face says it all. Concern and frustration. Gamer Legion is making all the plays on this map. The proactive team. They have built up so strong throughout this tournament to get to this point. Doubted every step of the way. Making believers of us all, they've got nine chances. Nine shots to make it at the grand final. Nine chances to crush the dreams of Heroic. And they've been playing fearless Counter-Strike, even when they were behind. When they had to claw their way back, they looked so focused. Now they're playing way from the front. Playing loose. Yeah, they're doing whatever they want. Immer clocking in at 126 ADR. He has been an absolute god on all of the maps that we've seen out here at the semifinal. He's been he's been pretty quiet. All things can I mean he had the pistol round in the second half, but man. They haven't needed him yet too much in the second half. Everyone delivering. Heroic. This is it. Nine in a row. Said Gamer Legion have one foot in the grand final. Well, Heroic have got one foot in the grave at the moment. And it's a default spread to begin with. They've got both feet in the grave. Yeah. They've got a claw out. Resurrection for Heroic is real far away at the moment. They're gonna leave Stown over in the B hallways. Leave him there to lurk it through. Hope you can get an opening. Isaac and Imura playing that double position. And looks like they could try for an A execute here. Yeah, they, they have to take attention away from Stown's position. Shush to come out of halls, create some space inside the bomb site with the Mac 10. Set piece towards the A site. Kiaz dropping utility. Defensive utility to keep him dangerous and keep him alive for the moment. Oh, look at the bomb. The bomb is actually running back through T spawn. They're going to try and meet up with Stown. Isaac, he's still in the bomb site and he's good for that opening kill. Now that's going to draw Ima back. That's a huge red flag. They know what's coming. Suhei on the kill as well. And now Yabi and Kadian are showing up. Ima with the spray down. He's so good. He is immortal! It's just Tess's left, and there's nothing to do! Game Legion with a legendary run to make the grand finals of the final major in CSGO! Stunning the Counter-Strike world. What a road for this team to take to get here. The evolution of Shui as an in-game leader. The evolution as Ima as a star. Emerging so brightly in Paris. Acor and everything he's gone through to become an upper in a grand final of a major. Gamer Legion have entered Counter Strike history. Unquestionably so. You see the look on their faces, they can hardly believe it. And on the heroic side, it is heartbreak. Probably the worst loss of their history. Devastating. Absolutely the worst loss. This major grand final had their name on it. They've been working for it for so long. And there's no words you can give to console this kind of a loss. But Gamer Legion gets a standing ovation, winning the hearts and minds of the crowd here in the Acorn Arena. Yeah, I'm shocked beyond words. Chaos once again as the crowd on their feet. This certainly is a night to remember. Yeah, Sui winning their hearts and minds too. The calling that we saw out of him on the T sides, really of all three maps, was a masterclass. Unbelievable. A masterclass for a 20 year old. An incredible victory for Gamer Legion. We're going to hear from Katie and down with James. Katie. You guys came into this major looking incredible. Your form at other events has been fantastic as well. You guys have fought every single time, not just against your opponents, but against the crowd so many times as well. 
But here, losing the game of Legion, especially after how you managed to win that first match, what's that feeling going through you right now? What's the emotions right now? Yeah, I think they played super well. You know, there's full kudos to them. There's no denying that they, they've had an unbelievable run. Maybe some can critique their way to getting here, had some kind of easy opponents, but today they took down one of the big dogs. Yeah. And uh, nothing but uh, respect for that. And you always do have massive respect for your opponents, mate. And everyone has massive respect for you, whether what's going on the crowd or not. But I will say this for you. What was that speech like? We know you've got these amazing speeches. What do you say to the guys? Because I know you always believe you can pull it back. And that last map after the first half, you must have said something special. Yeah, I was hoping that we could make the comeback. You know, I was telling the boys that it's still possible. It was the same scoreline as the first half of uh, Ancient. But yeah, too many mistakes. Just not on point, and uh, yeah, not much to say. Well, let me give you this then, mate. You have had like a movie-style journey in how your career has gone. You've become one of the best teams in the world. You have constantly been fighting for trophies, and you have performed incredibly well. So how would you like to end it out of the CSGO Major here? The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, well, first and foremost, thank you everyone here in Paris for showing up. You know, for me, like I said in the speech, it started more than 10 years ago. Bringing my own computer to Sweden, driving with the bus, with the train, many stops to go to Schönköping. I can tell you the crowd and the atmosphere, it was a different one. Devil walked throwing off his pants after winning the major. Time has changed. But what can I say, Counter-Strike has literally changed my life. I've uh, not become the person I become without it and I'm so happy to play with my boys I know that they're all feeling really shit right now and Yeah, and I think, you know, I could go on for ages, but I want to say to you guys, thank you for showing up. Thank you for bringing the passion. I don't want to take too much time because right now someone else deserves the hype. But thank you so much, Paris, for everything. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paris. From one side to the other. Emma! Yep. God damn, you put up one hell of a performance, man. How does this feel? Yeah. A tough, emotional game against one of the toughest opponents to your career. I don't know, it feels amazing to win. I have no words. I'm not the guy with the speeches, but uh, I'm grateful that I'm playing here. Unless, I don't know, I couldn't imagine at one point that I would qualify to the fucking final. And that's it, right? You are now a major grand finalist. And people spoke about the journey Game Legion have taken, the, the opponents you face. But here against Heroic, you showed you can take, take down one of the best teams. What does that mean to you guys? Uh, it it, it, it means the world to us. It means the world to us to qualify the final. Like I said, it's uh, it's a dream come true. And then now we have to face Vitality in the final, or maybe oh, Apex, oh. or maybe Apex. Yes. But uh, if if it's Vitality, it's gonna be a, a very nice experience because it's gonna we're gonna play against the whole world, uh, oh, county yes. basically. Oh yes, definitely. Now I wanna ask you, 15-12, you guys are up. It looked like you're gonna take it comfortably on Inferno. Start to get dicey. The clutch comes through, everything's nice. You get the map. But then you go into Mirage. What was the conversation like in the team? Because you guys came in with fire. Uh, we just had the, the same talk that we do on every map, after every map, after every game we did. We just did, did our own stuff and then it worked again somehow. <laughs> somehow, well it worked and it's been fantastic so far. Emma, welcome to the grand final. Guys, give it up for Emma and Gamer! By far.
far the toughest task that Gamer Legion have ever faced. By far the biggest stage that they have ever played on, but by far the most impressive result that they have ever achieved. Against all the odds, Maui, it is Gamer Legion to be making it through to the grand finals of the final ever CSGO Major at the expense of Heroic. Man, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought Gamer Legion had it in them? Map two, it was close. And map three, to me, convincing. That was an excellent T side. The calling from Shuhei was phenomenal. Emma came in with the entries, and everybody contributed for Gamer Legion. I don't want to see this team go anywhere. I want to see what they can bring going into the next day, because it's clear that the stage is not affecting them. If anything, it's helping them perform to a higher standard than they have ever done. This was the most perfect way you could ever imagine Gamer Legion to win this game. They left no room for doubt whatsoever. They won Inferno in quite a convincing fashion. Yes, I know the scoreline was 16 to 13, but we spoke about it. Heroic won both pistols, converted both times. In the buy rounds, in the gun rounds, Gamer Legion were by far the better team. On Mirage, there was no doubt whatsoever. Stown, we praised him for having a great tournament so far. He had a career stinker on the most defining map, perhaps, in his entire career. He couldn't get it done. You said it yourself. Emma could 1.87 rating on Mirage against Heroic in a semi-final at a major in front of this crowd. That man right there, that's one for the future. Well, let's relive the hype one more time in this winning mic up moment. I'm in jungle, I'm in jungle. Guys, oh, this is oh my god. Oh, no! Some incredibly loud screams there and rightly deserved. You could see Kios, he knew it was going to happen. He knew that 1v4 was not going to be pulled off by Heroic. Literally throwing his arms up in celebration. And my god, they celebrate in style just like they did on that final map. Hey, don't celebrate too hard yet. There's still another game to go. Yeah. This has been a miracle run already for Gamer Legion, but if they can do what they did to Heroic to either of the possible opponents in the Grand Finals, this run is still possible. They can actually capture a major trophy here. Shuhei's calling has been, in my eyes, the best of any yep. IGL yep. at the entire tournament. Kadian, to me, was the best IGL going into these playoffs. Shuhei one-upped him. That was the point. That was the point I wanted to make. They beat Monty in such a clear fashion yesterday that it had to instill some sort of fear inside Heroic. Mm. We kind of laughed it off saying that, yeah, that's Monty. Heroic is a different caliber of a team. And yes, I'd argue, you know, you play that game 10 times. I'd still argue Heroic are supposed to win 10 times. Yeah. But this was the 11th game for Gamer Legion. They came out swinging. They played the picture-perfect Counter-Strike that they've probably only ever done in this very moment. This is the best Gamer Legion have ever showcased themselves to be. And they beat Heroic in such a convincing style that even if you're a all vitality for that matter going into that final tomorrow i cannot stand here saying gamer legion doesn't have a chance there's no way that i can say gamer legion couldn't win this major with the performance and with the level they're showcasing on the server right now yeah i think there's one guy though that we obviously have to look at oh it's got to be Ema. we've got to look at some Ema highlights because uh, he was looking absolutely stellar throughout i mean the duration of the series but particularly in that final map that was where he was really standing out i, I was saying freya that in this series kadian He's not the main character. Emma is him. This guy was the real deal. The entries he was finding towards middle, the way he was popping out of a ramp, the explosive play from Eva was a strategic luxury to the big brain of Shuhei. If you have a player like this, it makes life so miserable for your opponents. Heroic, they look for responses. They look for some of those answers, some of those re-aggresses, but Emma was always there to catch them. Every time they even wanted to set up some kind of re-aggressive play on the CT side, Emma was right there, crosshair in their faces. It's so scary when you're going up against Emma looking like this. And what is incredible is we did, we, I mean, we never expected this form from Emma coming into this major. We're talking about a team that was 0-2 down at one point. Their major was practically over. The fact that they've managed to run it back, make it to grand finals are just an absolutely incredible feat. Gamer Legion have turned it around. The man on the screen right here has turned it around. You want to hear a scary stat from this matchup on Mirage? We talked about Stown. We talked about Yabi coming into this game. We highlighted them being potential superstars, top 20 players of the year, without a doubt so far. Emma, in this game, he killed Yabi and Stown together 15 times. They only killed him seven combined. Oh, Emma wow. absolutely destroyed both <laughs> Stown and Yabi. He single-handedly took them out of the game, and that was the difference. Firepower-wise, you know, in terms of individual skill level right here, Emma was by far the 
the best player on the server. Not even both Stown and Yabi combined could put up numbers against this guy. That was outstanding, and I think I've seen a couple of people treat it already. It's going to be very tough for Gamer Legion to keep hands on this guy, because the way he's been performing so far <laughs> on the stage, there must be so many teams right now eyeing an opportunity to get Emma inside their team, because he's fantastic. For the side of the Danes, though, man, we talked about the heartbreak that uh -huh. they ensued in Rio. This reaches a different level. This was a matchup that everybody was saying it was a shoe in for them for the grand final. As you know, Anders and Moses rightly said, their name was painted all over this major trophy, and they stumble in the semifinals this time. It's such a heartbreaking loss for Kadian, but it also says a lot about how we have perceived him. The fact that it's been these grand finals, these semifinals, that's when those demons start to fester for Kadian's team, for Heroic. They start to choke on these big moments, and we do see it once again. We did paint the picture so well, Pimp, that this is a 1 in 11 chance type deal for Gamer Legion to win. And that seemingly is when Heroic play their worst Counter-Strike. This map 3, that's not the Heroic that I'm expecting. The stat that you mentioned about Yabby, about Stown, it seems to be a systemic problem. Everybody seems to crumble in these big pressure moments. And it also says, now, Kadian's story is written. He is never going to be among that upper echelon. He's never going to enter the pantheon of great in-game leaders. The, the case is closed for me. He's not there with Zeus. He's not there with Glaive. He's not there with Kerrigan. The thing is, it hurts in the moment for Heroic right now. They're missing out on a great opportunity, but it also hurts when you look at their legacy. One of the few teams in the world that has inspired a new way of playing Counter-Strike is Heroic. We attach that to Astralis. We attach it to Heroic. Well, Heroic have nothing to show for it. They don't have a major trophy. They only have one tier one trophy. They've inspired an entire nation, an entire world in how you want to play Counter-Strike, how you want to be proactive, but they couldn't get it done themselves. So someone else will have to pick that up and do it for them. Yeah, of course, heartbreak for the side of Heroic. But ladies and gentlemen, if you thought it was getting loud in here, it is time to raise the goddamn roof. That is because the hometown heroes of Vitality gracing the stage for their first ever major semi-final. It's coming up versus Apex after this. Growing up as, as a kid, uh, a pale, pale kid, I was wearing glasses as well. I've been cross-eyed my entire life. I was the perfect case to be, to be bullied in, in school. But it's funny, a picture like this, it's sort of the cliche or like stereotype sure. of a gamer. I was living the stereotype. I was sitting in my room a lot and playing yeah, yeah, computer and games. Did. I have a, a massive scar starting from up here, going all the way down. I'd buy a hot dog, buy a, a cola, two bags of chips and, and another. I could definitely feel that I was losing control. When you want to lose weight and when you want to change something drastically, there's always a lot of first steps. I think people sometimes need to hear that it's okay to struggle, it's okay to fail, it's okay not to be able to reach your goal instantly. I think there's certain parts of my story that everyone can relate to. The ability to go AFK, to remove myself from the gaming space just once in a while, to recharge the batteries, to feel the desire to get back in, is essential to me.
battle to be the Apex Predator and make it all the way to the grand finals in Paris. Vitality versus Apex, another underdog clawing themselves all the way to the semi-finals, but this time they'll have to battle against the crowd. They've been arriving by land, they've literally been arriving by boat, and they are hyped to be getting this arena show match underway. Matthew, you're joining us here for Vitality versus Apex, a coveted semi-final, and the first time we find Vitality in this position in major history. That's a feed in itself. I know, and I think the excitement you have right now is shared by the majority of the audience. There is an electricity in the air. People are all waiting for what is supposed to happen. But I think this is where the danger lies. We are all taking it for granted. We're all imagining Vitality in the grand final. Hell, even lifting a trophy. But the matter of the fact is, there is a series waiting for you with some very serious contenders. You take them lightly, you pay the price immediately. We literally just saw what happened to Heroic Maui. Uh, you can't be underestimating Apex if you're Vitality coming into this match. Yeah, I mean, I think that a few of the shining stars so far, people like Kadian, people like Kerrigan, they've envisioned this future for themselves in Paris, hoisting the trophy. I know Vitality feels the same right now, but if there's anything that this major has taught us, it doesn't care about your favorites. It doesn't <laughs> care about your fairy tale ending to the journey that you had in Counter-Strike. It's celebrating the underdog. It's celebrating the fact that every single team here has a chance. There is so much riding on the shoulders of this Vitality squad. The fact that everyone from around the world are seeing signs, stars aligning, a victory in Rio here, a run undefeated in Paris, not even dropping a single map. Zai Wu, absolutely top stratospheric level. I can tell you, Freya, as a player, this is something that you have in your mind. You're mm. going to bed, you're in a hotel room, you wake up in the morning, you have breakfast, and it just, it's behind you here. It can hear you like, you're ready for the major. This is your major. And you have to deal with that. It is such a unique predicament to be in for Vitality to walk on that semi-final stage, have 10,000s of people just waiting for them to perform. Matthew, do you know another reason why Vitality might have the upper hand today? Hit me. Today is World B Day. I kid you not. It's the B Day. It's time. Buzz, buzz. Buzz, the buzz. The to shine in the arena. But there have been a multitude of reasons why Vitality have impressed us thus far, right? Yeah, that, that's it. <laughs> that's my, it. My predictions it's are It's destiny. Still. It's destiny. <laughs> it's meant to be. Uh, Literally, it. no pun intended. Uh, Zaiwu, just one of the plethora of reasons uh, that Vitality find themselves here. Sure, he's been looking absolutely stellar basically throughout the entire duration of this event. And it's so poetic that he does it on his home ground. I mean, if you actually want to consider the fact that he has shown a light onto the French space, the way that he's actually brought this new kind of era for French people to believe in, it's not that he's actually won the trophies yet. There isn't the hardware, there isn't the cabinet, he hasn't filled it up by any means, but people see with their eyes and they are starting to believe, and they haven't believed in a long time, Maniac. It's been since Kenyas, since Shocks. It's been maybe seven years since people, since the French fans have gotten this excited. When you witness I will play Counter-Strike, the level is so high that you have no choice but to rally behind greatness. It's the same as watching a beautiful painting. You just, you know it's insane. You can't really put a word on it, but it is insane. You mentioned trophies, though. There is a deficit. There's always been a deficit yes. in Zaiwu's career. As incredible as he is as a, as a player, as a human being, you cannot argue against the fact that he hasn't matched his talent, his incredible talent, with actual success and meaningful moments in his career. This is a meaningful moment, as meaningful as it gets for someone like Zaiwu, who's never stepped into a semi-final stage of the major and now has a chance to get that trophy. He has to deliver. It is an imperative. Well, we see a hell of a lot of him on the server, so let's hear from Zaiwu, courtesy of Thinker. It's been an incredible few days in Paris here for the playoffs already. Is the support everything you expected and dreamed of? Yeah, actually, we expect this support uh, actually before coming in Paris, and the fans are doing great job for that, and yeah, it's really good. Apex said yesterday that you two were the two French players, so you felt a little bit more pressure, or at least he did. Do you feel that extra pressure when you're playing now, you're a French player, to, to perform for the crowd? Uh, maybe yesterday before the game, I expect more pressure, but today is, we have uh, experienced that before. And I feel good, I don't have so much pain, I feel really good, I'm really excited to play now and yeah, I mean, we experienced that yesterday for before, yeah, we feel good now, feel good, both of us feel really good, Dan and me. Yeah. Throughout the whole major, we've seen some of these top teams, they drop the ball against some of these underdogs, there's a lot of upsets the whole way through the major. We're looking at Apex coming into this as a team that has probably been one of the best underdog teams so far, and that's testament to them getting to this point. 
What is your mentality as a team in terms of approaching the underdogs? How do you prepare the mentality for this? Actually, we, we prepare like it's a normal game. We're not thinking about the underdogs. We, if they're in semi-final today, it means they're really good. And we don't gonna underestimate them. We're just going to play our game, thinking of what we can do every, every round. And yeah, we're just gonna, it's going to be a normal game for us. Like we face FaZe or Navy or G2, it's going to be the same. Now, looking at Apex as a team that you've reviewed before this matchup, what do you think their biggest strength as a team is right now when you look at how they play Counter-Strike? I think the biggest strength is to play... Uh, th actually, they play good as a team, but also individually, they're awesome. I think both of this combined, uh, that make Apex right now. And I think, yeah, individually, and it's a team, that's why they're here. They're, they're not playing like, like underdogs and just, yeah, they're playing really good. Everyone are playing really good. Now, there's been a lot of talk. This is the last CSGO Major, so a lot of talk of legacy and, and the last chance to win a Major in, in Counter-Strike Global Offensive. A lot of teams and a lot of players of, the great, of the, this, this game, a lot of the great players, talk about the fact that they want to win the Major, have that legacy. Is, does legacy play into your mind? Do you think about leaving a mark on this game as one of the game's greatest players? Actually, I'm not thinking about this is the last uh, Major of CSGO. I'm just thinking... It's Paris. I, I want to enjoy. I want to just enjoy in front of the fans. And I'm not really wake up every morning and say in my mind, uh, hey, this is the last major, and I want to to have the last trophy of this. No, I'm just playing my game and enjoy. You can re hear that every fan is screaming, and I'm just just want to enjoy in front of that. I'm not thinking about that now. Saying he's not thinking about playing in front of his home crowd, but I don't know whether he's telling the full truth there, Matthew, because surely when you're walking out into this arena with the roars around you, you've got to be soaking up that atmosphere to bring the hype to the server. But listen, he says he just wants to enjoy it. And to a degree, I'll just put it out there. Here's my narrative. It has been one of the point of attack. If you wanted to tackle Zywood to say that he doesn't have this extra hunger that a man like Simple has demonstrated, a man like Nico has demonstrated, that sometimes you need to get to that extra level. I would argue that today, shaping out the bracket is looking like, this is a good mindset for Zaiwu to have. All you have to do if you're Zaiwu is not let the context and the pressure get to you and enjoy yourself playing Counter-Strike. You're gonna be arguably back-to-back -back favorite in a semi-final and a would-be grand final where all you have to do is handle your nerves. And I think at that game, his mindset pays actually. I think when we also open up the legacy discussion, we have to mention that Zaiwu hasn't obviously captured a major trophy yet. He does not have a major MVP. And that is something that is a blight on his resume because despite the fact that he's captured two number ones in the world consecutively, two number twos as well, it, it says that a lot that he just hasn't done it on the biggest of stages. It's been other tournaments where he's usually punching in big. And so at this major, he has a chance to change the conversation and solidify his position in the GOAT conversation. He will be guaranteed top two by many if he wins here if he doesn't yes. then there the conversations open where is he in that top five two two to five is he even on that sixth position because he doesn't even have a major trophy he has to get it done here so even though he doesn't care about the context csgo's history is ending and he needs to make his mark on it here in paris and we care about that conversation yeah hell everybody knows that the simple visaiwu is such a tremendously interesting and passionate debate it polarizes people i'm on team simple i'm on team Zaiwu, and I disagree with you, and you know what, screw you with your ID, you're an idiot. Hey, think about what Zaiwu can accomplish in 2023 and the position that he is in right now. He could technically tie simple, yes. the amount of major being won, and he could set himself up for a third year as best player in the world. He would actually be on track to maintain that conversation, yes. to maintain the actual comparison with the GOAT that is simple currently. But the notion of GOAT is something that time can actually change. That is the whole concept behind it. You mentioned the word legacy, a name that we have to throw into the ring from the side of Vitality obviously has to be Dupree, but also Zonic alongside him, right? We're talking about Dupree as the only player that could be lifting five major trophies. Zonic in that conversation as well. And they have some of the most storied careers in the whole of CSGO. Yes, for, for Dupree to get his fifth year, he would achieve a feat that nobody else has before him. However, for Dupree in that conversation, it's tough to actually put him, if I'm being honest and pumping the brakes just a little bit, to say he's the GOAT rifler, because he was never the best player on any of his teams. 
But we have seen an inspired Dupree lately. What he was able to accomplish at IEM Rio shows that he's peaking at the right time. And that's another reason why people are getting excited about Vitality. It's not just the Zywoo show anymore. Mm. Dupree is contributing. Spinks is doing his job. Magist, to me, has been the right-hand man for the longest of times. And Apex has proven himself as a caller, too. There are multiple major winners besides Zywoo, Dupree being one of them. But everybody else has been proven dependable. And I love the tenacity of Dupree. Like, just yeah. think about his story for half a second. He was part of the winningest team, the win winningest core in the history of Counter-Strike. And then obviously he hit a brick wall. He hit the brick wall where he struggled both as a team and individually for the longest time, could not find his groove. He could have, he could have retired. Why would we even say anything about it? He could have just retired, but he's stuck, and now he's in this incredible position as we have the maps coming over and the first decisions being made in this semifinal. Oh. Apex picking into Mirage. Where That's are you expecting Vitality weakness. to go to? Yes, the Vertigo oh, pick. Oh, yes. Get it. Yep. Okay. We've worked towards it. They worked on this T side yes. just to be able to have that pick. Yes, the, the Vertigo pick from Vitality comes out, and let's see what the decider is. It is, in fact, Inferno. I think looking at this veto from the onset, I mean, I think this is incredibly Vitality favored. When I was in the elevator with Apex just yesterday, he said he thinks they have the best T-side Vertigo in the world right now, and I would be hard-pressed to disagree with him. Speaking of T-sides, we've got to throw it back over to that quarterfinal versus Into the Breach, and we have to give it up for Magist, because, man, he was just an absolute magician, particularly in that offensive half, and it has been great to see a resurgence from him, Matthew, yes. because there was a time, just like Dupree as well, that he was dipping down in his He's been dipping down, and I think compared to Dupree, who for a while you could argue was or could use the fact that he was being a role player as a cover behind his pro performance, in the individual performance, rather. He could have said, hey, you know what, I'm sacrificing myself for the team and an entry fragger. Majisk didn't have that luxury. Majisk were put in positions where he could shine, and he didn't for a while, and this was tough to witness. Now, I have to say, you mentioned the T side, it's true. He's been so incisive in mid-round situations, mid to late round situations where he get activated, and he has these moments of just pure lightning or the cross replacement. He's no Robs, don't get me wrong, but he gets the job done in these moments and he's been a pillar, a beacon of solidity for Vitality in this T-side. Yeah, I think that when we look at just this this Danish duo, including Bajisk on top of it, he has been, to me, the most consistent person on Vitality, not named Zaiwu. For the past year for them, there really was a lot of doubt in terms of who's going to be stepping up for them. It was supposed to be Spinks, but Bajisk has put himself in the conversation consistently as just a perennial anchor of the year. He's always locking down those bomb sites, showing that even if Vitality, part of that mid control, part of any of those fights on other sides of the map that are more important fall apart, he can still deliver a multi-frag in a key situation. And I'm sure he's going to be having to do a lot of that because Apex, they've got good map control procedures. They're going to lose some space from time to time. They're going to rely on Majisk. Yeah, just to add a little bit of assault on that conversation, by the numbers, the CT side of Majisk have been quite complicated at this event. Mm. We're talking about a 0 0.8 rating on the CT side, and he has very high responsibility positions. We, we can jump into the Mirage ID, the Mirage concept. He's going to be playing the A side, and I'm sure that if I'm part of the Apex coaching staff, analyst, IGL or whatever, this is, this is a position that I am trying to abuse. I'm going to try to put on Chaos on the map so that I can play my 1v1 or my 2v1 onto Majisk. And by the numbers again, it's been a little bit complicated here in Paris on the CT side. So good for him to be able to maintain a clear head on the T side. To round off the conversation about the roster of Vitality, obviously you threw Spinks' name into the ring. He was the person that we were looking for when he joined the squad, obviously poached from that end side uh, to be the secondary star alongside Zaru. It took a long time for that to happen. It's not consistent quite yet, but we did see see uh, in that game versus Into the Breach, Spinks really popping off on Vertigo to be sealing that for them. I think that it was a bit of a honeymoon at first when they picked up Spinks. Yeah. ESL Pro League, great debut, obviously capturing that trophy there. It, it felt like Vitality found the key to success. They finally found that last missing piece to their jigsaw puzzle, and it was all coming together to be this pretty picture. But then they started having just inconsistent results. And you did and like it. I, hey, know yeah, you, I, was, I know you had a bone to pick with Sphinxes I, for a while. He looked fraudulent. Side. He was looking fraudulent for a while. He was he was kind of messing up when he had to, when he was forced onto bomb sites. He was having these moments where he would just push in man advantage situation, give up the man advantage. I started wondering, does Sphinx understand what his role is on this team? Does he understand how to like, mitigate the losing conditions that he is supposed to not ever provide opponents? That was, to me, where I started to have my doubts with Sphinx. But Legend Stage, 
He was one of the top performers. Of course, he is going to be peaking here because it just feels like everybody from Vitality is coming together now. I don't see really a serious weak link anymore for this Vitality team. He's changed the conversation around the defense of Vitality. Quite honestly, that's yeah. just the situation we're in. With a Sphinx that is performing the way he is now, our dialogue just has modified itself. For a while, you mentioned like the issues you had with Sphinx. It seemed like you either find him in movement and semi-aggressive, or you'd see him be the victim of an execute. He yeah. just he didn't know how to handle executes properly and have like that defensive position that will allow you one kill, staying alive, playing clever. He would either be three kills because I am ahead of the execute, or I am basically a puppet. Please execute on me, take my life, Jesus. That's what he was for a while. And I feel like he's been I don't know if he's been putting the work individually or if the team has come together to help him, but he's been finding this halfway position where he can have an impact. He can leave his mark on the round before the execute comes in. That's why the defense is much better. Let's flip this track on over to talk a little bit about Apex, the team on the other side of the server who somehow, some way, took down Liquid 2-0 yesterday. It was a Liquid that certainly were falling flat, but it was an Apex that were able to capitalize upon that Maui and some really great things coming out of the in-game leader to firepower them all the way to that victory. I think we can look at the other semifinal and draw a little bit of inspiration. The way that Shuhei has done such a great job of turning around the fortunes of Gamer Legion and putting them into the grand finals. Kixan has been the best signing of the years. Those are Pimp's words, and I am echoing that sentiment. Kixan has been so exceptional for this team because not only has the calling improved drastically for Apex, but he himself, as an individual, has been popping off. Have a 1.34 rating on as basically a rookie, well, he is a rookie on this kind of stage, and to be decimating Liquid, all these stars falling before him, the North Macedonian Rifler, blooded by the Tier 2 space on that Blue Jays roster, has shown that what he has been doing, what he has been grinding towards, it pays off even in the biggest moments. And, I mean, let's talk about the impact he had on that overpass, game, oh my. which arguably propelled them to this incredible position they're in. The CT side, early on in the game, that's one of the metrics that I like to keep an eye on. Who was the player in set team that set them on track? You can talk about Nox Clutch, and we will for sure. You can talk about how they were able to go through the finish line, but the reason why they were in that position in the first place is because of Kixon's multiple multi-kills on the CT side in the first six to seven rounds. Adding both game sense, reading the position, and having that decisive impact whatever he needed to in the bathroom position, hiding in the smoke uh, on the B side when the execute comes in. I guarantee you, I guarantee you most of these kills are going to happen below 10th round, below 11th round. That's the moment I'm talking about. Crossing the smoke as the execute comes in. He's got the read and he's got the multi-kill. He put his teammate on track when they could have had the fear of winning, which we usually refer to when you're about to do something great in your life or in your career. He was the one saying, listen, you know what? F this. F this. This is how we're going to do this, guys. Follow me. Follow my lead. I'll show you the way. And I was in awe, in awe of his performance on Overpass. He was so headstrong in both maps of this series. It was absolutely incredible to see, particularly because back in the Legend stage, Maui, it was different players from the side of Apex that were actually popping off, that were actually propelling them forward to the playoffs. Jacob and JL, those are the two guys that were really the big stars for them in my eyes. The aggressive duo between them, taking so much map control so consistently. To me, it looked like Kixan was using them and setting them up for the right kinds of situations, but that's why it's even more impressive because those two guys didn't do that much work against Liquid. It's been a team effort from Apex. That's why when Zaiwu was questioned by Dinko, really, what do you like about them? He kind of was about to say the individuals, almost like a predisposed response, like he was just ready, but like then he was like, no, it's actually the team. Like he had a moment to second guess his thought right there, and he's like, no, they're playing great Team CS because, like you said, Jacob JL, great in the beginning, but now it's been more of the team effort. You mentioned the Nort Clutch, which I think is the final nail in the coffin moment uh, from that Liquid series. Let's run it one more time because this was just absolutely insane. The fact that he was allowed to get away with this and the way it just, I don't know, tilted Liquid off the face of it. The context tells the glory of this moment. You can see at this point in time, Liquid had done such a tremendous job shutting Apex out of the game. They basically figured out completely it's a 1v3. And here, the flick is great. And from that moment on, there is nothing in anymore. It's just cross replacement and it's pure instant kicking in. Again, I want to hammer this point home. At this point in the game, Apex had been figured out. 
you would look at the moment, 13 to 11, and I find myself thinking, it's over. It's over. Liquid, they have their number. There was no steam anymore in Apex's game. They weren't able to surprise Liquid in any way. What did they do after this clutch? Immediate B hit. And that's not a coincidence. That's because this clutch gave them that extra fuel in the engine to think, hell yeah, we're going to do this. Insta B hit right behind, and they win the 3v3. This clutch was a semi-final spot type of clutch. These are one of the moments you remember in your whole life. Well, let's move on to talk about one of the more veteran players on the side of Apex's lineup. It's Stiko with a few words courtesy of Zinko. Well, Stiko, we've seen in your career that you've had a lot of struggles at times, you know, times without an organization, times in between, even with Apex, where the team wasn't coming together, you didn't have a roster to go to events with. Now you're walking out on a stage for a major semi-final of the last ever CSGO major. Is, is the impact of that moment sunk in yet, or is it just kind of the momentum still going? Uh, I think the momentum is kind of still going. We're enjoying every moment here. That's the only way how we can uh, surprise even more, because as soon as we start overthinking this and uh, that we're in the semi-finals of the last major, uh, we're going to crumble. So we're just trying to, you know, ride the wave, as, uh, as we say, and uh, yeah, uh, enjoying every moment and uh, ending this CSGO careers of ours uh, with the bank. Now, it's a massive moment for you in your life. Is there anyone here from your family or friends enjoying that moment with you? Yeah, obviously, we got the whole Apex family here and uh, a lot of our uh, friends came, uh, as well as parents. Uh, my girlfriend is here, so uh, people stopped by and I'm happy to share this emotion with them. And uh, I'm glad that the whole Apex uh, is behind our backs and they're cheering uh, in Apex jerseys behind us. Now, there's no denying that you're going out into a hostile environment today. You're going up against the home team. Vitality have got some crazy fans out there making a lot of noise already. Is there a discussion before this game from your team of how you're going to approach the mentality to deal with some of that pressure? Uh, the main takeaway is to just enjoy it. We really want them to cheer no matter what is happening. We want to experience the drawers in the arena and we want to have a full house here. So whatever happens, happens. And uh, we're just uh, here to play some good Counter-Strike. And uh, as a heavy underdog, they have uh, everything to lose. This is their major to win. Uh, but we're here to put up a show and uh, hopefully surprise a lot of people. Now, throughout this competition, we have seen you guys pull off incredible comebacks and overstep and overperform in some of these individual performances compared to the rest of some of your players' careers. What is your biggest strength as a team, in your opinion, coming into this playoffs? So the biggest strength, I would say, uh, is our flexibility. Like, we're able to play Counter-Strike well uh, in, in terms of any round, in, uh, in terms of any roles. We are able to fill in for each other and uh, help each other out. So this is something we've been focusing on prior to this major because we've been struggling with that and now it becomes really our, uh, our strength, I would say. So uh, this is something uh, that we will rely on, maybe our winning condition as well. And uh, as I said, like uh, never tilled and always just enjoy the moment and cherish it. I love that we get to hear a few words from Steve Copas because talk about, you know, a tumultuous career. He's had ups and downs, lefts and rights, but he is not unfamiliar with this major stage. He definitely isn't. For the uh, youngest of the fans watching Counter-Strike right now, Stiko had been at the very top of Counter-Strike in Mal Sports in that 2018-19 period, of course. And I think there is a theme that is going through this Apex's lineup. When you think about Yakim, when you think about Stiko, when you think about Nock, these are players who at some point were deemed insufficient. We'd say, listen, we've given you a shot. It's not working. You're just not cut for it. That's it. Thank you very much for being here. Please have your ticket. Grab your coat. Leave the club. You're not part of the top CS. This is what was told to these people. And they did not give up. Yay came at a while with that G2 core, G2 Esports for a while. Then we had Nock and NIP being replaced by device. Now Sticko as well, who's been trying. He was making YouTube tutorial for a while. That's where he was trying to you know, create and participate to the content of this game. And there is a lesson in it. If someone tells you you can't do it, but you still fight through it, you might just find yourself in the semi-final of the major in Paris. And I think, I for one think it's inspiring, the fact that we have some of these profiles in the semi-final today. Yeah, it's been a just triumphant arc in terms of just what they've already achieved in terms of getting to this moment. I think that Seiko kind of talked about that a little bit, that, you know, people don't really expect too much of them once they're here. Of but, not. I mean, I think that Jacob probably wants to do a little bit better because he's been in the semifinals before. He yeah. did it with Renegades in 2019 Berlin. And I think that Seiko also, he's probably feeling pretty good about this, this already. But the thing is that I do think that Apex believe. They just saw what happened to Heroic on this stage and Gamerly 
Legion, they don't play the most different style from them. Oh. Th these tier two teams, I know you're worried. I, I know, know you're worried. I know you're right. I don't like that sound, but, but I know just, you're right. It's just that these tier two teams, they have actually honed and they've refined so many of the nades, the strategies that the tier one teams have been throwing out there because they all are just grinding. They're playing so many more officials and they're learning from experience much faster than the tier one teams who sometimes are awaiting weeks, if not a month between matches. I want to throw a slight curveball maybe to that point because we had a beautiful quote from Jacob saying, we prepared so hard for Liquid and we had every counter that was possible to have. That was certainly displayed uh, on the server yesterday. We had a great breakdown from Mahone literally reiterating the ancient that we saw right at the beginning of the tournament that ancient they played yesterday however they have not had the same amount of time to prepare yes. for vitality do you see that being you know being rather a different ball game for apex today i think one side of the story is where you just hit it right there it's a question of time and how much I mean, effort, resources you can put into this. But another topic, another angle that I want to attack to, we knew Liquid's situation in regards to Yekinder taking over the reins on a couple of maps very recently. And I see it as a limiting factor. I see it as when things go wrong, there's not going to be that many safety net that people are comfortable in because we're a bit, a bit more spontaneous and on the fly. I don't think this works out for Vitality. I think Vitality is a team that today can handle being pushed against the ropes way more than Liquid can. In fact, you look at their run, Vitality haven't dropped a single map here, but they have been pushed in every single game. Yes. Every team has been able to put up double digit against Vitality. You can see it as a bad way, I see it as a resilient way. You are not putting Vitality out of their shoes today, which was the case for quite a while to my greatest dismay. Yeah, and I think the, the prep that Jacob kind of mentioned in that quote also is just something that Apex have really highlighted. That They haven't been shy about that in their yeah. vlogs. They keep showing Polly, Cuban talking about all these tendencies of opponents. And I feel like in some ways, anti stratting can actually get you pretty far. I'm surprised it got Apex this far. That's really far. But it's like, but the thing is that anti-strating Zaiwu is nearly impossible. You can't anti-strat greatness. You can't anti-strat a guy who is just going to nail you in the face, make the better decision in late round moments over and over and over again. And that's why going into this Vitality, they're still the heavy favorites. I want to believe in the Apex run, but I, I, I believe in Zaiwu even more. I think this is where, you know, it sounds cliche to be putting the Orpus head to head as always, but this is going to be uh, such a challenge for Nork. We talk about him, you know, as being an incredibly clutch player. He displayed that just yesterday, but going up against Zaiwu, this is no easy feat, particularly in Paris. I mean, the head to head is, it's nonsense. I don't care about that head-to-head. Head. I have, I have <laughs> no interest in that head-to-head -head because I was going to eat him alive. The question is the output you can put on the server. And to that regard, I think Nock earned respect. He earned our respect here, the community's respect, by the amount of very impactful moment he's already put on the board with this Apex lineup. We've mentioned the 1v3 against Liquid, which was obviously the most pinnacle moment you can find. But I would argue there were moments all across his major campaign when he had moments where he was seizing clutches and he was having that impact. So he has been an asset for Apex, there is no doubt. But the man we have on our screen, eh, it's a different kind of ball. Look at his warm-up skills. Look at this. Ooh. He's, he's surfing. He's a man of culture. He's just chilling, man. One, one thing to note about Nock is just that he still plays the op like he did in NIP when people wanted so much more out of him. Mm. In terms of opening attempt rate, there isn't a single opper, that, except for Brokey, that took less opening attempts, in, uh, at least from what I saw. That, that, that to me, is where really Vitality should be able to just feast because we've already talked about all their personnel, all the ways that they take up space. And it's just that if you're, you don't have an op that's going to try to stop those players, it's why I created a win condition for Liquid on Overpass. Obviously, Nock upset that with that 1v3, but it wasn't with the op. I know. It wasn't with the op. It was with a crazy rifle round. And so if he just kind of goes back to that and he just kind of has, in my eyes, a very average and even mediocre type game with his primary weapon, then I don't really see how Vitality should have as much trouble in this sort of matchup. I mean, you talk about it. I think he's more of a mid-round, late-round type sniper, right? Yeah. He's not the one that you are hoping for to just give you the 5v4 continuously time after time. Arguably, I was going to do that on the CT side. He's pretty much a guaranteed. If you cross him, you're dead. That's it. These are the rules. For Nog, it's more about the late round. I will say, though, to, to his advantage, I don't think that Vitality have the tightest chip in terms of executes. I see them execute. I don't think they have the most 
perfect flashes and the most incredible pathways when there's always a trade. I think there might be moments where there's an errant, there's a little bit of a mistake, there's a gap, there's something missing, and this is where Nock could actually strike if he wants to, because Vitality have plenty of qualities, not that mean of metronome with the executes. Gentlemen, final thoughts before we do get this matchup underway. We have the map cemented. Has that changed your mind at all, or do you still feel like Vitality should be restoring order from what we saw in that first semi-final and making it through to the grand finals? I wish, I wish Apex took the map veto differently, honestly. I wanted them to pick something like Anubis, and so, yeah, I am strongly favoring Vitality in this one. Imagine I went to bed. France. I went to bed from the Vitality boat. I was already on the Vitality side, and I didn't change this morning. I had my breakfast, and I'm all for Vitality. Well, we are so hyped to get this one underway, but not before we head to a short break. When we are back, it is time for this crowd to get loud and proud. Vitality and Apex entering the arena for the semi-final. I was one of the first people who had professional playing experience to step into broadcast work. And I felt like I had a voice at that time that no one else could provide to give insight into the thought process of being a player. And the romantic story of how tactics change and across a single map and the decisions that teams and players are making that and how they adapt across, across a half of Counter-Strike. I felt like that was something that I could help provide in the commentary booth that, that no one else was doing quite yet. And just across the next year after, after making that decision, just things fell into my lap that allowed me to give Counter-Strike more and more attention and more and more love. And then a full-time contract comes to be a commentator. It was just a sequence of things that just kind of allowed it to keep blowing up and I never looked back. of competition. The gateway for legends. 
and its trophy, a maker of kings. Counter Strike in my life for 15 years. I've been playing this game for two thirds of my life. I grew up with Counter Strike. I got into Counter Strike uh, because of my brother. My life is Counter Strike. I live and breathe it. Come on. CS only made my life forever. I didn't really know what I wanted in my life. CSGO was that answer for me. It's what I've always done. It's my whole life. And I wouldn't have most of the things that happened in my life right now if I didn't have CSGO. Ten years of Counter-Strike majors. Ten years of legendary plays. The emotions are high. This arena is absolutely packed out. And we are ready to see who the last team will be in the grand final. CND, what do you think of this? Speechless. I can't say anything. This is crazy, man. Wow. Well, guys, we have one very special guest for you. Yes. He is a French major champion and MVP winner from the same major, Cluj Napoca. You know him as the magician. He is a legend of the game. Please welcome on, Kenny S. La Cor Arena. Merci d'accueillir une légende du Counter-Strike français. Cinq fois dans le top 1 sur TV. Deux fois dans le top 6 mondial. MVP de Major. You like that, Kenny? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um... Je parle en français, mais pas de suite. Um, so here I am on that stage. Um, I took a decision a while ago, and I feel like the best way to do it was on that stage, on that city, yeah, in that country, with the people that follow me all the way since the beginning. Um, CS has given me uh, pretty much everything in life, experience, knowledge, sociability, um, Maturity, pretty much everything. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Um, so I didn't make any speech because I uh, I know I will lose my words anyway. Um, but to make it quick and um, because oh. so I took um, that place here to uh, to tell you. That first of all, I thank you for the bottom of my heart, for all the love you're giving me.
And I also want to say that the, the way people, you guys look at me when you, you meet me, the way you speak to me is the biggest pride I have in my life. Because I don't even know if I deserve that, but see you are being the people you are with me. And uh, so thank you very much for that. Uh, to make it short, yeah, I'm uh, retiring from competition. <laughs> I, um, I loved every single moment. Legend to the game, Penny. Playing our game since you were six years old, you've experienced so much around the world. What has been your best memory from Counter Strike? My best memory, as I said, it's the education that the game has given me. Um, um, winning a major, obviously, not my best picture, not gonna lie. But <laughs> <laughs> um, and obviously, many tournaments such as Montpellier, because once again, like. Being in France, um, I know I feel like I haven't really been close to my French audience, but uh, actually I am. Uh, so I want to thank everyone, but I will switch to French now because uh, Shula. Uh, ah, désolé, j'étais obligé de le faire en anglais au début. Merci à vous, merci à vous, merci à vous. Guys. Let's give Kenny the ultimate send-off. Merci, merci a tous. big Keith. round of applause for the legendary Kenny S. <laughs> Hard moment for sure. Kenny to do, but in front of the home crowd, that is beautiful. But we do now need to decide who is going to be coming through yeah. as the next grand final team. Now, there's a lot of Vitality fans in here for sure, oh, but Apex yeah. have put up one hell of a fight. Yes. You, you ready, ready for this? Yes, I am. Obviously, we're ready for that. Guys, on va faire un truc un peu spécial. Tous les fans de Vitality, vous allez vous mettre debout et on va lancer en légende. À qui ne saute pas n'est pas Vita dans toute l'arène. Vous êtes prêts? A 3, 1, 2, 3 
He grinded his way to this stage before. His third major semi-final appearance, 2015, 2019, and now 2023. You can't deny the impact he has had and the experience he brings. Now he has the chance to harness it all to make it to his first ever major grand final. Nork. Yesterday was magical for the Swedish author. He shone against Liquid and devoured America's major hopes on the stage of dreams. He put the pressure on some of the best, but now it's time for the ultimate test. Kixan. Against Liquid, we saw the highest individual level of this in-game leader for the team. The preparation was on point and the execution was excellent. The dream continues even if the goalposts are changing. Each and every game is not the same. JL, the test keeps on coming and he's still standing, but he needs to bring the level he has shown before against one of the best in the world. The pressure is on and the confidence must show. Stiko, his best major performance ever, going further than all of his previous teams. He stands with that experience and he continues to fight for his dream here on the stage. Now is his time to shine. Let me hear you make some noise for Apex! <laughs> Spinks, he's no stranger to the semi-finals of a major, but this one surely feels different. He's adapted and refined himself, and he's been given the extra bit of vitality that he now needs to shine with his French partners in crime. Zai Wu, the child of Counter-Strike's first major semi-final. Despite the accolades and praises he is given by fans around the world, this journey has been far from easy. Now it feels like it's all coming together for one of the greats. Full focus is needed to ensure he doesn't meet an ill fate. Apex, into the belly of the beast once more he will go. This is a man who knows how to put on one hell of a show. From star level performances, Mad Frank his way to the top of the charts, then transitioning to a leader and giving his career a restart. Dupree, to the stars and now to victory. He has done what most players can only dream of. From the first to the last, he's always giving it his all. The pressure is on, but he's felt this before. Being the most revered major champion is closer than ever before. Magis, major championships and a major MVP. He knows what it takes. He has changed lanes switch sides and has come out buzzing for the last major in CSGO. History and legacy is on the mind and this game will take him one step closer to the prize. V is for victory! V is for vitality! Well, we 
certainly have a crowd favorite in this arena. When it comes to who will be able to get that last major final spot, it'll all be decided in this server. I got Cuban, I got Zonic with me. Zonic, it's been one hell of a journey recently for you guys. You seem to be peaking at exactly the right time. But many of the champions have fallen to underdogs. How do you prepare for that not to happen to you? I think Counter-Strike is going through a generation shift with a lot of new players coming in. And yeah, we, uh, we talk with the players and we do everything. I mean, for me, it's when you're at this stage, there is uh, everyone had it coming. I mean, they deserve everything coming for them. So props to, uh, to Apex, but hopefully here it stops. And how much of this is becoming a mental game as well? Because we've seen them. When it comes to their game plan, they don't play the normal style of CS. Come again. How much of this is mental? I think Counter-Strike in general is, is more mental than ever. That's why we have the, the best ball psychologist on our team. So we've been spending five months talking about a scenario like this. And yeah, we, uh, we are ready. I'm glad you're ready. You certainly need to be ready. Cuban, you have been coaching for such a long time. You've done well back on the old VP times, but it's been a while since 2017 that we can see you be potentially in a major grand final. How badly do you want to be back there? Uh, you know, uh, last final I was playing was against this guy on the other side and we lost. But I remember one more story from 2007 and we were playing ESWC finals here in Paris. Back then when we both were players and uh, I won against him. So this is a time for me to win again in Paris. And when you've come into this game and you're preparing for the likes of Vitality, how much have you put in to change things up? How much have you switched up to just counter them? Or is it just still playing the same style we saw from Apex? Uh, I think we don't need to change much. They, they have the coach who was four-time major champion. Two players who were three and four-time major champion. They have 10,000 people behind them. Uh, what else can... I mean, they have everything, right? Crowd behind us. But for me personally, I have two of the most important people in my life my wife and my daughter on oh. the stage for the first time in the arena. My son is at home, and this is what gives me full power, and I think we are able to win this game, definitely. I playing, love it. Playing our identity and sticking to our rules and principles. I love it. You guys shake hands. Go and take your position. Two legends of the game that have met in two many different ways. It's time for us to kick off this semi-final. The whole arena is packed out. Guys, are you ready? That's what I'm talking about. Are you with me? One final time today. Let me hear you. Bring the home! Black and yellow all over the arena. But if this major has proven anything, you can never count out the underdog. But for both the crowd and statistical favor in Vitality, this is a historic occasion. Not only the deepest the Orc have ever made it in a major playoff, but a chance to be making it to the grand final as well, Machu. It's an unbelievable chance, an unbelievable opportunity that they are presented right now, Freya. And I'm sure every single one of these players is aware of the honor and the chance that they have currently. I was watching them getting settled. I was watching Apex just taking a deep breath, relaxing. We all talk about the stories, we talk about the narratives, we talk about how a Vitality is supposed to win this game. They're supposed to go in the grand final, they're supposed to make history, but they still have an incredible challenge ahead of them. And it would be so easy, it would be so human to allow yourself to fall into thinking this game is going to be gifted to you, mm. and it won't be. If you enter with that mindset, you will be caught off guard. That is more or less, I think, the wake-up call that Vitality received when they played against Into the Breach in their own quarterfinals. Mm. The beginning was not easy for them. They did get a little bit of a shocker, a surprise in the form of Cypher in that one. That being said, on the Apex side, there are a couple people that can make it difficult. It can make them sweat. And sometimes we have also seen that when you're the favorites, when you have all this pressure, all of this arena crowd cheering your name, rooting for you, that puts more pressure on these players. For CSGO players, sometimes it feels like the home crowd is actually disadvantageous because then you're actually trying to do a little bit more. You're trying to show that extra bit of flair, and that's when you get cocky. That's when you can sometimes get caught. This is still a huge underdog game for Apex, but Vitality, they can let it slip. And this is one of the door that has been left. Okay, 
an open, a stone unturned for Vitality. They haven't lost a single map yet in this entire major campaign. Mm. How do we know that they would react the right way, the proper way, the productive way, if suddenly Apex were to steal away Mirage? We know it's a map where Vitality have shown weaknesses across a few weeks and months. It's definitely not a stronghold. Now, how do you react if you're these five players that we have on our screen and you live this stage 0-1 down? I think this is the play for Apex. You are giving absolutely everything you have in the tank in this one map where you can just make them doubt, which they haven't so far. And Vitality have not been shy with just how much this would mean to them. They've been talking about the preparation time, the months upon months they have been putting into preparing for this event. We heard it from Zonic himself, preparing since January of this year. They've been putting in the lead work, so the pressure is certainly going to be on their shoulders to deliver here. There's no doubt about that, Freya. And for Apex, it does feel like they're playing with house money. They have great preparation. We heard Cuban say that they really didn't tra change too much of what they were doing for Vitality. I say that's BS. I say that's completely BS because every single vlog I watch from Apex shows all of the anti stratting they put into every single team. And so I think he was sandbagging that interview just a little bit. And I think that Zonic, though, he's no, there's no coincidence. And it's not by chance that they call him the GOAT coach. He saw right through that. He was looking dead into Cuban's soul when he was saying, in those words, lying to his face. And so Zonic, he knows that this is still a game that is not going to be easy, and it's one that Vitality have came in with that prep. May I uh, present a notion forth to the council here present? Shall we address Apex as Dan Mattis Claire and Apex as Apex? This is going to confuse the hell out of me if we talk about Apex all the time. Apex gaming, Apex player, but about playing, it's time to game, I think. Well, we are ready to get this semi-final underway. Mirage, Vertigo, Inferno, if we do so need it. So let's raise the roof in this semi-final. I can't quite believe we're here. Semi-final, Vitality are here and present. The first major in Paris and the last of CSGO. It, it all seems to be blending poetically and beautifully, Chad. It really is. As we get ourselves situated, a shrug of the shoulders, a connection of the fists. And ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. We're heading in the semi-finals, Vitality. Can Apex make a dent in the indomitable? Apex has set the tempo here on the T side. Attack on their map choice and slow out the gates. Giving this one together, a couple of smokes, a couple of flashes, and well, the side they want to hit, guess who's home? Tucked in towards the back, the humble god looking to the skies. Does he start with a bang? The Wu, ready, present. And correct, and it's Zywa with the feed to start. JL, OK, OK, the chosen one is here. Starting as he means to go on, popping three, but Sneeko and Nork, they're not quite done with this. They didn't read the script. They're not supposed to be resistant as Nork lays another to rest. Magisk now watching as it's up to Dupree and Spinks, this unlikely blend of Counter-Strike styles. Nationalities, Dupree should have this and delivers. And Stiko already a double. Is there anything more? It's not to be. And Vitality kicking it off with a bang. Ability to open an experience to close right there. Zywe and Dupree combine, and this is beautiful. If you're going to target Apex's bomb site, and I'm not talking about the team, I'm talking about the player, you can put Zywe here as a trap card. Look at this, just dancing with him and doing what he does best. That's one way to kick it off here for the French. Felico here from Apex. Just a couple of upgraded pistols. No full investment, going to bring the Ape. K47's out into the next. This, we're just going to be going through the paces right now. Dupree actually starting over towards B here in the early gate, so something to note. Oh, there you go. We need to keep our eyes on this. We haven't seen Vitality play Mirage. They haven't had to, right? It's been easy for them. They've played six maps, four series, quote unquote, with a couple of best and ones in there. And they haven't needed to play Mirage. They played Nuke, Vertigo, and Ubers, undefeated on all of them. Their first test here on Mirage, and this is a map where Apex 16 0'd Greyhound. Uh, it's a stark contrast in sure. crowd as well as sure. opponent. But that's the thing Apex, 
has been the B defender. Now, on the pistol round, he was playing short. They had Zywe back at B. Now Dupree's at the B side. He's normally the B defender, and Apex is over towards A. So let's see how this unravels in the gun round. The run boost as they're going to mop him up here. Zywe with another few. Oh. And there it is. Quick little quad. Neat and tidy. Seven kills, two rounds. Quite the start. His sixth major. <laughs> his first semi. And his first semi-final. I don't think Matthew Elbow is going to let off the gas. He's got the perfect team around him. I'm not just talking in the server, everything to facilitate and enable him to blossom and bloom into a very special individual. A little tech time out here, gonna get the microphone sorted, but that's Kixon on your screens. Yesterday, a performance that I don't think anybody knew he had it in him. Yeah. And maybe maybe Kixon himself, but that was some fantastic Counter-Strike out of the young lad yesterday. I mean, okay, put yourself in the shoes of Apex right now. The team you, or the player? Sorry. <laughs> the team this time. But put yourself in their shoes, right? You've, you've step, walked out, you, you feel like a villain of the state. And then, not only that, you know you're up against Zaiwu. You know, this fabled name, this untouchable god. And already in the first two rounds of Counter-Strike, you've run into him and he's got seven kills. Yeah, sure, Eco Cobra, seven kills, two rounds, and already you're sitting there going, okay, so he is here. He but this is, is here. the thing, and it's not just Zywe. Obviously, you'd want to try and avoid him in every round, but the key to Apex, especially in their win yesterday against Liquid, they were not afraid. They were happy to get in your face, tussle, right, right. try and bring you down into the mud. And then you have that Nort clutch on overpass, that little shell shocker right there. The momentum shift up to get them across the line. Apex have the necessary pieces here. But this test, we talk about experience, it's so difficult to be able to quantify. But today I think we're about to see why the likes of Magisk, Apex, Dupree, all their experience, what it stacks up for. To be that support network for the stars of this Vitality roster, Sphinx and Zywood. But we're back underway, we're into the guns. Tech timeout has come to its conclusion. And Apex is starting middle again here. Yeah, they are changing things. I mean, we heard it from Sonic. Counter-Strike is more mental than ever. I'm just making sure I've done my prep properly. I've gone back in. Sliding through. Well, I'll keep hold of the reins because Steeko, he's poking and prodding. Dupree on B, good for one. Steeko, though, he did avenge elsewhere on A. Magisk now down again. Look at that Steeko AK. This would be an optimal place for Apex to post their first round here. This mismatch of Counter-Strike players from around the globe have pushed the limits of what many considered possible. They're going to push short here. They're going to scale up short. Sphinx is about to take a fight. So boosting window. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to consider this at some point. Kixon, oh. this is actually a perfect oh. position alongside a Nork. They're boosting, and Sphinx is going to catch two. Great start. No possibility for a rebuttal immediately. Kixon activates, and that's found oh. one. And Sneaker onto to Apex. Hold your breath. 30 seconds, a two versus four immediately equalized. And Dupree, who's next on the scene? Caught out, Sphinx long range. Smoke wasn't up in time, kicks and down, bomb lost. And Steeko doesn't have the health for this. He's already started so strong. Dupree's aware, look at him here. And the sound cue will have been noted, Dupree. Should have a pretty good idea where Steeko has gotten off to in the time, 15 seconds. Might just have to be the save here. And that's going to be it. 3-0 start right now. Hot out the gates. Yeah. And Dupree, good catch. Sphinx, a triple in total. That's its first three of our trip to Mirage. So having all those individuals online as we get the uh, engine rolling. And you think about Vitality. No one has been able to take a map off of them here. Do Apex really have it in them? Yeah, Matthew pointed something out there. The fact that they, they sure they are undefeated, but a lot of the games have been close. Yeah. Like teams have pushed them, and it doesn't really seem to matter what the name is. They have been pushed. So today, can they get shaken? Can they get tested again? Or will they be screaming into that grand final against Gamer Legion? Yeah, you heard me right. I tell you, the last tier one partner team to defend the honor of many is Zywu straight out mid with an AWP against the line of eyes. Jumped out the window. Now, the yeah. Steeko saved AK is what we need to keep our eyes on here, but he hasn't activated early for a fight. He's rerouted here. We want to make sure that he can look for a duel before these Deagles overcommit. They have a couple of smokes, a couple of flashes to work with, so at least find some ground so Kixon can call you into this round. Yeah, Vitality are cognizant. There's an AK in the mix. And that's going to be 
their first port of call if they can. Nothing mid. Apex relays the information. We'll get the nade pinned. Timing everything in this video game. Bang. Chips away. Couple of AKs in the mix on that CT side as well, leveling the odds of those head-to-head -head duels. And Zaiwu is up for the fight. Posted. And a headshot for good measure. JL gone and more to come. They're starting to pincer in. It really hinges off of Stiko. Has he got what it takes up against Dan Maddis Claire? Flash great. Hasn't found lethality. No response. No, it's only one. Spinks denies and it falls beautifully into place. Jacob should be a dead man. Spinks secures it. And these multi kills, they are flowing. Yeah, you can't ask for a better start than 10 kills on Zywu, four rounds in, and five for Spinks. So this is huge already. We're about to move into the second gun round. And this is still the feeling out stages. But the individuals of Vitality, they have come to play today. They're hitting some shots and even stunning the legend right there, JL. Asking the question of what from Zywu's AWP as he finds himself over towards Ticket, punching a couple. But back into these AKs. No Nork AWP available just yet, but Vitality looking hot. Zywu smoked off, fires a shot. And alerts him to his position, but Apex is playing connector. We've gone old school here. He's mixing it up. Often seen as a very crucial point of the map. You put your superstar there to keep him at bay, a la Crims, but Jacob fancies his chances, catches Apex with a pin. Pulled, gets away a little unscathed. Just 70 damage as Sphinx is the first in the feed. Nor gives something for Apex to work with, looking for their first round. Jacob caught into the wind and into Apex. Can't find a second. Kixon maintains. That's an advantage they have to hold on to now. Still very divided. And we'll look to reunite and commit. Kixon has key real estate here. He can kind of just stay towards vent room. Nor can work up connector. JL's going to grab the bomb and join up with Stiko here. Dupree has now floated over towards this jungle position. He's playing forward and hidden from the A ramp as well as Palace. Magisk has been the one to activate first, but Dupree can try and bait for him. It's all going to come down to the timing. And look at Zywu transitioning over now as well. Yeah, they got a good idea of what's coming. Still no direct contact. Sa Sound cues plenty. And Magisk looking for his first frag. Oh, he denied and not built upon it. It's only Zywu. But that might be all they need. Ah! Oh! The chosen one! He's doing it all as he misses his chance. He can't get away. He is such a threat. He is terrifying, Chad. Starting early with the antics, isn't he? Already had a couple of highlights and we're just five rounds in. Five rounds, Chad, I'm terrified. <laughs> and so are Apex here, but Stiko, that's a big one, spinning on a dime. Great response there. The a good round for Apex to draw back here. A really nice round. They put this one together, that is going to feel good. They'll get there first. You can settle those nerves. Remember, the experience factor here. It doesn't compare. Apex are out of their element, but they're shown yesterday. They can still thrive. And oh, a boost. The push is coming. Zywu once more. He is not happy with flying high. 12 frags already. Got to call that off. You can't re-aggress once the AWP notes your presence. So the aggressive mid maneuver hasn't been capitalized on. Apex haven't taken space across the map here to try and punish the extremities. You can see, now Vitality have to rejig their CT setup. All these little pieces can constantly moving as hold up. They might try and go aggressive B apps. It didn't work mid. Let's boost up and let's push B apps as a unit here and take some space because right now our info is very low. But look who lies in wait, Nork. This is the perfect weapon for the job. How is he so prepared for this? Coincidence or not, Nork in prime position for the defense of this real estate. An aggressive stance from the CT side. Apex still. They've gathered ground and it's kicks it to take Whoa, some contact. Loses out to the farm house. That's big from Apex. Loss of their lead up. And now needing one back is Jacob traded. Zywu. Ooh, he catches lead from JL. So strap in. The bomb's on its way. Don't forget about Dupree. Yeah, we'll keep our eyes on that one. The Dane working on some rather brutal pain from behind. Stiko onto Sphinx. Magic has to live. He has to live. By time for this flank. They're going to hunt him down. Survival integral. 
holding on, still not planting. Dupree's got his knife out, he's coming for you. He's coming for you and it's up to Magist just to live. To continue to distract and Nork's hit it, but still, they're not ready. They're not ready, Dupree. He's got the pedigree. Nork doesn't have the time, has to plant safe. Does he get it in time? Dupree, trajectory, good. Half health, two bullets to the body. All he needs, Nork the AWP, only one. Can Apex string together some round? Dupree does not think so. Denying Nork right there, big stuff from Dupree. In the clutch, Nork has been brilliant. So denied here, cannot get back-to-back -back rounds, will not break the money of Vitality. And we'll have to go up against another buy round here, but they are making Vitality fight for this. Look at the time, understanding they have to flush him out. Good heads up play there. Dupree catches Seiko for free, and then Nork just dancing around the boxes. He knows he's pinned, he doesn't have the weapon for the job, and Vitality will grab their fifth. Vitality exemplifying some fierce focus in this one. They, they know the job is not done, it's only just begun. Still early days here, but they've still got them on the ropes, Apex. Look at the buy. Magic into an MP9, a famous for Apex. They can take some mid control as Jacob. You need to get him activated as JL. We've seen this trick before on the ledge, looking for the fight and spots the leg. Uh oh still dead. Magisk, center bed. Kickson, is he really doing a dry? Zaiwu knows where you are, and he's not having any problems. A four on four emerges, and JL wants to change that. Apex caught out CT, Spinks tucking in, presence above, presence in front, and the big fight for Jacob can't handle Dupree. But look at the pressure, no bomb, sure, but if they could just find one more, Spinks is gone on the floor, and now Dupree and Zaiwu. What a legend. For very different reasons, Stiko onto that bomb retrieval. They've got plenty of time to slow this one down. Yeah, this can reset, but look at Nork again. He just understands that they need this real estate if they want to be able to get the bomb down. So aggressive in the face, being waited for Dupree. Regrouping now with Zywu. The two of them have a bucket Ooh. load of nades, but the HP's not there for this. Bogdan's Law comes into play. Zywu on the rifle. He can rock it. Can Dupree contribute on the AWP? And save! Yes, he can! Cancels the bomb plan. Lurk smoke here. They can play around this. That's scary for the boys of Apex. Stiko, JL, what can you do? They want Dupree's to low. They want to bring the fight to them, but this all hangs in the balance. Perfect from Zywu. What back, JL? Have you got it in you? He could, but with three HP, they're both hanging on by a thread. One bullet will do it. Ten seconds, it doesn't matter, JL! Clutches up for Apex and injects some hope. A quad kill from the Lithuanian. Needed more from JL, right, alongside a Jacob here, but that is a massive round from him. A huge round, and this kid's got a personality on him. He's going to run with that. As the uh, second round for Apex will come through, and one of the factors that fed to this was JL's heroics here. He was able to isolate a lot of these fights. You can see that shot Beautiful. that sticks. An absolute blinder right there. And then just willing them down time after time. Great clutch here. Under pressure. Good stuff. He's on his first major stage, his first major ever. Same as Kicks and same as North. Those faces just to grace your screens. Takes down a man who has won four. That one's going to feel good. And it's going to steady some of the nerves here yet again because now you've bought yourself a bit of a buffer. Vitality should be just down to a couple of pistols here. Looks like they're going to light by with some... Ooh, wow, they're going a bit heavier than I thought. Don't worry about light by. This is almost a shove all in. Ooh, a little bit of residual cash left over for Zywu, the man on your screen, to get out the orb when he can. You can see here, 15 kills, 5 deaths, 179 ADR. Well, let's see what he can do with the hand cannon. This is where Apex have to be able to close out against the lighter by. So far, opening frags have correlated to round wins. And so it all hangs on that opening. And silence falls in the Accor Arena in anticipation. Can Vitality subvert the expectation? Ground taken procedurally. They're giving them a lot of room here other than over towards a ramp. Stika's the only one really in any danger right now. Starting to gather their forces. They've got a full 60 seconds to work this puzzle out. And Vitality looking for the opening. Spinks is Deagle connecting, and so is Magic. The hand cannons connect. And Apex starting to fall and wobble. 
The tailspin now is getting worse. Simon with the spine of JL. And Jacob, alongside with Nork, is going to have to try and resuscitate hope here. Oh, Simon's Deagle, deadly. And it's all on to Jacob. The man can clutch. And a triple to stabilize and save face. Oh, Dupree's lost him here. Dupree doesn't know where he's gotten off to right now. And Jacob, silent as you like, quietly. Making his way into an open bomb site here. The bomb will go down and Dupree. Nothing he can do about this. 40 second timer. 1v1. A 5-7 versus an AK. Jacob. Nerves. Oh, but he holds on! And he saves Apex there! That was necessary as it was glorious. Norwegian says no. No, no, no. You're not going to rob that one away from us. Now consecutive rounds here. Ooh. We'll have to be the eco from Vitality. In fact, they forced him with those deagles. The armor hasn't left them in a position to go for any type of a buy here. And this is it where it all could have fallen apart. So Jacob trades back, takes down Zaiwu, and then still has a tall task. It's desperate from Apex, trying to pin him down exactly where they know where he is. And yeah, Dupree, unfortunately, in that scenario, there's not a whole lot you can do. Ooh, there's some chip damage. This one should just be a walk. A stroll in the park. Kicks and happy to rock the Mac 10, a weapon perfect and suited to the task. Unarmored CTs awaiting. You can see the potency. They are going to continue to try and set Zywu up. Drop to Deeg and looking for damage. Yeah, just trying every trick in the book here. This is good stuff from Apex, right? They're slowing the tempo of the game down right now. They're having these lighter purchase rounds played on their own terms, going through the paces, using their utility on point. Oh, that from Kuban, he understood. You're up against it. 10,000 fans, home crowd advantage, one of the best counter strike players in the world. And this is Apex, the plucky underdog. Says they continue to rip open some heads. Jacob snaps to Zywu. Has to clear this out though diligently as he does get peppered down. Oh, and another one landed into kicks and head there. He will fall as well. I know there's two more. Oh dear. Oh no. There's no way. There's no way. Nor can Steeko have oh, to. Oh dear. Dupree's got another. It all hinges on Steeko, but this was just the eco. Can he save him again? First it was Jacob. Nade looks good. Not quite. Spotted them both. He's ready for the fight, perhaps on the MAC-10. He can find more. Running him down. Apex pushing the limits. No bullets. Has to use the Glock. This is uncomfortable. Apex overextends. 15. Dupree. Oh my god. What can you do? Oh, no! Again with the Glock. Eco! With the Glock, no less! Saves them against the Eco. They did everything. Everything right, but Steeko, he disrupts. Clutch after clutch here for Apex. That's meant to be the easy one. They're meant to put this one in. I can't have believe no dramas it. whatsoever. And Steeko pulls out the Glock. <laughs> Just making him look silly here. Oh. All right, well, that one means a lot. To win a clutch like that, you're going to be very, very happy if you're Apex to have survived by the skin of your teeth. And it, yeah, that's oh. miraculous. You shouldn't be getting away with that. And Mitha, yeah. <laughs> he knows that too. It should not be that close in that type of a round. Okay, sure. Exactly my thoughts as well. Apex is just trying to make sure they can shake that one off because you can't help your mind starts to wander. The demons in your brain start whispering. You could have had that. And they've still got the lead just by one. As Vitality do get back into the guns. Zaiwu, 17 kills. The next closest in the server after that clutch. Stiko with 11 to his name. And these clutches might be worth their weight in gold. If it's the only way Apex are able to grab rounds, it doesn't matter. This is it. You win, you're in that grand final. And we will have one for the history books. Game of Legion await. Zaiwu starts towards A. Well, he has hey, shown up so far, Chad. Come in, Alex. And they're walking towards him. Ooh, what? Whistles past the shoulder, too. An uncharacteristic round out of the woo. And it's going to punish him. He's gotten away. Apex extends through the smoke and looking for the trade with Jacob. Good for it. Into the 4v3. Hanging on by a thread, though, Jacob. 4 HP. That bomb won't go down yet. Nork to maneuver through. Sphinx and Zywu to disrupt. No armor on the woo. And look at the angle. Dupree, perfect. Jacob in trouble, going to be run down, no help. No help and no respite. It falls once more onto Steeko. Spinks doesn't think though.
It's going anywhere. 6 2 4. Yeah, that's a really worrying round right there with the number advantage and just not getting caught off by the fade of that smoke. You, you, you can't be flubbing these. You see the smoke fade. Dupree's like, thank you very much. And I think this is just going to back up what we saw happen in the previous two rounds, where it was lighter buys and they had to convert one on threes. Well, those issues are going to hurt you a whole lot more when the guns are out, and that's reflected in this round. Look who's here. A warm welcome, and he's, of course, here to watch this game transpire. We're already back into play, and it's just the hero AK for Jake. And right now, he's been mopped up, and that's the only threat removed. JL has scooped it off the dirt. Yeah, see if he can get anything done, but of course, no armor behind it. Yeah, if you're going to have that type of a buy here, you need to get some damage. So, Vitality keep it clean. Maybe the perfect way to deal with this type of a purchase. Boost over. Spot, spot, spot. And JL will take down Apex. Four on four. Happy with that. Very happy with that one. Now, Kixon can perhaps be a little bit of a trap card to activate late. A bomb plant would go a long way here. Yeah, and pressure towards the priest sign. There's a chance. Sphinx will have to rotate back. Magisk is completely removed from the plate. Defensive smoke. They could opt to wait this out, you know. Dupree has to get one to two kills here. Yeah, you can see Magisk already. Well, not that so much anymore. Spawn. Sphinx is coming over. He's going to be in the right place. And Dupree. Got the AK out of JL's hands. A nice double. Likely a triple. And hang on, we did lose Zaiwu. Oh, Kixon. He throws it out of the fence. Says, go and get it. Yeah, being very fiscally responsible here is Kixon. And that's going to be it. So gets a kill. Denies the AWP. Vitality will grab seven. Sphinx can't find it. He's running through CT spawn, looking at the floor. He can't quite get it out. And that means that Vitality can't have it. There's not enough finances available here to buy out an AWP for Zaiwu. And there's another uh, fan fave getting on the phone, got a call. <laughs> it's the Naf Lie. It's nasty ass Naf in the flesh. This does really feel like a whole gathering of Counter-Strike players, fans, the entire community showing up. It's really felt like old days. Look at Jacob in this round after that hero AK just for the Tech 9. Not oh a great my. buy and Kixon's already dead. Oh, that's a dream start, not for Kixon. But it's Apex, a combination of bullets and nade. Gives him another opening. Can Vitality convert it cleanly? Staying active. They've taken a lot more risk with their CT setups. It's constantly been in flux. This Apex bringing it back towards Window and Connector. It's been playing B in their last few. So this change, I, I guess it's also going to throw Apex for a loop. All their prep, maybe for nothing here if they're going to play Counter-Strike by names. As J.O. has some space. Something to be said about this one. If JL can break through, Steeko, he's opened up the account. At least one frag to celebrate for Apex. Not in a hurry, but they might be now. Apex caught out. Spinks, however, on the, whew, on the double, Spinks. JL overextends into him, leaves us on that 2 on 2 Bomb on the floor as well. Stiko again. I, I can't believe it. Low HP, he's repositioned and it's worked perfectly. Stiko, the man of the hour for He Apex. has been monstrous. The tractor, he's getting it done in a big way. 14 kills, he's had impacting clutches with a bloody Glock. Now he's just lurking out late and denying Sphinx any luxury oh. on this side. This is the opener, bang, dead, nay, done. Kicks in. Now the Puppet Master from the grave. This is important for Seiko. Magic's got the jump on him there, shooting the first shots. And this is the re-aggress, this time out of Palace. Sphinx had no idea where that fight could be coming from and when. Yeah, one of the most humble and genuine in Counter-Strike is Seiko. They've bought here Vitality. Oh. This half could change. This oh. half could change a lot. It hangs on a AWP, an M4, and a smattering of pistols. Apex can win the half if they win this round. They can bring themselves back into the game. Vitality going to be bottom of the barrel with the finances as we move into the later stages. We're already round 13. Really important purchase here. They have to get a lot of production out of this AWP and rifle. Stiko went from being the hero in the last round to a MAC-10 in this round. Missed the support here. They've put so much faith and finance into Matthew Erbo. He's out of position right now. Charging in. 
Only pistol. Oh, oh blind screen. At least it's traded. JL, quick on the trigger, and Jacob the same. Apex, Apex running in. Come and on now. Zyru now just has to play a very different arrow. Oh, oh, he lost it. Okay, this half just got a whole lot more competitive. This is it. You they they put it all in there, Chad. Yeah, Every that, penny. That type of a buy, it leaves them in this situation now. It's an eco to tie things up. Right, we know they've been somewhat deadly on these lighter purchases, but they didn't get it across the line. They were close, but close doesn't count here. JL has activated as well. His influence is being felt. 12 kills for him, Jacob. Ever since we said JL and Jacob's name, they are both in the server now. 12 and 10 in those double digits. This is to tie things up. The orb brings out. Don't forget the last eco cat. Ah, but even still, that was mistakes from Apex. Yeah. It, it, you know, it was Vitality capitalizing on those mistakes here, but this is the Precisely. lightest version possible. We're just talking five USPs, and I don't see Apex doing it again, especially now that they're starting to look a little bit more steady. They've won five out of the last seven rounds. They've changed the Ooh. flow of this map, their map. Yeah, they chose it for a reason. And it's not the unthinkable anymore. I don't know how many upsets people need to see and witness right in front of their very eyes to stop questioning the results. These teams that nobody put too much stock in, they have come to play, and Apex have not changed that here today. Jacob, he has been overcome, and they, a weapon may fall into enemy hands, but the B-side is JL with the help of Seiko. Forging apart, good dink, but not enough for the conversion. And it's Majisk actually scooping up that AK and playing his trade nicely. Nor careful with the York. JL's low as well. And oof, they are making them work. And Zywu with only a USP. Yeah, he's good, but JL's now down. Not possible. I refuse to believe he can get anything more here. Not a penny spent. A USP and a flashbang. And a missed shot from Nor. Good God. They're giving him chances. They're letting him chase. They're letting him work. It would be a 10 second defuse. You can't win this. It's impossible. Don't worry. Because 7-7. Seven, seven. See that little move from JL there? I'm not too sure too many people caught that, but he dropped his gun out the window Whoa. as he was running away to make sure that Zywu couldn't get a rifle. That's actually very yeah, nice. It, it was just a deliberate to, jump. Yeah, ex exactly. Like, well, the death, not so much, but, but getting rid jump, of the AK. Yeah, yeah I, I'm not sure at what point he released that from his hands there, but just denying any way that Zawu can have a say is it will be the second time out now. Zonic knows what it takes to win a major. We got a nice little history lesson from Kuban on stage before they went toe-to-toe. -to -toe. These two have a score to settle. What do you say, 2007, 2017, <laughs> now 2023, the best of three. Man, oh man, it does just feel so poetic. The coaches, the team rise to power. They won in Rio, just ahead of the major on home soil for those two French names. And finding that mix, blending Danish Counter-Strike legends with some of France's best, of course, the prodigy himself. It's been a project, it's been a process, and their rise to power seems to be peaking at the optimal We're moment. In mid here. We're back in game, last round of the half. Who will leave with the edge? Oh, 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 oh. Get nades to the face. Yeah, avoids a lot of damage there. Apex is pushed. He's not going to follow through with it here. Kixon's got top mid control. Oh. A lot on his plate. Jail as well. He's been smoked off. They mollied him back. They're trapped. They have to evacuate. No one was actively holding on top mid, so... Well, Apex wins mid control. Right. right. Vitality started forward. They wanted to fight. They got flushed out. Apex didn't get away with any of these plays towards the underpass position. Now they can work here. Will there be a re-aggress? Sphinx, Zywe, Window, Apex coming connector, and they're gonna flash, oh. fight, and frag. Kicks him down. Big one back. Looking for a response, but JL doesn't have the health to work for it. It will fall to someone else. It's been a team effort for Apex. Steeko. Knows his jungle. He's Top the barrel. of the table. And spotted out. Nice work. Doesn't finish it off. It's Apex to provide. And Jacob. Not long for this world. Apex makes sure of that, and another for him. A triple from Mr. Mattisclair. And that spinks to close. They will take the edge. Vitality holding on to the lead as we take a break. My God, what happens next? Designing a major trophy is, is not just an honor, but it's also quite a unique journey to go on. To create something this significant, this cool, 
and with such meaning built into it. It's definitely pushing buttons in the right way. For, for those who know us, they also know that, that we try to push things. And I think if, if we ever find ourselves in situations where people love every single thing that we're doing, it means that we're comfortable. It's just not exciting. A trophy is no different. It's obviously what is lifted at the end. It's probably the most iconic piece uh, of, it's not even equipment, of lore, I guess, from an event. That's why I think we, we always try to and strive to make it different and out the box. So the process for the design itself uh, is pretty straightforward. Normally in the past, we have done other abstract things, and I think this was just no different. We knew we were in France, such a deep-rooted culture with arts. There was obviously many iterations, and there always is when you try to build something like this. Uh, so went through tons of iterations, picked some favorites, passed it out in meetings, which ones we wanted to go with, and then worked with our vendors to try to, you know, push the boundaries of how to make it. It may feel a little bit alien when you see it first, uh, but I think when you see the full show, the spectacle, our motion, visuals for, for the screens, etc., then it'll hopefully feel a full circle. Playful, fun, different, vibrant, all of that kind of went into it. I think we've created a beautiful trophy. Can't wait to see it on stage, be lifted, and, and winners bringing it home. I came, I came out. Don't go on. One, I'll finish him too. One more sandwich. Don't, I'm, I'm sandwich. on the go. I'm on the go. Don't see sandwich yet. I'm pushing the health boss. I'm going to push it. I'm going to push it. I'm going to fight ticket. Pulling. I'm firebox. Yo, go on me, boys. Go, 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 go. Stand up, go. Stand up, go. Both, both, both. Don't die, don't die. Both, both, both. That's my city. Yes, up. That's it. Nice! 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 We're back for the second half, first map. This semi-final has only just begun. Are you enjoying yourself, Paris? <laughs> Oliver! Apex finding new heights as they look to continue to stand up to power. Showing just how far they can rise. Real interesting pistol here. This one's going to be quick. No utility. Armor and a kit in play. That's oh, yeah. it. This one's going to be a biff. Yeah, Jacob's going to have to hit some shots. They already spotted one, but here comes the trouble. A lot of bodies. But Nico on one. Apex back. Immediate. Even field of play. Hold on, Nork. Ready for the duel with Apex. Oh, it's a long range. Everyone contributing right now. Yeah, Blinken, you miss it. All the bodies hit the floor. And Vitality, one kill away from confirming the second pistol round. Making it two from two. We talk in best of ones. You get the pistols, you get the clutches. You get yourself a map. Well, here, this game has been full of the 1vx situations. But both pistols, unless Kicks and side to say about it, will fall in favor of the hometown heroes. And there it is, Sphinx. The final blow. Two for him, two for Apex. And one for Zywood to make light work of this little purchase that 
No utility on a pistol round. You don't see that too often. Just straight out of the guts in mid, taking the fight, and maybe wanting to use the environment here, knowing that it's loud, knowing that the momentum, yeah. right? They can try and run with a bit of that. Coming back from the break, getting into the game, using it to their advantage. And well, Apex, classic style for them, is going to be a force fight to contest round number two of the second half. Highlight here is Nork's scout. It's actually going to be starting over towards B here, but Dupree straight out middle once more. We'll get across towards the mid box, no dramas. Has the support of Zywu and Apex. Spinks some magic over towards A, which is quite telling that they want to split A here. Maybe not with urgency. Smoke to delay the insurgency. Oh, oh, they back, not bad. Apex catches that. And that seems to be enough. He's seen enough, and Apex going to be calling the shots to reposition the troops. You can see this here. They're worried about the B apps push. They haven't had any info over towards B at all. So that's going to be a question mark. They're calling the bluff some way, and now with the connector redeploy smoke, they just removed some of the block utility. The crowd control U2 now being ripped out of the hands of Apex here as Vitality look to finish with just an A execute. They've got plenty of smokes. They can do CT. They can do the up down over towards jungle and stairs. You can get the mollies in towards sandwich, backside. Make sure they can't be running out of bench position. And out of position, the majority here for the defense. Might just be a save if they lose the site. You don't have to fight for this Apex. Yeah, you can see Steko's just going to hedge his bets. Oh, the utility is very diligent. Every gap covered. And oh my god, they've even flashed through. They take CT by force. Magis flashes in. Oh, and oh one bullet only. That's not how you play an anti-eco. They are bringing the fight to them. JL on retreat, trying to hold on to what little he brought through. Seiko may not be so lucky. That Mag-10 control. And this could be a clean one. They are fighting them, charging them. Well, that's one way to make the third round here in the second half nice and easy. Uh, yep. Just remove all of the upgrades. Make sure they've got nothing as Jacob. Apparently, he wants to offer up his deagle as well. His position has been noted. Look at this. Little dots on the radar surge towards him. Dupree wants more. With a couple of tidy ones already as Jacob is going to be hunted down here. Apex and Dupree, the two old boys. They're running at him. There, he's gone. Nothing. Zilch, nada. For Apex to work with into their next round. Yeah, that is, they, they, as I said, they didn't have to fight for this round, and I don't think they wanted to. Right. At least just responding to the fact that they lost the site, and this is meant from Dupree. Flash through the first, Look and the then second. just continues to fight for the second here. This is a man on a mission. He Ooh. wants number five. The whole fistful of mages for Dupree needs to get to that grand final first. He can become the uh, undisputed, maybe not undisputed best player of all time, but undisputed as far as the trophies in the major cabinet go. Which most people would say accounts for something rather large. And look at this again. Just Apex has run straight through A. The rest of his team was meant to be continuing over towards B here. They'll be walking into the stack, and that's if everyone's not already dead. Nice opportunity onto the Woo, and only the one. Nice from Nork. Grenade back. But Apex is calling that A site wide open, and Dupree to Scarper over there with the explosive. Yeah, Sphinx will just make sure this gun can't be picked up here. So he's just housekeeping. Couldn't really expect a lot here from Apex in a round like this. They didn't have anything to work with. And look, he's trying to get tricky with it, trying to blow that gun back towards him. NT. But this is looking cutthroat right now. We've spoken about Vitality. They've gone through in the easiest way possible. Straight through to the legend stage. There goes Nork. Win out their best of ones. Win out their best of three. Come straight through. Make it look easy. Yeah, I mean... The they, home crowd haven't dropped a map. The, the quote-unquote pressure, it's not been visible. It has not been visible in results or gameplay or individual maneuvers. But I'm sure it rises a little more when you are within touching distance of that grand final. Gamer Legion waiting to see if they have to face this home crowd tomorrow. All right, all right, 11 to 7. Four round lead now for Vitality accrued, but the guns are about to come out. Apex to equip themselves here into the first rifle round of the second half. Nork straight into that AWP, the same not to be said for Vitality. And this is uh, a little bit of a shock there for Zai. We're caught off guard by that silenced USP. But all good, nothing ever phases this man. 
perpetually unfazed is Zywood. This is a Bigo. They're going to yeah. be heading over towards... Whoa, North. look at that. Apex is going out mid, though, but he will concede. There's nothing else. Nork, he's in prime position to slow this down through the flames. Zywu tries it, and he's sent back to spawn. Nork's orb rings true. Does Vitality play a long rotation game? Whole round changes here, essentially, for Vitality. As it's meant to just be a B explode, use their util, get in towards the site if Apex were going for full on mid control. And well, Dan confirmed that, but they couldn't volley forward in towards the site due to this AWP that is now repositioned. If you're Vitality, you just want to get some damage done, remove a couple of rifles, force that next round of a buy to be very difficult. And they're just hitting the brakes here, hoping that Apex's aggression has some follow through. But right here, right now, they have just sat back. They're playing this number advantage perfectly. Nobody has to overcommit. In these scenarios, you just want to play for info. Right? You, you want to make sure that you can combine for a kill with your team. And by doing so, playing for info is the best way to make sure you've got the right people in the right places. Now, mid smoke will fade as Dupree joins them through the underpass. It's a tough round to win here. They still have some nades, quite a handful as well as Dupree just looked away. Jacob catches him. This would mean a lot for the Apex squad if they could keep it clean. Spotless would be ideal. Nork makes another leap in that direction. It's Sphinx that refutes that and leaves him alone. He's keeping up toe to toe with Zywu as well. Look at the kill distribution. Zywu, Sphinx, and Dupree all in premium form in this semi final. It's those first two you need to show up for Vitality time and time again. After that, any of the other three can have their contributions. If Sphinx and Zywu are here to play, you're going to have a rough day, but we're going to draw it back. So another round for Apex now, 11 to 8, and a tidy one. They win out that mid fight, they have no dramas there, it's just Apex on his own. He gets denied. This is it, JL. Flash forward. There you go. No more pressure mid. This is called clear. Molly comes. Zywu takes the space, goes down to the AWP, removed from play, and GG. You're going to pack up your toys and get ready for the next round, round 20. Still more than enough cash here for a Vitality bite. Yeah, well, they went for something rather avant-garde into that one. Yeah, very direct, wasn't it? Charging, and now through mid. A lot of fights to be had, and it's Nork again. Beheads the Woo. It's a big time to lose here, just to get this mid control. So picked one perfectly from the bunch, did Nork. On the fade here, Jacob and JL both playing around these smokes, and JL flash looking for a fight. Nobody Ooh. will oblige, he gets oh, away. Forcing that, yeah, the Molly will flush Apex out. He has to stand and through the spray, through the flames. JL reigns supreme. Good Counter-Strike. And Magisk is sticking out like a sore thumb. That's a quick trade back, and JL, he's happy with the double. He'll take a fresh mag and he'll chill. Not in a hurry. Into the crosshairs of Dupree. Good for the one, but that's all. Now Sphinx, a great haul. But one versus three will scoop up the bomb, the first step of this flow chart to complete destruction. You have to look at the gaps available here. He doesn't know what exists. He has to take a couple of guesses based off of where these frags have come through. Right now, heading towards the second letter of the alphabet. Oh, he's actually opted to reroute. So as he gets on down through underpass, we have about 35 seconds left on the clock. The first task, the first hurdle will be Jacob. He does have a smoke grenade, but he doesn't feel the pressure. No indication. Can Sphinx give Vitality something to celebrate in this one? Looks like Jacob has been caught out, but 18 seconds, he springs to action, as will the defense. Looking for him as he looks to identify a gap, expecting an overextension. Nork is posted and delivers. Been saying his name a lot. Good round from Nork, three in total right there. Bit of Swedish representation. That one's going to go a long way. They were able to just to pluck them apart there one at a time, right? And there was that opener of North that I think stands out the most. Zywu removed, the round settles in, and here it is again. Bang, Zywu gone. And no issues with that one whatsoever. I love this little move here. The Molly flushed the player out from the Delpan position over towards the chair. Wombo combo is a teamwork there between JL and that of Jacob. And the frustrations on display. It wouldn't be a Vitality game without Apex losing his call. And this is going to be a timeout from Apex. Not Vitality here, who are the ones who are in a bit of a rougher spot financially. Look, they've lost two on the trap. Apex will have a full buy. I think Vitality will have something a whole lot less to boast.
If you look at Vitality here, we've already mentioned this, both pistols with conversions. That's where the lion's share of their bed of rounds have come from. The rest of it, they've had to fight for. And they lost a couple of blunders there, 1v3 scenarios in lighter purchases or force buys. You gotta hope that doesn't come back to bite you in the ass. Well, they've put all of their eggs into this basket. Morph's here again. The whole squad's coming. Oh, and oh, oh, oh. Dupree down to the North Corp again. Fill in the feed for these openings. Look at Apex. That is huge. Team flash. On the Deagle, JL blinds this Jacob and leaves them for dead. Need a response. Another added to the tally. Vitality. Keeping it conservative, and now they're hitting the shots. Kickson from the flank. Nork spotted out. They know where he is, and that bomb's already ticking. This gets uncomfortable. That's the kit on Kickson. He can't let Zywu take oh, him. Oh, oh, oh. The Deagle's solid. And the mission accomplished. All right, they won't let this one slip through their fingers. Another light investment. This time they profit, and they might take everything away here, Sphinx. He's noted now, Nork. In spawn, grabs one, the fight is coming. Magic is on his way. They want to take this big green out of his hands. Remove it from play, he's thrown it already. These guys, they don't want to let Zywu get his favorite weapon. Oh, I tell a lie there, actually. You ask Zywu. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he doesn't want to walk. Yeah, it's like, he's actually quite happy. He's like, yeah. oh, they threw away the orchid there. Oh, boo -hoo. Oh, no. I guess I'll have to rifle. <laughs> Let's recap that as well. You saw Magic's combined Apex. It was a lovely push over the stairs, and yeah, that's gonna get a little bit under your skin. A round they feel like that was destined to be theirs, and you can see what it's done to their finances shortly. Off the back of a timeout from Apex, no less. Yeah, and now it's Vitality's turn to take this 30 second chat. So I, I suppose just trying to gather yourself, take stock, take a bit of inventory of what Apex's buy could look like here. How much money do they have, coach? Where are we at? 1 3, lost 2, bounce back with a lighter investment. Do we have to worry about the Nork AWP? Well, we can answer that for you. It won't be possible here. And Kuban has to sit by and watch as it will just be one M4 brought through, some pistols, very light on the util department. And this is the type of round where Vitality would love to notch their 13th onto the board. Looks like it's getting rowdy out there, or rowdier. Anticipating. Uh, a quick one. Yeah, and you can almost ignore this one. Just look at the radar. That's going to tell you everything you need to know here. Mid control completely taken, but Dupree, he'll be ahead of this execute. They'll be in the site. Whoa, a couple of shots. Just shy. A nice gap for Kickson to work with. If he ever, ever has vision back. Apex has already slipped the net. They're out, they're in. Turns the flash, sure, but that bomb's going down. Can anyone contest it? Kickson thinks he can, but late to the party and unable to convert. Norkel finish it. Vitality in hot pursuit of 13. Zywu contributes. And two free two. Nothing left for Apex here. The 13th secure. And Vitality three away from taking their opponent's pick and remaining undefeated. Yeah, that right there. Pretty tall task. It's been done once before in major history, so uh, you can get it done if you can go through an entire major without dropping a map. That's a statement in itself. The crowd can taste it. Just three more rounds away here. Apex with a broken looking by here, even though they saved their investment, still weak, still bleak. Lacking a bit of util. A famous in the mix. One kit for Kixon, the ult for Nork. And Ooh. Two man push straight into. Oh my god, they're gonna fight right now, and Kickson onto the first. It's Saiwu dead. That should be enough. Get away. Kickson once more. He gets two. Job done. And a three on three emerges. JL looking for a safe haven from the flame. It could spread, but he's safe. Holding on as he looks to peek around that smoke. This push here from Stiko. It's gonna get him an awful lot of room. He might be a problem later, but as swings and roundabouts, Apex in mid. No one's yeah, looking. Has a gap, so JL needs to be on notice. Short and B apartments is open. I'm not sure he's considering it. He might be now. Oh, spotted a barrel. Well aware of what's coming his way. Can JL step up, stand up, and deliver? As Vitality. Oh, bait the shot. They know where he is. Sphinx gone down anyway. As JL. Significant damage. Not can't contribute. The secret flank. 
The Stico flank is going to come real early. And the Stico clutch, we've seen one before. They're not considering it just yet. Apex might. Managing his ankles on the crawl. Apex just ducking under the crosshair. And it looks like it's a good for another. The Frenchman holding his own here. 17 frags from Dan Matisclair. And now we can turn to the veto. We were talking about the maps, what Vitality have played, what they haven't played. Uh, that's a whole lot of a longer list, but one of the maps. And of course, it's been flawless for them throughout. Up next, Vertigo. Played it twice, won it twice. And would love to make that a third time for a grand final berth. Zaiwu here, his first time in the semi-final of a major. Just pedestrian, standard stuff, 22 kills is what you expect but from this, a Zaiwu. This is his sixth time of asking. This is now the perfect five-man roster to facilitate and support him. Oh, they aren't just flashing for him. No. Oh, it's a whole team effort for sure. Even fragging. And these guys, they recognize his brilliance. Here to witness a unique individual in the server. Hey, I, I, I run out of superlatives, Chad. No, understandably so. It's, it's beyond comprehension. And how comfortable while remaining so humble. It's Zaiwu boosted up on Bonantis' head and still gets Kixon down. He's plugged in right now. Hot hand as per. And from behind, Norcus caught Apex. How has that transpired? He just turns his back on it. It's JL who finds the final blow on that. But they might want to just scrap their plans. They're uncertain and Sphinx getting spotted out by Stiko. Yeah, decent little bit of damage there. And that rifle has been claimed by Nork. So some problems here for Vitality. This one looked like it should have been a gimme for the 15th round, considering the purchases. And then you add on top that Zywoo opener, but Apex giving one back over means this is going to get a little bit dicey. Trying to A execute again. Stiko and Nork to defend. Dupree and Magis, this Danish duo. Oh! He beats Stiko! God tier on the Deagle! The round's not done. Sphinx and Zywoo, names to be feared. Nork forced out wide, plays it safe. 50 seconds, Zaiwu and Sphinx, they're starting to work out how they can dig themselves out of trouble. Have so much time here and even residual utility. They don't have to rush. I'm likely to see them reroute across the map considering all the circumstances that lie in front, but worried about the flank was Zaiwu. Now they need to work in unison to make this one happen. Yeah, with Jacob saying nothing here, Jay and Nork are ready themselves for this final frag. Nork's still unnoted. This is a necessary round now, Apex, if they want to have hope. They might not clear this. They have time to clear, but Zywu caught out. He's mortal after all. A 10 comes through, double digits, and Apex fans, they got something to cheer about on Mirage still. All right, all right, Apex up to the double digits now, 10 in total. Let's watch this one again. Stiko, bang! Shuts him down, the Dane's dead. And JL, he contributes as well. And look how fired up that is going to get you. Oh, maybe I'll Actually, hold up a bit. <laughs> I thought they would be screaming their lungs out. So That's keeping a... it calm, keeping it reserved. This is four players' window. Four players' window. Uh, they want to biff mid. They certainly do, Chad. And Vitality, they want to head over to the first letter. Again, they've really been pressuring this side. Yeah, but you know Stiko's here, right? Man's comfortable. Oh, great guns now. Must be worried about this smoke here. Dropped it down to neither for now, but you're always worried about a little flash through. He does have support in Nork. Kicks him not too far away. Ooh, just looked away, just averts his gaze. What's the go sign? I feel like they're almost completely committed to this here, Vitality. Well, yeah, you're going to deny some info mid. Zywu throws out... It means nothing. Oh, it does. It means absolutely nothing because of the Apex setup. So, like, right now, you're committed to this decision. And Apex have just flashed Jacob forward to call things clear. They can bolster this A site. Can he get it again? Sure. Great. On the dig with Stiko. He needs to lay down the law here. If he wants to stay competitive. And oh, he's a lot more than competitive. He's winning. This round is his. A double onto Zywoo again. He's going to be cooked by that. Dupree, good find. Finishes it on the Galil. They've got a plan. A 3v3. They are in a hurry. 35 and counting. It's Bolt not planted for Sphinx. It's not planted for Sphinx on this lurk. Don't Forget make... about him for now. I don't know if JL's going to be ready for this, though. Neither is Sphinx. Oh, spotted on the bench. JL doesn't go. Oh, doesn't get the full finish. That's info. But damage as well. Look at Nork. Look at JL. They're all bleeding out. 
As are the hopes for Apex here. JL holds on for one. Spinks noted in mid. They need to hit the head. He Spinks the one to do so. And JL should be a dead man. Hiding in stone, the smoke and playing around it. There's no way. Stick it. There's no Stick way. It. He just Spinks has to sit chase it. him. Right in his face. Him. I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't. But I don't. JL extends play on the defuse. No, no, no. No, 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 not yet. Not yet, Vitality. 15, the crowd thought they had it. No, no, no. 5 HP. Yeah, and JL Five. denies. He was jumping around in the smoke. He's like Neo, dodging bullets. And just as it hits zero, the crowd thought they had it. I thought they had it. And they're still in it. Unbelievable. How do they keep finding more? The second win from Apex. And North Thorpe fires off a shot. Aggression not rewarded this time. Vitaly just directs these sights, knocking on each door time and time oh, again. Kicks in turn. No, will go kill. Dupree will do so. Saves him into the sight. It's already flying their flag. Vitality set for success right here, right now. Util dumped. Finding ways back in. It's not going to be easy. It feels impossible. They've got everything covered. Dupree goes down. And now another. Where did that come from? Stiko onto the Woo. They're coming for you. Look at the damage. Down on benches, Magnus Spinks trying to hold on. Tight angle, good spray. Only the one. There's no kit. Okay, they have to get on it. Apex can touch up here. 30 year old from front. But no, I think he's got it. And it will be 12. Denying a perfect post plant. Vitality had everything they needed. Okay, the flow of this game has just changed in a big way. Again, we'll remind you, Vitality both pistols. Vitality in these last two rounds back to back, it felt like they had all the advantages in the world. Ha. And kill after kill continue to come through for Apex here. It truly feels like something out of this dimension. Knock it in, this one's great. Bad just getting wall banged on the bench and now they're getting in their head. They're there shaking is, now. There is definitely a mental game now here on Mirage. This is special. This is something I don't think Zonic was ready for. They're seeing is believing, and there's been a whole lot of believing here in Paris. Oh, they have to steady themselves. And they have to, well, not concede around, but give a good opportunity for Apex here to find 13. This type of a buy is nothing to be feared. Circumstances considered. Apex on that signature scout, looking out and around. Down goes oh. the Woo! Jacob snaps into another, and Jacob racks up three. Round defining. Dupree helpless, six HP. Can someone take a timeout and just sit Zywu down and say, listen, can you not die first? Like, that would be really nice. We would love to keep you alive for longer than the first 15 seconds of the round. Oh, they just, I feel like that hunger for 16. You, you've had 14 now for, well, three rounds in a row. You've sat static. And that will look to be extended by Apex here. Looking for their fourth consecutive defensive round. But what is it that Vitality's even got away with, right? This is two kills coming in easy. One, and now Sphinx. Yeah, you're next. Everybody's coming. We got the bomb. The fight is on its way. Oh, wow. Sphinx, if he was to handle that orb. Nork, a name I can't stop saying. I know that the confidence there, seeing them throw so many bodies at him when they know where they are, it looks silly. It's like, why are they feeding him here? But that's the confidence that Apex plays with. They back their individuals, they back themselves, and they understand that taking those fights as a unit is something they can pull off. So now it's just a one round game, 14-13. We are going the distance. And the Apex fans trying to get loud with this one. But what has worked for Vitality other than direct sight hits and pistol round wins? Uh, Chad, you're starting to make me a bit of a believer. They haven't conditioned anything on this T side, right? They're doing it the hard way. On this defense, and Sphinx could be an early death. He can't handle that, gets away, kicks him, and Jacob trying to repel. And look at the price they've paid. Oh, dear, okay. 13 points of health between the, team, the two of them. Yeah, that's ugly. Not sure that was worth the exchange onto Sphinx. He's low short, but this entire CT setup needs to change, and you can see it. Considering the move over towards A here, Considering a big move over towards A here. Yo, someone's made a very direct call. It's going to be Kixon, 
Right? He's uh, called them into action here. And they really have to hope that it is the finish to this gambled site because Nork, he has been great. You're right, you're saying his name a lot. 21 kills in total, but this is very difficult. Fights on two separate angles. They've got no info middle. Sure, you hear this util. Nork, though, he's going to have to have his head on a swivel. There's action apps and... Oh, they know where one is. Misses his first chance. Now they can run at the orb. Good wall bank. Nork tries to open up more. Dupree puts him to rest. And so limited now on two of those Apex defenders. Do they really bow out of this one? Chipping away on Zaiwu. 50 damage dealt, but you can They've see... They've got no money. They have to save. They have to save. They've got to concede. There's no way that you can go for a round like this. Jacob on six. Kixon on seven. You've got no cash in the coffers. You need these rifles if you want to take this to overtime. But this feels like a gift for Vitality. They couldn't win rounds they were favored in, and here, finally, they break through. And that was ball, but came down to this initial tussle. Norks killed great. Converted what kicks and started, sure, but they had to gamble because of the low HP. It left them in a position where they needed to take a risk, and they were punished for it. A really important save there. Kixon can drop a rifle for North. They can have five M4s into this. And that could be the case in a moment's time here. Apex will take the final timeout. And I'm not talking about the French in-game leader. I'm talking about the team. Their last 30 second chat before they go into battle for round 29. And so. We have gone the distance, folks. Will we see round 30? Will it be necessary or will Vitality continue to remain undefeated here on home soil for the French members of the roster? Two Danes and an Israeli completing this Vitality roster that have risen through the ranks and feel like they're on top of the world right now, I'm sure. But it is not done yet. Apex, they save in order to put up a valiant attempt to force us into overtime. I'm gonna try this again. So I always got his AWP now. This time heavy through Palace. This is very interesting approach right now. It's a fight towards mid. Apex will call it clear. JL and Jacob have been flashed forward and the A fight is coming. They're gonna waterfall. Seiko again. What have you got? What can you do? Gets one. Dupree got down as well. Chasing into Zaiwu. Good on the AWP. Watch out. He's got his weapon. Ready to show us what he's made of. Jacob and Nork don't seem to think so. That's 25 frags and counting. Only the one. We go all 30. A solid defense, a justified save. And now the question remains. Do we need overtime? Again, another great put round here from Apex, especially with the opener. Because they're out mid, they've called it clear, they know there's no pressure. As soon as any util flies over, hey, look at the response time. You're not getting out of Palace, you're not getting anywhere. And both teams with the final bye. Whoa, Zywu. You say he can't be going conceding opening deaths. Well, he's looking to provide the opening kill to secure it all. Run down, flashed out, Dupree bails him out. Von Delpan still provides onto JL. Molly now forces out a smoke. Jacob aware of presence all over the shop. Apex forward. Nort on that orb. Has to be a contributing member here as Apex goes. Walker back! And he behind him! Speaks as well! It all falls into place for Vitality here! Leaving Kixon alone in the cold. It took every single round. But this war of attrition. Looks to be won out by the hometown heroes. Again, another close game. But another game that is a victory. Keeping this clean sheet alive is Kixon. He's going to try and kick up a fuss. So much damage. Apex confirms it. And that is another step towards the trophy. One map under their belt in the semi final. We're heading into Vertigo. Vitality undefeated. Map two up next. CS has shaped me in every life part. 
I mean, I, I'm pretty much straightforward all my life to this game. <laughs> There's also a dark side to this whole industry when you're getting death threats and uh, calls and text messages. I don't think that I ever got the ending I wanted. For me, when I stopped playing professional, it was like my health is the number one priority. Having fun again is also being an important factor in my life and also not miss anything very important to my, to my heart. You never knew what Chris were in the world. That was what my friend said. Close shave and the 430 rounds, but Vitality continue their flawless streak. No maps dropped as of yet as they steal away their opponent's pick. And now just one map separates them from that coveted grand final. The first time in the team's history, if they manage to do it so on the next map. But when we're talking about French legends, we've got to get one up here on the desk. Kenny, we obviously heard your heartfelt retirement down there on the stage, but thank you so much for joining us up here. Has this been an emotional moment for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, so emotional that I kind of forget about it already. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like skydiving, pretty much. Um, it's so it's so huge in emotions that um, it's it's really hard to remember already. But uh, I know that um, that's that was the best way to do it. Have you skydived before? Kenny? I did. You did. And I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just instantly. Just forget about the trauma. Um, no trauma in the side of the server for Vitality, though. Although it did get incredibly close. The fact that they do steal away at Apex's map pick of Mirage. Uh, it came down to some heavy details, but also Zyru starting off really, really hot, and then Spinks following later on in the game. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my pulsation down. Like, my heartbeat's probably above 150 now. I don't think that's healthy. Got a call mid down for the Vitality fans as well. Um, listen, tremendously important 30th round here for Vitality 16. We have to be honest. If it wasn't for some of the individual qualities, I think we saw the flaws on that Mirage map of Vitality. We talked about it on the desk. We said for Apex, the team that is, this was a golden opportunity to put 1-0. Vitality made it through, mainly thanks to an incredible start from this man. Saiwo, of course, on your screen. But we did have to absolutely suffer until the very end. 
Yeah, he definitely cooled off actually a little bit there. That yeah. was a, a bit surprising, but I don't know if you saw the shot. That's because they rush, he rushes first. I, I don't know if you shot, saw the shot, Kenny, where the, he shot through triple and killed a bomb planter or anything like that. Or the, no, uh, unfortunately I missed that one, but oh, okay. I, I know for a fact. I was going to say, do you ever hit that one? But uh, <laughs> I, I, I okay, <laughs> looking at these shots, Kenny, are you yeah. are you hitting this today? How are you? Today? Yeah, are you today? hitting this today? Nah, today, today I'm old. Uh, I just retired. I just yeah, exactly. But no, I'm not anything close to Zaiwo, but. Um, that's the thing about the Vitality that's interesting is that they're probably one, if not the best team in the world on T side. Yeah. And when yeah. you have a, when you have a star like that from Zaiwu, it's always like pretty much like when you see Zaiwu sign out on CD side, you're like, that's bonus. That's pretty much bonus, you know, because you know that they're gonna do the job on T side. Even though that T side on Mirage right now like was a bit more shaky than usual. But like the CD side was really up to Zaiwu. He's an OP obviously, so he's really mobile on the map. Um, so he's having a lot of impact, but having him starting like that is, is making a huge difference. And then Sphinx really came out to play on that T side. I think you prefaced it, Kenny, perfectly. The fact that we've seen Vitality being the strongest team on the T sides. Apex definitely made them work for those rounds, but some uh, great individual moments from Sphinx. Yeah, some of these multi kills really helped Vitality go over the finish line. I also think Dupree is worth a couple of commendations Certainly. as well. When you think about the T side and you talk about how they struggle, he had a few of these can opening moments where if he doesn't get the entry, that's an issue. And could we just address why Zywo is going in first in all of these executes. Like, it kind of got me upset just a little bit. We'd want Zywo to play the end round, and it wasn't really the case, at least on these B hits. Are they just shooting themselves in the foot a little bit? I think Apex just wants those flash assist stats, because Come some on, reason he's always in the last position, even though he's a born and bred entry fragger. Like, Kenny, why, why is why did Apex switch from entry fragger to throwing flashes, he's, man? Don't you want to... He's bragging a lot about it. Yeah, he's, he's bragging about it. He's really part of himself, and he's right to do, but... <laughs> part of himself. But the thing about, about Zywo is that, like, it's so good with Rifle as well, you know, that he's capable of like doing a double entry on, on B side or whatever side. Um, so I, I think that knowing that strength of himself and the team knowing that strength of himself as well, uh, they also use him for that, you know. So if they, there is um, a situation to unlock, I, it's not that surprising to see him going first at the end of the day, you know? Kenny, can I pick your brain about the man that we see on our screen right now, Apex, a little bit, obviously, uh, you just gave him a little bit of a jab there, but the fact that you <laughs> lifted a major trophy with him back in 2015 when he was in an entirely different role, how crazy is it to see kind of his growth? I mean, it's it's only, like, respect to him, you know, like, um, I mean, Manny played with him as well, mm -hmm. and we, we, we could have seen back in the days already that he, he had that fiber of being an in-game leader. Obviously, he had, like, um, that uh, just, like, uh, character issues that also have, it's also his strength, you know, it is what it is. But like, he's a hard worker, he has everything, what, he has anything he needs to be a great in-game leader. Took him time, took him experience, yeah. took him also like a uh, really hard situation with G2 back in the days that he didn't necessarily deserve either. Uh, but like, um, uh, as, as a man and a player that I um, followed in my entire career, it's it's been uh, it's been a pleasure to see him evolve as a player like that, you know, and that that what makes a difference between him and a lot of players is that he, he managed to uh, to change himself as a player, yeah. you know, like and evolve. I mean, we played with him. We we, we know how he was, but yeah. maybe not everybody knows how no. he was. You know, he's very emotional player. At the time when we were in Titan, did you think he was going to end up being the IGL of a team like that? Did we think about it at the time? Not in Titan, but beginning of G2, I, I think I, I, I figured out. And it, even like, he, he always liked having responsibilities. Yes. Mm. He always grind the game a lot. And the biggest strength, and one of my biggest regrets as well, I don't have any regrets, but you know, like, things that I'm like, maybe I should have done differently, is that Apex makes his star player much better. If you take Apex out of reality, Zaiwu will, not sure about that, but Zaiwu might be performing less. Very careful. Yeah, he <laughs> might be performing less, you know? It's a smidgen worse. Yeah. It's a little bit worse. Yeah. It could be worse, you know? But yeah. I, I've played with him, and I'm at best years with him because um, he brings the best out of your star player, you know? It's really hard to play with him sometimes. You argue with him, you fight with him. But he literally made me play my best at the time, and I think he's helping Zaiwu a lot, you know? I think the emotional angle is a really applicable one, particularly in this map, because historically, Machu, we've seen Vitality get to the precipice of a map victory, and then everything crumbles, everything collapses. It has been a totally different story coming into this particular major, because as you said, they haven't dropped a map, but hell, they have played some damn close ones. Yeah, and it's both refreshing and surprising.
to see Vitality actually stand up to their responsibility when round 30 comes around the corner, whereas usually, historically, they would kind of fumble the bag, you know? They would have all of these possibilities to close games, and then suddenly it would get a little bit tight, and Apex would get a little emotional, they would get a little bit fluffy. That wasn't the case here, and it hasn't been the case in Paris all the time. We've mentioned all of these results, 16-13, 13-12, 14 once again, and in an area where we can see the people here having a little bit of an all-out with the lights, where the pressure is 100% on you. This would be a moment where you could crumble. When you've been up so easily against Apex on your first map, and then you see them coming back on the scoreline, everything is coming together for you to crumble and absolutely make a mess out of it, but they didn't. Can we just appreciate these beautiful scenes going down in the arena? Kenny, for you, what, what does it mean to have the final CSGO Major in Paris in France and to have this incredible crowd in attendance? Well, we have a few tournaments in France already that have been quite amazing. Like, one of our best probably will remain uh, ESL Pro League S9 in Montpellier. And France is tend, to, to be, tend to be like the kind of country where like, ah, CSGO is not in the main game and stuff. But look at this. Even, even on Thursday, um, that was quite full, you know? So um, it just shows that we are, at the end of the day, we might be a country of Counter-Strike, you know? And that's, that's beautiful to see, that's beautiful to see. Absolutely. Beautiful scenes, you can hear the roars of the crowd echoing in there too. Let's move on to talk about what is Vitality's map pick. That is going to be Vertigo, and I love that we get to see this picked out of Vitality, because this has been a map we know they've been honing in their craft on, and it's become kind of a stable ground for them, as not it? You're absolutely right, and it's been the mark of any team that has won meaningful events to have at least three maps where they can challenge anybody. And for Vitality, that little package has Anubis, Nuke, and Vertigo. These are three maps where I'm ready to trust Vitality with my life. And now that they have survived this little scare of Mirage, they got the blood pumping just a little bit, to me, the series is over. To me, the series is done. I think Vitality did what they had to do surviving in the first map. Now we're moving on to Vertigo. It's their own turf, and everybody's lighting up. I think we're sending it. Yeah, I'll reiterate that Apex told me that he believes that him and Vitality are the best T-side team in the world on Vertigo. That is due in part to the trio of players that they have taking that ramp control. You have Zywoo, you have Dupree, you have Apex himself. All three of them are going to be working in tandem to make the other Apex, the team Team Apex, their life absolutely hell. And Magis I think that's. Magiscon B as well? Huh? Magiscon B as well in the offense? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, think Magis can pack on Vertigo a few days ago in quarterfinal has been understated, but yeah. it definitely made a big difference. Yeah, versus Into the Breach, it was crazy on that T side alone to see the impact that Magis was putting up. And it's also crazy that we're looking at Vitality now as a team that can potentially Maniac be firing on every single damn yeah. center. It, it, it's been there, I want to say the last tip. Maybe that's not exactly the right term to be coining here, but we've always thought there were some crazy, crazy qualities in Vitality. It's not from yesterday, Sai Wu, Sphinx, a good map of Magis here and there, but now it feels like everything is kind of coming together and the probability of these elements actually activating are much higher. You're asking me, are we going to see a good Magisk on the B side on, on the offense? I'm saying yes, absolutely. It seems like it. He's had multiple examples. Dupree on the defense on B, one of the sites where he's going to be needed the most. He's had a beautiful first map, 1.43 rating as well. So all of these things are coming together. The stars are aligning. Shout out to Astralis as well for Dupree and Magisk and he's coming home. Maui, it sounds unlikely that Apex are going to be battling back into this one. Just stolen the UK. We're going to let that be saying it's coming home and into the breach have been taken out of the I mean, event. we got a UK player or UK coach on the other side of the server, rather. Is there any hope for Apex coming into this one if you're hoping to see this go all the distance and go to a three? Ray, I, I would give it like 90 to 10 in this one. We've been wrong so before the about what's underdogs. What's the 10, Maui? The 10 is if Kixan can play to the level that he has so far. In the quarterfinals, Kixan was the reason that they, one of the biggest reasons they are able to win their quarterfinal matchup. On Mirage, he was nowhere to be found. It felt like he was flustered, couldn't find ideas, couldn't find his individual form. He needs to be contributing a little bit more. Even though he's an in-game leader, I, I need to see a little bit more from his fragging department. Kenny, I think it goes without saying, who are you picking in this one? Is it 2-0 for Vitality? Um, yeah, I think so. But despite what you just said about uh, Kixan not uh, having the same impact as usual, they still made 6-14, which is a really close game. That's true. Um, Vertigo can be a random map at some point, not necessarily for for uh, for vitality, but you know, like it's kind of momentum. T side, T side doesn't really matter at at, uh, at some point. So I would mostly go like 70, 30 for vitality. Uh, but I, I actually think that the momentum goes for vitality, and obviously the crowd makes a difference. Like I'm not gonna lie, the crowd buff is a thing.
Yeah, the Golden Don't Hornets have been shouting, screaming, roaring all the way home. I think that's going to continue in this second map match. 2-0. 2-0. 2-0. You right heard it. Unbiased from the man, from the three men right here. Let's get the second map underway. Let's throw on and over to Vertigo. Oh, yes. It is time for Vertigo. A lot of expectations. Will Vitality keep that clean sheet as they look to join Gamer Legion in the grand finals of CSGO's last major. It seems mad to say Apex had a beautiful underdog tail, but will they be able to show teeth? Will they have some bark as they jump into the second map? Vitality, it's been looking good. I mean, let's be honest, that was a full 30 rounds. I like the points the desk are making. Kenny S saying there is certainly a chance. What do you make of it, Chad? Notre question pour vous, Paris. Vous êtes prêts? Let's get this party started. I was always going to throw the glitch molly here, I'm pretty sure. Going to burn through the floor and they might come out mid. Is he lining it up? Yeah, he is. So okay. he flashes out mid and I oh. think he's flubbed it. I think he missed it. JL behind the sandbags. Needs more. Oh, the headshot. He rolls. Sphinx goes through though. Gets away with murder. And more in cold blood from Steeco. Can't get it down on the duelies. They have the B side courtesy of Magisk. And Zyru forward, he wants blood, he wants the round. They want to keep it going 100% of those pistols on Mirage went their way now. Looking to extend that. Jacob not ready for Magisk, caught off and executed up the Glock. And it's only Gixon, look at the damage. He's already taken a goose to the dome and now... 16 rounds conceded away from going home. Semi-finals continue. As do the pistol rounds for Vitality. Sphinx, Magus, Zywu all contributing there in that pistol round. Those are the three names you want to see in the early stages of this. And these trades, fantastic here. Sphinx getting both as that molly did miss and then even gets away from the third. That is wild. But in towards B they go. And as you mentioned, three from three in the pistol department. Trying to make it as easy as possible on themselves here. As Apex will go for another buy, it is going to be the force. The Eagles 5 7 scout. Yeah, I like the approach. It's direct. Vitality, you can say one thing, they are direct. It's straight into JL, right behind the sandbags again. He's fighting tooth and nail. Nade on the nose. He still takes one with him. As will Jacob Steeko Steek. Connects and finishes. Oh. Okay, this is Apex. And this is Zywu. A 1v3 with a whole arena. Willing him to clutch up and his brain whirs into action. He's a problem solver. He's unique and he is deadly. Zywu, one more. Nork though, he's got a clutch or two. Oh, oh. And against the woo. One, one. Immediate, oh, right. immediate response. And look at Nork calls the cucumber right there. This guy's been clutching up. All since the challenger stage, that defuse is going to come through. Sure, the light goes green. And this flurry Let in middle, this, the Deagles just this. swing in and punish them. Trying to get out of dodge, they can't. That is a showstopper from Seiko and Nork as well with the Deag. Beautiful work. And that one's gonna slip through the fingers right there. <laughs> he can't believe it. He's in disbelief himself. Like, really? I won that? Okay. I think he's probably questioning, why are you fighting me? Yeah. Play the ball. You don't know who I am. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> you don't have to take that fight, but all right. Maybe a buyback here. Looks like we got the yellow wow. deep smoke lined up from Jacob here. Yeah, it's Apex Laner's own finances on the line. A pursuit of glory. Weapon falls into enemy hands. Look at that. You can see they've equipped themselves nicely. AK, M4, MP9. Can Apex immediately run with this momentum? They've Gifted been, to them. You're given a lot of space here. Steeko's playing really passive. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so Apex are completely exploring the A ramp. And they will be able to call it clear. Now, the question is, how quick can they rotate over? Steeko. Doesn't have any utility to block with, so they will have to play retake on the site. He's delaying them a little. Eats flashes, they're gonna have to play retake. He can't handle this alone. And one bullet to the dome, Dupree. Throws a heavy blow. JL, blind as a bat, gets away from it. Jacob still contributing. And JL wants more hiding in plain sight. On the bomb side, pushing in, and Apex laughing at him. CQB on the dig, still converts. Kicks and hanging around. He's got Nork in tow. 
head of the smoke. Good strike. Maybe Nor can do it again. Does lightning strike twice? Oh! He cannot be tamed! He uh cannot be killed! And Vitality immediately sent back to spawn with a broken bank. Add another clutch to Nork's tally here. They're continuing to build. He's in the teens right now. And this was another skirmish over towards the B side, just fighting, pushing through the smokes, and they line up. Sphinx and Zywu, the final two. The biggest names falter, and Vitality fall 2-1. Oh, what a start. It takes a lot to get a Swede to show emotion. Nork happy with this, and so is Kuban. You can see him on the mic immediately after two incredible comeback rounds. Cuban calls a timeout. Yeah, this is interesting here. So just wanting to slow things down and, and let them settle because those first few really adrenaline-filled rounds right there. <laughs> the type of rounds that you just converted, <laughs> coming down to the 1vx scenarios and Nork in back-to-back -back occasions picking him up. Just for Nork's sake, give him 30 seconds to have a breath here. Recenter yourself, understand what is likely to come up from Vitality. Now, Cuban might have been expecting another force fight because only one player stayed alive, right? It was just sure. Nork left over. So with that in mind, he might have been considering another buy here, but Vitality, they were not obliged. They are going to take the more conservative of the two options, probably the correct of the two options, considering they're up one map and yeah. this is now their choice. Yeah, and we've seen Nork on these uh, one-shot headshots. First the Deeg, now the AK, and he still has that in play. Vitality, they got to fear the Swede, fear the Reaper that is Nork right now. Up, oh, spotted, dismounted, JL, motivated. As Steco contributes early, as Magic's gone on the beast, stairs. Yeah. Vitality, they're just poking and prodding on the digs, and Sphinx, yep, not added to the naughty list. I wonder if the conversation with Apex as well was invigorating some of their individuals, because we saw as they drew ever closer to taking it to overtime, they were starting to push a lot more, take a lot more fights, and that's been a big element of their game. Do they clear this corner? Well, we're about to find out. Nork, yeah, confidently. We'll take a bullet, sure, but it is just Dupree now, noisily falling off that ladder and won't be long for this world. It is about to be a 3-1 scoreline in favor of Apex. Just a matter of time here. And there you have it. Wow. That is a dream start. You know, a wise man once told me that actually winning the second round better than the pistol. Yeah, they've actually given themselves a, a decent chance here into this first gun round as well because the AK's come through. I'm going to have to worry about an AWP just yet. There are going to be five AKs out here, but a problem is a little bit of light utility. And this is going to limit the amount of opening options they have. So is it something fast and direct from Vitality? They're just going to wait out Apex's opening move. Yeah, Sphinx just operating with a smoke. The same for Magisk here. So you can just see how light on they are. And starting 4A. So going to feign out B presence, jumping up, trying to take this space. Nork, Kixon, and Jacob here. And Nork, he's going aggressive. And connect. Oh! <laughs> Your front Nork, he can't be stopped! You have to kill him yourself! Popping off so much, Jacob's naded him! Apex forward gets nothing done, and that is another sensational round out of Nork. Up to Jay Allen Stico to convert all of that hard work, and it's up to Magis to disrupt. Smoke down, shots fired, bomb on his back. Yeah, Jay was coming, man. Jay was coming. He's gunning for the close, they know. They know. Oh! No! <laughs> All right. Keep them coming. Keep the smiles. And keep the cheers because the Apex family. Yeah, that horn represents the Apex family. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make as much noise as the Golden Hornets here, but Nork, yeah, you're right. It is Jacob who Oops. loves his nade and catch this, will you, mate? Hold on to that for me. Yeah, watch out. That's a graffiti play if it wasn't for Jacob. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. Eight to two. I mean, I think Vitality wish he would. Oh, off to a flyer here. You get dropped from NIP for a legend of the game. Like Device, you don't know if there's any way back for somebody like Nork, especially with how limp the Swedish scene has been. So great to see some representation here. I mean, let's not forget where that first major was held. Ten long years ago. Ten years ago. And now we find ourselves here in Paris. A hesitant farewell to a game that has been our obsession for a decade of our lives, changing thousands, if not more, of lives here in the professional scene. Spinks onto kicks, and now that will, well, temporarily excite the Vitality fans, but you got no armor behind this, or at least you do it on two. 
It would have to be a slip up. Jacob, solid. Can he remain so as Apex is gunning for his head? Weapon retrieved. Oh, no, Nork, he has to do so much more. No, no, not ready for Zyru. Over the smoke, another rifle in place. Deku and JL looking to clean up. It's a bit of a mess here for Apex. Zyru spotted. Bodies crossing. Apex on another onto JL. It's only Stiko. And Zyru's going to keep tapping at his head. Sprays him. Perhaps that will subdue him. Apex holding the cross. Smoke will obscure view from Zywu. And Apex isolated, headshotted, and not another from Sneeko! 16 HP, he takes down Spinks on the peak, and now up to the Wu. To stop this 1v3, he's just got around the corner. Bomb, half gone. Planted for him, a forward position from Zywu, and on the clear, oh. the Beautiful positioning! From Zaiwu, Stiko though, that was a stunning attempt. Another 1vx situation, we're having an awful lot of hitties here today. And this is the type of Counter-Strike you want delivered in an arena, in a packed out house. Zaiwu, this, we'll get this, away with this one, won't he? Shot, this shot onto Sphinx is filthy, and look at the angle, you can see he just averts his gaze, didn't expect to see someone so forward. We might catch it in the replay here, but Jacob was very upset with himself after that death. Yeah, I saw him immediately after he goes down, hands to the head, frustration. Nork left alone, he grabs one and is done, and then the site overruns. So Vitality, they don't bring in a whole lot, but they get away with an awful lot. Four to two, just the two round difference, and it might be enough to stall our Apex here. They don't really have enough to get a full buy. Right now, this discussion has been had of how they are going to purchase. I'm looking at the buys here, we've got an MP9, a Deagle for Jacob. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so that frustration. And oh. Yeah, Jacob knows that a oh. bit of a mistake was made there yeah. against a lighter buy. You've got to shake that off, Chad. This is how champions are made. You shrug it off, you say next round. Not easy. Much easier said than done. A mental game just as much as it is a mechanical one. As Magisk eats lead, Stiko the one to feed him. Paid a heavy blood price for it, but Nork, he's looking for more. You've got the advantage, but they continue to maintain an aggressive stance. Smoke under the board to try and advance, but it seems vitality of other plans. Counter-Strike. An art form in constant evolution. Vitality on Vertigo. Looking to recover from a number discrepancy caused by Stiko on the B side. It looks like they're just trying to keep Apex moving right now with this jostling for position. Flash forward, takes some space. A little bit more leg shown now as Dupree. Molly back, sandbag. That's going to put kicks in a knock on notice. Also going to gravitate Ooh, Aiken wow. and JL over towards A. So a lot of work done with that presence. That stairs smoke needs to be disrespected. Vitality have to run in and they will. Do they play retake? You got nothing more. 100 bucks in your back pocket as you lo lose the site. Are you going for this fight? We've got a kit here on Kixen. It's flash, smoke, molly combo to make this available. Smoke off towards the sandbag position, get that molly towards the side or maybe the back pillar and a flash and go. They're going to give this one a crack. Yeah, Apex is going to be that brute force first object. Just looking to do as much damage as he possibly can. Back to turns. Will they get overwhelmed? Will they lose track of him? Through the smoke is Apex. Yes, man, it's glare too. And that should be enough, I think. Time not on their side. Apex will have to back away. Wow, Vitality, a little bit of a redemption from that Mirage fumble in the post plant. They are comfortable there. Puff up their chest and convert a must-win round. And that right there is showing that they're willing to brave Stiko's B defense. Right. That smoke lands top stairs and they run straight through it. Maybe a good idea that they're trying to rejig the setup and pressure over towards A, but regardless, a, a great smoke to run through. And Apex appearing through exactly that does damage here. Clothesline Stiko on the way out and kicks it with a shake of his head. Now he mentioned his name, said he went missing on Mirage Shore, but this is an in-game leader in a semi-final of his first major. This is one of the tallest tasks you could ask of somebody 22 years young. And his opposition on the other side of the server. A fantastic story of this Frenchman. He was the entry fragger. He was the one you just sent in first, make space, do damage. And this evolution into this seasoned, now leader of a team that's vying for a major grand final. Uh, precisely, and he has the backup of Magis, three majors, Dupree, four majors, Zonic, been there for that entire conversation as well. So the support network of experience on Vitality is huge. On Apex, they can turn to Jacob, been in a major semi-final once. They can turn to Stiko. Uh, you know, he's been around. And you can turn to Cuban and you could hope that the wise coach 
the wise owl has some wise words of advice because we are back into play after a 30 second chit chat wow i love this i love this from jl the lithuanian is throwing caution to the wind but maybe Sphinx. oh betrayed by the barrel all the time in the world for Spinks to pull the trigger as JL goes down. A nice aggressive ladder hold from Spinks, anticipating something rather aggressive. And it seems that that's incited Dupree to head up with them. Mid B split, perhaps. Yeah, Vitality have some good B execs here, especially when they can lay in the site with mollies. But apparently, it's where the next fight will be coming. Jacob and Kixon. I think Kixon up first, but he's only going to jiggle spot. He's got an MP9. And he has transition. an A. Yeah, this is actually not bad. A good read from Kixon ahead of the play. Good hedge of the bets. Steeko to be tested again and kicks in. Actually, look at the one. Ooh, Spinks quick on the draw. Need more from Jacob down now. Missed shots, matches, cleans house. Safe as houses indeed, as they will find four to four. And we're going to be all tied up after this one. And Apex can thank Nork for the fact that they've got that four. Nork hanging around, seeing if he can find anything here, but Vitality fighting hard for these. Listen to that. Look how cheeky Nork's being with it. Hanging around, lingering for a little bit too long, but uh, all good, he is going to be able to retain this rifle. Everybody likes fire. Most definitely. Especially as it edges you close up to the grand finals of the major. At least they haven't lost their identity, right? Taking that risk for JL, it's a massive risk. It's a coin toss. You're not in an advantage situation there at all. Uh, but they're continuing to try and, in these lesser weapon rounds, put up some type of fight, some type of push. That is a beautiful little double there from Magisk. Great to get him switched on here. Seven kills for him and Apex in towards the B push. Magis continuing for a little bit more. JL removed again. First death in back-to-back -back rounds. This one's a bit more acceptable considering the outlook of the buy now. Look at this. Yeah, as Dupree continues forward, he can just saunter in towards A. They can bring that bomb back at any moment, but that's if they're not already dead. Every head. Just like that. Now they do have Nort completely surrounded and executed. Magic's got on your screens for a reason. That's another multi-kill round out of him. He's top of the scoreboard, top of the pops for Vitality here. And Adain, with a lot of pedigree, let's not forget, he was the catalyst to world domination for that Astralis roster. He showed up, and then they just didn't stop. Yeah, well, he was the missing piece, apparently, for the era. Most dominant team to ever do it. Two of these puzzle pieces been picked up by Vitality, and this is all a part of that vision, that vision of finding himself right here. Yes. Precisely. Right here in Paris, France, this long lead time. They've set their sights, they've timed their peak, and they're against Apex right now, so, hey, towards the tippy top of exactly that. Third timeout wow. for Apex, so this is really showing you how quick it's gone. We've had nine rounds of play, about to move into 10, and Kuba doesn't like what he's seeing so far. It's a reach, but I'll give it to you. Uh, yeah, not too shabby. <laughs> 10 points to Ravenclaw. They're putting pressure on B here. Seiko, here they come, mate. It's going to feel the same. You can see Dupree deploying the utility, and it will keep boots planted. Apex, they've got a full defense of the A ramp set up, cocked and ready, but it may not be required. I see that, actually, with bated breath. They've just boosted up the Wu, who's looking to fire off his first shot of this 10th round. His pre-aim is for the jump peak, just for the info. And they're advancing on this stair smoke. Magisk, he was ready for the first, and there's no response from Sneeko. No idea that Magisk has smoked himself out, should be able to elope, not ready uh -oh. for this one. Didn't have a chance. So a four on four, sure. But can you get past Nork? He's got help. Multi-levels, multi-faceted defense, pulls the trigger onto Dupree. Falls back, Apex spotted, Molly inbound. Jacob activates, needs the headshot and lays Apex to rest. Astiko adds Sphinx to the pile. Only Zywoo now. 
and the first is clean as you like, but Nork's laughing at him. Try again, as he nails the head-to-head, -head, the Swede's solid. And we tie things up once more, 5-5. Five, five. They are going to work for this one here, Vitality. Apex, they want this just as much. Still enough for a buy here. Vitality can purchase again. They've even got residual cash for another purchase. Again, this B pressure early. They just want to continue to knock on the door oh. here at Speedco. A nice nade, sure softens them up, but they're just going to waltz on in. Matt just deletes him. They're exploiting Steeko's hold, and JL, he holds on for one. Dupree, an important frag, is only his Need second. Some cover, need some cover, need some cover! Jacob charging in in hopes of disrupting the plant, but it leads to an impossible two versus four. They have to save here, but this is the thing. If Apex are going to keep opening three players towards the ramp, it means right. it's the one, one, three. And that means that Vitality know where the weakness is. And speaking of weakness, they want to make Apex even weaker, take away a couple more rifles. Hawk is closed, kicks are not too far away. If they can take away either of these save rifles, loss bonus. 400, oh. and that's the orb in the dirt. This is the butterfly effect. The Sphinx soars. Vitality up to six, but yeah, that will have a ripple throughout the rest of this half. Take everything away from them, no one. Financially, look at, look at this. A minute 42 on the clock. He's walking into B drive. He's just walking up, taking an angel. That's all that is. So, theory craft with me. Apex, you know B's being exploited, but you know the second you send more resources, that A ramp's going to be needed. Yeah, and I, I feel like just looking at some of the buying patterns Apex are falling into right now. Might be uh, getting ever closer to the bin. Oh. Kixon's bought into a uh, rifle shawl. They want to have an X factor, a little bit of a flavor about this. And as you mentioned, uh, they have started heavy towards B with that rifle. So Kixon was helping out Steeko. We get it highlighted here by our lovely observer, Chev. But uh, he, he couldn't find anything. Now Vitality have conditioned them to have to worry about B, which weakens their A defense. So now, as you take your time, you have all the advantages in the world. This boost might get a little bit tricky here. How good are your Sphinx on your pre-fires? Oh, his pre-fires and his clears, his angle awareness. It is next level. Let's be tested. Oh, he's ready! <laughs> no doubt! Whatsoever, Sphinx. Oh, oh and Steeko with a response. Now, they will have to get a move on, because Kingston's got that M4 and Apex stops it, puts the lid on it. Only a Deagle and a USP for Norg. He sprayed on down. Apex starting to farm up a few of his own. Burns down to 30 HP. Steeko's dig oh. in the okay. head of Zywoo. Dupree holds on. You can see he enjoyed that one. Yeah, his deagle is dangerous. Huh? I think about Mirage, close to ramp. He hitting some bangers, Stiko. It's great to see him hanging with the best. And now starting to really, I don't want to say draw away. It is only two rounds here. But in the washing machine at Apex, I, I don't like the feeling. Max loss bonus is in play. They've only got one timeout left. Dupree with the final blow. Some good aim from him to get up to it. Mark of four frags in oh, total, man. but Steeko with a smile on his face. You got to enjoy the moment. Look at this. They're trying again. Steeko to be tested. He's already calling for the cavalry. But it's Zywoo for the answers. Great flash. Good damage. Zywoo brought low. And standing, looking to find more, was Steeko. An aggressive stance to start. Yeah, the gap is middle, and they have nobody home there to try and pressure that. They did that as a unit here, Vitality. So you can see Apex is feeling the calls, and the team are following suit. Watching out A ramp, and Zywoo. Doesn't need to extinguish right now. Sure, he's low. Wow, full reset. Oh, and Zywu over the top of the smoke, just on the edge of it. Nork gets caught. I can't believe Nork braved that. The way that the meta is adjusting, here's a mid smoke available from Dupree. They're going to split B. Yeah, and it's going to be Steeko and JL testing from a different angle. Look at that smoke. Look at the diligence. He's already in their spawn, burrowing behind enemy lines. Sphinx, look at this angle. JL is unprepared. And it's Sphinx again to add another to the tally. Ripped to shreds. Our Apex is eight. A one out T half here from Vitality. Now you're going to wonder, is it too early for the likes of Dupree, Zonic, Magis to be setting their sights on yet another major to add to that trophy cabinet? I don't think there's any doubt about Zonic and him being uh, well, the top-notch coach, the top of the totem pole. Nobody has... Uh, the accolades 
But this is the thing, Dupree has a couple of teammates he's tied up with from old days, and I'm sure he would love to elevate himself above the rest. And those rests, they wouldn't even make it to this major. It's poetic, isn't it? I'll see ya. Zonic. <laughs> oh, everybody's going down. Literally. Take it all away. Eight. Locked in. Peanuts, Pocketlin, and a Haribo wrapper is all Apex will have to boast here. Yeah, keep going for these partial investments. The money's lined up. Apex fans still present. But likely on the edge of their seats for the rest of this Vertigo. Vitality seem truly indomitable. Untouchable. As the calls are coming out of Apex, Mr. Matt is clear. He's calling a good game here, despite the frustrations visible. It's a direct game, that's for sure. Now we're going to oh. smash and bang into A. Yeah, it is. It's brute force. And look at the diligence. The flash is good, and Dayel's dead. Look at them go. Two, three, double. Apex in trouble. Goal for the perfect one. Everyone alive and kicking. But this pressure is not being felt by Vitality. The whole of France watching. All of Denmark watching. Go, All of Israel. Let's Round go. 15. And they're looking for that double digit. That always feels extra special when you come into that next half with 10. And it's been quite the run here, Chad. Eight of the last nine rounds going the way of Vitality. And it could have been a whole lot better. They won the pistol and they lost the follow up. And that's how Apex have got the majority of their rounds here. But is there any more fight? 9-6, still possible. They're looking to fight. Let's see, does this underdog have any more fight? Respect the util. Or bait it out. Because right now, Apex, sure, again, they're just splitting this 2-3 spread mid. So susceptible here. They've been conditioned throughout this map on both sides of the server. Nervous. A six would go a long way. Nork wants to play for info here. Him and Jacob have transitioned into more aggressive positions. There's still mollies available for Sandbag. Once this starts to subside... Oh, maybe it won't subside. Jacob could redeploy, or he could just sit and wait as Magisk is going to be greeted. I love this angle. JL's not expecting this again. These angles are so deadly! And a headshot from Magisk! He's ready for more! And he lays down the law! Double entry all the way, and the rest is a fake. Nork pulled over like a mob to the flame. Oh, Jacob flattened. Meets the Zywu Warp, and it's a red carpet run for 10 now. Two pre posted. Look at this. Lacks a days ago as Nork goes looking through there. Headshot provided. They cannot be tamed right now. As Vitality, clean as you like, look to collect 10. And it feels like it may be that nail in the Apex Coffin. A beautiful Hollywood tale. Overcoming adversity, overcoming huge names. With more opportunity, but 10. This undefeated run, six rounds away from the Grand Finals. Where do you begin with Vitality? Dupree, Majisk, Zonic. They are in the history books. Saiwu is uh, like uh, already a legend of the game. He's so good. You are arguably one of the best players in the world. Because for me, I'm just Mathieu Ebo. So. It would be a crime to not have him in Paris alongside Apex, one of the most tenured French players that Counter-Strike has to offer. You need to give everything all the time. All the time. Every fucking day, every fucking game. Everything you have prepared for is pretty much out of play. Of course there's going to be pressure. Uh, I don't like to be bored during the game, so I want action. I'm fucking ready. If you win here, it's going to be life-changing.
may have taken a break, but the crowd certainly has not. The Golden Hornets are here. And Vitality are six rounds away from making history here in Paris. Man on your screen, first major semi. Looking for his first final, looking for his first trophy. Best Counter-Strike player in the world right now. There's not even a debate. And what a team around him. Everyone pulling their weight here on Vertigo. And can they remain undefeated in the pistols as well? Apex would bite your arm off for one. Five rounds to boast, our underdogs find themselves on the attack. They've left Zywa with A. This is going to be a quick response over towards B. Apex has flashed to set up Dupree. Seiko, you tell. Headshot required. Falls away. Dupree repositions, looking to slow down this run. They're coming through. And it's already good from Magisk. Aggressive, though. Through the smoke, and he loses his life, loses his head. Magisk, cool, calm. Looking for trouble. Bomb should go down. They're going to push through. And they're not ready for Kingston. Solid. And Jacob closes. Apex, they take their first pistol, a triple from the Norwegian to keep the hopes alive. Uh, about time they were able to pick up one of these. And we thought just over there on Mirage, they were doing a great job as far as the gun rounds, as far as the clutches. It was the pistols that were missing here. So they pick up one, nice little B execute. In they go, get the bomb down, have no issues here with Jacob, just bopping away at a couple of heads, making it look easy and trying to fire up the rest of the team. JL making some noise, it's Vitality, they will not roll over. I want to fight for this. We've seen how deadly they can be on some of these lighter by scenarios. This is five equals again, peppered up, JL low. Main objective here, do not trip over your shoelaces. Oh, this looks wobbly, hasn't it? All it takes, and we've seen it in this map already. Deagles can be deadly, these hand cannons, especially in the hands of these masters of their craft, can do wonders. And if they want to come ramp, they have to get through the woo. See this here, the jump spot. This is, again, just for info, to buy time for the rotation. He can drop a defensive smoke, deploy it as he likes. As he jumps next, he will see something. So giving a bit of information. He sees Saving it. it perfectly, right? He has dropped back. They have a minute on the clock. And now as Apex were into action up this ramp, you can take a look at the util that they have available. Only towards the sandbag. Nobody home. Smoke's here to block and Zywoo. Oh, Zywoo. He is going for something a little audacious. Jacob so aware. Takes down one. Sphinx is still here. Yeah, I don't know if JL's going to confirm this. Yes, he is. A big one. And Madness pushing, punished. Clean. And remains so. Jacob another. A triple in back-to-back -back round from Jacob. He's here now. And so are Apex. Up to seven. And you'd think an eighth is imminent. And they're the ones with a good start this time round. Remember the first half, sure the pistol went to Vitality, they lost the follow-up. A good stretch of rounds, four consecutive for Apex out the gates in that first half of play. And now with the pistol conversion in the second, yeah, you mentioned this third. Should be easy as you like. There's no rebuttal available here from Vitality. And the confidence from Jacob, right? He's not uh, given up just yet. Got himself up to 11 kills here. But he gets stuck in. That will boost very, uh, Yeah, well, Jacob, uh, he got a bit of inside knowledge from the boys back in the day. He's one of these players who just loves to fight, right? He's very stubborn in his approach. Got two boosts here. Want to catch him off on the scale, and I suppose once they take this initial exchange, then the next boost will activate with Apex and Magic. And that's even if they do finish towards A. But I like that. You know, when you haven't got any reason to play it by the book, come up with something to give you an edge, albeit with the element of surprise. Yeah, this would have to go really wrong. Sure, there's two P250s. They're going to have to be laser sharp. First bullets are going to have to land here. Jacob was aware of smoke pushes, but... Oh, that's info! And Kickson caught out. The boost catches him. And Stiko looking to stretch his legs, but they're coming for him with the smoke in his hand. Oh, no! He's down. Surely not! JL accelerates. He knows he can be the man in the moment. It's okay. Into the site. It's okay. the Into the site. And just going to keep all their feet planted. 
Apex aware, trying to rotate through. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. And man just goes over. Uh-oh. Look, he does have the one in the back, finds it, should be traded. Zywu will get too clean to the head. A weapon now in his hands as the bomb's down on A, sure. Jake come forward, you said he likes to fight. They've got low HP, it shouldn't be too threatening, but Zywu always is, and there's one. Finishes the job, and another from Jacob. Really heating up now, he's just launched himself to the 13 frag total. And with it, Vitality's hopes of converting. Three frags, I mean, that's not to be snuffed at. Oh, decent damage, right, if, you, if you're gonna take it from that angle, short. Dupree, just trying to make a couple more go down with him, but no more damage available. It's now gonna be just a two round gap, Apex. <laughs> Nine frags in three rounds out of Jacob. He's holding on when Apex do have these wobbles. He's staying solid. Zaru's orbs out here on the CT side. We know that he uh, likes to mix it up. Not always more than the AWP, but this time round, wants to take it over towards A. Dupree just gets two. Aggression, the remedy, Vitality gifted a double from Dupree. What are you meant to do now? Oh. You worked so hard for the first three, you've done a great job to give yourself this two round gap. I love right now. this, I love the util set, especially if he chooses to try and kick up more of a fuss if he hits anything else on top of this. Could disrupt to make space for kicks in a Nork. Yeah, just so hard, right? Dupree, he's essentially bait in all of this. JL seems still aware. I don't think Spinks would dare. Doesn't need to. Yeah, that's a bad smoke. North might actually be able to use this if he comes up the stairs here against them, so... More utility. Is it a fake or is it a go? Good molly. That's trouble. There's confirmation, and now it could be a frag. There you go, one back, JL. The bomb on its way, that's just the rotation. Space being made for kicks and... 40 seconds, they don't have to com completely commit. Apex, oh, Apex saw him, Apex saw him, I think. Yeah, and the confirmation, that's pulling other ones, rotation. Three second guessing. The veteran. Kixon's running, so I was hearing this. 19 majors for Dupree. And he's oh, oh! headed in the public square by JL. They're back in this now. A 3v5 goes 3v3, and North not satisfied. He wants four bloodshed. Apex holds on, hanging on by a thread. 20 HP, Zyru on to JL, leaves it all on to Kicks, and he's been quiet. Can the North Macedonian leader give him anything to celebrate? The spray is good, Apex low. Off he's the bomb, and Kicks says, play on! Nine! That is divine! Apex, it's a one round game now. That's a confidence booster right here for Kixon. So a little something, something over towards A, but it's all JL, the hard work to get oh. them in. They get the bomb down and kicks it in the clutch. Zywu caught off guard, Apex low on HP, and that one is gonna feel good. Frustrations, oh. starting to build now. A huge advantage, Dupree got two kills in the first 15 seconds of the round, and that wasn't enough. Vitality couldn't find their first CT round, and North with another opener. Zyru went looking, and Nork happy to give it to him. These are the kind of rounds. They can stack up, and that's when that mental game starts to be played. No matter how hard you try, you will start seeing victory ahead of time. And rounds like that, they make you question it. Saying diligence still at Apex, right? Using all the correct utility. Helping them scale. Well, there's three here. Look, I kicked it. Oh, 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 oh. we had another there. Jacob's got all the space. Oh, not the headshot, though. It's his teammate, JL. Providing, now they are low and Kixon's oh, he's been put six feet lower. Dupree's Deeg, it can be dastardly. They go and B. Why not? <laughs> Too many problems today. Just leave JL here with the mop in the bucket. 
And JL will sweep another under the rug. You got two bullets. You got one HP, mate. Call your jet. Call your jets. Doesn't matter. On fire indeed. That is perfect. A five round run into the half to equalize. 10 10. Loving it. Every single generation can enjoy Counter Strike, and this is all tied up now. Vitality, look at this. Change up here. Second gun round, double orbs. Okay. One for Spinks, one for Zion. That's, that's the big red button. And it's good for Spinks over towards mid. A good weapon for him to wield. Looks like he did back in the end stays as well when Hades didn't want to equip the big green. Zion will commanded to provide first blood and kicks it. Oh, oh, a miss from the woo. Can Magic recover? Opting for the orb. That's cheeky. And Magic, here's that warning shot. Advantage for Apex to take the lead here on Vertigo. Vitality's pick. And so far, perfect on the attack. Oh, and Apex will continue the attack. Actually brings the fight to Magic on top. Hold on, Nork. Hold on. Apex aware. Barrel. Spotted, and it's Apex again. Deco and Jacob. They can't drop back, they have to go away. Dupree's confirmed that. Jacob investigates and all he gets is hot lead from the M4. Magis, just one more. Flank coming in, Dupree gonna be questioning where he's gotten off to. Spinks loses his head. And now an orb for Stiko instead. Is there really more in this clutch? Not ready. Nice move from Dupree. And Vitality. Might have to get the Mahomes zone on that one. And I know it didn't lead to the round win, but it led to a round opener. That molly kicks and used is something that they deploy to clear out that position. But they threw it so that it uh, created a gap for him to push through. It's like they do an Ancient right. as well, the top of the B ramp. That's geeky. So Apex getting tricky with it, but those tricks, they don't secure them around. If anything, Vitality more than happy. You want to go for that quick play? We'll be ready. Zywoo goes down short. The rest of the players stand up tall and double orbs retained here. Maybe we get some orb action. You can see Norp bringing out the T side. Zoom, bang up. We know where that Molly's destined for. Norp successful on his on the floor of Elevator. Should be threatening, but it's actually kicks and catches Apex off on the reload, so short-lived success for Dan Madisclare. But with Zywoo's help, it may not be of concern. Madis can Zywoo. No! Oh! Oh! Madis repels! Spraying three! That is pedigree, and look at that for the finish! That's twice now. Apex just gets to watch this time. They concede an advantage and recover flawlessly. And in the process, break Apex's money here. Matches, he is finding himself on the big stage oh. where this individual has done some magnificent work over the years. Thrust forward into the fight, doesn't let him get away. And breaking the hearts right now of Apex. Smiles are on the faces, four more rounds. The Aqua Marina can feel it coming. Apex, first blood, kicks and watching. Now, Jacob has chosen to try and ply his trade when everyone else chooses not to invest and is rewarded. One. But what more can this Norwegian do? It rests on his shoulders. Good Molly. Forces him back. They can take space. No one to punch. Deco crawling. His Deagle's great. Molly's perfect, though. Maybe caught off by the fade. Matches to re-aggress. He wants to do it all, and he impressed with the spray. North connects victim, tapping heads, comfortable. This warrior continues to farm. 24 and counting. But it's actually boiled down to something of a round here for Nork. Yeah, something manageable as well. He's got Kevlar, no head armor, short. Sure. Has been able to scavenge this AK. No util to work with, and is taking on the French in their Coliseum right now. Has to stay quiet about things. 
There's more than enough time to make this possible. Let's go with the shift key, sprints in towards A, and as the bomb goes down, he'll say, let's play. I would be in disbelief if Nort can hold his nerve again. He has just been insane in the clutch. But look at the nades against him. There's a kit on Zaiwu. Smoke for the bomb. And he's going around the world looking to pick up another clutch. Spotted out, surely, Vitality with that utility. But down goes Zaiwu. Hold on! And Vitality three rounds away from that grand final here on home soil. Oof. Doing it the hard way there, the 10 second defuse, the kid is Iwu. He's gonna find that after the fact, grabs the AWP. And this was a round with one AK and some upgraded pistols. And it comes down to a one on two against Nor, yeah. who's been making everybody squawk. Truly, I mean, Apex, this is such a performance. Every single day they've woken up at the major and every single day they play on. Will this day be the exception as the final timeout called? And will Vitality stay undefeated in the map department? An impressive feat in itself. Still got that one more game to go, and that's if they can get there. And how many chances left for Apex to throw a spanner in the works of that? You can count on one hand. Well, this will be one of the final few, and not just because of the round count. They need to get in, they need to get the bomb down again. They need to keep themselves threatening here. Still a close game. Still a lot to play for. The third map. They'd love to get to Inferno, and I'm sure we'd all love to see it. It would require some heroics. Looking to overcome Vitality in a form unlike anything we've seen before from them. And look at Spinks ready and rocking. Dixon trading. Dupree present and correct. Jail's taking B space. They have to know this is possible right now. Dupree getting over here in time. Knows that this is a gap. Jacob's found a kill. Traded. Zyru. But it's JL in this head to head and he still holds on. He's got B. Apex is here, but he's late. Oh, Molly. He has to respect it. This two on two. Zyru and Apex again for the clutch. This French pair. Dan Madisclair and Mathieu Erbo for 14. Or can JL catch this head? No! Oh, oh. It's all onto the woo. Lots of time. And whoa, no! No teammates for North. Zywoo through the smoke. Zywoo looking like a man possessed. Oh. And North oh. at the bay. Another for North. They just keep coming. Leave this Swede last alive. He's got no problems. No problems at all. I've lost count. Uh, I think he came in today with 11 1VX situations from Challenger Legends, now the champion stage. He's got to be up to 14, 15, maybe even 16. Yeah. I mean, this is just knocking at his best again. And he's up against Zyru. I'm really con I'm convinced he's been comfortable in the head to head. Yeah, well, that's ridiculous. He should never be getting away with that. Dang. And Nork just posts up, hits the shot. Undaunted. And look at this. Look at the purchases or lack thereof. Oh, what a gift this is to. Those watching, I'm sure Vitality would be feeling different. Yeah, we're seeing the uh, ebbs and flows of the Counter-Strike economy here really come into play for both of these teams. Again, the oh. utility's good. Nice. That was Zyru with the rifle. Yeah. And lots of CTs there, but maybe not for much longer. Everyone's winning their duel. Zyru the exception. Kicks and seeing them all. I'm pretty sure he's counted three in that moment. That's going to free up JL to start hunting. Jacob and Steekoda can strip their movements. And yeah, just deal with them like this. You know where they are. Take that fight. See if uh, Zai was able to hold on to this rifle here. But considering they started searching immediately, he will be doing good to stay alive behind the sandbag. He has been noted now. JL, probably not going to clear this corner. So there you go, Sphinx. Take that AK-47. No complaints. Maybe for Zyru, though. Damn, Sphinx to the rescue. Uh, yeah. He wanted to come on over and help him out, but uh, things better at that now. At least they can retain one rifle. So that's all they brought into this round, but a one-round game is why we find ourselves in Apex. Continue to try and draw things close up. This is a treat. I mean, we had 16-14 on that first map, and Vitality, they held on in the final round of regulation. And Apex, 
They've come into Vertigo with some tenacity. There's no doubt about it. This team are not letting off the gas. They're not getting consumed by the environment. They're playing their game up against the whole crowd and the five players in the server. Nate looks good. JL swallows it. Nork, though, tries to enable him. Ooh, to find an angle. Hold on. Two, three. Perfect position in anticipation of that move. And now Apex is T side hamstrung in this round. And it oh. gets worse. Another shot to the Achilles. Sphinx cuts out Jacob. Apex playing is safe. Canary in the coal mine of mid. And Seiko confirms. Information flows. 50 seconds for this final go. Oh, he's not quite got the flash on the money there. We'll just slow them down, but we can see there's real no problem. They have to use extra resources, and look what that's done. Apex has time to rotate over. Magic as well. It's essentially a three-on-three on, three on this A site when Steeko gets here, and Sphinx has just pushed B. So they have a great idea where this finish will come through. If Nort can get towards the sandbag position, and oh, he's got the bomb, he's going to need a plan. Never mind. Smoke is good. Zywu needs one and provides it. Kixon only the one. Back two. Somehow fumbling on the silencer. And Zywu gives him a chance. Kixon goes down. Nork on the bomb plant. Should be a dead man. And it is. <laughs> Zywu secures it. A triple kill out of Monsieur Elbow, and now... <laughs> We've never had a trumpet. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> Truly. Why it just paid off, huh? Yeah. <laughs> One time at Bandcamp, I played the trumpet in front of 10,000 people. At the last CSGO major, no less, as Vitality were two rounds away from the final. I'll be honest, I almost fumbled the back yeah, there. Right, right, I was scared. Out of character. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it hinges on this. Strap in. Will we see more Counter-Strike? Sphinx already has so much space highlighted here. Uh, it's a really good camp to take at this moment because while they try and take back this A ramp control, Vitality already know nobody is B lobby. Nobody, not even a lurk. You're not worried about the seesaw. What? The Steeko Deeg, a persistent threat, but kicks and caught from behind. JL keeps their hopes alive. He paid a heavy price. 13. All he has to work with, unlucky for some. But is he one of them? Steeko Steagle deadly. Chips further away at Dupree's health pool. They can get into A. As I was very passive They here. are. A molly to deny the plant. Certainly. Smoke on Nork, though, for certainty. Respect it. You got time. And Ooh, JL's got headshots. Zayu does, though, onto JL. And it falls to Nork. Not again. I don't believe it. The man can't. Surely, clutch up again. Vitality have to know what that means now. Apex lost bonus, 1,900 coming into the next. As we watch them collect 15, 16 is all but a certainty here. The buy is almost buy, buy, buy. There's no money available here. Apex scrap this together. It's got to be fast. It's got to be furious. It's got to be in your face. and already battered and bruised. If ever there was a time for that 16th, in what remains of Vertigo, it has to be now. Every move you make could be your last on this stage for Apex. You cannot put a foot wrong.
a pixel incorrect and it could cost you because Spinx is sharp as attack. And he's ready for this attack. He's coming! Oh! Oh! Yes! And it's back to Spinx! A triple kill to acquire certainty. JL. He's going to be all alone. No, Stiko's the one. And he's only got 19 HP. He's got nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I was coming for you with the pistol. Throws away the orb, says, I know what I need to finish it clean. Oh! And it costs him. Brought down 15 is all the damage dealt. Stiko's dig, no way. No, not now. How is he still alive? He's down to 2 HP. He somehow lives on. And now they're pushing him. Oh. streak. This revolution is being televised. Talk about timing the peak perfectly. Paris in the calendar, their only focus. A first major final debut for the likes of Sphinx, for the likes of Zywu, and a chance to add more trophies to the cabinet for Dupree, Magis, Apex, and of course, Zonic. This team, one match away from lifting the trophy here on home soil. Nork, an incredible performance throughout the series. I mean, truly doing himself proud. Stiko as well. Redemption for so many players in that Apex jersey. Wow. Jacob off our radar, Nork, Stiko, and then the new blood, the new boys, JL and Kixon making a name for themselves here today. Putting up some strong Counter-Strike. But the fan in. favorite, the fan favorite. I'm gonna throw this down to Banks with Stiko. Well, Stiko, the journey ends here. I hope you can hear me okay, because this is wild. For you, a tough game, a close game on Mirage as well. You guys put up a good fight. And even on Vertigo, there was a chance you made it competitive. But what was that like to play in a play against this crowd? It was amazing. It was amazing and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. What this crowd did was something incredible. And it's been a while for you, but you've come back with Apex. You've shown full strength, you've shown full commitment. This has looked damn good. We've got the whole team joining us for this one. What do you make of this though? When we see you went three ones at the challengers, three two on legends to get through to this, you take down Nip in the end and Liquid in very good fashion. Is this just the start of something for you guys? Hopefully. I mean, what we were doing is months of hard work, yeah. and uh, the fact we made top four here is a reason that uh, it was worth it. And we were doing something right, and we will keep doing so. And hard work certainly pays off. And for you guys, all coming from different areas, all coming from different backgrounds, right? And then making this team work. Is it like a dream? Is it like a fairy tale? Like a kind of a bunch of misfits that came together and made it work? Absolutely. I mean, we would love to top it over with the final performance, but it was impossible today against Vitality and the whole arena here. <laughs> it definitely was. Well, I think you should give your semi finalists here of Apex a big round of applause. They put up one hell of a fight. Everyone's, everyone's cheering for you right now, Dan. Apex, you've been on some of the biggest stages. You've been in these arenas. But how does this feel now? Home? It's incredible. It's incredible to be here. I'm really happy we delivered. We're in final of the French Major, and it means so much. I, I don't know how to describe it, but the feeling I have is the best in my life. Now, I want to talk about that Mirage a little bit to start off with. It was looking like they might have been able to take the overtime, maybe able to take that from you. But how good did it feel? Did you feel at that point, you're like, okay, we didn't break when it got close, but this is ours now? 
I think that um, we should have closed more rounds on our city side. We lost so many clutches overall. But we all do control the whole game once again, and that's what matters. I'm just proud of my boys. Everyone is stepping up when it matters, and that's so good. It is definitely so good, and it's looking so good. You've now booked yourself the grand final spot. It's looking like the fairy tale in Paris. How does it feel? Does it feel like that? Do you feel like you can go all the way now? Is this it? Well, it's been eight years that I didn't play a major final, so it feels good, I'm not gonna lie. But doing it here, and giving everything to win it here will be the best gift we could give to French people. So, no worries, guy, we will give you everything. You certainly did. I don't think I need to tell them, but I'll just remind them. Guys, Apex and Vitality are in the grand final tomorrow! Vitality writing history before our very eyes. The first time they make it to a major grand finals, and it could not be more poetic of them to do it in Paris. Zaiwu finally touching distance from a major trophy. But what makes this even more impactful, Machu, it's off the back of an entire team victory. They bend, but they don't break. That is the story of Vitality here in Paris. And once again, we've witnessed a great example on the stage Kudos to Apex, really pushed them to their limits. They had a very commendable and honorable effort into the semi-final, but Vitality remained in control. The words of Apex resonate, echoes with the truth. It was a team effort. Everybody stepped up when they needed. We've had a bunch of clutches going left, right, and center, but we stayed the course, we remained calm. This is a new Vitality, one that is poised to hoist the trophy here in Paris. Poise is a great word to describe it, Maniac. The way that Vitality were able to close this one out really honestly felt like they were never in such true danger. Even though Apex was giving them some good punches here and there, Vitality felt like they were the team that was entirely in control. Excellent T-side calling. I'm glad that Apex was able to back up his words and when he said to me that they are the best T-side team on Vertigo. Ten rounds right there. It was incredibly convincing stuff. Good calls from him, good individual performances. I wanted that Sphinx ace on that last round, though. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I wanted that one real badly <laughs> because it would have been a great way to cap off what was an excellent series from him after not really showing up in the quarterfinals. So it's been some ups, some downs, but Vitality, they stay true and they still yet to drop a map. Yeah, which is absolutely incredible. We were just kind of uh, racking our brains in the green room. The only other time we've seen a team go absolutely flawless, not dropping a single map at a major was when Na'Vi lifted the trophy back in Stockholm. I I'm not getting ahead of myself here, Matthew. Game of Legion definitely present a tough challenge going into that grand finals but it's crazy to see the flawless fashion that vitality have done it in so far i know and and i hate this bullshit narrative about the opponents they've played against you can only play who's in front of you exactly. how responsible are you if apex kid the ass of liquid on their way to this semi-final how responsible are you if gamer legion made minced meat of heroic in their semi-final to be in the grand final vitality can only play who's in front of them and what the calm they've displayed in some of these rounds 27 28 29 this to me is why they are ready to win this moment because they are not breaking under pressure i just want to relive the magic one more time in this winning mic top moment no! Just pure elation coming out of Vitality in that one. Magisk managing to get the final kill on the round. And we speak about the prowess on the T side. Magisk was the guy to really be standing tall, yet again delivering on that T side of Vertigo. Once again, absolutely stunning for Magisk. Uh, he delivers a recital, uh, an orchestra that he put together on that T side. And I think it's the best of both worlds. On one hand, you can argue that individually he's fully mastered this area of the map. The stairs B, he's got so many different smokes he's playing with. He knows the angles, he knows the timings. He's punished his opponent so many times, but also 
And as Maui was pointing out, the execute and the quality of the executes when they decide to attack that B bomb site was just too hard to handle for Apex as well. Uh, a little bit of a nudge in that clip we've just witnessed. A little bit of Danish towards the very end. I'm jumping, I'm jumping between Majiska and Duffy. <laughs> like when the stakes are so high, just diverting back to the language. Yeah, we heard them saying, you know, they'd say, go Dane, you know, just full <laughs> Dane. Dane. Like, <laughs> if, 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 if you need to communicate in that language, hell yeah, go forward. It worked out for them in that final round. And yeah, Vitality doing beautiful stuff to close out that map. I mean, this has punched their tickets into the grand finals. This has created such a w crazy story for Dupree, for Majisk, for Zonic. We talk about the Danes, and we talk about now how Dupree is setting himself up for a potential fifth major trophy. It's Nobody crazy. else in the history has accomplished that. He will definitely already go down as one of the best riflers in history, but he has a chance to have the most stacked trophy, trophy cabinet when it comes to majors, too. We see some pictures of what I believe is Zaiwu's family. Uh, just there as well. The fact that on the flip side of this, we have Zaiwu not with a single major trophy within his cabinet now. It, it, it would just be pure poetry for him to be lifting the last one on home soil tomorrow. And what desolation it would be if he doesn't. That is that is the weight that is on these players' shoulders right here. I mean, of course, Majisk and Dupree have skin in the game. Spinks as well, that's very obvious. But if you're Apex, if you're Zaiwu, you are very aware of the situation that you find yourself in. You have 10,000s of people in this arena screaming your name every time you get a frag. Everybody is expecting for you to perform. Everybody is expecting for you to do well. And I think they're handling this pretty well. And they've been adamant about it. They've been honest. They say it comes with some pressure. Yeah. It, it comes at a price. We're, we're feeling on our shoulders a couple times. But what I have seen from, from Vitality just commands respect so far. What we heard from Apex in the winner's interview as well, he said this is the best moment of his career. Man has won a major before, but <laughs> playing man. in front of this crowd, making it to the grand final in Paris means way more to him. It's got to feel completely different. You see how fired up he's getting. He is one of the most emotive captains in the space. He's right up there with Kadian, but I'm sure that the fire that Paris is lighting underneath him is helping him burn even brighter. And think about just a, a bunch of missed, I don't want to say missed opportunities, that's the right term or the wrong term, but the moments, the accidents that have happened to Vitality on LAN in 2023. There is that incredible comeback from Liquid in Katowice where Vitality were poised to make oh. semi-final. They completely crumbled, they, they let it go. There is this end moment in Pro League where they're 14-14, Zaiwu has 10 kills in about three rounds, and then somehow they still find a way to lose. And I think this, you can feel, you can feel that this has built a new level of resistance resilience in them because they're aware that they've messed up a couple of these moments and it ain't gonna happen today, not here in Paris. Unfortunately for Apex, this is the end of the road for them. Um, but props to Seiko, man, for giving us some really mature words. And he was still smiling despite that, right? He said it was a feat in itself to be making it to the semi-final. And as he branded it, an impossible task could be uh, to be taken down Vitality in front of their home crowd. And we start need to start paying attention to some of these teams that are not in the, the partner space. Teams like Apex, teams like Gamer Legion, that they, they have really shown us that there is so much talent, so much teamwork, so much skill brewing over there. If you watch close enough, you'll see that these teams have nades that are more efficient than some of the Tier 1 teams. That's why, even though they might not have players of the same caliber, they're able to push these teams so hard. The way that they're able to anti-strap, the way that they're using the utility, everything is showing that there is a thriving scene in what we consider Tier 2, but I don't even really want to consider it Tier 2. I just want to consider it the partner teams and the unpartnered teams. Yeah. Those teams with the smaller budget, with less resources, are still putting up great fights. They're playing excellent and beautiful Counter-Strike, and it deserved the respect that it earned at this event. Yeah, I think we can see what a roster like that can accomplish when all of their efforts and all of their time is 100% focused into this one event. That is, and it's not even a, a hyperbole, their Super Bowl, quite literally the last CSGO major that they were a partner of. So you can understand the quality of counter like they put forth. I know what you mean, Maui. I agree with you with the whole partner conversation. Sometimes the question is one of consistency. Can you maintain that level? But that's a that's a conversation for a later time. I think for now what we should do is respect what Apex has been able to put on display here in terms of the Counter-Strike, the emotions, the resilience they've put in, some of the new profiles we've gotten to know. Kixen is a name that we obviously have to put forth and that was a, a very honorable try they put forth. And I want to flip it back over to the pre-game interview that we heard from Zonic, right? He was talking about this new generation of Counter-Strike talent brewing and you have to respect that because Apex, they did push and prod Vitality. Sure, as you aptly put it, Matthew, Vitality don't break, they just bend around that and manage to close out in two. Yeah, I mean, 
mean, listen, this is how a healthy game is supposed to be. That you have new players coming in, new talent, new faces, new profiles, new charisma, new characters. Kixen is one. Of course, Shui is another one that we are putting in under the spotlight more and more because they have seized that opportunity. They've had every single eyeballs of the CS community on them and they've made the most out of it. And I'm excited about it. I think this is healthy. Sure, you would like Namesake. You'd like G2. You like Ents. You like Mouse. All of these names. But that's just one side of the story. The other is about deserving, earning that spot, earning that game. And some of the new names, they've done just that. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's. I don't think there's really much more to be said about that. It's just that the tier one, some of the the teams that are partnered just weren't actually able to to find that form here. Yeah. And uh, on the other side of things, I mean, we're gonna remember J Legend. We're gonna remember JL Kixan himself. The fact that he changed the entire outlook of this Apex lineup made them look like a completely different team. One that was losing in tier three lands in North America. I'm talking Fragadelphia. They were coming in fourth place in, and then Kixan gets him to a major semifinals. Pimp said it. I'm gonna reiterate it, best signing of the year in Kicksand because yeah. Apex is now on the map. They are on everybody's radar. Machu, I don't want to bait you into anything. I don't want to jinx you here, but do you believe in vitality withstanding the pressure tomorrow? Because undoubtedly, I, I mean, for Zari, for Apex now, we've heard him say how important this is to him. Do you feel like this is their time? Do you feel like it's written in the stars? I have never doubted. <laughs> you haven't. Uh, You'd put them in your pick. It pick is their time. Yeah. I've said vitality we're going to do it in Paris. And I am very much confirmed into my feeling, my opinion. I think it's uh, it's not coming home, it's coming to Paris. Yeah, no team in Tier 1 has actually won back-to-back S-Tier events this year, but it does look like Vitality are on a warpath right now. That trail has been blazed already. It is right there before them. There's only a little bit more to go. Gamer Legion have put up a great fight, but you'd be, you'd be insane to say that Gamer Legion are the favorites. It's obviously Vitality's tournament to win. It's also theirs to lose, too. Yeah, let's take a look at the schedule to see exactly what is on the cards heading into tomorrow, because, of course, oh, no, this is today's results, sorry. Uh, and go. the biggest upset of the entire... Hi, Major. Heroic out. Their name was plastered all over the trophy alongside Vitality. That was the grand final we were expecting. Hell no. Gamer Legion said, shut up. Uh, once again, you just have to respect what Gamer Legion did in that third map. It was insanely decisive, insanely unilateral. What the hell just happened on that? They just took a massive dump on any kind of scenario we thought we would have in the grand final. Sure, Heroic Vitality sounded great for all the movie makers and book writers out there, but this is not what we're going to get. In fact, we have this sort of clash of opposition between between the most established names, the likes of Dupree, Majisk, Apex, Saibu, and then the new generation coming in in Gamer Legion. And that is in itself quite poetic that they will fight for the last trophy. Yeah, I'm so excited to see that go down tomorrow. Also excited to see our unicorn predictions coming at you thick and fast because, uh, yeah, I went with the Danes, so did most of us, but apparently you doing the good? insanity has order. Yeah, you're acing that for you. Yeah, man. Only, only, uh, French I see Londres got, get, yeah. Londres got four coins crowning as well. I have made very terrible decisions this whole playoffs. <laughs> well, you have one more decision left to make tomorrow. Oh, that's already made for you. My decision has been made yeah. ever since we came into Paris. Well, you know, Chad had us play a little game, didn't he? On our first night that we were here, he that asked us to put who we think was going to be winning the major and who was going to be the MVP of that. I'll, be, I'll review I mean, that tomorrow. It, yeah, it's on, it's on Twitter, but we'll keep that card close to our chests, I think, because tomorrow, of course, we have the show match going down. That'll be starting at 3 p.m., uh, which you guys have had your say in over at Blast.tv. But then that coveted grand final later on today. And the final one, Matthew, can you believe 10 years of CSGO is all going to be coming to a culmination tomorrow? No, no, I, I cannot believe it, actually. I don't think my brain has quite comprehended the magnitude of, of what's about to happen tomorrow. I've been kind of stuck into the whirlwind of, of what happened this weekend, and I think we can empathize with the players. They're probably in a similar situation. You know, they're getting on the stage, they're getting all excited and hyped up, they play their game, but there is something bigger than all of us that's happening here. We're closing a chapter, an incredible chapter. Maui, I just want to uh, give you an opportunity to say your farewells to CSGO because it's been absolutely magical having you up on the desk here for the final CSGO mode. And thank you so much for everything that you've given to this game. Anything you want to say to everyone at home? Uh, just that I want to just take this time to thank everybody who's been watching. I know not everybody has been liking what I've been saying, but I'm just spitting it as it is, okay? I'm using a little bit of opinion. I'm just trying to bring out some emotion because I'm not trying to always just say everything's hunky dory everything's good sometimes emotion needs to be at play good art isn't always happy fun time sometimes there's sorrow sometimes there's loss 
but sometimes there is elation, and I'm trying to bring all of that out with this game. Spit in straight truths, Maui, and that's exactly why we love you. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me for what was semi-final Saturday here at the Blast TV Paris Major. But more action on the cards if you're watching over on Blast.tv as the overtime show is coming at you. Oh, there we are. We're finally live. What is up, fellas? And what's up, all of you guys here in the chat as well? Welcome back to the Blast TV Major live here in Paris after what was, uh, I would say, a bit of a relief. Some, f some fans here in the eight core <laughs> arena, but I'm super excited to be here for the overtime show. My name is Jake. I'm joined by some, some amazing guests. I got Shocks to my left. Hello. And of course, we're joined by the one and only Dupree. Yo, yo. I got to ask you guys, <laughs> right after the match, how are we both feeling? Have, have any nerves been relieved after all that? Of course, I mean, um, coming into this game, we knew that we were the, the top dog, that we, we, we were, everyone expected us to win, but also had to recognize that Epic was here for a reason. Um, they've been playing really solid, and that's what we saw the game today. I mean, and when you get to the stage of a major, like, I don't think you will ever encounter, like, an easy game, and it's not like that anymore. Like, maybe you would have gone back to, like, 2016, you would have had, had, had an easy game and if you went up like, against a, a lower tier team, but not nowadays. Sharks, how are you feeling? Uh, you know, as a now as a spectator and as a Fight 80 fan, it was really hard to actually like watch because it was really a close series, and we were actually like thinking like, no, please, no, not a third map. You know, we don't want <laughs> to go on Inferno. Come on. So we were really like, yes, a lot of relief when uh, just what you go end up. 
Yeah, I mean, were there any points at all where, where the nerves came out? You know, we saw all the face cams and reactions throughout the entire series. Was there any point in time where, where you guys felt the nerves of Apex? Um, actually, speaking for myself, I was never really worried that we would lose in some sense. I was kind of confident we would end up winning, but of course it got really close. I, I felt like we were in control. And I think that the main topic for today was that we, uh, of course, we want to win. We want to, to uh, lift the trophy and everything. But the, the main topic today was, was definitely that I, I think we, in, in parts of the game, showed that we wanted it too much. Like, there was literally just situations we, we decided not to play correct because we either overpeaked or we wanted like we wanted to finish the round of the game too fast and that ended up giving the uh, the opportunity for the for the for apex to either um make a retake or whatever situation we might have been or we threw away the 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 extra guys that we had just killed so in, in that sense i think we i hope that we will not do the same thing tomorrow um because that was the reason in my opinion that it got so close and uh you guys had a lot of force ups uh, a lot of confident plays you think the crowd played a little angle in that today? Of course, I think it's, it's, I think, I mean, Shucks can also relate to this. Like whenever you get to play on the big stages and you, you go and play these semifinals and finals and whatnot, whenever you get the first and you get the second and you can hear the roar of the crowd, you're like, okay, I'm gonna go for that. <laughs> yeah, for one sure. Well, you know, I mean, <laughs> till you die, till you die, basically. Exactly, you know, <laughs> and sometimes that's what you need to do, but sometimes you also need to just put your logic, like logic into your brain. Say, okay, I just need to get out of here. I just need to survive now because then you will put the pressure, even more pressure on, on the enemies. And I think that is, uh, it's, it's something that is extremely hard to learn because you get carried away by the whole atmosphere. And I wanna uh, pose this to you first, Shox. Pay the due respects for Apex. What an incredible run. Who were you most impressed today on the Apex roster? Uh, actually, it's Tico. I feel like he played like really well. I mm -hmm. didn't uh, expect him to do so well, and he showed up like at the perfect timing when actually like Apex needed him today. Yeah, um, same with uh, Tico. I think he had some some really impactful rounds, both on on Mirage but also on Vertigo. And in general, it, I think they as a team played pretty well. I don't think like anyone was literally slipping up. Um, and like on the scoreboard, you might have seen Quickson maybe not like hitting all his shots, but I still believe that he made some really good calls and I believe he's also the brain behind the team. So I think in overall, like AP should be really proud of what they've achieved here. 100%. And, and speaking of Stiko, all of you guys at home can actually vote. Stiko versus JL, who deserves a spot in the show match? I want to bounce back really quick at your thoughts on the first match today, which was an upset and, and one I think a lot of fans here were glad we didn't see Vitality upset in similar fashion. Mm. Heroic versus Gamer Legion. What were you guys' thoughts after that first match went down? It's really hard. Uh, so my first thought is like I was scared for Vitality. <laughs> because I was like, okay, no, an, under, an underdog is going to the final, please. No, 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 not, not for you guys. You know, I, don't, I want to see Vitality in the final. So that's my, my first thought. But as Dupree was saying before, honestly, like when you're coming to a major, and especially now in 2023, like you can't expect anything from any match because Every players and every team that are actually in the playoff here on the stage, like they deserve to be here and they are at a really good level. And then you add the pressure, you add the crowd, you add the atmosphere, everything. And from there, like everything can happen, basically. I mean, I was I was uh, in the beginning when, when I when I saw the, the whole veto process, I was I was certain that Heroic was going to win uh, because the maps that came out of that one um, was he heavily favored towards uh, Heroic, in my opinion. Um, I think you could just tell that whenever they hit the third map, Game Legion basically started believing in, like they really believed that they could start winning. Um, and from there on, it was just Game Legion hitting all the shots where Heroic didn't. And that is just what happens in these type of tournaments. I mean, one thing is that you can play like perfect CS, but when you hit these type of uh, like third maps in, in, a, in a semifinal, counter switch just changes into a phase where it's more about you need to dare to do stuff instead of playing scared. So whenever you see someone doing an ASU, you're gonna see someone jumping through a smoke and he gets this important kill that will turn the whole like the whole round. And I think that is just what like, Game Legion did better today. They they were not afraid. They they were not afraid of losing. They were they were playing to win. And I'm not saying that Heroic obviously didn't you know, they were also playing the thing. But I also think as a team as a Heroic, when when you come as as the, the, the big team and you know that you have the expectations for the crowd and for the community and all probably also from yourself, you, you can get shocked um playing these teams because you like they're not supposed to, to do yeah. all these kind of crazy things you know but all of a sudden they're doing it because they don't have respect yeah. and i think that's also what have changed throughout the years and when you look back at the previous majors you'd see one two teams maybe going through now you have the teams they, they we had four like kind of surprises going into this this playoff and it's just uh, it's just a huge generation shift i believe i honestly believe it's a generation shift and you would have really easy games back in the days in majors if someone made like a 
um, like an upset going on stage because they were they were shaking. Nowadays, it's more like these new players coming to the game. They know that they they can go up against these big names. They don't care like whoever the name is. They're just gonna play because that's what they've been doing for the last couple. Yeah, I totally agree with Dupree. And back then, it was definitely not, not like this. When younger teams were were facing like bigger teams, uh, like on the server, actually, you could see like sometimes you are getting kills or you're getting like easy runs, mm. like. What are they doing again, yeah. you know? <laughs> and they're just like crumbling under the pressure because they are facing big team, big names. But now they are playing like, it's not about, I would say, respect. It's just like they believe really in themselves that they are better than you when yeah. they play against you, you know? And as when you are like supposed to be like the, the better team, it just gets you like pretty fast, like uncomfortable. Like, okay, these guys are not missing a run. Like they really want to get this game. Yeah, I love how you guys bring this point up because we've had these younger IGLs, at least with uh, lesser major experience. You talk about Kicks and you talk about Shuhei, who I think has become a crowd favorite here and you're going up against tomorrow as well. Uh, can you speak to, are you impressed with Shuhei and, and these players? You already kind of spoke to what they've done impressively so far, but Shuhei in particular, I, are, I, I, are you impressed by his actions? Sure, I mean, I don't think you can put put the results on, on one guy only. Like it's their entire team that is obviously believing in whatever he calls, and you also have their individual stepping up. I think, you know, you, you need a team effort to make it this far at a major. It's not like one guy just hitting their shots here and there, but you need, like, a whole unit to believe in the actual course. And I don't think Game League has ever believed more in winning a major than, than they do now, <laughs> obviously, since they're in the major final, but they also beat Heroic, you know, one of, like, the team that everyone probably expected to go to, to the grand final. So I think that it, it's... Um, I mean, a big, uh, you gotta take the hat off for, for, for both both Apex and also Game League, no matter the outcome of this major. Whatever they've done here is is just, they they are definitely part of the big guys now. Yeah, and a lot of people like to, to knock on the storyline of these unexpected or uh, these teams that are here that are a bit, you know, not your big tier teams. A lot of uh, big teams have fallen off so far. So not to knock the run, you guys, between you, have so much major experience, both, uh, you know, major win and many major wins, also so many major appearances. If you had advice for these young up-and-comers when it comes to a grand finals of a major, how do you keep those nerves calm? It, wh what's that moment like? Well, first, I don't think he wants to give them some advice. I, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I was thinking the exact same. <laughs> no, but honestly, right now, I won't say anything because they are here. They are in the grand final, you know? So I think they, they understand the game and they understood, like, what it comes down to actually get there. You were talking about, like, see who, you know? And for me, one thing, like, which is really, like, important, when you look at him outside the server, you can see he's bringing to the team a synergy and a calm things, you know? And when you are in such, in a, such atmosphere like this with a lot of pressure, you need to be calm. It's really important because you're going to get a lot of tense situation during the run. And if you just let your nerves going like that, this is what Dupree was uh, talking about, is like you're going to do some mistakes or you're going to give some space to, to the enemy to actually make a play, you know? And by staying calm like that, they are more in the control of the game. And doing that while being such a young player and a young team, honestly, prop to him. Yeah, and uh, again, sorry for, for asking you no that one. <laughs> We're going to pull up the uh, the poll for all of you guys at home as well, the JL versus Stiko poll ongoing for the show match on top of that. Actually, apparently not working, but we'll continue because I, I wanted to bring up a uh, unique question. It was we bring up these French fans. I don't know if you guys caught the footage on Twitter. They, they came in via boat. Yeah. This morning, uh, the Golden Hornets. I was there. Yeah, you were there as yeah, well. Yeah, I, 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 I should have known. So I saw so, them, yeah, yeah. How has that experience been? You guys have been all over the world. Uh, what compares to these French fans? I mean, for me, this reminds me a lot of how it is playing in Denmark. Obviously, it, I guess it's that's how it is when you have passionate fans uh, coming from, from your home country. And I, I've experienced this uh, a couple of times, um, mainly playing in, in, in Blast, also in Royal Arena in Copenhagen. But I've also, when we won the the Grand Slam back in Odense. So I think for me, um, it reminds me of the, the whole, it reminds me of home, you know, and it's always nice to have the home crowd with you. They always, you know, they bring good atmosphere and you start believing. And, and if you can, if you can gain the, en the energy that they will provide to you, you can get that and use that as a motivation. You will also have, in my opinion, the upper hand. But at the same time, if you go to a stage, um, 
and you don't convert that energy that they're producing you they will also put that as a pressure on you like it, it, it I, in my opinion is actually either of those you either go and you just play out of your mind because you are like Oof, you're getting carried by the crowd or you actually start having issues performing because there's tons of expectations all around you and you have your mm. family your girlfriend and everything watching you you want to make want to make yourself look good you know um and i think if you can control your nerves in that sense i think they will just benefit you so much and you know the French fans, in and out always been there to support you. Uh, is that a big driver during competition like this? Oh, honestly, like it's a dream for me, like to be there. And actually, it's really nice to have like a spectator view. I would say it's probably my. I mean, it is my first like big event like this in majors that I'm actually coming from the beginning, you know, as a spectator rise, uh, and enjoying all the fans, all the atmosphere, and I'm even like chanting with them, you know, and dancing, I'm jumping, like I'm really like I want to to live this experience as from a spectator view to see how it is you know yeah and honestly so far the guys are really amazing and i also like like the fact that uh for example like yes they're gonna boo uh the enemy of vitality or whatever but at the end of the match they're still gonna clap because we have a lot of respect for every team every players and for me this is something really important to show to to every teams you know like yes we're gonna be we're gonna be enemy on the battlefield but outside the battlefield we totally respect every teams here. For sure. I got some individual questions. Dupree searching for a, a fifth major, been to every single CSGO major, a, a feat that you, you shouldn't be humble about, but I, I'm sure you are. So we're entering this this major as we, CSGO comes to a close. What are the feelings that, that come to mind? Um, I will obviously be lying if I wouldn't just love winning tomorrow. That would be mm -hmm. amazing, you know, because uh, getting another unique uh, achievement for myself would be very nice. But uh, I've, I've, I've really tried not to put any focus on it this tournament because I don't need additional pressure in that sense that I need to go out and, and, and put that effort in to, to, to win. Of course, I want to see it as a motivation, but I was more afraid of going to this tournament and seeing it as a, like a, a pressure element. So I'd much rather just want to see it as a motivation and then put that motivation into performing with the team and then winning it together with the team, proving that we, we, we can hopefully win it a major as an international team but also winning it for Vitality and, and, and you know, for Sai Wu, who has not won a major yet. And overall, I'm, I'm, that is just how I look at it. But of course, I, I will do everything that I can tomorrow to, to make it count. Yeah, and I know all the fans here are looking forward to it. The arena will certainly be packed. To you, though, Shocks, as CSGO comes to a close and CS2 slowly enters, whatever it may this year, what can we expect from your competitive future when it comes to CS2? You, you allowed to tell us anything? Right now, right now, uh, I can't, uh, I can't uh, say especially something or whatever, any hint. But for sure, like there is a, a new version, you know, and I've been kind of playing almost all the versions since Counter Strike came out back in the days. And I want to play competitive on CS2 with the team 100%. I'm done. The, I'm not done yet. Awesome. Uh, uh, unfortunate news today, especially for the French fans, someone who was uh, done with play, Kenny S, taking to stage to announce that prolonged re retirement, uh, I guess I should say the uh, official retirement after 11 years of pro play. And uh, of course, fans here met with uh, mixed emotions of, you know, wanting him to give CS2 a mm. try. You guys have any words when, when someone like that goes away from the scene? I think that obviously Sharks has the, the, the most experience with Kenny because he's a French player and he's been playing along him. But I, I mean, Sharks has been around for ages, you know. I even tried to make a breakout when I was playing Counter Strike Source back in the days. Never really made it. Um, but I remember my first official, I think it was like called EMS or whatever it was back in the days in, in, yeah. in Counter Strike. I was, I was, remember I was playing Vera Games for the first time. <laughs> and you know, I think that was Ken when Kenny was just picked up as, as the new Orbit for the team. And back then, you know, things were just, you know, Ser the super unprofessional, but I guess Very Games was like probably the most professional team out yeah. there. <laughs> um, and you know, it was just a huge experience. And you know, I've been competing against uh, Kenny for many, many, many years, and also uh, alongside Shark. You know, I've been going up against these guys a lot, and we've had our ups and downs in our careers. Um, so of course, it's um, we're all getting old. Um, but at the same time, I think Kenny has had a has had a really good career. You know, he's been crowned as as uh, probably one of the best orbs of all time. And I think he can obviously be proud of what he achieved. And I think he's he he has found hopefully a new joy. And I believe that he's streaming a lot right now. So I hope he's found a new joy and that he will that he will uh, continue doing what he makes makes him happy because that is you know kind of the definition of what you need to do in life. You know, you need to be to be happy about what you do. And it was nice to see him trying to to uh, to come back and play with Falcons. And I think a lot of guys had a lot of nost nostalgia uh, watching him play. But of course, um, times is changing. But uh, yeah, I think it's been, he can be proud of what he's done. Yeah, I totally agree with Rupi. You know, the most important, uh, we will always remember him for what he had done uh, on the game, for sure. 
Um, but if I talk about the human being, I think he wanted, he did what he wanted to do. He wanted to try to do a comeback for the Paris Major and because he wanted to play there. And he was also thinking about a comeback on CS uh, for some time now. And I think it was really important for him to actually like try it. And this Paris Major was the time to actually try it, you know. Uh, it, he didn't manage to do it, but he decided to pick, I think, the actually perfect moment uh, to just like code it, you know, as he was seeing on the scene in front of his home crowd, you know, uh, with all these guys cheering for him. It was honestly like really emotional. Uh, and I think right now he's more enjoying what he's doing as a content creator that, that he was when he was a player, you know. So I think he just, he, yeah, as Dupree was saying, like, it's a, it's a life choice. And I think he will, uh, he, will be, he will be really happy in the future. And that's the most important. I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah, I think it's always understated. Uh, the life of a pro player is not an easy life yeah. by any means. You guys put up a lot of sacrifices to be at all the events that you've actually been at. And you made note earlier, you guys are getting old. You got plenty, <laughs> of, you got plenty of time. You've already achieved plenty as well. Do you guys have any up-and-comers that have piqued your interest or caught your eye on the scene? I think there's a lot of um, a lot of players out there right now that that are on the brink of, of making a breakthrough. As I, as I mentioned earlier, I think we are definitely seeing a generation shift in Counter Strike, and it's been going on for for a little while. I mean, maybe I think that's also why you see so many upsets in the major. I, I I strongly believe that you when you bring in new players into uh, to these big big teams, you know, going to major has always been so special for 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 everyone. And you know, when you bring in uh, like these new talent. And, Persons like they they need more time to, they can maybe play really well at a tournament that doesn't have the, like the same legacy or whatever it is. But whenever they go, you know everything just starts getting a little bit more special, and everyone is expecting a little bit more. And there's more spectators and whatnot. But there's so many people out there right now that I think has uh, has definitely proven themselves that they they belong to to becoming a, a top player. Um, but I mean, if I had to pick one, I, I believe that Manisi is probably the one that would go with. I mean, he's uh, he's. He's so young and he is uh, he's just a super talented guy and he's an upcoming superstar and I don't see why he wouldn't also go out and win majors whenever he gets older. Um, it might even be the next one or whatever, I don't know. Um, have, being so young and have, have such a big career in front of you should obviously is, is, is very big for him. So I think that's probably going to be my pick if I had to pick one. Uh, I won't be able to pick actually one. Uh, I, I will just say that uh, I really hope that uh, this new generation uh, are going to do the same on CS2 because it's going to be a new game and it's going to come like in the next few months, you know, and there is a lot of uh, new upcoming talents, as you were saying, um, that had been there actually for some years now because they were like playing in the shadow or you were not seeing them uh, trying to become the best or whatever. Uh, and they are actually in that moment that they are doing the turnovers to maybe like go against these tier teams. And this moment, this is where CSGO is going to stop. So now what can happen on CS2? Can they still move forward? Are still uh, the tier one teams going to be a bit above? Is it going to be stuck? Are the tier one teams are going to go down and all these new generation are just going to be like the best, you know, like, I don't know. And I'm really excited for the future, actually. You know, an interesting question to pose would be, who was your guys' generation, of your generation, who was the Munisi? Who, who was the up-and-comer, the, the young kid on the block that maybe nobody saw coming who came out of nowhere? Hmm. Is there a comparison? I, I, if you take the op, I would pick Kenias back then. In 2014, yeah. he was just unplayable. I guess Nico, maybe. I mean, for As a long well, time, I think yeah. Nico was uh, also considered a very big talent and played in the... Some of the was it Bastian teams, like, and then he was picked up by Mousebots eventually, you know, and he was he had a hard time, you know, breaking not not breaking through with Mouse, Mouse Sports because he was definitely performing in there. But I think the team around him was not as good as he wanted it. And now eventually, when he was picked up by Fashion, that's when he really started to shine. So I think Nico is is, is definitely there. Um, I guess also players like Snacks and Bialy all out of nowhere. I mean, I know True. sure they haven't played for for a while, and they I think they're still trying to to make a team now. But at least when when Virtus Pro back in the days was a team that you know the poles were uh, were you know a, a heavy contender to win titles, they also came out of nowhere. You know, like all of a sudden you saw Snacks and Bialy playing at the, this I don't know the second or the third major, and you're like, who are these guys? And then just, they just won it, you know. Yeah. Interesting. So we're going to uh, enter into one of our last segments. We do appreciate you guys' time. It's an experimental segment, okay? Uh, as we have a French and a, and a Dane here, I, I was going to give you guys some call-outs in-game and have uh, you guys express the call-outs 
in your in your native language okay. and see how they differ from each other. This could be terrible. I guess I, I, I think I know. You know, obviously I will probably know a couple of the French ones. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah you guys might know. Uh, I know. Vice yeah, versa. but I don't know any Danish. No, one, exactly. We'll so uh, let's start with a pillar on overpass. Yeah. So how would you make that call in game in your native language? Dildo. Like just as a site. What's up? Dildo. Yeah, dildo. I mean, in, in English, but in French, it's like either dildo or pilier. Yeah, but in, in Danish, dildo as well. Okay, <laughs> so that would be why uh, that was recommended to me. Uh, how about jail <laughs> on overpass? Uh, so, like, when you go you go in Monster and then you have, like... The, in front of Monster? In front of Monster, like the grills thing you can, like the yeah, railings the you can jump off. Like. Um, I think it varies from team to team, but in Danish, you would probably say... I mean, like, what did we even call that? In, in that area is actually called Jacob, I think. Uh, like, not when you go on top, but if you stay on the right, because so the wood place <laughs> that's called rain. And then in in Astralis, we were like, okay, so we got killed by someone on the opposite direction, and we were like, we need to find a name for this. And like, okay, so what other really good Norwegian players do we have uh, back at the time? Uh, and it was like, oh, Jacob. So we booked it for Jacob. But otherwise, it's gonna be called uh, Grill, I think. And there's okay, there's no like. There's no dirty name for that? No uh, dirty name? No, I don't have one because in French we'll, you would just say like grillage. But ha as Peter was saying, depending on the teams you go, there is so much specific angles yeah. in that area that actually in the teams you pick like name of some players that did some plays or maybe in practice he got three kills. Okay, we're going to... Yeah, exactly. Name, That's how it works. <laughs> All right, this might be, uh, you know, obviously they got to go to standard. So banana a Mirage. Do you guys say banana or what do you say? On yeah. Mirage? Yeah. Mirage? Oh, Inferno, Inferno. Ah, okay. Yeah, in Danish it's banane, so it's banana. Banane. What was that? Banane. Okay, so pretty yeah. simple. Pretty yeah. Simple, yeah. All right, but so then there's like tons of different ways. <laughs> Banana's like the whole thing, and then you have specific ones everywhere. Yes. <laughs> okay, so we're, we, you guys get real specific when it comes to callouts. Yes, you have to, most of the case. Yes, because Sometimes the you're... most specific you are with your information, the more your teammate can actually put his, cross, his crosshair on the right direction and get an advantage when he's going to pick. Mm. If you are not as precise as needed when you're going to give your communication, then your teammate either is not going to do anything because he doesn't really know what to do, or either if it's not a good uh, information and he wants to pick, then he, he will probably lose his duel because uh, the crossfire is not like perfectly on the, on the enemy. That makes a, a lot of sense when you say it like that. Scaffold on Vertigo. That will be actually in the yellow part. Yeah, like when you go A, right? Uh, I think it's just called Gul, which is yellow in Danish. Yeah, Jaune, Jaune. which means yellow in uh, yeah. in English. <laughs> so is the is the idea being to make these callouts as short, simple as yeah. possible? Yes. And also they have to be so. Obviously, if you go like scaffold, you would just you know that like it's yellow. So obviously you wouldn't call it purple because that would just be weird, you know? Yeah. So it's it, the more like specific, you could also look at something on the map and there's like a sign saying danger, then this spot is called danger because, you know, it kind of remake, like it makes sense in the specific area. So is, is pump frit, is that not a... Yes, it is. It is. I know in Danish you call it pump fritten as well, which is the French fry. Um, Why? Yellow? 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, I uh, don't know about this one. But I, I don't know about this one. I think it's... Uh, we didn't use that in Astralis, from what I remember. No, we did not. But I think if you play face it with like a face it stack or whatever, I th I'm pretty sure people say it pump in. Okay, last one for you. Uh, you know what? This is my <laughs> this is my failed segment. All right, I should uh, should have oh, tried it's fine. It's fine. It a, a little better. Uh, when someone is low, one shot. Uh, you know, you've done a lot of damage. What's the call out? Low HP. Low HP. Yeah, we would probably go. Uh, we would probably go. Uh, <laughs> we have <laughs> we had so many things in this, we, <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I think low is probably the one that we even say low in Danish. Uh, we meanwhile also say uh, uh, hoesel, which means headshot. Like it's just like a short of hit, like hoesel, which just means he's sh or dinked. We can also say he's yeah, dinked. dinked. It's gooch, like gooched. That's what they say in gooched. in North America. I think. Well, he knows better than I do. Yeah, and sometimes if you want to be really sure, sometimes I like to do like to say to my teammates, for example, if I know I dinked him. Plus, I give him one hit like in a wall, so I know he's like three HP. I will really insist of this communication, like he literally has three HP. Yes. Please trust me. Yeah, so yeah. he knows he can, he yeah. can jump. He cannot even like uh, really like use his crosshair or whatever. Like just find his leg and he's dead. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. We would also use he's uh, one HP, like one HP, or we would go um, uh, in the trials we had USP low. 
So he'd be like, he would only die. He would ah. die for one bullet from a USB. Yeah. He's just blow, who's blow. <laughs> and the NCC is where sometimes you have good teammates and bad teammates. You have the good teammates that when they are saying one HP, they are ready one HP. And you have bad teammates that are saying one HP. And he's 30 left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's that's a, a lot of esports out but, there. But let's be honest, we've all tried that. Oh, oh I yeah, headshot yeah. him and you hit shot him me through like a wall and he's like only <laughs> took 20 damage. We've oh, all tried yeah. it. Everybody, every single person at home has said someone is low and everyone uh, finds out that they're not. Yeah, you're like, oh fuck, I didn't I only hit him <laughs> once. That happens a lot. All right, let's end on this one. And it's been a real joy to have you guys. Uh, a couple pro players who have been out uh, throughout the entirety of CSGO. So I want to ask you, from, it, from its inception of the early days of CSGO until now, what are some major differences that you have noticed or what has been one of your favorite moments throughout the you know, entirety of Counter-Strike Global Offensive? I think just overall, if I had to pick one, I think the level in general has just gotten so much better. Um, sometimes if you go back and watch some of the very old uh, VODs of, of a tournament, you're like, how did we even how, why, why are we playing like that? And you, people are just like not doing anything cool nowadays that so you have to like consider everything. I will pick the fact that, yeah, first the level of course like is way higher than it was in the past. But if I will have to remember one thing is how the community uh, and the viewers just like were really grew all these past 10 years, you know. If you look at the first major with the um, viewership and you look at this one, for example, like there is a huge difference. A lot of people are actually back 10 years ago didn't know about CS. I didn't, I don't know even if Monesi was playing 10 years ago. Was I'm not even, even sure. Was he even born? <laughs> <laughs> you see? He's what, seven, seven, eight, 18? Something 17? like that. Yeah, yeah. Something like that. And obviously he was born if it was 10 years ago, but he was obviously just going to kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous when you say it like that, but I, I can't thank uh, either of you enough. Uh, Shox, I know who you're rooting for tomorrow. Best of luck with CS2 and what announcements may come. Dupree, obviously nothing but the best of luck to you, you. and the rest of Vitality. And huge shouts to all of you guys still watching. We're going to say goodnight here from Paris. We have an amazing matchup, Gamer Legion versus Vitality. Grand finals of the major happening tomorrow. Good night, Paris. We'll see you there.